What's up, hip lovers, and welcome to the last NAC, NAC 5. And with me is the Viper, three times champion of NAC. Soon four. <laughs> oh, NAC 4 was last time where you didn't win? Or like Soon. Four. Ah, four championships, oh? Maybe, yeah, maybe. Ah, that's what you were Hopefully. talking about. We're praying. praying. We are praying, we're praying. Nearly pray. And yeah, welcome, welcome. Um, it's going to be crazy nine days of Age of Empires. We are trying to give you the best show possible. What are your goals? What are your ambitions for the Nasdaq? Didn't we already make that clear? <laughs> <laughs> no, my goals and ambitions are personally to have a lot of fun, first and foremost. Uh, enjoy myself, hopefully play some good Age of Empires and mm -hmm. whatever happens, happens. Nice. What okay. are your goals and ambitions? Uh, to just play and enjoy. I hope that everyone is having a good time. Oh. And um, yeah, all, all the bullshit. Um, goals and ambitions to end with a bang, kind of. Yeah, that's, that's kind of it. And I hope everyone will enjoy the ride with us. We will have, obviously, five days of... Oh, look at Did those. Did you see my socks? I saw this your not socks. on purpose. Oh, look at those bad boys. <laughs> <laughs> where, where can I buy one of those? Oh, uh, this is not the time. And place. <laughs> That's a good zoom. <laughs> not the time and place, but yeah, <laughs> oh. those, uh, bad boys are very popular in the Age of Empires community. Yeah, rightfully so. Yes. Um, we have five days of group stage. Then obviously we go into a playoff phase. Maybe we will ta start talking about the matchups of the day. Ooh, big ones. When it comes to casters, obviously Mem still spending the day with his family. He will arrive later tonight. And therefore, we have the casting lineup. Jordan will have a set. T90 is going wild with three sets. Dave will do two. I will do two. And Dash will do two. We have Teddo versus Andy as our opener. They already finished their drafting. And or maybe if I look at Andy right now, he is so intense. He's still thinking about this. Yeah, I think Contemplating so. Contemplating his life decisions. And Teddo versus Andy, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Well, I may be a slightly biased here, but uh, I, I've, Andy been, I've been training with both, actually. So oh, um, oh, oh. I think both Traitor. of them are. Uh, can't win, can you? GL Andy confirmed. Ooh. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Andy and Tato. Mm, I think Tato will try to avoid some clown maps. Mm -hmm. Like I've been telling Andy lately, like, even if he doesn't make a monk for one year, yeah, he yeah. will still be known as the clown guy yeah, and yeah, the yeah, monk yeah. guy. So, mm -hmm. uh, no, I still think Tato will probably take it. But, you mm -hmm. know, you never know, right? It's the first day of the tournament. Anything can happen, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If a Andy wins, I would not be like, oh, my God, what just happened, right? It'll still it'll be surprising, but I think Tato is definitely favored. Yeah, yeah, that's what basically everyone agrees on. Then we have Mr. Yo against Jordan. Ooh. Last Hidden Cup, the big upset there yeah. in the semifinals. Jordan, when a lot of people felt like, okay, he's maybe a guy that wins the first round, made it into the finals, beating Yo in a crazy fashion. We remember like in two and a half hour, no wood Arabia game ah, there. True. That was a good one. What are we thinking here? I think I think Yo is gets more dangerous as the tournament goes on mm -hmm. and the meta settles and more Civ picks become clear. Does it look... Looked like we are in two different screens. Oh, oh yeah, the purple cut off here. We, we need to do something like. He is in different picture. This is such a hard cut. It's the wall color. Are we actually? Are we actually in the same room? Can I touch you? <gasps> oh, he broke. <laughs> he broke the meta. Um, Yo and Jordan, right? Yeah. Um, like I said, Yo, I think he gets more scared as the tournament goes on. Jordan, he's been training. He looks good to me. But when I asked, I told him, "You're looking good." He was like, "I feel like shit." Ah, you, you talked about oh, Age of Empires. Gameplay, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, obviously, okay, okay. <laughs> obviously, come on. Um, no, I, I think that one is like, either one can take it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would still go for a 3-2 Jordan. Okay, 3-2 Jordan. What I predicted as well, I especially heard, we, we shouldn't talk about it, but Yo didn't prepare a lot, right? Did he not? Well, he di didn't have to qualify. And then he's the one without a team, so who would he practice with? ACCM uh, a bit? He's That's playing with Hera. Well, right now, he, the last the last 24 hours, obviously, he got some games in. But <laughs> he told me earlier, like, because I I, did, I haven't been uh, playing too much while I've been here. Mm -hmm. He told me, Viper, you never practice. Like, well, yeah. He said, That's why you're no longer the goat. <laughs> 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 Uh, maybe yeah. that's information we should have included in the GOAT documentary. It is what it is. Oh, $25 donation from Drip Store. Danke schön. Danke schön. Is it worth it? I think so. Maybe we'll take a close, uh, short look behind the scenes, the practice room, because obviously lots of people are already here, and we can see, well, that's ACM practicing. Jordan has his second set. 
And now this is hard running through here. Mm -hmm. Hera is clickety clicking as well. Lovely plants you got this in the middle there, by the way. Yeah, you're very welcome. That's Mr. Yo hiding behind the wall. And Leary sitting in front here as well. Hart setting himself up. He obviously had a very late arrival. Wait, who's that? That is Leary, right? Leary is at the bottom here. Oh, oh what he was Hippopotamus? What can we learn? Can we zoom in and see what he's playing? Oh, hippopotamus. Oh, oh here we oh, go. Oh, 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 oh he has a fire ship. Fire ship. Oh, castle eight already. Leaked. Strategy Look leaked. at how many farms. That's a lot for a hippopotamus, right? That is a lot. At least two dogs. That, what's the architecture here? What civ is this? This looks, I would say, Italians. Can we yeah. zoom in on the civ symbol? <laughs> this is becoming a little bit too... Uh, okay, okay. Let's go yeah. back to the schedule. <laughs> okay, they, I appreciate the effort, though. That was <laughs> Good try, good try. <laughs> okay, and then the third set, we have is Hera. Hera exactly. Uh, Seven-hour set. At least. Can't wait. For, best, uh, for three games. Three games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to talk about the smoke break thing? Or ah, is yeah, that yeah. Or well, obviously, Mr. Later. Yo and ACCM are smokers, yeah. or smokers, and we had some discussion in our pre-talk yesterday, like, okay, what are we going to do? Like, especially if ACCM goes for his two, three-hour no-resign games, so we're allowing a five-minute break after game three of the set, talking about the best of fives. So. Don't be too confused. If it if the score is two one, casters will talk about the two remaining maps a bit. Obviously, this is optional. Like yeah. if two players just want to continue, we will continue. But best of fives can obviously easily go three hours plus, and just to give them some rest and to ensure the quality of the game, we decided for that one. Predictions. Hera obviously favored here, based on recent results. Hard to argue against that. Mm -hmm. But again, like it's the first day of a LAN tournament. You never know how people are feeling. Are they accustomed to the setup? Mm -hmm. Are they feeling comfortable here? Um, also, we know Hera has been a little bit sick the last few days, so who knows if that has an impact. I still think Hera probably a convincing win. 3-1, three, three, maybe even 3-0. Okay, yeah. My prediction also was a 3-0 there. ACCM creates performance against Tedo in the last Admirals League, right? Oh, Getting yeah, true, true. 3-2 there. Yeah, and then he lost in the semifinal. Against whom? Uh, and still a winner later? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Why do you have to point that out? Let's, uh, why, why did I have to point yeah, that out? Well, next match, Leary against Doubt. That's a banger of a set, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. For some people that might get confused, okay, last set is a bit late. Obviously, we want to reach a bit of the American audience as well. So most of the time, we're planning to have the fourth set to be the main event set. Oh, thank and you. then have some garbage at the end. And in this case, it will be the Viper Heart. Oh, um, okay. But Leary Doubt, yes. what are we thinking? Oof, this is one where, like, a lot of people have the perception that Doubt has the upper hand on Leary, like that he has been beating him, which is true. He has beaten him a lot, but mm -hmm. still, Leary has still beaten Doubt more overall than Doubt has beaten Leary. Mm -hmm. But people have that perception in their mind, oh, Doubt is the counter to Leary and so forth, right? Um, obviously, we've had some events, like Red Bull Volo 3. Doubt became champion there. I'm not sure if he has told you. Uh, he tells me every day. <laughs> <laughs> we have a private chat, and every morning he wakes up just so. Yeah, need to remember? Acclivity? Yeah. Mayans? Mayans? Waltz? I think he's already mentioned it probably seven times since he here. Yeah, yeah, since yeah. here. Like, he just was lying here. Yeah. Red Bull Champion. Red Bull champion. <laughs> CA with Koreans. Mm. My life is so hard. Mm. What's happening here? Oh, oh, oh no, that's yeah. forbidden. <laughs> forbidden Sorry. on Twitch. I tried my best. I tried my best. Damn it! But that was actually very accurate because doubt, doubt belly was yeah, also. Yeah, yeah, it would be, would be like <laughs> more like. <laughs> okay. My life is so hard. Fair, fair. But yeah, I think this is a set that can go either way. Doubt could easily win. Honestly, doubt could win three zero, and people would be like, "Well, nice, he caught him off guard, right?" Leary, but it wouldn't Leary be washed. Shot. Yeah, but Leary could also beat Doubt three zero, and people would be like, "Oh, well, not not surprised." Doubt washed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's that easy if you are a Twitch chatter. Yeah. yeah. Um, Obviously, what we know is it's going to be a bang of a set because it yeah. is the clash of styles, right? Yeah. The the micro guy against the macro the guy. guy. Kind oh of. yeah, macro guy. And then we have the Viper against Hart. How long did you sleep today? Me? Uh, I think I got a solid six hours in. Okay. So that's not too bad. Could be late. I see ACM playing before me, so <laughs> <laughs> you're you're cheering for three zero there. Even then, it's like mm -hmm. too long. I'm hoping there's some power outage or something. The games become short. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no. Uh, 
I see it's scheduled for 10 p.m. local time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That should be fine as long as it's not like midnight. Should be fine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like Yo says, I'm not training, so <laughs> who knows what can happen there. Hart just arrived though late last night. Mm -hmm, I'm sure his mm -hmm. preparation hasn't been optimal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we'll see how long it takes for him to get accustomed to the setup as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, Hart is playing super well these days. I think people don't realize how good he's playing. People underestimate him. I think yep. it can easily go either way. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if I lost, but obviously I'm aiming to win. And mm -hmm. most people probably still view me as the favorite in that matchup. And if you feel like participating and giving all your input, if you want to tweet, hashtag NAC5. And then you can see behind the scenes footage there of the playing room. Tough to get a room with a higher... That's a great tweet. Skill higher than this. Oh, well, if that left. left. Ah, you That's see what I did there, right? Tweet. Hashtag NAC5. Practice. That's how you do it. And you can prepare all your memes there. We have some predictions. For example, Jordan also shared his thoughts there. He thinks Tedo oh. is going to win. He thinks he's losing against Mr. Yo. <laughs> I love that the only 3 0 is <laughs> against, against that. <laughs> Uh, you know, Jordan has like this mental. He did. He did this to me once, where he tweeted, like, went out there, like, really letting people know that I think Viper is gonna lose. Mm -hmm. That gave me motivation. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, uh, I feel like Jordan. Either he's the best teammate ever, or he just speaks the truth. It's probably the latter. But uh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to use that hashtag, we will get more of you in there. Welcome NAC day one. I'm thirteen thousand dollars away from break uh, from being break even. After this amount, your donations will be added to the prize pool. Obviously, we have crazy amounts. I think in total we got something like $62,000 in donations Sick. during the qualification stage. Obviously, we had to buy all the hoodies, all the yeah. thank you things. A lot of incentives. PayPal fees, uh, all the shippings. That's why something like 53, 54,000 are actually going into recovering all the costs there. It's just absolutely crazy how much support we get. And once I break even, I obviously put everything back into the price pool. We already had 55 thousand dollars there uh, qualifiers got five thousand as well so for example doubt could have the very smart move oh. to qualifiers and then winning the main ah. event are you allowed to get prize money from both qualifiers yeah yeah that's what you did nse4 why do you invite me <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still more comfortable to be invited i appreciate it <gasps> and people can check wikipedia Ooh, to get oh, all the information all the information also we have a, a plugin i think it's kind of over here twitch extension yeah that's what we call it a twitch extension Twitch exactly. extension, we call it. Oh, it's really going uh, that, that I'm a professional Twitch streamer now. Like in his Facebook days, he would have just said, like, yeah, nearly, but okay. But now we have to use the proper phrases. Facebook, I would restream right now on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also, live streaming on youtube.com forward slash nearly a way two. I think ah, so as well. There we yeah. go. Nice. You think so? Yeah, yeah. You don't actually know your it might have been like at nearly a way two. Or the C but you don't have the at in youtube.com forward slash at nearly. That's not how it works. Okay, I don't know. I'm new to this. Yeah. Uh, what I'm not new to is watching some beautiful Age of Empires games. And I wish you all the best with your set. You obviously have a long time to prepare. How will your next 10 hours look like? I'll probably be like, uh, what's the animal that just is lazy and hangs around all day? Doubt. Sloth. I'll be like, thanks, Dave. Uh, sloth, I'll okay. probably be a sloth on my chair for the most part and wait mm -hmm. and have you yell at me for not training. Mm -hmm. This should be updated here. Probably overlay guy behind the scenes is already like typing. Uh, so the number of 13k should be going down and then this those numbers Current should be like going up. 11,000 for the winner. Ooh, Ooh. baby. <laughs> Plus qualifier money. And how much does doubt get? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, two and a half k. Minus being late 10%. Oh, it's being late ten percent again plus two. share of a qualifier. qualifier. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the plan is to always start the first set pretty much on time. We will, for example, have in the playoffs some draft discussions, but we should start exactly the scheduled time for the first set. So I will hand it over to my best man. Uh, that's that's. Uh, I can't say oh. I can't save that. Um, <laughs> just this 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 dude. Okay. Just take it over, Dave. Beautiful guy. Beautiful guy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to NAC5. Well, you already got a welcome from Nilly, but welcome from me as well. Uh, super excited to get started on the first set of the day, which is Tato versus Andy. They went over all the sets there. Really, really hyped for it. Apparently, I'm Nilly's best man. Usually, you get like, uh, you know, a private meeting or something to announce that. But um, thank you, Nilly. It really, uh, that really means a lot to me, you know? It means, it means the world. I, I screwed up. Oh. Okay. Does she know? 
Yeah, she knows. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I screwed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, a da- that's a daily reminder. <laughs> oh. Do you schedule time for that as well? Uh, for screwing For the up. apology? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, yeah. We were going through um, Nilly's practice sessions yesterday, and he pulled up the Excel sheet, and I don't think uh, there's many professional athletes or gamers or any professions out there that do their scheduling quite as thoroughly and as still uh, don't Nilly succeed. <laughs> <laughs> he literally has. He had, to put this into context, he had uh, in October or November when you're practicing for tournaments, like four sets, best of five, scheduled through a day. And then there was a four-hour block labeled as his girlfriend's name. <laughs> <laughs> and I could offer her, like, okay, we, we can have interactions between mm-hmm. 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Because 10.30, uh, I have the next training session. Yeah, of course. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and something else I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, I have a weird, weird agreement with my girlfriend. And I'm not sure if she thought this one through. Mm-hmm. It is... If I propose and she says yes while she's standing on a pizza Hawaii, I'm in charge of everything wedding related. A, a what? A pizza, pizza, Hawaii. A Hawaii pizza. Yeah. Hawaii if, pizza. if she stands on it while I propose and she says yes, yeah, then I'm in charge for everything wedding related. So does she just like order a pizza every time you go to a destination? No, I, I don't know how I set it up yet. Oh, it, okay. it is it is okay. really weird. I will have to brain circle that. Uh, okay. Brand cycle okay. Circle. By the way, uh, we already have a draft ready for us as well. And as you can see, we are having a very different approach to previous NSCs and lots of previous tournaments mm-hmm. as well. In the first row, you see random bands. We do those before the set is starting. And it's 12 bands every single time. Then players get some time, do their map draft, and then they get some time and actually finish the pick selves. The goal of that is to have ba- basically more diversity when it comes to civilizations. And I think it worked. Like, you look at the qualifiers, there were some insane games with absolutely insane civ matchups, right? Yeah. So, like, we're, we're looking here, we have as the maps Outcrop, Acropolis, Arabia, Brood War, Hippopotamus. There's some civs here that are randomly banned that would be really, really good on those maps. Mm -hmm. We noticed Japanese, Persians immediately, Hippopotamus. Those are two very, very good civs. Yeah, and also something like we often see like Byzantines being thrown in as pick five, pick Mm -hmm. six because they don't really have bad matchups. But now you need to think harder. Like Poles, they can have some good ones, but they could be absolutely disastrous if we, for example, get Arabia against a very aggressive civilization. Like Japanese against Poles, Japanese opens men at arms. Poles are in big problems here. And that's the beauty of it. And that's what we are hoping for. Also, the map pool is relatively massive with 21 maps, lots of new ones. So if you feel like damn, I well, I could just see one set, but the next one looks the same. I would guarantee you, you it won't. Yeah, and it's, it, I mean, we're not going to have those repetitive sim matchups throughout the entire tournament, mm-hmm. which is, is just fantastic, right? Now, and I know by day five, no matter how good the sims are, if you're seeing the same sims over and over and over again, even the most experienced Age of Empires viewer is going to get a little bit tired of that. But don't be afraid, chat, because we will not have that here, hopefully, unless luck is really against us. Well, obviously, there are still best civilizations for some maps, mm-hmm. right? Berbers, we could see that for Acropolis, and people will draft like this uh, multiple times. But we can t- start talking about the maps. Obviously, game one is basically a neutral one that is the remaining maps after we went through a lot of bands and those home map picks. Interesting to see Andy with like more of the gimmicky maps with Brood War and Tippopolemus. Interesting. That seems pretty uh, par for the course. For Andy, he likes to be, I think he likes to be close to his enemy. Mm-hmm. So maps like Socotra, maps like Brood War, maps like Hippopotamus, he's really, really comfortable with that mm-hmm. um, because of his experience on Black Forest, because of his experience on closed maps. He just loves to wall in his villagers. He loves to be annoying. And then he loves to, if he can get away with it, pull off like a fast castle mm-hmm. and just hit them with a castle drop or monks or something like that. Unfortunately, it's a pretty bad matchup for him player-wise against Tato and welcome in 
first set of NAC5. Welcome everybody on Twitch, YouTube, wherever you're tuning in. We're going to have polls for Tato here on Outcrop and Saracens for freaking Andy. Not a bad Civ matchup for Andy. I wouldn't say so either, right? CA, we feel, could be a really good option. Pulls lacking that crucial last armor upgrade. So even if you try to spam Mass Cavalier, mm -hmm. you kind of want to go for skirmishes then, but also there, missing the last upgrade. So I think Andy, he can defend quite nicely. Remember one of the qualifier games where Andy had one of the most impressive games. And I said, like, this is the most game I've ever seen, or like the most impressive I've ever been from you. Andy on this map against Cito in the deciding qualifier. Where he was under massive pressure and still weathered the storm, boomed away, got to Messier and had a crazy economy behind it. Yeah, that was a crazy game. I thought for sure he had lost that. Like, I, I think at the end of the game, I was looking back and I was thinking, how on earth did Sato um, not win this game? But Andy is an incredible player. Also, another thing I think Saracens are really good at is if the Poles try and go defensively and try and wall up, if Andy goes for early pressure with crossbows or archers or something like that, the Saracens can bust through those walls extremely quickly. And I think if you're playing as poles here, you're going to have a little bit of forward aggression that you're going to need to apply just to keep that pressure away from your base. Also, another thing that's not so great for poles here, all of the stone on this map is off on those uh, desert reg regions along the side there. There's no stone on that main plateau. So if you're thinking about maybe getting the synergy of collecting stone and getting gold along with that, and then setting up towers and defense, it's going to be really, really difficult. Yeah, and I, I love this map, right? It, it's so diverse also. Like, can we really wall here is the big question. Because Saracens, they break your walls so, so quickly. Mm -hmm. Poles, they don't actually mind, like, just booming it out a bit. So I wouldn't be surprised if Tato maybe even opens an archer range. Some people don't see too often for Poles, just to be more... In the safe on the safe side against the Sheriff's. Yeah, you need you need some sort of aggression in order to give yourself defense, basically. Like you can't just sit back, especially uh, against the Saracens. But we're seeing a bit of an early uptime here from Tato. He's going up 19 population, and Andy is doing the same thing. I just wonder what sort of opening it's going to be for each of those. Is it going to be a stable here for Tato? I don't see a mining camp or anything, so maybe an opening stable is the play. And then Saracens, we wouldn't be surprised at all to see that archer range. And now we see the, the shift diversity there, right? We had those in the qualifications. Mm -hmm. We obviously didn't have the Monaspa. Mm -hmm. In there, so um, the you mean the Georgians? Georgians the Georgians, <laughs> AKA of the Manaspa. The Manaspa, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the first qualifier, but it was easily picked in the second qualifier as well as Sicilians. So all those random bands kind of working out as well. And yeah, still neither player on gold, so it's like a likely double scout opening. What's our cow count here? Because there are neutral cows along the side, and you can see that people are are gathering them. Thank you, Vodka, our observer once again for NAC5. He did such a good job last time. And that was, what, six cows mm -hmm. versus three? Yeah, the thousand food there with some sheep Four. mixed in. Gets in another one. And now we see the stable, so pretty safe spot here. And it feels like two goals relatively close by as well. Mm -hmm. We're already walling. This should be uh, quite a reasonable setup for both players. And I would be surprised if we see major amount of villagers dying. I think Tato's finding a few more cows on the other side. He can always get farms up Ooh. around the full work and drop off food, but there's four cows over there. And they're on the move, Nilly, and they're being found now by Andy. So Andy, super active with that scout. Really great job. But not active in the sense that he's scouting Tato. Look at his vision again. He didn't scout Tato at all. Oh. This is the first Spearman scouting, right? He was just trying to find the sheep, as you can see at the sides. In the white areas, we get all those cows now trying to take the scouted fight here. This feels like Andy's losing this. Yeah, and Andy has to retreat there. And look at who owns those cows. Andy's got two over there on the north side, but a bunch of those are coming back to Tato's base. Going to help him out a ton. However, Andy is here with that Spearman that we mentioned before, and he's here with the scout. And bye-bye, scout from Tato. And those cows are going to switch sides until Tato comes over again. It's just the war of the cows at the moment. <laughs> and, well, the scout took out the other scout. So 1-1 one, one KD. We can see a resource collected. Slightly better for Tato. It seems like he already has some farms set up for himself. Not really walling that much. Yeah, both players just kind yeah, of keeping that, yeah. their position in that center area, fighting over that livestock like we were talking about. And Andy coming home with three. 
So that's going to help him a ton. And now Andy is, I think, adding that market at the back, which is to be expected with the Saracens. Maybe he can sell his stone. He doesn't really have a position right now where he can think about Castle Age, even with Saracens. So he's going to have to keep the pressure coming out. Do you think we see any archer range production in Feudal Age here, or are both players just focused on getting to the next stage? Teddo obviously would love to avoid the archer range, right? Mm -hmm. He just wants to play the cavalry, he wants to play the boom, while well, we see him losing one spearman there. And he's building the market, as we can see in the minimap. I think at least that's the typical spot for a market. He just needs to wait for the ibex to clear the construction site there. And now we see Andy going on to the uh, onto gold. I think he ideally wants to skip archers though. I think he directly Mo wants to go for CA actually. Oh, CA. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. And uh, maybe he can get that going if he can get access to gold on the outside early, mm -hmm. right? Like that's the key. You have to have more than just the four tiles on that upraised portion of this map. And especially if he wants to go into like two or three range CA, you can always mix in those camels too. And then the poles are gonna have a ton of problems fighting against camels. Poles are basically, you're thinking like knights, you're thinking cavalier. And if it's CA camel, what are oh, you that's gonna open. make? I think that's open. Is the it? Right I think it's the top, ooh, ooh. but only two it's, scouts. It's fine, Nilly, you know how it works. If if Andy thinks it's wall, Tato's gonna think it's wall, then he's never gonna go up. See, he just leaves. That's how it works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if, you know, even if it's open, if your opponent thinks it's closed, then it's closed. So if I think I'm funny, am I funny? That's not, no, that's a completely different theory. I don't understand. It, well, you are German, so. Ah. Yeah. <clears throat> So, full work up there in Tato's base. Farms going around that, and Tato's food eco looking really, really solid. But Andy, look at his resources. And he only sold 100 stone, which is really, really smart. I think the tendency, once you get that market, is to sell 200 of that. But there's no stone on that main area. You have to keep 100 if you want to go out and secure a gold with a TC. Yeah, and it feels like a good spot, right? The second gold spot there next to the wood line also has some deer next to it. This looks like a dream TC spot. I think there feels very good to protect it. And then you have 3,200 gold to work with. Mm -hmm. You can roughly afford like 40 CA with some upgrades before you need to move out. Mm -hmm. When did CA become the player? Uh, once pings got better, right? And people got better at microing, plus people gained a better understanding of how regrouping works, mm -hmm. right? You as a CA player, uh, as a custom scenario player, can maybe explain us quickly, like, how does regrouping of big flocks of units work? So if you click within 10 tiles, I, th I believe it's still 10 tiles. Yep, it yeah, used yeah. to be 10 tiles. Um, your units will be in a horizontal line. Um, and let's say you have 10 units, it will be two lines of five. But if you click beyond that, then they'll go vertical. And that means that there's a lot more area for units chasing after, like knights, to catch up. But if you're playing CA, you always want to click within 10, t 10 tiles so that there's no stray units the knights can overwhelm and, mm -hmm. and kill. And that's something that we didn't actively use like two, three years ago, I would think. Like, we kind of knew it, but this massive clicking, okay, I only do like four or five tiles, makes it so much easier to micro with CA. So you're, t you're saying regrouping is better now than it? No, but <laughs> the pl players had a better understanding of it. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Uh, Nilly thinks regrouping is better than it's ever been before. <clears throat> <clears throat> Paid by Microsoft. Oh, look at that. He didn't care about the other TCs, but oh, okay. I will allow that one next to the gold and stone. Camels already being produced as well. And something we didn't really mention, right? The Saracen bonus there. More HP on the camels, and what I feel, Offside. way too much. 25% more HP on those camels, 145 once you get bloodlines. Do you go with Saracens? Do you mine the stone first, or do you mine the gold first? Ooh, someone knows the market prices. Game theory would say mine the stone first, mm -hmm. because if you sell, you actually get more than 100 gold back. Mm -hmm. And you could potentially uh, you could potentially afford another TC, too, if you want to... Uh if you want to secure more of the map, if you're not going into that full Cav Archer production. Right now, it's just a couple camels and even a knight being mixed in from Andy. And that knight is going to give a little bit more oomph against the walls. It's uh, a little bit better at raiding the villagers. So it's a good addition. Saracens can't go knights long term. But if you're just thinking about a little bit of army to buy yourself some time, it could be really, really solid. Tato gets up to Castle Age, gets the wood upgrade, gets that farm upgrade, which is going to be so valuable for him. And he adds three town centers or two additional town centers up on that plateau. He's not thinking about expanding down to the lower areas yet. 
and you mentioned earlier, right? We need to get stone. Like, Tedo is not really getting to one of the advantages mm -hmm. in the sense that he wants to mine stone, also get gold with that. That's not an option for him. So, right now, he's only playing one of his ego advantages. Interesting choice, but obviously, he's more compact. Now, tries to dive here. And he gets in, and Andy can't save that villager. So Tato is into the eco. Andy goes for a nice quick gate, though. He's trying to get that palisade wall, but it feels like the TC should be up in time. Will it be up in time to save two villagers, though? One already dead, another one there. The light cab upgrade came in. Oh, boy, that's a lot more damage than Andy was counting on. Oh, big losses here. How much is that now? Minus four already. Tato has to be extremely happy with the payoff here. Yeah, that's for four light cav or four scouts that were already weak. That is incredible value. Great quick walls there from Andy on full display. Andy is one of the best quick wallers, I think, in our scene currently, especially with singular villagers. Yeah, yeah. He, he is unbelievable. Open wall, quick wall, my number one in the world. I think so. Yeah. Like, if you have a villager in an open field versus two scouts, Andy's probably going to save that. Yeah. <laughs> and against Stout, you know, okay, my scout now has minus 20 HP, but yeah. I killed the vill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He just takes it. <laughs> well, Dad's got bigger things to worry about, you know? Yeah. Monastery there from Andy. Also worth pointing out, I don't know if we mentioned it before, this is Andy's first lane game ever. So, For on a big stage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so true. The question is, like, how much will pressure will he feel, right? He said, like, okay, for example, the Pulse Watch idea. It is tricky for him, right? And we think Tato should have one of the advantages there. But so far, Andy, not looking shaky at all. No, Andy's played really, really well so far. I mean, you look at that Eco KD 5 to 0, but that was just one little mistake. That doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't look like something that has to do with nerves or anything like that. Tato just took advantage, and Andy wasn't expecting it. Resource collected. Already oh, nice advantage there for Tato. Remember that we don't see the market use in there, so this is actual collected resources and ooh gets a nice conversion back yeah he pulled all those units back it looked like he drag selected those units and the camel was not running away at full speed also didn't notice it too quickly so camel gets converted however tato heading out here with the villagers to that tc and the camel is going to intercept so unless there's a monk around there from tato uh andy is now aware that tato is trying to stretch out and he's got a second camel there so <laughs> he's got a third and he's got a knight. <laughs> so uh, Tatso, maybe you want to head on home, buddy, or send some monks over because these villagers, this isn't going to be good for their health. Eco Kadib going to be even out here, right? TC denied, and Tato will float quite a lot of resources. He already has 21 on food, so he is about to have enough food income to properly saturate those four town centers. But that's not going to happen. He even bought another 100 stone. I wouldn't be surprised if he now sends villagers out to the other side. Yeah, he's got the Spearman now, he's got the Camel, he's got the light cap, so he's going to push it back and get that Town Center up. And if we look at the Villager count right now, we got 64 for Tato, 62 for Andy. It's actually quite even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite impressive, right? Andy added uh, his second Town Center a bit earlier, was to Castle H a bit earlier as well. Now trying to find some relics, as we all know, two at the bottom area of the sand, two at the left, and one kind of in the center. Actually one backed out a bit there, a bit at the top. Slight advantage there for Andy with that one. But not even sure if he will actually scout this, because that's not a typical scout spawn. Mm -hmm. uh, relic spawn. Yeah, I mean, it'll take a long time uh, to find that relic. He, he might just assume that Tato had already collected it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, not unlikely. Right now you can see the relic count, the relic gold above it. So 50 gold for Andy, one relic in the monastery. Those are the numbers. W-E-L-M is the worker efficiency in the last minute. So the white number basically says how many villagers are working, collecting resources right now. And the other thing is how, much, how many resources are we collecting the last hour? And you see both players extremely close there. Yep. Tato is a little bit ahead on res collected. And that's probably just a, a benefit of the polls, right? Mm -hmm. Not 100% sure about that farm right there on the other side of the gold, but oh, um, oh, shame. might add a full work there. I know that the GL players are super, you know, heavily invested in the full work placement. Mm -hmm. But in it's a map like this... And that's the problem with building both TCs inside, right? Mm -hmm. He is taking away so much space, and that's why he couldn't add more full works there. Monks trying to get conversions. Tato using the TC effectively, though, and they are unable to get any villagers. Tato is still ahead on villager count right now. Still pretty far ahead, over 2k ahead on total res collected, as he, Andy does manage to snipe one of those. But uh, the question now becomes, because we're transferring towards the late game, what are the compositions here? Is Tato playing 
uh, Arbalest, or is he going to go into Cavalier Spam, or is it Oba? He's adding barracks right now. This will actually be a Castle Age push, and Andy, looking at his resources, he's thinking about him. Maybe Tedo can get a timing. He's collecting stone as well. Could be an aggressive castle because we don't see a Siege Workshop yet, but since the timing won't be that long, I think he needs to start thinking about pulling villagers already. Yeah, and I like I like the fact as Tato distracts Andy a little bit more, and that's all that is basically is a distraction. He finds another hole at the back, but Andy's gonna deal with that perfectly Eight fine. Building. <laughs> Built that house. <laughs> oh, I thought there was a hole in the wood line there for a second. They looked like they were pathing around. Oh, a trap and a camel. Maybe you can just stop that camel in the gap there and. Well, Tato is going to get cleared up back here. It is definitely a distraction, and it's given Tato some time to get some map control. And he's going to go for a castle right next to that town center. The villagers are kind of on the wrong side of that foundation, so they might be stalled out a little bit. And Tato is going to go for a castle here, too. And he needs to get his army back over to this side. Uh-oh. That's going to be tight, though, right? It's only four villagers. Yeah, Tato is cancelling that one. Thinks of a better spot, maybe. Wouldn't be surprised if now Tato is going and cancel all his queues. Maybe we'll take a quick look into Tato's POV. Oh, no, that's the civilization. Tato's POV here. And now we can see. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to cancel some upgrade. Oh, look at that. Devotion coming in. Mm -hmm. And he's making more upgrades. So there's okay. fletching on the way. He's housed right now. But uh, you saw that perfect farm placement around the full works. Very, very satisfying. And now he's focusing all of his effort on pushing the farm eco from Andy. Now, he's not going to take out the golds. He's not going to take out the stones on the side. But the farming took so long for Andy to get set up. So if Tato manages to wipe clear this area up top, Andy is going to have to spend a lot of time replacing that. Mm -hmm. And Andy is saying, well, I don't need farms if I have a market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously building the counter castle now as well. Likely for him to win the trap war there quite easily. And the big question mark, is Tato's answer going to be against potential Mamelukes in the field? Great backup gate there from Andy. Tato kills oh, yeah. the, the Palisade gate and Andy is there. He sold all of his food, a lot of his resources to buy the stone. He's going up to the Imperial Age far faster than Tato. And he's going to have Trebs on the field. So this Castle Age push that Tato was attempting to do is completely neutralized now by some good transitions there from Andy and that gate behind. Plus Mamluks, which if Tato doesn't go into Arbalis, Mamluks are actually crazy really good against poles. Like, really, really good. Yeah, not really having the answer there. Obviously, we don't get Harbadiers. Cavaliers are horrible as well. Those monks, let's see. Yeah, it just feels like Tedo is lacking some mobility. Oh, that's a wild castle. And that's something that I've seen from Tedo a lot over the last month. He knows that he's going to lose that castle. Mm -hmm. That's solely to buy himself time. Yep, and to keep the army position back here so that it's not harassing his economy and he can make a tech switch into something. And you can see that Bodkin Arrow is on the way, so he might be thinking about making a tech switch into range units. Another castle here from Andy, another counter castle. Can't stall out the villagers any longer with the monks after that change a few months ago. He does have more villagers building his castle, though. It should go up, even though Tato's will be first. And Tato is still trying to buy himself time. Andy is trying to keep his economy safe, and Andy is still heavily using that market. Yeah, Andy only six switches in gold right now, right? So he has to use the market. Ram attack is coming, that castle is going to fall, but the other one of Andy in quite some danger. University for Tato, and this is the Arbalest switch that we expected. Mm -hmm. And Andy, now we have to ask, once Tato gets into Arbalest and he still has some pikemen in front, you know, he's still distracting big time, like you said, with those castles, buying himself some time. What is the tech switch that Andy needs to make in the face of Arbalest? Technically, it would be Hussars. Mm -hmm. Technically, elite skirmishers could help as well. If it was MBL, I would think something like Onagers could come to mind. Yep. Yeah, with, I mean, maybe even counterweights, who knows, let's get, cra <laughs> let's get crazy here, right? And the castle goes down on the front side there from Tato. Unfortunately, a few of his petards actually got sniped by Andy's castle there, and now there's two treads sitting uh, pretty outside of the range of that, so the villagers will need to retreat. But if you notice, if you've only been watching the minimap here, none of these blue dots have been anywhere near Tato's economy while those castles uh, were going up. So Tato successfully bought himself time to get to Imperial Age. He's got Bracer, he's got Crossbow, he's got Ballistics, and he's got the ranges set up on the front. Mm -hmm. But it was costly, right? He lost mm -hmm. the castle, he invested a lot of villagers, walking there, building it as well. And now if we think further ahead, Typically, Poles, a civilization that wants to raid. But now with the triple castle setup, that's not likely going to happen. So 
we will actually go into a weird phase where this is a very one-dimensional push from Tedo through the center because that's the only way how he can, can play do. right now. Yeah. Is Andy... Can he think about just going Mamluks? They're good if they get close enough to the Herbalist. Mm -hmm. It's just, if, if you're engaging in a, a range war, or he's Tata's got a castle near his army, then they become pretty weak. Hmm. I think we need to have a tech switch. Mm -hmm. he, he is not producing more, obviously. But look at that, 40 sticks on food and still absolutely at the limit. That's quite interesting. And on a scale of 9 to 156, how much do you think Tedo likes villagers? Uh, I'd say 155. Okay. Yeah. Feels reasonable. Yeah. It's not bad. I mean, keep making, you know, it's the Winchester theory. Just keep making villagers until you're pop capped, and then you can delete them later. It's an expendable resource, right? But he doesn't delete them later and plays with 15 army and loses <laughs> the game. <laughs> I mean, there is that, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. He's still 182 out of 200 as he pushes forward with the Arbalist. Andy even getting the second gold mining upgrade, so he's going to be really, really heavily on gold, and with that market, he can kind of balance his eco a little bit. It's spreading out some of the farms on the outer area, which is great because it feels like Tato is going to target that center main base area here as he comes into the woodline, and we might see our first really, really big raid of the game. Oh yeah, those Andy notices quite early, though. Yeah, it's quite some nice kills here, and already attacking into Hussars, so Tato is maybe expecting those skirmishers, and those are some nice Knight, Bombard Cannon, tries to get some kills, but dies. Yeah, good micro there from Tato. I love the, the couple knight addition over here from Andy. He knew he was on that stone, comes over there with just a couple knights. He's killing the villagers, distracting Tato, and the Mamluks are working away on the Arbalest here, but those don't really have many upgrades whatsoever. So he's going to buy himself some time, but he doesn't really have an army to help himself push his back, and I think that's the... That's kind of the theme right now for Andy, is that there's no army on the field. Yes, traps, yes, two traps that are doing the work. <laughs> now he sends villagers, what's happening? Trev's taking out the Arbalist. Okay, they get another few shots there. Winged Hussar is in from Tato, and Tato is about to start the spam. Andy's still making a couple Mamluks, but look at the queue, Nilly. There's one Mamluk and four villagers in the queue. Oh, boy. Well, where are all his resources going? We don't really know. Andy's work efficiency just so far down. He's trying to make something wild happen at the left-hand side. Tries to spread himself thin, which is quite surprising to me. I think falling back and trying to get into proper army composition could have been a higher priority. Yeah, I think Saracens are just a, a tough civilization at this stage of the game, right? You have so many options that you almost get paralyzed. Mm -hmm. You're like, I could go Elite Skirm, I could go Arbalist, I could go Hussar, I could even go Mamluk maybe, I could go Siege. And Andy, he just needs to make a decision. He's getting all of the techs, but he's not making any of them army. And now he's queuing up some Mamluks, as that really isn't the greatest raid from Tato ever between two castles. Uh, I think heavy CA is something that I thought would have been very natural for Saracens here, while we see that castle likely to go up yep. still. Indeed it will. And Trebs keep pushing away the arm. <laughs> uh, and now we see Tato going for the unique tech here. Splash damage for his Hussars. So if he takes massive engages with his Hussars here, it should be really nice for him. Yeah, that university was under attack too, the one getting siege engineers, but it looks like Tato gets that in time and he's gonna try and get masonry here. No masonry, I believe, from Andy, so Andy's castle goes down and that's quite the push on the other side as uh, Elite Mamluk is coming in, Nilly. Let's okay, go. okay. 70 on food. That's crazy. He could add some hustles there as well if he had enough gold. Oh, great quick walls. Oh, nice. my God. Those were filthy. So clean. Filthy and clean at the same time from, <laughs> <laughs> from Andy. Only in Age of Empires can you get that. And uh, looks like Tato's got some idle time there. Tato, one thing we haven't really talked about is, is access to golden stones, and it's running out for him. Yeah. It's really running. Oh, out no for protection him. at all. Mm -hmm. He lost the castle, and that's those like, are elite Mamluks too. Those, that's a half screen away from two traps. No. Oh, but they're getting sniped. Nice. Ah, oh, nice job there from Tato to come on over. The Mamluks will do quite well against Winged Hussar, but unfortunately, it's like two versus uh, eight there. So the Trebs will get sniped down, and that's good attention to detail from Tato. However, oh. Mamluks, they are such a good unit if you can get close to your opponent, if you can mass them up. And we just see a pile of bodies over on the other side.
Oh boy, what a beautiful game we are starting this NAC off. I absolutely love it. Tato is pop limit, and now we see Siege Engineers even for Andy. He will have to give up the left-hand side, but knows, okay, I can raid more at the left and still stable at the right. Yeah, and Tato's got that full left side access now. Mm -hmm. So Andy finally has some army on the field. He's going into light cap. Siege Engineers, you mentioned. Blast Furnace will make those Mamluks even better. That Bomber Cannon should die, but loses a few Mamluks in the process. And if both players have full access to a side, we might even see all the techs come in here for Andy. Like, we could see counterweight Onager, potentially. I would be excited. Abeles now splitting, trying to not take more big shots against the bomb, but Cannon. See him, Mamluks are coming in. The front row is dying, but number simply not there. Yep, and the Arbalists are spread out, so you can't get the splash damage on them. Andy unable to really do anything on that side. He just simply didn't have enough Mamluks. I think his top number of Mamluks at any given point was like 12, which is not going to be enough to fight up against the Arbalist. And now Tato really utilizing the winged Hussar. He's in the back. The Trebs are just melting TCs, and he's got the Arbalist to protect them. And he took too long to get into his numbers. He's finally got some light cab in the queue, but it's just simply not enough. And wasn't Andy at pop 180 just a minute ago? Now he's starting to be mm -hmm. above 130. More villages are dying. Tato is pushing in to the center and this is great adjustment not playing the poles he's playing the opponent yep and tato is completely secure now resources not under threat he's killing all the villagers on the farms there he's even got some units over on the stone on the other side and uh andy doesn't have a solution it doesn't look like it right to has two bomber cannons now goes for some more light cap doesn't even have the hazard upgrade tries to get to some more mamelukes but tato just looks relentless you think it should have been heavy CA? I think so. Okay. I, it just feels like a very natural unit, but Tato is taking the 1 0 lead here with Poles. Quite funny how we talked a lot about Knights and Cavaliers and didn't he see, see a single one. Well, that's why we were talking about them, because the Civ matchup is not good for them, mm -hmm. right? Like, it, that Saracens is one of those Civs that is kind of neutralizing the best thing that Poles can do. And Tato played around that really, really well, to be fair. And uh, I especially love. The castle he made forward, and then the second castle he made forward, and you mentioned it at the time, like, that's just buying yourself time. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, capitalizing on your 20 villager advantage or whatever you had, and let, allowing yourself to get up to him, get those five archer ranges down, get the Arbalest tech in, and then you're laughing. Mm -hmm. Really, really solid job from Tato. Andy, I mean, he spent too much time in the university and blacksmith researching text and not enough time making units yeah it, it felt like it also the light calf switch maybe a bit late maybe lead mameluk the time was already done seeing so many arbalest against him and we see tato wins the neutral map there and now we have two home maps for him to choose from brood war or hippopotamus more of the gimmicky ones could be some lovely games there tato with confidence, just picks very meta maps there with the Raven Acropolis. I'm really excited for Andy's home maps. I always, oh yeah, oh they, yeah. I, I love those closed maps, right? The ones that where the fight can always kind of fit on one screen mm -hmm. most of the time, and that's where Andy thrives. That's where we get to see the insane quick walls or the monk plays or anything like that, and it really just kind of mixes up the monotony that of sometimes uh, Age of Empires for like Arabia back and forth, right? Watching villagers punch each other in Dark Age is very exciting to me. <laughs> and well, obviously we moved the town centers a bit further away, so something like Dark Age rushes, something we won't see that likely compared to previous NACs or NAC4. And if we start thinking about civilizations, both very low priority there on outcrop, Brood War, I'm, I'm really excited to see what they have in store. I wouldn't be super surprised if something like humans could be something for Brood War. Mm -hmm. Tato takes a quick break. Love the mustache. Mustache, oh right? God. Like, not many people. There's not many people that can pull off a mustache successfully. I, I, I know very few of them. And Tato, uh, especially in the Age of Empires community, uh, but Tato is definitely one of them, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lovely. Yeah, yeah. Getting lots of positive comments. Also, his tattoo is something like, I'm not the biggest tattoo fan, honestly. But look at that one. I, it's it's just classy, you know? Uh, if you if a tattoo could be classy, that one's kind of... Yeah, yeah. It's a little classy. Yeah. Black Forest type. Yeah. If you look really closely on that tattoo, you can see Andy quickwalling in a villager. <laughs> 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 uh. 
Yeah, obviously they are taking a bit of time there, thinking about, okay, what civilization do I want to pick next? And Brood War Hippopotamus, what would you advise Andy to go for now? Brood War Hippopotamus. Um, ooh. I think like Japanese mm. for Hippopotamus, most likely, because you're not using it Arabia or Acropolis. You're just yep, you're yep, not yep. using it there. Brood War, you probably want to go for something like Malians, maybe. Um, I think Japanese. Yeah. And then Persians, maybe for uh, for Tato on Hippopotamus? Is Cumans Acropolis, by the way? Or is it Berbers? Mm, I think it should be Cumans. Or maybe is it Arabia against Incas? I don't think that will be too easy for no, you, though. No, no, no. Not on Ninevilles. I think the Cumans are a little bit worse on Ninevilles, are they not? I don't think so. Why would they be? I think your opponent's just... I mean... It's just up a little to Castle Age a little bit faster. Uh, I wouldn't know why. Okay. Honestly. Okay. I, I think there there would be very similar. And now we are going into Brood War, something we have never seen before. This kind of maps in Age of Empires. The special thing here is that we have four different potential spawning locations. The one where we have freaking Andy, the one where we have Tato, and two neutral ones. But you could have close spawns. You could have cross spawns or the close spawn with the wood line. We always have the water here and Brood War relating to Brood War from StarCraft with the island spot here. We have to land to go on to more gold and stone because you're not spawning with any stone. There are more resources. Oh, I love this from Andy. That He's immediate. Awesome. Yeah, and we saw players punish for this. Like, they didn't know the map in the qualifier, right? And they would assume they knew where their opponent was. But you can, you can spawn in, like, across the map from each other. You can spawn on the same side of the map. You can spawn over there where Andy's searching. Basically, any of the corners your opponent could be in, mm -hmm. and you ha you have to identify where they are early so that you can start formulating a plan. Mm -hmm. And I think this one will be one of the most tricky maps, mm -hmm. and the one where we will see potentially even shift this o shifts of the meta during the tournament. Yep because it, it just plays out so differently to all the other maps and people really have to figure stuff out. Malians, obviously a great civilization there when it comes to the... Oops, uh, I didn't want to click that. I wanted to click this. Yeah, we get us together. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, smooth. Malians, obviously strong in their economy. Everything is cheaper when it comes to wood. You also generate more gold. That's quite lovely. And then, well, unit choices. You can go for strong camels there with more attack on them. Your town centers give you some more protection. And on the other side, Tato, he is basing a bit more around his unit choices. Mm -hmm. And Tato playing the Bohemians, which are really, really strong if you have access to gold. You can go into the hand cannons and Castle Age. Obviously, late game, if you get there, Hufnitsa is just devastating um, in mass. And I think Bohemians... You know, they just they have a more powerful late game than the Malians do. But if we're looking at <laughs> Andy is, you know, already pre pre walling in his villager to do something. We don't know. Maybe he doesn't have loom yet. Um, if you're looking at Castle Age, Malian should have a little bit of a tech tree advantage. Mm -hmm. However, once you get to the late game, Bohemians, especially holding a position, are gonna be so powerful. Yeah, yeah, and short distance should be better for Bohemians compared to the cross distance. Yep. Something beautiful that Tato did that I've never seen before in the qualifiers, if we go into his fog of war, he actually used the sheep to confirm that Andy was not spawning at the right side. Yeah, yeah. so both of them have experience on this map. I, I'm sure they practice a ton, and they've watched the qualifiers as well. And, and played them. Yep, mm -hmm. well, played them, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's one great thing about having uh, the two qualifiers as we see Tato bring a villager forward and Andy is just kind of out of there. But Andy successfully protecting that villager. And I, I think the reason he was coming across was definitely to go for the dock. The reason he quick-walled the vill was maybe to make Tato think that he was hunting the ostrich. You could see he was, he was like shooting it. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe that both of them realized that that simply wasn't the case. <laughs> <laughs> like Tato was like, all right, dude, I don't believe you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, only one villager from the right-hand side, right? Why would you ever go for the ostrich there? Mm -hmm. Might have been a misclick uh, to begin with. And Andy, well, docking there will put on some pressure. And if Tato loses the water, there would be no access to stone, very limited amount of gold potential for him as well. So Tato, he will have to invest into fire galleys. And as we can see, he doubles down second dock. 
Yeah, second dock right there. That's a pretty good position for a dock. Obviously, a little bit uh, bad if you look at the fish locations. He does still have one deep fish that's pretty protected at the back as Tato goes for a little gate on the scout from Andy, and Andy is going to lose that guy. And Tato also has a spearman coming over. And that's a that's a feudal scout, so that villager needs to be careful, especially once the spearman quick is involved. Wall, quick wall time. Can quick he make some that? You, you can't against two units. You simply cannot. It is not possible to save this villager. We're setting it up here, Nilly. It is simply not possible to save the villager. Andy is trying his best, but we all know, everyone at home knows that it is uh, just physically impossible. See? And, yeah, there it is. That's why we it's have dead. you as the expert analysis. Mm -hmm. It was impossible. Mm -hmm. Nice balls there from, t from Andy. He's going to protect his base, and his fish are secure. But Tato... I mean, already has the fires coming out, and is Andy even going to produce more fires, or is he just going to keep the flag there and pretend like he's producing? Look at the bank. Kind of feels weird that he goes for one fire galley then, because fire galley, I don't think will get the kill against the fishing ships, but maybe a demo could have taken out one or two. I think demo more guaranteed damage, and now he queues one up. Mm -hmm. So he is going to lose that dock. There's no way to repair it, and Tato should have superior production, but at least he'll keep him committing onto the fire galleys for the time being, because there could be anything in that dock. You don't know. And now you've given Tato an excuse to make a demo, um, which he never really needs, and Andy is going to sneak his way to another dock forward. That's interesting. Demo for Tato actually gets lots of damage. Got damage against the dock, and it got damage against the fire galley. And it's a decent-ish demo for Andy, but Tato still doesn't, still doesn't know about the other dock over there. Yeah, but like... He obviously will scout there pretty soon. The dock will die relatively soon as well. Tato goes for some repair, which is quite surprising. Maybe something we can show for everyone who watched the qualifiers. We have some changes on this map. Look at the wood line in between the two players. Now, if you chop through some of the trees, you can actually access the base of the opponent. So we get less of the stalemate games, and this area might actually be oh, quite important. Imagine, imagine the pathing through that wood line there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> you cut with onagers, you go and raid with some knights, and then you look back there 30 minutes later and they're still... <laughs> 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 they're still trying to feed their way through. Uh, uh. Oh my god, Andy actually came forward with the villager and he's repairing that dock? Oh boy, so he's gonna keep that alive for the time being? But Archer is around already. Should easily be sent there, although Tato is not really going for it. Villager will repair the dock a bit more. Beautiful. I don't, I don't know if Tato noticed that Villager repairing that immediately, and I'm still not sure if he's noticed the other dock. He hasn't noticed the other dock. Can we double-click the damage on those fire galleys? I think there's a new future that, a feature that we want to... Look at that, 690 damage already. Mm -hmm. This one, so quite some repair in there. Look at that, I could have killed... 1700. Oh, we're about to kill the dock by now. If yeah, it wasn't for demo the coming out, and Tato will know now. Tato knows there's another dock there somewhere. One fire galley goes down, Andy with some good positioning, so that dock is soaking most of the damage that those fires are trying to apply to his own fire galley. And the archer is here now as Tato runs away from the demo, and that villager is not going to survive very much longer. Your demo can kind of protect the vill against the archers, but only when they're near the shoreline. And Andy is just going in. He's just going in. He's outrunning the fire. The zebra trying to lame the demo, but he's going to get there to the fishing ships, and he's going to get exactly one. So at least you get some value. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not unreasonable there after all the distraction already. And he will stay annoying, but look at that. Only two fire girls in the queue right now. Five to zero military. When does the third villager come forward? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. They always expect the first. Sometimes they expect the second, but they never <laughs> expect the third. Uh, Dave, maybe there's a reason why you... Uh, no. Okay. Um, four farms only. That doesn't... I just wanted to say, that doesn't look like a great food economy, but somehow he clicks up regardless. Uses the market quite a bit. And Castle Age is on the way. So Tato should be joining him shortly. We still have that dock alive. Not well, but it is definitely alive. And uh, Demolition Raft is coming out, so I don't think those fires can take that out in time, even with the help of the scout there, which goes down. And the Clumped archer is still trying to well, that get could some be damage. Good demo. That could be good demo. Could be. Zoom in time. Which, which part of the dock does it come out of? I think it comes out of that front tile, but it might come out of the side. Ooh. Nice. That's not bad at all. 
Still didn't kill a fire, so Tato can pull those back, repair those, and if he keeps pressuring with these fires here, Andy will no longer have a presence on this area, and uh, Tato did manage to protect his one fishing ship, and by extension, you protect your wall off, right? But Andy, happily fishing at home, 600 extra collected resources. Looking really, really solid for him there. That's why we have the advantage in Castle Age. He still has somewhat of the map control, right? I, I think this is a pretty even game. I love it. And Andy, is he committing to anything? Can we t maybe take a look at home? Are there stables? Or is it just the Andy special and the first building in Castle Barracks. Age is going to be a monastery? monastery. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. M does have quite a bit of wood in the bank, does have quite a bit of gold. He hasn't sold his stone either. Okay, Dave, Dave, let's let's be smart here. Let's go into the POV of Andy. And, oh, what? Is he that? That's Tato. Oh, that's Tato. Ah. <laughs> He's playing orange. <laughs> We've got grass. <laughs> I wanted to be smart and say the first click is the monastery, but, yeah, that didn't happen. Yeah, it was the stable. Mm. Let's be smart here. Mm. I tried. I felt very intelligent throughout that whole process. <laughs> Stable is going up from Andy, and War Galley research is coming in, so he's still just c kind of buying himself some time by forcing Tato to invest into the Navy, and Tato doesn't really have much land army at all. He's just got those three archers still. Remember, if you want to get out to the stone, you have to transport to the center, or you have to go for a neutral stone way across the map. Mm -hmm. So Tato will need control over this uh, little river system or whatever we're calling it here, um, this circle of water, in order to get access Ooh. to stone. And that was a nice little demo there. That was so good for Tato. Bought him a lot of time. And now look at that. He only has demos in the queue. Even cancelled one maybe to attack the war galley. His university. Ooh, look, rushing that with three builds. Is this uh, hand chemistry? Cannonier. This is hand cannon here. Oh. Uh, hand cannon here rush. Very devastating in the Castle Age, especially when your opponent is going for uh, stable units. And they're also going to have Siege. Like, hand cannons are feel quite good against Mangonels and Scorpions. Yeah. Like, they just deal enough damage. They have enough range to really, really have a shot against those. And, well, Andy is now being pushed off the water. Those fires should be able to deal with that dock quite easily. Another great demo there. Um, from Andy getting some value, but Tato still has some of those weak fires alive, and it doesn't matter how weak they are if they're simply attacking the dog. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it is chemistry, so we shouldn't be too surprised to see a second archer range added pretty soon, and Tato maybe some outposts, and well, short distance push could be really nice for him. Okay, solid demo against the low HP ones, still stays active here. The thing is, Andy now should be pretty blind. Mm -hmm. Andy has like vision on where Tato is and where the extra resources are on the map, but he has no idea about the army movements from Tato, what transition is coming behind. Obviously he doesn't know about that university at all, and Tato is now pushing forward with a siege workshop, but the archers are going to see the knights, so he's going to retreat with that villager, and he will be the first person with a monk on the field, which is not something you usually say about Andy's opponent. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those villagers just wanted to build the forward siege workshop. Denied. Archer range on the late side, but doesn't really matter. Just needs to finish before chemistry. Tato can also uh, add some fish once that dock is cleared up. So that could be a nice little bonus for him. Usually when you're going, you know, hand cannons, monk, uh, everything like that, you don't really have the time to add the farm. So any extra food eco you can add is going to be really, really valuable. And Tato will go for a TC there on the stone. That's good access to stone, but... If Andy has Siege of his own, that's also a very vulnerable position. Oh, this is like, Vodka can now leave, right? This is like where all, we're going to look. All, yeah. all the game is going to happen exactly on this screen now. Both adding a town center. This will be crucial hills. This will be low army count and a lot of micro here. Still hasn't seen the hand cannons, I believe. And hasn't seen the town center. Yep. Okay, Scorpion pushing forward. Hand cannons are about to reveal themselves. And there you go. So he knows Tato has invested in chemistry. You can see how much damage those hand cannons are doing against the Scorpion. The Scorpion absolutely has no value here whatsoever. And the Knights are trying to push in, but Tato wisely walled himself off and went for a stone gate. And now both of those Knights need to be deleted. They just need to be deleted. I think so as well. He's maybe just trying out. to bait to the corner. Get him out. Oh, no. Oh. Don't. No. Mistake. No. No. Uh. Okay. Well, he was busy. He's busy with the villagers trying to make the town center. Scout goes down. Spearman's going to die instantly. 
And then we have all oh, these no. villagers dying. What's that TC percentage at? Oh, you see Andy. 95.42. Oh, no. Oh, and big sigh there. And that's not the one of relief. And more villagers going to die. Those hand cannons are absolute heroes. 96% on the TC, and now the Converted Knight is just, oh, it's just adding it on top. The villagers, the bodies all around that TC, and Andy doesn't have the freedom that he would like here, and he's even going to have to re-wall off his base after he made that gap to push forward. It's just really, really demoralizing. At least he's got two town centers behind. So right now he's at 56 bills versus 55 from Tato, even after taking those losses. But this is a brutal position to be in. How do you stop the hand cannon? Yeah, you can't, right? Military count two against 17. Let's take a look about that knight. Tato maybe deletes, gets the kill, and now you can never, ever re-wall this area. <laughs> Should have deleted the knight. <laughs> Should have deleted the knight, that's all I'm saying. Where did those come from? Villagers on the other side. They came from the stone. However, the TC being up is not going to stay up for very long because the rams are working away. And, well, Tato can simply convert some more villagers behind this. Yeah, hand cannons can kill those villagers as well. Now diving under the farms here. Work efficiency will go down for Andy. From here on, Tato, although he's below in village account, he will gather more resources. Yeah, wheelbarrow TC goes down. Ah. And the hand cannons are still sitting over all of the farms, and now they're beginning to kill the farms. Andy, still going to have problems clearing up this army. If the hand cannons get um, hits when the knights are approaching, they can do a ton of damage. And you see that knight? Still Should have deleted. deleted. Should have deleted the knight. Should have deleted the knight. If that monk doesn't get that conversion, I swear to God. Should have oh. deleted the knight. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Five kills on that bad boy. Oh. And now he's stuck. Oh, God. And yeah, Andy has to type it there. Can't be too happy. Now the monk, uh, the market would go down as well. And Tato, after an intense game one, this one felt more smooth for him. Yeah, that. I mean, I really like the approach from Andy to go forward with the docks, but good scouting from Tato. He saw the villager early. Andy tried to bait him into thinking he was going maybe for the ostrich or the zebra. Tato didn't buy it at all. He knew it was coming, added that second dock. And even though he didn't see the second forward dock from... Andy, he was in a position to defend against that. And then, of course, just even three archers controls the entirety of the middle of the map. Hand cannons was a great decision yeah. from Tato. It's just crazy, right? And we typically don't see it because when do we ever have the situation where you can easily wall, mm -hmm. but an early cast stage or mid cast stage timing works out well. Yep. There are very few maps. Maybe outcrop is something, but we kind of want to have more mobility on that one. And this is just a perfect execution for such a map. I wonder how it would have played out if they had cross spawn though. And he's never not going monks again. <laughs> <laughs> Mon monks actually would have been pretty good against the hand cannons there. Obviously, Tato has some archers, so that's probably what pushed him away. And the it. first scout's still alive. Yeah. No, the scout died to the fire. Ah. Yeah, the scout died to the fire. Okay. Yeah. Like, losing the forward builds obviously made it pretty tricky for him to get into a reasonable position. The thing is, if he doesn't go for the dog play on the other side, like, he just goes into a stable game, mm -hmm. and then Bohemians could just land their own island and maybe then go Hufnitze, uh, not Hufnitze, Hazard Wagon short distance. Yeah. And that's ugly as well, so I can see why he wanted to go for some aggression. Yep. I, I think even with, like... Even with it being 2-0 here, I'm kind of impressed that on his first major LAN appearance, Andy looks so solid. Like, we're not seeing the execution, the little details that you might see with someone being a little bit shaky. He looks fairly comfortable here. He's just matching up against a really tough opponent in Tato. And a guy that I looked up their history, like, Andy's only ever won two games against Tato. I think they played four sets. And he's taken two games in total. Yeah. Um, so... It's just kind of a guy that counters his style. One of those games was in death. Was match. D DM, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's some qualifier from 2020. So, uh, yeah, like 2023, seven and zero in maps there for Tato the advantage. Tato, right now considered to be in that third to fifth spot in the world, right? We think Hera Viper clearly number one and two. Yeah. But then we have a bit of a mishmash. I think he's pretty solid in third. I, I think, at the moment, like if you look at his recent results, Tato's okay. been. Uh, Tato's been pretty crazy, Nilia. Uh, I still think Leary is a guy that shows up. Okay. That that will be the big... I think right now Tato might be above Yo. If only someone had a YouTube video on this. Breaking it all down. Do you? Harrow does, you do. <laughs> 
of the world ranking list. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I always upload mine in April. Ah. Oh. Of the f top 15 players in the okay. world. Yeah, yeah. So now it's a bit outdated. Mm. Okay. So I don't know. Here we are. Hippopotamus definitely looks like a hippopotamus if you're uh, looking at the mini map there and you're thinking, wow, that looks like a familiar animal. It's 100% a hippopotamus, and I dare you to say something different and watch the uh, <coughs> reaction from my co caster here. Mods are going to ban <laughs> everyone who says something else. <laughs> anyway, Andy is playing as Japanese, Tato is playing as the Persians, and Andy has gone for the dock block strategy up at the top there so he hasn't made the dock near his fish it's still close enough where the fishing ships can get some good value but he'll likely add another dock to the north of that and with um the way ships path they can't sail along the coastline on the edge of the dock so they can't actually get past there and they will need to take like a two minute detour around the southern area of the map now sometimes that dock block strategy is to keep your fish safe i also think there's an opportunity to maybe mass galleys behind that and then have a big galley army that can then push through the south. Ooh. Okay. And once you control the water on this map, it's it really, really negates a lot of the options from your opponent. Yeah. Which surprises me it's a bit that is he's doing it with Japanese, right? Mm -hmm. Because Japanese typically le need the least protection for your fishing ships mm -hmm. because they have the extra armor, the extra HP. So that is quite interesting, and he's maybe trying to play some mind games there with Tato, who is just going for the pretty standard dock. I mean, it might just be just a non-optimal dock placement, too. Like <laughs> We, we, we might not, not see another dock there, but usually the dock is set up a little bit to the right of that near the other shorefish. As we see Andy coming forward with the scout, he's going to see two villagers there. There's a reason Tato sent two villas out there. It's to keep themselves safe, and he doesn't have to get loom early. Whereas Andy will need to run away with that villager, and Tato's like, where are your villas at? Are they here? And it gets Loom there, wants to get it before clicking to Fuel Age anyways. Just confirmation of the wood line here as well. While Andy, did he decide on the wood line yet? Am I confused? Ah, yeah, the Andy's on the yeah, okay, okay, okay. It's, it's kind of cool how the meta has developed for this map over the last few years, right? Like, we, at some points in the qualifiers, we saw both players go to the wood line on the outside. They don't want any of the shenanigans in the oh. center. But look at this. Tato's coming forward. Two villas. And the dock block is completely useless. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter at oh, all. Oh, no. Oh, this is so incredibly brilliant by Tato. Oh, God. And look, he's trying to stay out of the vision of the ships. Oh, that's so He clever. knows roughly where the fishing ships are. He's staying out of the vision. And Annie's going to be like, ha, I'm secure. And Tato Tato oh. is going to, well, How he's smart. He's going to completely counter this. And uh, yeah, Andy, Andy won't play with that at all. And he might actually, as you said, open galleys. And in small numbers, galleys die to the fire galleys. Yep. Oh, man. That is uh, incredibly smart. Yep. Oh, Double shawfish. Absolutely going to be brutal. You have to keep in mind, though, that um, Andy still has Japanese. So if he sees this dock early enough... He can try and keep his fishing ship safe. He can still contest on water, but it's going to be very, very difficult mm -hmm. uh, for him. You could see right there as that panda, panda transitioned out and transitioned Whoa, in. Hey. It looks nothing like it. That's what they're trying to illustrate. It only looks like a hippo. There's only one animal that this could possibly be. Someone is getting fired. Is it going to be the fishing ships from Andy or? Against the demos. Oh, true. How much... How many demos does it take? It takes two demos to kill the Japanese fishing ships, I would right? assume so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I, I can offer you a middle ground. What do you think about Hippopandamus? Hippopandamus? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a cursed animal. <laughs> It sounds like one of those animals from South Park where it like zooms in and the animal's like, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Demo doesn't want to waste all its life on only doing damage against some fishing ships. We still have three, and now Andy goes for the fire galley. Obviously, double dock against one dock. Should win that, even against the faster producing Persian dock. Well, that Persian dock is never going away. Yeah. Maybe. Which is the issue, right? Like, it, it has 4,000 HP. It's not going anywhere. It's going to stay there for a very long time. And Tato is going to completely be distracting Andy. He's got one fire ship in defense, which is nice. And he's now scouting and looking for demo opportunities. And if you're matching up on, against Tato on this map, I don't think you want to send those random villagers out to take the shorefish in the south. I think if you do that, you're going to have to be very, very careful because Tato will always be looking for the opportunities to demo the villagers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and shorefish, obviously, fastest food income that you can get. 
Thermonhaus scares this a bit and just has to commit. Now the repair should win the 1v1 here. Yeah, double repair. Andy is not going for a demo of his own, so he can't try and take those villagers. He's still got the scout wandering around, and now he's got a couple spearmen, which are actually decent-ish against the fires once they get close, but they still take a lot of damage mm -hmm. from the fire galley, so you got to be careful there. Interesting how so much is going to happen at this edge of the screen, right? We have seen so many like villager rushes, as you said, tower rushes, and I love how diverse those openings are. And nice quick wall there from Andy. Uh -huh. He's the best at it. He is. He's simply the best. And well, he saves that villager. It's not gonna, you know, be able to really do anything currently, but I think there's an area where you can still repair your ships. Uh oh. This is now double fire galley to spearmen as well. This is going to be tight for Tato. Yeah, and good use of the fishing ship in front there from Andy to tank a little bit of that fire damage. And Andy is going to clear this up, it looks like. That fishing ship is tanking all of the damage. And even with two villagers repairing there, Tato just simply doesn't have enough. And there's another fire coming from Andy. So Andy, even though he was surprised by this dog position, he's done a really, really good job. Oh, yeah. That's, that's impressive reaction by Andy. And yeah, as you said, like fishing ship there only takes one single damage and just tanks so much with 120 HP there. Lovely use of the civilization. Behind this, we have to think about land pretty, uh, land pretty soon. Mm -hmm. And Tato already prepared the archer range. Yeah, Tato also has a really, really solid resource bank. Like, look, he's got five villagers queued right now. Mm -hmm. He's got a bunch of gold. His TC has been producing faster, so you can see that reflected in the villager count right there. Andy, a little bit more idle TC, but it's only 20 seconds. Uh, Dave, 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 demo, demo, fire galley, three fire galleys, very close together. I don't know. I, oh, I, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Andy, Andy, Andy spreads us. it out. Oof. Yeah, Andy spreads it out. And there, it was also like, where was the demo going to come out from that dock? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> you always got to be w worried with Tato and his docks. And that Persian dock is going to be there for a while. So there could be, theoretically, there could be like five, six demos in there by the time uh, you get it down to really low HP. <laughs> Look at that. 1,300 damage dealt already, and it's barely burning. Mm -hmm. Small it's candle lit inside. <laughs> <laughs> it's good ambiance, <laughs> really. <laughs> nice job from Andy here, hunting down the scout from Tato. I'm... Not sure that he's going to kill it, though, because I think there also are archers. As Tato has gone for a dock on that side, not a mill. He's gone for the dock to gather the shorefish, too. And he's got a lot of villagers working away on that. Still has two villagers in the queue, too. So, I mean, resources looking really solid for Tato. Dock having multiple advantages there. Obviously, you can use it as the production facility. Plus, it is bigger. Plus, you can build it closer to the shorefish. Mm -hmm. So, the extra 50 wood investment is certainly worth it there. Villager kind of dying to his spearman at the moment. That's a Japanese spearman. You got to be careful about those. As we saw a demo come out from Tato, fire galleys uh, clearing up the rest Ooh, of the stuff on the south side there. But there's a demo coming along from Andy, and Tato's got to be careful with the villagers. Oh, Tato! Oh. Tato! Boom! Oh! First demo, big demo of NAC5, certainly not the last. You love to see it as Andy goes for a market there. That's a little bit of a momentum gain there from Andy. Mm -hmm. That's a good feeling. Yeah. The demo tato? That's really lovely, Andrew. See? Bam! Oh, they just fell over. <laughs> Okay, now the market play. Gold protection, not really there for Andy, right? I would be surprised if he actually sells the stone. I think it's more of a juggle between wood, food, and gold on its own. Yeah, might feel like, okay, archers could harass this area a bit more. That's why he's patrolling there and might run into those archers. That's a nice pickup for Andy. Oh, I love his spot. Really, really solid last couple of minutes here for Andy. It, like, it, it didn't start out well, but you love these sections of the game where everything just seems to be going right for you again, and suddenly you're in a position to click up to Castle H. Tata will get there first, but you've neutralized um, his archer push on the center here, and now you've neutralized the dock at the top, and that dock is almost about to go down. So, super solid job, and you kept, throughout this whole process, Four fishing ships alive. Yeah, yeah, crazy. HP on that dock would be interesting. Does the village have a change? The other dock of Andy at the top. Oh, that's. Oh, send that demo around. He saw the villagers before. Send that oh. demo all the way around. Just important that you don't patrol, right? Because otherwise you just patrol. He's got into the, the scouts dock. there too, nearly. Oh, 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 oh. oh Dave, I'm getting I think scared. I think the fish likely might be gone, but I, I believe Tato is going for another dock to collect the fish from. Bottom. Oh yeah, at the bottom. <laughs> And scouts will see that too. Yeah. Tato already demoed a scout, but that means no demo to counter the other one. He hopes that that shawfish is now running out. Yeah. Everyone gets together. Yeah, yeah. Tries to go for the 
Oh, He's like, 29? Oh. I don't want to attack them. Let them let them gather it. Let them gather it. Let them gather it. And the demo is on the way. I don't care about anything else on the map. What? Yeah, yeah. Watch the demo. The demo is, is moving. It's moving. <laughs> Where are the villagers? Where are the other villagers? Uh, he's not going to get them, but he'll get he'll three. Three. Oh, beautiful. Oh, my. Boom! Nice. Let's go. Five to three KD now in total. Arches, though, still harassing. One demo tried to intercept this one. Won't really get too much done. Seven on gold for Andy. And, well, he can now add some town centers. Goes for the right hand side of the hippo. The last few minutes, man, everything is just kind of turned around for Andy. He's getting work alley. He's keeping that dock alive. Fishing ship's still alive. Archers are over by the wood line, which is slightly concerning for him because he doesn't really have any military over here. He might try and bait the archers back in, but Tato's never fallen for that one. And he's just going to need to run away. That's the, that's the saddest demo. Like how it moved, like some tiles. <laughs> also like six tiles away from the archers. <laughs> Yeah, we've all we've all had those demos before. Three crossbows versus a knight. One of the crossbows being weak. If you attack the weak one first, you should be fine, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. the main story is the harassment Ooh. on the gold. Oh, it takes those out. Nice. Trying to kill the ostriches, which would be a really, really solid uh, lame here from Tato. Also, the knight didn't find those crossbows immediately, so Tato is going to kill another villager, and he will clear this up, but he might even get another one. Uh, nice dodge, not sure. If oh, she's dead. Up. Yeah. She's dead. Thanks for the spoiler. Mm. I can see into the future, you know. More crossbows on the gold. Scout harassing the fish a little bit. And he had that second town center up earlier, but he's losing villagers, and Tato has Persian TC, so faster production on those. He's got less idle TC time as well, so Tato has the villager lead currently. No gold income. Oh! Vodka, good spot. Uh oh that could be five. That could be five. Give me five! Three. Okay, give me three. Yep, halfway there. A little bit more. Half of five, three. If we're rounding. You up. can't have I'll two I'll point I'll five bills. Why? Could, why? Because it, it like Schrodinger's bill. <laughs> two and uh, two and one Schrodinger bill. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the box. <laughs> Oh, the fire is there to clear up the other villagers. Great damage here from Andy, and we're going to see 10 to 8 Eco KD, but Tato has a camel to support the crossbows, and he's got more crossbows on the way, so Andy will need to slowly shift most of his economy over to that right side and try and figure out a way to secure that. Let's compare farm count. That's actually really solid for Tato. Very I, th solid. I thought he had more villagers in the shawfish, yep. but he lost so many and knows how exposed they are that he had to add some. So it will be a slight advantage there for Andy, and that will give him quite a nice setup for a transition towards the mid to late game. Yeah, Horace Collar coming in from Andy. He's got a super solid food setup as well. Like, really, really nice. 26 on food currently. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's been taking the shorefish mm -hmm. at all at the bottom, so he still has that opportunity available to him. But I think he's kind of thinking... Well, Tato's just going to demo my vills. Mm -hmm. And the Una Reverse has come in, and he's been demoing all of Tato's villagers. But it also means that Andy hasn't been taking that free food. Uh oh, get the gate. Oh. Villager. Uh. He right clicks her. Perfect. Buys him so himself some time. Not bad. Really, really solid job there from Andy. And it's only going to be one crossbow that makes its way up top there. Andy now has a monk. Crossbows are going to push that monk back, but he'll get it inside the TC back to safety. And Tato is now starting to add in some navy again. So he's going to try and control this water area. And, you know, if you control this water area with a, a number of fires or war galleys or demos or whatever, it's going to make it really difficult for Andy to transfer stuff from his main TC over to that um, mm -hmm. auxiliary part of his eco. But monks are so good in that area, right? Mm. And therefore, a defense advantage really, really strong. You can't really go for anything that kills monks. There, war galleys, t not really something you can tag into. Tedo now tries to tag into war galleys, still tries to contest the water, but also pressures on land with the siege workshop. Cav armor coming in from Andy. Wheelbarrow on the way, but the siege workshop, like you said, is forward. As Andy keeps going for outposts, so Andy is scouting. All of Tato's eco is going to see to what extent Tato has expanded. And he knows that he will need to deal with this push at some point in the center. What is your solution to Camel Crossbow Siege? First step is Town Watch and some outposts, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't really know what's coming here, right? We, we see everything here. I think if we know exactly that, that push is happening, it's probably Monks and some Mangalots for the defense as well. 
Tom Watts. Lovely. Beautiful. And that'll help his outpost on the other side, too. Mm -hmm. So he's still got that villager. That was the gate villager, by the way. <laughs> and he's still got her roaming around. Knights are going to attempt to come in, but we got two TCs on that main area now from Tato. And oh. things are getting really difficult here. Here come the fire ships. The monks can convert those, and that's a big swing if you do convert a fire ship. But they've already used their faith on the military. So now Andy is in a really rough position. He has nothing to prevent those crossbows coming over and targeting the other side of his eco. He's trying to go for a defense of town center in the right corner of the map and oh, he's oh. running with villagers what is that tc at okay it'll go up in time oh Whew. that could have been game ending if those mm. crossbows are over there and all the villagers dying but trying to build the tc but tato still he will find some litter kills yeah and look at the villager count right now 67 for tato 57 for andy andy has a bunch of vills in the queue he's doing a good job with the knights there but tato is all over the place with his military Unfortunately, Tato really not noticing those knights in the center, taking out the villagers, and he has a limited amount of camels, so he's probably going to lose that mangonel too. Mm, let's take a look. Knights, really, really small line of sight, so maybe just click them home and didn't really spot that. Look at that. Barely anything that they can see, and that's a nice spot to add a lot of economy. Oh, he's going to put that crossbow right on the other side of that wood line. Can uh, you walk right through there? You oh, can. Oh, oh ew. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and you don't have like now. Now you're sending two scorpions to kill one crossbow, but the camels will intercept. Mm -hmm. So many more collected resources for Ted already kept his economy rolling so much better. But monks could maybe get some conversion, scaring those camels away. And as long as Andy Tato keeps Andy penned in here on this side of the map, like he knows he's three TC. Andy is now 3TC, but he's Persians with 3TC. So as long as he keeps the production up, which he's struggling with right now, to be fair. Um, bunch of idle TC time for him al al along this game. But as long as he keeps any any penned up on this side, his economy is going to be better. Yeah, and look at that. Now the income. 50 minutes against 40 minutes. So basically 25% more income in the last minute here for Tato, simply because he's getting so much aggression done. Yeah. But Andy not doing a bad job, right? Three TCs keeps them running. Ten more villagers in the queue. He won't be too far behind in villager numbers. And that's impressive against Persians that mm -hmm. have faster working. Mm -hmm. TCs. I think it's just the food eco he got set up early, right? Mm -hmm. He had a lot Lots. of farms. He kept his fishing ships going, Japanese fish as well as a nice little boost. And now he's shifting up to this northern area. It's amazing on a close map like this how often Hippopotamus actually does make it to this stage of the game, especially once the meta developed a little bit. Moving the TCs a little bit further from the wood line also helped. Yeah, yeah certainly. Oh, look at that. Doesn't even want to clear it up with the knight. Sends the monk. He says, I want that. <laughs> And it is three Mangnots out on the map for Tato. That could be quite a deadly push. Uh oh, Dave, look at the stone count of Tato. Oh, no, we've seen this before, Nilly. But at least, you know, we have solid economies behind. Tato is going to go forward with the castle. Tato needs something else, though, to support this army because he's only got, what, four camels there? And he has Sanctity now for his monks. Mm -hmm. uh, there could be... A potential of this being denied. Triple Mangonel now popping out, maybe scaring away those monks. Nice move. We don't see conversions. Lightcap are killing those monks. Oh, and the counter castle. Counter castle from Andy. This is all we need to look at right now as we see the knights coming out for the Mangonel. We have the monk healing behind from Tato. We've got camels in there desperately trying to take out the knights, but more villagers coming forward from Tato, and it feels like it's going to be enough. It seems like both castles will end up completing. However, the castle from Tato, putting pressure on the TC, cutting off the gold from Andy. Really, really difficult. The only thing I will say an advantage of Andy here is that Tato can't petard the castle yep, from yep. Andy, but Andy, if he wants to go for petards, can just delete the house. Andy also builds a ram, right? I think this is the clear spot for petards not going for Imperial Age here because you can still uh, raid so many spots. But looking at the resources for Andy, is he thinking about him? We don't see petards. We don't see villagers in the queue. He's thinking him. He's thinking imp? Yeah. What a surprise to me. Yeah. I mean, look at... Oh, Nilly, look at Tato's food eco right now. 50 of food! <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> Where? Where? How? Is it all just farms? Like, what? 27 only here. And then and we got some over here. No fishing ships. That's that's crazy. 50 of food. He has to be on, like, food somewhere else. Oh, 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 on the bear. Oh, that's a nice use of the forward villagers. That's oh, yeah. really, really nice. Well protected. And look at, look at how his food count is climbing here now, too. 54, Andy goes up to Imperial Age. Persians will also advance a, a, a little bit faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that'll help Tato when he's trying to make that transition. He's going for Rams here. He wants to clear the houses first, so he has an open opportunity. 
at that castle. And he's also got a Mangonel that I believe can sit just out of range of that castle from Andy because there's only fletching. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think one more range and the Mangonel could have died. Mm. Ram, well, did some damage, but is now going to die here. And that will be quite annoying. Teto on the other side has Botkin. So that will be interesting if the Mangonel of Andy will get the, Mangonel, uh, the Rams. And we will have a pause there. And it feels like that could, that could be my job. Okay. So... Nilly is going to go take care of his job as we see both players just kind of, uh, you know, taking a break and stretching a little bit, taking yes. a sip of water. And sorry, go. Well, <laughs> it turns out it wasn't Nilly's job as he comes running back into the room. Uh, both of them may be a little bit confused when he popped his head in there, but... Beautiful game we have going on here. Tato has made his way through the house. He's got an opportunity to attack that castle. Quick walls coming up from Andy in addition to a tower over there as he tries to wall in the monks and he gets it. Oh man, Light Cav will not be able to take out those monks. Three conversions on the Light Cav. Beautiful display of quick walling there from Andy. And good raid from Tata with the camels over here. Patat's dealing with most of the ramps. Only one ramps alive and got MI efficient and fixing problems pretty quickly. F faster than Andy fixing those raids, apparently. He's not noticing. He's not noticing. He's paying attention to the monks. He's quick walling everything. He's probably not getting an attack notification from that because he's being attacked on the other side. And so many villagers dying underneath that TC. 15 already with only those six camels. And the camels, typically not a great unit. But Andy is trying to return the favor. 35 population behind. But now he will be imp and will deal with the forward cast of Tato. Beautiful push on that castle by Tato. He takes it out. And now Andy, when he gets to Imperial Age, is going to only have one castle to produce trebs. He's still distracted because of those camels in the north. You can see the eco discrepancy now. 121 villagers for Tato, 86 only for Andy. And Tato is in a position where he's just going to keep producing in Castle Age here. Why not? You've taken out the castle. You might be able to take out another one. And you've killed so many villagers. Oh, man. And I link so many there as well. This is pretty, pretty damn sweet. And... Well, now the question is, what is Andy really going for? It has to be kind of a pikeman defense, but he doesn't even have the pikeman check yet. Yeah. One monk, I believe, going down there as Andy tries to get some counter damage. Tato's on top of it, as he has been all game. You saw the huge difference when the camel raid came in. Andy didn't notice for two minutes. Tato noticed right away, mm -hmm. and he garrisoned the villagers. So he's not taking in any losses along the way as these knights get in, and they're going to be countered by the camels. Yeah, and maybe get some villager kills. Now we're getting deep a deep eye poke there of that villager into the panda's eye, hippo's eyes. And, well, this is going to be tricky here. Still so many villagers idle, trying to hide in the town centers. All right, we've got the castle now going down from Tato forward, but it's bottom a ton of time. He managed to take out the first castle from Andy and he's on the way to Imperial Age. As Andy tries to add in some farms here and Andy's finally taking those fish in the center. Tato saw that, so he might even attempt to get back on water at some point. Mm. Um, could be a good use of your Imperial Age time and maybe getting fast fire or something, controlling that area. Andy has managed to hold though. Yeah. And now it's Andy's turn to push back as Tato is in this transitionary period. But what unit does he have that can really push back? Like he... Monk's Trebs is probably the, like, but and then some pikes, right? Yeah, you will need another castle or some yeah. towers though, right? Because on open field, they won't do enough. Tato is going for a massive amount of light caps here. Yeah, it's just, it's just gotta be pikeman Monk Trip, basically from Andy. And Tato, once again, he's on the way up to him. He goes for another forward castle. Yeah. And he knows that it'll take Andy a long time to roll the Trebs back up to the north there, and it's just going to keep buying him time, and maybe he can snipe the Trebs when they're on their way with his light cap. Oh, he can snipe the Monk, he can snipe the Mangano there, that's some lovely moves. Get some Another counter back. castle from Andy, the second of the game. Ooh, but, that but that's late. late, that's late. Oh boy. And the light cap are there too. Will be some dead builds, but not too many. He can still get the Trebs up. He only has one single trap out though, and far away. So Tato can still contest this actually. Tato taking out a monk, seeing the villagers. Oh, that's big. And Andy is not going for a ship at all. He doesn't have a demo or anything coming out of there, so the light cap are going to get a lot of value. 104 villagers for Andy, 133 for Tato, and he still has some in the queue as he gets chemistry now. Mm -hmm. Hand cannon, bomber cannon could be a good solution here. Andy not really in a position to switch into Arbalest at this point, so... 
could really be brutal for him. Although he does have ballistics and he does have Bodkin Arrow, so it's not that far away. But still, so limited on gold, right? The mm -hmm. main gold is running out and Tedo is raiding two golds at the same time. This is with the caster, the other one with, was with the light cap, so Andy just not really having the options. And oh, that was just a teleported light cap. <laughs> we saw Camel magically appear somewhere earlier, too. <laughs> New and improved is that the conscription one. castle? It is. It is. I don't think that's going to make it. He didn't do the math. Shame. And that could be brutal because he doesn't have another castle. Oh, yeah. We'll have a reasonable amount of stone, though. And also no c chance for Commander Ran if that was his choice. So we'll have to be full hand here. Already lining up with a lot of resources, though. Every time Andy clears a raid. There's just simply another one from a different angle. So Tato is really util utilizing his mobility well. And Andy, where are the Trebs currently? I guess they were in the north taking out that castle. Yep, he yep. has to slowly roll out to another side again. I love that he's getting tower upgrades. I think that makes a lot of sense. The map is so spread out. If he has like five, six towers spread around, it's so much easier. Yasama will be the next tag. Indeed, you will see it in the overlay there as well. But Hassan. Extra arrows. But Hassar is tough, right? He can control this north area with the towers, but he's going to be running into even wood issues soon if these Hassars still keep coming in. And mm -hmm. There's no wood on that side. Yeah. The wood in the center is going to be really risky to take, and the wood in the north, you don't really have enough villagers up there yet yeah. to take advantage of that. It's a start of migration there, and those Hassars are finding kills again. Look at that Iku KD. Ted already finding close That's to brutal. 60 villagers. Pikemen are coming over, but... Can't. How many upgrades can't even be afforded? Hand cannon coming in from Tato. He's getting the armor. He's getting ballistics. Um, so he could be going into commander and crossbows potentially. Um, or even, you know, skirmishers of his own if he wants to go into a trash unit late game. Trebs are in position. Towers are supporting them. But Tato is perfectly content at the moment to still take res from the left side and now from the south. Mm -hmm. God, I love this map. It's so it, good. It, it's it's shaping out so, so nicely here. So many different approaches and so many strategic decisions to be made here. And we see a diversity of civilizations. Just look at Tato, what he's going for. Mm -hmm. Like Hassa, <laughs> um, hand cannon here, had some spearmen, some crossbow. He goes for everything. I think if this goes really late, mm -hmm. it starts to swing in favor of the Japanese again. You have the towers, you have a better navy mm -hmm. as well. And then you have those Japanese helps with your traps. Right, so you don't have access to Bombard Cannons, which is definitely Bombard problematic. Bombard as Bombard we see Tato trying to snipe all this stuff. Boink. But it gets hit by the Trebs. And uh, if Andy can hold on a little bit longer, I think Japanese are, are favored in late game. He needs to transition, though. Right, It's only Castle Age BML Pikemen right now mm -hmm. against already, well, soon 20 hand cannons on the field. Andy, either Skirms, CA, or Arbalest need to be the next tech. Andy's held, though. 160 pop, towers, traps. He's looking solid. Yeah, yeah. 123 villagers right now. He still has eight fishing ships alive. I wonder if he's actually made traps with those or if they're just taking shore fish. But he's going for a bunch of towers along the way, and it looks like the fish are just, yeah, mm -hmm. just shore fish. Archie Rangers added, though. Oh, that's a nice raid. Movid is just dying. And Andy, yeah, we said he's stabilizing with 130, no, 160 population. Now takes him to keep. But this is still a really nice push for him. And I don't really see units killing this army soon. Another forward castle mm -hmm. from Tato. He's only got a couple villagers building that, but he's got the Bombard Cannons working away on the castle. Bombard Cannons are an issue for Japanese, especially if you don't have large amounts of military on the field and they're unupgraded, like these Pikemen right here. Big, big problem to deal with those. And Andy, like, like I said, late game, Japanese might be better, but he needs to buy himself a ton of time and Tato is not letting up on the pressure. Yeah, just look at the resources collected, right? Tato's relentless raids over and over again, simply not allowing Andy to collect enough resources to get all the crucial text that he wants. Be very careful when you're rotating your trebs around because there's Hussar everywhere as Andy starts to repair that treb. Should be fine. There's a keep over there. There's a town center. There's a castle, and the Hussar will need to leave. Trap count at three. So lost one there, but so much more going down, and you can see resources destroyed. Now creeping up for Tato as well. Hussars again just trying to find another spot. What a beautiful map awareness by Tato. Huh? <laughs> There's a tower and a treb push over on the left side on Tato's base. The Hussar are here, so the treb is going to go oh. down. And Andy oh. doesn't <laughs> trap the Hussar, but it was pretty hype for a second there as we thought he could have trapped them up there. It's probably 
in the grand scheme of things, it's probably better that there's not four Hussar trap there when you eventually cut through. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to send in some pikemen to clear it up. It's not like they will be trapped forever there. And those bomber cans are nice. Do we see some kills? One. And one. Okay. Next volley, maybe. They're Needs to be really active oh. with the trebs. Okay. Needs to be really active with the trebs. Here we go. Love to see some demos in the queue. And yeah, Tato is so good at this. In my books, the best huh? combat cannon player in the world. Miss. And ground attacks in between. Oh! Gets the double kill. Oh, and they folded like a wet tissue. They disintegrated. They're gone. There's nothing left. Yeah, a lot of knowledge about wet tissues. Castle being pushed by bomber cannons here. Hand cannons protecting, and now a treb behind from Tato. And pop on in 50. He's starting to struggle a bit. Those towers, I like how he spread this one out, left hand side. But the numbers simply weren't there. Look at that, a thousand stone floating right now. Can't really get those on the map. Tries to snipe with the traps, but we still don't have Yasama. Oh, out a bit. one. It's another one. I, I think this guy's going to go two for two. I think he's going to go two for two. Thanks for your input. I think he's going to go two for three. He's not shooting. Oh, a demo on those hand cannons would be so filthy. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. But the demo's never going to make it there in time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're yeah, going to have to bait with something else first. Oh, the oh. demolition chip. Okay, so he's going to have to distract with another oh, unit. Oh. He goes right past. It was so close. Okay. And he gets a decent one. Uh, it, right. Actually, a really decent one, yeah. But he needed more, right? It feels mm -hmm. like he's 50 population behind. The push is still continuing. Tries to repair this castle like a madman. Taken damage. 11k? Did you say 11k? Oh my god, we wonder where the stone went for Andy. There's our answer right there. Great quick gate in front of those traps too, preventing the Hussar from sniping. The bomber cannons are here once again though, and Tato is going to kill some more trebuchets. They won't even manage to get a final volley off of and the hand cannon army still alive. The trebs are here, the bomber cannons are here, and the Hussar are cleaning everything. What are we looking at? 15,000. That's a, a thousand stone repaired into it now. That is wild. That is actually insane. 18.6k damage taken? How much? Huh? 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 <laughs> okay, but he obviously dies at the end, right? So the repair only was for 15,000, and the castle dies. Um, bought himself quite some time, but still pop on it in 20. Bombard cannons are continuing here, and we don't see a lot of blue dots on the minimap anymore. Yeah, Andy's lost. The position in the center, there's no resources to take really on the right side there other than his farms and a little bit of gold and Tato. Now shifting all of his energy, or he, he should probably be shifting his energy up to the wood lines from Andy. The wood is the most valuable resource and Andy doesn't have a lot of it. He's going into cav archers though, and he will need a long time to build the cav archer numbers that will be successful. Uh, at six right now, pop on it in 30, we'll lose another town center. And you mentioned it earlier, wood might be a pretty big issue. And that will be an ex a crazy amount of villagers trapped at the right hand side that he can't really get to the top. Will we see it? Savar? I mean, the resources are there. They are there. The resources are there. Come on, Tato. Three, two, one. Bop! Savar! Uh, he's busy. He's busy with other things. He, notably, the push going on here. As Savar comes in. A hey! little bit of lag. A little bit of lag between the casters and the players. And, well, that's just the nail in the uh, proverbial coffin here. And he won't be able to come back from this position. Enjoys his camera time. Obviously, this is also a bit like getting to the flow of the tournament, right? He is playing against someone that we consider to be a top three, top four player in the yep. world. Andy's goal should be to be in the top eight after the group stage, right? And it's his first land appearance. Yeah, yeah. Soak yeah. it up, enjoy it, right? Yeah, yeah. Get used to it. So I don't mind this at all. Get yourself into the rhythm, feel it out, and then you have four sets that are more important than this one coming over the next four days. Mm -hmm. He's still gaming, though. He's absolutely still gaming. He's trying to survive. There's no real way he's going to save any of this stuff on the right side. But he's still got stuff in the north, and now the Hussar are being raided. I think, if nothing else, seeing Savar on the field is the moment where you have to realize that uh, it ain't going to happen, Chief. Cavalier raiding all the villagers. He's down to 74 villagers. Um, give me your prediction. Andy versus ACCM. How long is that set going to take? Uh, heat death of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rio.
Tyler takes it, 3-0 there, and uh, something to be reasonably proud of, right? As we said, this will be a tough matchup for him. We expected Tado to win this one. Obviously, this is, relatively speaking, mm -hmm. the day with the matchups with the clear favorite. Yep. Every single day from here on, people will face each other that have a very similar score to one another. The winners will face winners, losers will face losers, and we'll continue from there. So... Andy, I think it's totally fine. Just look at the Rex. He played on a level where I feel like some small decision-making switches and he can take a game against anyone here. Yeah, for sure. Like, that was an entertaining set. Obviously, game two was probably the, the worst out of those three games, mm -hmm. but game one was really good. Mm -hmm. Late game. And then that one was the best mm -hmm. there. And we had pushbacks from Andy. We had great raids from Tato. We had demos from Andy mm -hmm. against Tato. Tato didn't land a single really big demo mm -hmm. in that game. So really, really solid stuff. Excited to see what we can see from Andy in this tournament. Tato, that's basically what we expect. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he will have bigger tasks coming up in the next days, right? He will most likely face a winner tomorrow mm -hmm. as well out of the other four winners that are going to happen. And I will simply send you over to the interview. Okay. While I say um, thank you, Dave. Yeah, no problem. That was that was a lot of fun, man. That was a good match. Yeah. That was a good match and very promising when it comes to the map. I c simply can say something about the format that's a bit weird if you didn't watch this one on the Nili AOE main channel because lots of other casters are supporting this event and we will cover the first set of the day for the first five days on our other channels and then they will basically send their viewers over here to the main event. So what's going to happen is we will have four more sets coming up for today. Now we will go into the winner interview and I, I can't thank those people enough, right? They are thinking, okay, it is not our goal to like massively grow our own channel. They want to support this event. They want to make this one the bang that everyone is hoping for. And I'm extremely grateful for this. So there will be a lot of new viewers coming in. You will just explain the format to them. We'll be friendly. And, well, I, I'm just really happy. I think we were already breaking like 16,000 viewers or something in the first set. And that is really, really promising overall here. And I'm happy with that. And thank you all for the support. Obviously, we are like 13,000 away from me being basically break even. And then every single dollar is going to be put into the prize pool. And now we have a smiley Tato together with Dave talking about the great set. And after that, we will have a drawing game also featuring Tato. This is our buddy, Panda po Hippo Hippopandamus. Uh, Tato, congratulations, man. Thank you. 3-0, first set. Is yeah. that how you expected it was going to go? No, 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 no. Uh, I knew I was going to be a bit favored. Yeah. Because as well, like, freaking out is his first land. So the start is always shaky when you you are, like, uh, new yeah. to this. And, uh, like, for sure, like, I, I was not overconfident, but I knew that if I play my solid and I don't make mistakes, I should, should win. So first game, outcrop, Poles versus Saracens. That seems like a tricky matchup for Poles. Like, what was your game plan going in? Well, I knew that um, it can be tricky in the sense that if I go full uh, strategy lets and then I go full knights, he has the best cables. But I knew that uh, Obuka and Arbalis is a really good combo yeah. as well. So I, I had that option in mind when I, I saw the matchups. Well, this was a good moment here where you got in. Oh, yeah. And, like, that's so much value from those scouts that you just didn't expect, right? It's Annie. You expect it to be quick-walled. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Like, I, I thought, like, I will double-check because when first I scouted in Feudal, it was still open. So I wasn't sure if he was still, like, fully walled or not. Yeah. And when I saw the, that he was open, I took the chance and I... I think it paid off. I, I got a huge advantage there. And then this moment right here, you go forward with the castle. You felt the first attempt over on the right side. You had to delete it. Go forward. Did you suspect he was on the way to Imperial Age here? And were you just like trying to buy yourself some time? Yeah, I knew he was up. Yeah. Because um, like he was doing army at all, right? I was mostly doing it. So light cap, and then I knew that um, he had also like another DC there. So he, he had like really good map control yeah. on, the, on the bottom part. So. He didn't commit into army, and I knew okay, like he's up now when he built the castle. Yeah. So I will I will go forward on him. So he needs to, he's forced to do more like uh, army at home or like he needs to react at home, and then that allows me to have more time to expand on the on my side. Yep. And then get like keep the map control. Even if I lose the like the other castle as well, I knew he was up. I think he was already imperial. Mm -hmm. 
But if I don't build that castle, he's probably he's already... He's in your farms. Or he's on my farms, stuff, or yeah. he's probably taking map control yeah. of my resources, right? Yeah. So I was, okay, this castle is just to buy time. I forced him to do another castle, I didn't expect that. So I, th I think that was actually really good for me. But Were you afraid of him ever, like, getting to a composition that would counter you? Mm, I feel like Mamelux is not we. I mean, unless you have, like, a sick economy. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it's hard to keep up. Yeah. Because I can raid, like, he needs to get, get all together while I can be more active on the yeah. map. Yeah. So I think his misplay there was probably going for Mamelux okay. at the start. Like, I think like he, should, he needed all the units first mm -hmm. and then probably switch to Mamelux eventually. Yeah. So game two, Brood War. He goes forward. Wh what were your thoughts on uh, like the dock pressure from him? Were, were you expecting him to commit so hard onto the water? Uh, I actually don't. Uh, I saw the first dock only mm -hmm. and it was okay. I killed the villager, then he's no more. And then he, <laughs> he sent another one. And I guess he didn't scout my range on time, so yeah. Otherwise, I think he would have not sent the second one. And then you went for the hand cannons, of course. And this this amazing moment, ninety six percent. That was so lucky. Yeah, that was so lucky. I'm not sure how was the economy at that point. Mm -hmm. I guess he was still ahead, but I have chemistry, obviously, which is a huge investment. Uh, but at that point, when I saw that he was really DC, I knew that I was on a really, really good spot. Yeah. Well, you managed, I mean, he invested so much into the water and you managed to keep yourself safe. And then you had those three archers roaming around and he was so scared of them. He, he opened stable here. So yeah. it was uh, really, really solid from you. Probably the easiest game of that set. How are you feeling going into game three? Were you really comfortable or were you nervous about Hippopotamus? I know. I feel like Hippopotamus is really hard to, it's to play. It's a difficult map. Man. It's a difficult yeah. map. So uh, I don't know. I feel like uh, that map is. As I said, like I think probably the one that doesn't have like a proper meta mm -hmm. that you can have different openings. Like you see a lot of people like I did, like going for the Dude, this is so like, cheeky. And then you avoid his fish. So he goes to the dock block and then suddenly you're in the back of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I didn't see the second dock. I saw the first one. Yeah. And then it was okay. Why is he well, there's no it? other reason you would put it there, right? Yeah, true, true. I was a bit confused. Like, why he's building the dock there? And then when I saw the second one, I said, okay, it makes sense. But then I guess he didn't expect me to be at the back. So you got demoed a billion times this game. You didn't really demo him at all. How does that make you feel? <laughs> you like proud of him? <laughs> I was actually laughing. At, like when he demoed my hand cannon, I was yeah. laughing. Uh, I think I didn't have that much chance. I did build a demo at the start here to see he had the, the dog villagers in, in my side. Yeah. So I could use the scout and with the demo kill them. But uh, yep, like he, he had more chances and he used them Really good. I, I like it. I like it. So this point of the game, you're both going for a castle here. You're just trying to buy yourself time again? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I knew that like, he wasn't doing units again. Like, He plays with so little units that is clearly like he wants to aim for Imperial mm -hmm. ASAP, right? And at uh, this point, okay, I will castle drop. He will try to reach Imperial, and then I can do some mo like moves on the map and tr try to be annoying to buy ti enough time until Imperial. So... At any point in this game, were you nervous? Mm, it was a bit tricky. Maybe when I lost like a couple of years on the fish, but I felt like I had I was under control the whole the whole, yeah. the whole the whole game. That's Persians for you, right? Yeah, that's Persian. You just know you, if you keep your TC running, you're always going to be ahead. For sure. For even sure. If, even though you got twelve villagers demoed or something. Twelve? Oh yeah. yeah. Or no, no, I think like nine. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Did you not even see that? No. <laughs> it's it's classic. I, I saw I had. Where are the, the other villagers? But I didn't know <laughs> how many I had to be fair. I guess those that's, are the best demos when you you oh. don't even realize that you've lost. I guess that's. I guess I was way more ahead before that, yep. and then it kind of yep. get it even. Well, the Persian TCs, they just kind of add up over the game, right? Yeah, yeah. It feels like sure. they're so strong They're insane. Now. They're insane. So, moving forward, uh, what do you think your overall chances are? Because we haven't talked to you yet over just general NAC. What, what is your goal for NAC, and what do, you, what do you think your overall chances are in this tournament? Mm, I, I name him for a top four. Yeah. I will be really happy with a top four because the competition is super high and it's like everyone here is super prepared. So, top four already will be a huge ach achievement for mm -hmm. me. But obviously, if I can, I, I would like to win it, for sure. Like, it's the land I see. I haven't, I've been in only one final it's Viper, so yeah. I want to repeat, for sure. What are your feelings on uh, the final NAC? Oof. It's kind of weird, isn't it? It's, uh, how is the English word? Bitter sweet? No. 
bittersweet yeah. bittersweet yeah, yeah. Th that's kind of it is yeah. like i try i will try to enjoy every single moment and remember for forever for sure yo yo <laughs> 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 Thank you, Tato. Um, I don't know who we're handing it off to. Nilly is busy talking over there, but he does have a microphone. So I Nilly just the noticed house. the shine, the absolute beautiful shine coming off. It's reflecting off your face. The mustache. Off of my head. <laughs> yeah, off the you. mustache. The mustache is the key. We'll yep. We're going to pass it on to, I believe, I it see. It will be a mix of all of us. Tato. Mix of all of us. Exactly. Have uh, you prepared? Uh, and without, without you. Okay. <laughs> so all of us <laughs> without Dave. <laughs> So what we're doing now is Tedo, the master of drawing, is going to draw something. Uh, it's really bad. That you're really bad. That's the pen, Tedo. And the three of us are trying to guess what you're drawing. Uh, so I can do whatever I want. You can do whatever you want. Obviously, Age of Empires related. And do we want to play till someone has three or five points? Three. Three it points. It will take long enough. So three OK, OK. So someone of us gets three points. Tedo is drawing. Make sure, Tedo, that you're obviously far to the left when you're drawing and be, be slow. Yeah. Tease us a bit. Okay. Doubt. <laughs> Janissary. Ooh. Uh, oh, I'm uh, really bad at this, though. Archer. No. Surely something more unique. Ballistics. Elephant archers. It's ballistics. Oh! <laughs> Did you even try, Hera? Well, it was unfair. I don't even know that upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> you only know how to dodge. Okay. Well played, I guess. I'll, I will take one point. You're allowed to say something, by the I, way. I, I oh. know, but I was waiting. I but wasn't I, like, he, how, uh, he took so much time, so it was obvious he wasn't going for Archer. But he was drawing an Archer, and he didn't continue for a unique unit, so he was thinking like, ahead. Yeah. Are you like professional in this game? or like? <laughs> I am now. Oh, they start. 1-0 yeah. for Nili. I'm really bad at drawing, though. Okay, okay. First time really in his life. Guessing it. <laughs> uh, I will make it simple, I think. Archer. <laughs> Hand cannon here. Oh, yes, on a roll. I feel like we're getting played here. Oh, yeah, yeah. What is this? I feel like okay. we're just getting embarrassed. Okay, the most. <laughs> <drawing. laughs> <The, the laughs> no, he was joining. That's, that's the, the first thing. The moment it's 3 0, I will let you continue for a second. I place. thought it was just me and Leary for the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. I don't expect to play professional. Okay, I, I, I will sit out one round. Tato, yeah, do, so, do, do, do something easy like villager or something. Not a villager now, though. I will do the same that. If you're not playing this one, I will do the same that yesterday. They've they been playing this one. They've been playing it. Monk. <laughs> what is that? Um, Oops. For I only know archers in AOE. Like, <laughs> is a chair? Or? Is that a is that a horse? No way. Janissary. Janissary. Oh, oh, good one. Oh, no, I recognize nice. the hat. Nice. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I'll take it. Okay, Nelly, get back in here. It's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's too easy with Leary. Okay, what can we do? <sighs> House. Barracks. Archer, Archer range. range. TC. Wagon, who's that wagon? Ram, ram, ram. Who's that wagon? Battering ram. Cap C ram. C-Jam, C-Jam. What? Bro, step back, like. Uh, hold on, my bad, my bad. <laughs> oh, 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 elephant ram, elephant ram. <laughs> siege, siege ram, siege elephant. I don't know what that <laughs> is. Exactly. Probably Looks like a siege ram, but this is not like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think the face is not the best part. Hand card. Uh, not hand card. War elephant? Hand card. Tra trade card. How's it called? Is it not an elephant ram? A war dragon? No. War wagon. I actually think it doesn't have wheels. Wo oh, but that would I help? mean, that's a huge. Yeah, yeah, well. Uh. Uh, Let's do it again. Okay, okay. Let's reset. Let's start reset. Uh, no wheels. Everyone no wheels. zero. Archery range. Actually, <laughs> house. <laughs> 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 now he's doing wheels again. <laughs> no, these are legs. It can walk. It's a walking house. Uh, um, a bit louder over there. I can't hear. Dog. We're guessing as well. What is that elephant house? Uh, war elephant? Battle elephant? Any sort of elephant. House elephant. Archer range elephant. Okay. Siege ram. Is this AOE related? Is this, what is this? That's your final product? Siege engineers. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
And then the wheels are back. <laughs> no, no. Those are not wheels. Taro, the, the goal is that we can actually guess it, Taro. <laughs> a camel, im camel, heavy camel. I mean, Jara <laughs> camel. Archery race. Not too bad, I think. Sandwich. Okay. It's a tur turtle sandwich. First letter. No, 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 don't do first letter. No, no, no. Forward, what? heavy plow. Farm, a farm. A farmer, a villager. Forest nothing. Black no. forest. Do you know what it is? Oh, oh uh, wait, what? a mill? A full work? A sheep, farmer. a sheep. A sheep. Hunter. 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 Mule cart, mule, mule cart. cart. Mule cart. Oh, oh, how Come did in. we not get that? Oh. Oh, my God. Uh, what? <laughs> a mule. He I never had uh, a unit before. He, I am mule he, he cart. Come, he he didn't have the DLC. We he didn't have the DLC. <laughs> no, honestly. He's I never don't. seen it in his life. <laughs> Okay, you Are we supposed to draw units we know? Yeah, now you fight for a second spot, guys. Well, well played, though. Well played. I'll, I'll give you. Uh, I was, I was yeah, really happy. That was, that was oh. really good. Yeah. Yeah. Might be your best AOE performance to date. Ever. Though, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was. Paper, scissors against United Love. Oh, and that's, that's <laughs> epic as well. Oh. oh. Uh, okay, okay, well, well are we playing me and Deary? Yeah, 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 you're finishing okay. for second place. All right. I need basic units. Archers. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> archers. Archers. You didn't know <laughs> ballistics. Um. <laughs> Should I whisper you? Okay, let's go. Let's see. Okay, now I should have sort of thought of something. Needle, we'll uh, let's we'll think of some upgrade. <laughs> Siege engineers or something. <laughs> Guard tower. Okay, I got him something reasonably tricky. Camel archer. <laughs> it's truly not an archer. It is. Cam Ma archer. Long bowman. Rat and archer. Composite bowman. Something with arrows. So chemistry. Chemistry. Whoa! I knew it was an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I knew it was an upgrade. Of course, it was an upgrade. Wait, did, did it's two for you now, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's two for Hera, one, uh, zero for Liri. It's okay, I will focus on okay. Liri. <laughs> <laughs> you need another one? Uh, okay, let's say. Can I do a map? Well, map now, now you can't. <laughs> it would be now. good now, though. I, 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 I have something for you. That's a long upgrade. <laughs> okay, this will take a while. It will take a while? It will take a while. I'm sorry for being lazy too, if I'm not. Uh, Castle. Okay. It's a composition of words. Yeah, yeah. so it's not only one word. Mm. Yeah, it's... it's Composite Bowman? Compo composition? <laughs> not it? Yeah. Fortified Church. How is the thing called? Th that was a good church. guess, actually. Yeah, it's called Fortified Church. A uh, blacksmith? No. Univer no, it's composite. Uh, is it the combination of words? It's basically yeah, it's basically two words. Two words. Is it one thing though? Mm. Archery range. <laughs> it's it's m might have been too tough. Siege yeah, workshop. Ju just just do uh, just do the second part. Okay. Just do the second part. Was that the first part? Production buildings? That's a good drawing. Long oh, uh, men at arms, men at arms. Uh, Drush. Men at arm rush? Long swords, then. Yeah, long swords. Long sword. Oh, but it, it was going to be Hans. Hans Longsword. Hans Longsword. Oh. So I was going to do like no houses, but it, it was That's hard. crazy. That was me against Liri too. That was yeah. a very relevant picture. I was picture. really proud of that, but it's too tough to draw, right? How does yeah. like yeah. Hans and Longsword? It's going to be tricky. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, that was a good one. Uh, great drawing, Tato. Thank great you. set as well. Yeah, well done. Thank and you. now we have get one ACC. Game, right? No, we have Mr. Yo against Jordan. Jordan. What are we thinking? Hopefully Ooh. not 3 0. Um, I think I Mr. Yo should be the favorite. I think it's close, actually. Yeah, yeah, I, I can definitely three see. 3-1, 3-2. Three I, I, I will go for a wild one, and I'm going to say 3-2 for Jordan. Mm -hmm. But I do think that Yo being the favorite is uh, the normal thing, I mm -hmm. think, here. Actually, Viper and I also predicted 3-2 for Jordan. Maybe I know something as well. Mm -hmm. Liri? I would go 3-1 Jordan. 3-1 Jordan. Okay. Any, any Mr. Yo fans? like? Any Mr. Yo fans in chat? Throw him something? Monk's got nerfed, Ma maybe. Though. Okay, we have two Mr. Yo fans already <laughs> waiting to talk about it. Let's send it over to... Dash and T90. 
Let oh. me help you out. Yeah, Turn yeah, that yeah on. thank you. For yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Also, got, don't worry, I got you. Bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> that's. I mean, three two predictions not that crazy for this series, but uh, no, but I mean, four, all of them, all four people. Yeah, yeah like everybody's saying uh, Jordan over. Don't get me wrong, as you as you just mentioned, like I think this series can go either way. Yeah. Uh, but we have to remember uh, four invited players to this uh, event. They were the four players Based who finished in the top four last time last around, time. and Mr. Yo was one of them. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Dash. This is T90. We're going to be your casters for the second set of the day, Jordan versus Mr. Yo. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I think this one's going to be very interesting because Jordan, obviously a big transition for him throughout this year as well, right? Taking a, mm -hmm. a slight step back from yep. the competitive scene, but still showing us that he has everything it takes to compete at this level. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the results and how Jordan has played ever since he announced I'm no longer full-time, you're not seeing a difference, right? The guy right. showed up. He's been performing really well. He's been incredibly consistent. 2v2 tournament last month. Won that tournament with Viper against some great players. Qualifies for this. Um, Jordan's Jordan, right? He's super consistent. Yeah. Uh, he's a great guy. I'm sure we'll have plenty of opportunities throughout NAC to get a look, greater look into his personality. Too. And I will say, if there's anything uh, about uh, this tournament this time around that maybe uh, works in Jordan's favor, it is the differences that we have in terms of the draft phase, both yeah. in terms of civs and maps, right? With those 12 random civ bands, I think it puts a, a major emphasis on the players who have a deep history yeah, and understanding of strategy, right, and and the ability to stretch themselves across any number of civilizations, and I think that's where Jordan can actually stack up against a lot of others. Yeah. Whereas we might see a player like freaking Andy, first big tournament for him on a land, maybe is going to struggle if he gets forced off of some of the more comfortable positions that he's in. I will say though, Jordan, of all the players here, has always been that type that he, he like gets it nailed down. He understands it after practicing it a bit. So he might not be quite as like fluid in terms of understanding if certain civs are banned out. I do right. think that like him and his teammates or now actually he's no longer technically That's on a good point. GL. But They're still friends though. I'm sure they'll help each other out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I imagine they were during training. Anyways, um long story short, like I, I do think there's gonna be some civilizations that would have wanted. Uh we got a peak of the draft. We did. Here it is. And so I, I think Jordan, Georgian's pick right there, early Saracens as well. These are like typical. Anytime there's a new civilization, you think Jordan and co. Uh, and then obviously with Saracens too. So I think the the random bands, which are going to add to a lot of uniqueness to our sets, it hasn't taken it much away from Jordan, I'm guessing. Right. Absolutely. And how about this? Just taking a look at the maps as well. It excites me the diversity that we're going to see right here on day yeah. one. There's only one shared map between this set and the first set of the day. That would be Acropolis. And we didn't even get a chance to see it. Yeah. But here we are. We're going to start on Enclosed, a very different kind of, uh, I think, uh, pace at the outset, right? It was yeah. uh, outcrop in set number one. This one perhaps going to start at a slightly slower pace, less aggression yeah. because of the safety that Enclosed gives you. It's also really fun because the very first game – sorry, the, the longest game that I think I've covered <laughs> – and you probably have ever covered it. Yeah, well. definitely the longest <laughs> game I've ever covered. Well, I, I should say, okay, I, sadly, I've gone way longer. But I mean, in terms of right. competitive over the last yeah, say, year like, and a half. Like an eight hour Michi game or something. Yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Wait, what was it, two and a half hours last year? But between it was, I think and it was real time hours, right? Yeah, it was. It long. was real time because it, it got around like 3 30 game time or something along those lines. Long enough that you took a bathroom break in the middle in of the game. In the middle of the game? <laughs> <laughs> and we tried to hide it. We did. We, we did. tried to hide it. We did a freaking. Freaking chat <laughs> was like T90P, T90P, yeah. We so, did pretty good. We did pretty good. Yeah. If um, I do say so myself. So, but, but like, okay, so obviously we – I really hope we don't have a three-and-a-half-hour game here. But it is a really nice game to ease your way into a series, right? Uh, I know these guys have done so much in their careers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's the traveling here. It's your first series. It it still is, is a different feeling than you're used to. So to, to get in a map and enclosed, which does have some aspects of aggression, but it's not quite as aggressive. Yeah. That's going to be good for them. I, I think, like, a low-risk play... Uh, we'll ease our way towards Castledge. We'll have a lot of time to talk. I, I was going to say, they'll definitely warm up into this one. Get, just give me your overall thoughts, though, on the draft. Do you have a feeling that one player kind of eked out a slightly better draft, uh, either you know in the way that their civs either interact with the maps themselves or just the way that you know any individual player plays with those civs, perhaps? Um, I, think, I think Jordan has an edge on Copenhagen. That okay. one is a little bit more uh, structured in terms of how you play it. Chinese are really good there. Um, so I think there's that. I think on enclosed, I think slabs for for a yo. A little surprised it was a late pick actually. Jordan has loved 
to pick the slabs himself. So I think slabs Franks, you give it edge to Yo. Mm -hmm. The other maps, maybe a bit of a toss up. So yeah, I think like it's hard for me to really say that one player's got an edge, but I will say this about the Georgians. The civilization's still quite new. Mm -hmm. um, the unique unit, the Manaspa, it, it either produces too fast, it's too cheap, or it's too much attack. There's something, something. there. We're going to find out over the next <laughs> 10 days. But there's something there. Uh, on top of the mule cart, which Tato so wonderfully drew. Yo. Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay, that was so fun. We were all standing over there having just as much difficulty as the guys up here guessing yep, that. Yep. But once we learned the answer, we were like, oh. actually, we're like, that's actually a really damn good drawing of a yep. mule cart. Because yep. I don't know how I would have approached that either. I to wasn't be looking at I wasn't looking at what live viewers were saying, but I'm sure a bunch of people were screaming it. So Yeah. Um but yeah, I, I think the Georgians will be the sieve, I think, that stands out to me. It's like, what is Jordan going to do with that? Because he picked it first. Right. He picked it really early. So uh, a lot of that, though, could actually be 50-50. Like, part of it might be because Jordan believes in the Georgians, but the other half is Yo loves... Just keep it away he, from him. Yo loves uh, cab unique unit civilizations like the Lithuanians, mm. for example. We could easily see, like, Latis from Yo at some point. So yep. we'll see. But uh, it, it should be an awesome series. So let's get back to, like... You know, the predictions of the, of the wonderful players uh, right. over here and nearly. Well, okay, let's just start with what Harris said, right? Because he said, conventional wisdom says that Yo is the favorite. That was such a and, cat. and yet, I'm yeah. going to predict Jordan in a 3 1 3 2 fashion. I will say, as a caster, Hera gave the most caster answer there. He yeah. said, he said, I pick this, but uh, actually, the other side could be pretty reasonable as well. That's what yeah, I do. Both all guys the time. are really good. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I can't be wrong if I say it this way, you know. Um, but no, listen, I looked up the match history. Yeah. Oh. Before before we talk about their overall, because they've been playing a long time. Yep. What's the first recorded, what year do you think was the first recorded tournament result for Jordan versus Yo? Oh, God, you're testing me. Because obviously, I, I dove back into the scene in 2017, but it had to be, I'm going to go like 20. 12? It was 2012, 2012 am I it right? It was 2012, yeah. Okay, hell yeah. It pure, was, pure guess, by the so way. But. It, was, it was, yeah, 2012. It was a 3-0 for Jordan. Hey. And then two years later, it was a 4-2 for Jordan. But ever since, there has been uh, nine sets, and Yo has won all but one of them. And that was that Hidden Cup 4. We're, I mean, that was an incredible series by Jordan. And so, again, while obviously statistics favor Yo in recent history, you see what Jordan's capable of yeah, on his yeah, day. Yeah. And I think that goes back to, well, maybe a cop-out answer, goes back <laughs> to the point that the pros were making, yeah. right? Which is that if if they feel like Jordan is in the slot right now, right, yeah. really feeling himself, then he is perfectly capable of taking down Mr. Yo, and not just in a 3-2 fashion, perhaps in even more dominant fashion than that. So uh, we'll find out soon enough as the players look just but about ready. Jordan's in the zone, man. Look at him. Oh, no, he got pulled out of the zone. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> He's being told, <laughs> hey, get started or something here. But there's, there's some of the stats for them and their yeah. career earnings, how long they've been around. But listen, I don't, I don't know if Jordan's going to necessarily say this, right? But... He he's sitting in a GL chair. He was on the GL team. Obviously, a lot of respect for GL. I don't think there's animosity there. But Jordan's not done competing. He's no. a competitive player, and he has played for that team for a long time. I think Jordan wants to show everybody, hey, I'm still here. Absolutely. I'm still here. I'm still going to destroy. And he had to fight his way here. Yeah. Uh, yep. You know, for those of you at home who may not have caught the qualifiers, uh, qualifier one unfortunately didn't go Jordan's way and took an early exit, but did manage to get through in the second qualifier and make it back to another NAC. Also, just call out here, signature unit and Civ over there for Mr. Yo. He managed to snag both of them in his draft, mm -hmm. Mayans <clears throat> and Cumans. So a lot of comfort for Mr. Yo, just in terms of the civs. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> any any civilization uh, that can make an eagle, Yo's always been fantastic <laughs> with. I think, actually, on the bands as well, Jordan would have banned the Incas. I could be wrong. One of them banned them, and so clearly there's a lot of faith there. Right. But, I mean, previous NSC finishes, does it all for Yo. Yo is so fun. I spoke to him this morning. We're eating breakfast. That's the beauty of NAC. You're mm -hmm. here around the players. And I said, Yo, like, how are you feeling about the series? And he goes, no feeling. <laughs> and I was like, Wait, no feeling. I was like, what do you what do you mean? And he's like, well, he's like, he's like, if there's no feeling, it's best because then I'm not pressure. I don't feel pressure. Doesn't feel pressure. So I think, basically, as he explained it in more detail, he's like, could go either way. I'm not gonna put a lot of expectation on myself, and uh, clearly that that works for him. But it's just so fun. Yo is so good. But every time I talk to him, like every time I get to hang out with him in person. He's just so nonchalant, and I, he doesn't he doesn't come off like he thinks he's a god. He doesn't. No, he <laughs> no, he absolutely never does, right? Um, yeah. But I think that's also kind of what makes him so scary yeah. because you just know 
and uh, it was said by somebody else earlier as well, like, he ramps up during tournaments as well. Yep. So as things go on, he's going to get scarier and scarier. And part of that is because he doesn't get shaken. It's, yep. It goes back to that idea of, like, I don't put that much pressure on myself. Yep. And I think that allows him to pro approach every set with a similar mentality. And he doesn't ever get thrown off his game or very rarely does at that. And, uh, and again, I think another indicator of that is just last year's NAC, where both Yo and Viper through the Swiss stage, they finished 5-6. They weren't actually in the top four through the Swiss, but then made it all the way up into that top four before Hera and Leary were able to push themselves to the finals. And so what's also... Oh, sorry to interrupt no, you guys, but what's also really exciting from a from a viewer standpoint, you look at the results from Yo last time. It was a 3-2 victory over Nikov, a 3-2 over Vinch, a 2-3 loss to Veleza, 3-1 against Tato, 3-2 against ACCM. This guy simply just churns out entertaining Age of Empires 2 games. That's true. You're, we're, yeah, if that's any indication, we're definitely getting more than three games between these two players. And yep. I think Jordan also kind of feeds into that as well at times. Um, you know, very rarely going to lose a set in completely, you know, 3-0 mm -hmm. fashion. So I see some fingers moving on keyboards. Hopefully that means very soon we're diving into the first game of the set here. Wait, okay, wouldn't it be epic if one of the drafts matched the civilizations that are there on that wall? That would be, how many do we have up there? We have 11 civs up there. I, I horrible okay. math, but yeah. Yeah, I'm going to take your word for yeah, it. And yeah, here yeah. we are. Hey. First series uh, for Jordan and for Yo. The second series of NAC5. This is group stage. I am T90. I am with Dash. And we've gotten closed, which we said would maybe be Franks versus Slavs. And we said would be a rather relaxed start to our series, Dash. So yeah. let's go. A couple of cavalry civs here going to be, uh, I think, all about who plays it better, right? Yeah. You've got a lot of similar tools. Of course, there are small differences between the two civs. Uh, but at the end of the day, both going to favor the cavalry in the long run. Uh, obviously, incredible farming eco from the Slavs, and typically your farming eco on enclosed is very safe, right? Mm -hmm. That's the safe element of your eco along with wood lines. It's about extending to those golden stone positions where it starts to get a little sketchy, and that's where we might see some feudal age aggression. Correct, and both civilizations are really good at that. They are so good at churning out scouts, so we'll probably see scouts and spearmen here. Um, the last time these two played each other in a tournament, it was Warlords 2. Ended up being a 4-3 victory for Jordan in that <laughs> series. Uh, for Yo, excuse me, in that series. But I just had to check because I was like, hold on a second. Something seems familiar. They played on a closed against each other. It was Franks versus Slavs. Oh. Only it was, it was switched. So it was Jordan as the Slavs. And it was uh, Yo as the Franks in that game. And who got the better of who in that the, one? The Slavs won. The Slavs won. Yep. Okay, so it was Jordan with the Slavs last time taking the victory. But... This time around, he's going to have to do it with the opposing Civ in the Franks. Pretty solid start for both squads here. Two on wood for each. I love that adjustment as well, especially when you know you're playing into scouts and, uh, and spears, right? You don't need to be heavy on that wood. Get yourself up to Feudal Age as quickly as possible. I find it, I find it very awkward at times with the Franks on this map. It's such a weird thing, but if you look at those stone piles there, it's just two tiles. Mm -hmm. And... While you are Franks, and that's still enough to get a castle because the castle's cheaper, if you really want to be pushing forward with multiple castles, you're, you're just constantly needing to relocate villagers. And that's just one more thing to, to add into the mix when we see a lot of the fights. So, you know, I do feel as though there's that element when it comes to the castle pushes of the Franks. I think that's less likely. But on the flip side of things, the Slavs... The unit they win this game with here is their unique unit, the mm. Boyar. The, the Boyar is incredibly good in this matchup. Uh, Boyar is... Something you have to produce out of castles, though. So I think, like, we're going to see fighting with other things. Maybe we'll be extremely unlucky and we won't see a single castle here. But I think that's what the players are ultimately fighting for. Economy and castle spots. Yeah, the deer pushes come in as both players make their way to the feudal age. It's a uh, slightly earlier click here for Jordan, but one less villager on the field, of course. So we'll see what he can do with that about 30-second advantage in the feudal age time. Just going forward now to scout his opponent. You saw already, though, earlier, Yo with the early pre-walls on his berries. So he's guarding against any kind of cheeky early aggression here from Jordan. Yeah, also no loom here. I think that's why, too. Oh. He's actually, um, it's been an interesting thing here. He's got an extra vill, and they're going to be up at relatively similar times. So he's just trying to squeak out a little bit more eco, delay the loom upgrade. Uh, but, you know, that... It, he's, just, he's just doing the smart thing there to make sure that one villager isn't exposed. It would go down even with Loom at this point, and there's Jordan now. Yeah, Feudal Age comes in. Loom will follow for Jordan. He's forward with that scout, but won't find a villager pick early as the barracks comes up just in time. But here goes the stable. For Jordan, we expect to see it matched on the other side, and it will 
be at that. Here we go, getting a look at the berries. Yo has yet to come forward with his scout. Obviously, in close, you know where your opponent is. You're not going to be surprised by the location of your opponent. Um, and as you mentioned, given the Civ matchup, it's a pretty guarantee, pretty much guarantee what your opponent's going into in feudal. So one of the few, few times that you can say not scouting might be the right play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This <clears throat> we said it at the start, right? Like this is a a very understood Civ matchup. Uh, Jordan is going to get a couple buffalo here, but even then he's like transitioning into farms, which are so good with Frank. So really, we just got to wait till we get to that four or five scout number. That's when spearmen on their own can be picked off, and then it's a matter of. How many spearmen do you make? Uh, how many scouts do you even make if you're expecting your opponent to make spearmen? Do you possibly consider going out to gold for archers? Neither civilization really has any bonuses that flow towards archers dash. So that is something that players typically fight against doing here. Right. But as back to your point, if they're not scouting as much, if they're assuming a lot of things, a couple archers with the spearmen could potentially do something. Yeah, right now we're just seeing some dancing between the scouts as both players get the numbers out onto the field and group their units up. I mean, I think something not to be ignored as Yo did match the Ecotechs of Jordan is that there is an investment to get that horse collar there for this last player. So yep. just a small amount of food and wood that Jordan can choose to invest differently, either get those farms up quicker that said, you saw how many numbers Yo already has in terms of those farms and slab farmers, nothing to scoff at. That What you said is a good point, though, because with how quickly they went up, with having less villagers on berries, Yo actually can't make that next scout right now. So he he's going to get to more numbers in a second, but he doesn't have the five that Jordan does. Franks also have additional HP. So yep. right here, that should be a dead spearman right there. Jordan... Could have jumped on it, a for little, sure. A little surprised, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, he wants to maintain his scout HP. Yeah, definitely could have jumped on it, but both players already have their house walls up and a lot of safety for both their farmers and lumberjacks. So just dancing around the different berry bushes, looking for a snipe. Jordan with the pre-wall in the archery range, but there you go. The first person looking towards a ranged unit is going to be Jordan. I'd love to see Yo's Fog of War here to see if he saw the gold miners. It might be, might have just missed it. I think he did. He will find out now the archery range. And so th this normally, it, Caught it. it feels like a natural spot to, to really ramp up the scout numbers if you think archers are going to come forward mm -hmm. and try and get you know armor, attack, and bloodlines to catch that out. But he, he's not actually queuing up any more I was going to say, I'm locked in on that military queue at the top of the screen, and you don't see any of those little pips coming in. So that indicates to me that Yo feels safe enough with what he has and feels like he can put more investment into the eco and race Jordan to the castle age. Yeah, and he's going to tower his gold, I imagine. I see he has no stone. Okay, so <clears throat> he, he recognizes the threat. But with just three scouts, again, this is some opportunities for Jordan here early on. You, you're not normally talking about early opportunities. With the scout numbers he has, a couple archers with that, the spearman from Yo will have to retreat. And Yo is playing pretty greedy here, Dash, to not make any more army. I think so as well. And we'll see if it pays off for him. The first archer's coming forward, and immediately those spearmen turn tail and run because they know they can't stack up against the ranged unit. He also sneaks the scouts by, which means opportunities for pickoffs for Mr. Yo, but by the same token, he's leaving his base relatively undefended when he's playing ultra greedy. That tower might be a clutch play yep. in terms of defense. It's, an, it's a really awkward tower in relation to the mining camp because he has to pull the villagers quite a few tiles to get into it. But it also, with a couple houses in front, mm -hmm. it, it is like, it, it, it's actually the perfect tower to block Jordan's access to walk across the stone there or even towards that gold. So Jordan's going to feel some level of pressure here. He's going to recognize that he's invested into archers, which should delay you in some ways. But I also love, Jordan hasn't even gone for fletching yet. He's still banking up to go Castle Age. Mm -hmm. So I, again, I got to bring it back to, Yo could have some problems here. There could be some issues for him. Yeah, they're keeping solid pace with each other in terms of the resources that they'll need to jump to the Castle Age. Jordan diving in, looking for a Vil pick. Half damage on that before he gets pushed away by the Spearman. But those archers come in to deal with the Spearman, and he's got a solid range position just outside the tower range here around the gold. If he did have Fletching, he might be able to harass a bit. Yeah, I wonder if he gets it. I think maybe he clicks up to Castle first. Yep, there it is. And then, oh, it's just so funny, you have four archers, right? And you're just like, okay, 150 resources for four archers. Are these archers worth it? <laughs> I, I mean, and, and then again, you consider that you're Franks, right? So, like, you don't really, if you invest in Fletching, then you almost feel like you have to do something yeah. with them in Castle Age. And I would rather see the investment of those resources either go into more cavalry units or start going for the boom. Yeah, I guess, like, at the same time, you also have two minutes till you're in Castle. So you're like, I got to you know, get more benefit from this. Yeah. 
Again, that tower is really interesting. Like, if he goes for crossbow, which he won't, or even the cav archer, which would be wild, that gold is not protected from upgraded archers. It's just enough for feudal, and it's it's awkward for Yo right now. Yeah, look at the reposition there for Mr. Yo. As Fletching does come in for Jordan, he is able to range those villagers. So going to make them just a little less efficient, possibly get a pick off if Mr. Yo lapses in his, you know, in his awareness and stops paying attention to them. Market coming up as well as both players are one minute away from the Castle Age. Yeah, we see all upgrades coming in for Yo that will apply towards his knights and uh, does have two stables there on the field. So he should be in a good spot. So like they're going to be up at the same time. Yo's going to have enough to push those archers away from his gold mm -hmm. because everything's so close. But knight numbers should be relatively similar. So I'm now curious about, like, is Yo going to be able to TC that gold? Yeah. He did lose a villager there, too. Knight numbers will be similar, but I'm not sure that the upgrades will be. Because we've got forging coming in while it's just the first armor upgrade for Jordan. Yeah. And that's Fair. when you put that 100 food and 50 gold into Fletching, that might have been sacrificing your yep. attack upgrade for your cavalry. So there we have the TC being dropped as well as a monastery back at home. So actually a relatively safe approach uh, to the Castle Age here for Jordan. Perhaps accepting that he's going to get pushed off of the front and then have to, you know, uh, ward against some damage coming in. Yeah, and uh, as a player... If you see your opponent drops a tower in Feudal, you then know they do not have the stone for the second TC. So it opens up an opportunity for you to get an eco lead. Jordan is, is, is doing just that right now. And I think he'll be happy. He killed one villager. He made it awkward for Yo. Yo, of course, had to invest in the tower. Yep. And Yo would have to buy stone in order to get the TC. So Yo will be one TC for a bit here. I think by all accounts, you would say at this position, Jordan is slightly ahead, right? Getting to that second TC, as long as he does not sustain too much damage in return while his eco is catching back up to yep. having to produce two vills at a time. It's such a minor thing, but I also want to call out Yo with that early town watch. One of my favorite things to see because I just think awareness, especially at the high level, has so much value. I agree. Right? It can I be, agree. It can be so undervalued at times, just information. I actually think it's a bit more meta now, but years back, Jordan was actually the player who really put the most value in the town watch. And we're talking like 2015, 2016. Right. Uh, but he was a player who got it all the time. These days, though, you know, even casters like ourselves recognize, <laughs> <laughs> recognize how, yeah. how important it is. But look at that. Both of the wood and food upgrades as well. Obviously, Frank's getting it for free on the, uh, the farm upgrade, but... We've got Bosaw coming in as well. So Jordan's eco is about to be off to the races. The onus is on Mr. Yo to either find some damage uh, or or match him by going to a third TC. We do see two Vils on stone, so that indicates he's going to slowly get himself to that second and third TC. Yeah, and but, I mean, second hasn't come yet. Jordan again going for the third. Mm -hmm. So, you know, economically, I think Jordan's in a good spot. I do love how both players have been active with their scouts, though. They know this will go late. They know there will be monks out there to get conversions. And Jordan, with a beautiful block here, he might actually be able to save his monk. Ooh. And just the snipe comes in yeah. for Yo in the last moment. Not quite, but he was able to get a conversion before that monk went down. So already finding some value from that monk. And at the very least, again, delaying the movement of Mr. Yo's army from coming forward, mm -hmm. right? A again, if I'm sitting on three TCs, I don't really mind losing some units if I'm preventing any damage from coming into my eco because I know that in the long run we're going to get there. Did we just hit 10k? Am I, am I allowed to say that scared me? <laughs> it freaked me out a little bit. I, I was going to say that was actually pretty terrifying. Actually, mostly because it came up on our second monitor as well. So <laughs> out, out the corner of my eye, I saw a, a, a Nilly. Uh, Sorry, Nilly, but that was that was not your best look. Anyways, uh, <laughs> the right now we're back and forth still. Like have roaming around looking for monk kills and what? Wait, what? Oh, the, it was the, was it, it, was the, the it was the other monk. I got okay. very, I was like, that's a retreating monk. Yeah. <laughs> the, that, I was like, did the monk continue to convert when inside the TC? Yeah, it was like somebody patched Franks and didn't tell me. Yeah. Monks, monks now convert on the move. Yeah, it was, it was good timing though on a light cab, I have to say. Yeah, for real. And uh, also at breakfast, I had a conversation with Yo, Tato, and Doubt. And uh, Yo, Tato, and Doubt were telling Yo, like, Yo, you, your conversions are crazy. Yo's like, No, I'm just as lucky as everyone else. He's like, That's something Hera started. But that was a, if anything, was a Mr. Yo conversion. That like have conversion yeah. there was from Jordan. That's what, you know what? That's what the next addition to Capture Age needs to be the average monk conversion time for each player over the course of the game. So the that, so, yeah, so at the end of the game, we can be like, Ah, no, this guy averaged way faster monk conversions. Unfair. They can do it. They yeah. can do it. Maybe, maybe <laughs> next time we'll see. So 
Oh, go ahead. The, amongst all this, right, we, we broke down the timing on the TCs, and it has paid off massively here for Jordan. He's got a 15 villager lead. But again, we said the last time they played each other, the last time these civs faced off, Slavs won. So right. you've got the the better civilization behind economically right now. We see plus two armor for Yo. Yo's going to have to start to try and press some advantages with military. And after a kill there on the monk, if he can do this, Yo, know, Slavs really get... Uh, they get out of control at times. Yeah, I just wonder how he's going to find damage, even with the monks going down. When you've got those three TCs protecting, just knights alone doesn't feel like enough. Yes, second armor upgrade will allow them to dive under the TCs a yep. little bit, but that's actually where that fletching is going to start to come back yeah, that's true. and, and that's pay true. dividends for Jordan yep. just from the TCs alone. But we've got a near 17, tw uh, you know, uh, villager upgrade or lead rather for Jordan. So he's feeling very good about his position in this game. Yeah, and I think uh, I wouldn't hate a fourth and a fifth TC on okay. this map. On other maps, you think maybe we shouldn't make as many villagers, but think about how spread out the stones are, how spread out the golds are, and how long this game is probably going to go, right? No one's going to kill the other before the Imperial Age, so I think it feels natural to maybe think about that right now if you're either player. Yeah, Jordan now looking for forging as well as handcart. So more upgrades coming in. Of course, Yo still has the advantage when it comes to the military upgrades. Is a good vil pick there on the stable and just delaying that going up for a small period of time. So keeping up the aggression as best he can, but I'm looking to see if maybe a villager comes forward, a siege workshop perhaps, to try and apply that castle age pressure. Because otherwise, I worry for Yo that the Vill difference is just going to become too big. You might be the better late game Civ, mm -hmm. but uh, if you're 10 minutes later to the late game, yeah, it I doesn't mean, matter. He's going to go brute force knights here. He okay. recognizes he, he's dropping more stables. And, you know, Jordan has done a really good job defending. We've seen a lot of monks die for Jordan, which, if you're a monk watching, probably makes you sad. But it's not actually that big a deal. He's got plenty of gold banked up. He still has his knight numbers. And he has soon going to be a 30 villager lead over Yo, which means he can take those losses. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, losing one villager over on the side, but still tracking the major group of knights here for Mr. Yo and matching him numbers for numbers. So even though he's slightly behind in the text, isn't really that much of a problem for him to keep Mr. Yo at bay. Look at the food count as well in terms of how many villages. We've got 31 vills on food here for Jordan. Yeah, I love the activity from Yo, though. He does have multiple groups. There he though he lost two monks, though. Activity from Jordan's off the charts, too. And as that vill lead continues to grow for Jordan, the HP is looking good for Yo, but Yo definitely needs more. Just now dropping the third TC, it is very, very rare to see that on this map. Yeah, KD's overall in favor for Mr. Yo. However close, it's that res collected that I'm looking at there. Now 2K advantage for Jordan as we have another night engagement. It's smaller numbers for Mr. Yo, but better upgrades. Backing up, though, because three monks all looking for conversions, and he will get his knights away safely. Yep, new technology coming in, Devotion. Oh. That will... That will uh, your units will resist conversion a little bit more. I don't even remember the stat, the exact percentage, to be honest. It's like 10 or 20 or maybe it's 25. Good. Well, but, uh, <laughs> don't expect, if you don't know it, don't expect me to know nah, it. Dude, okay? I'm, I'm always like three months behind. Yeah. I was added two and a half months ago. So. All, all I do know is that regardless of what percentage it is, yeah. it changes or rather shifts the entire range of conversion times. Yeah, so it yeah. shifts the minimum and the maximum. Correct. And, and it's 15%, yeah. it's which I definitely Which said. you knew. Yeah, I knew that. But, you knew. But the thing is, I got to know if the people know, right? Who are we bringing this content to? What, it's about are they it. informed? This is a learning experience for chat as, as much as anybody else, exactly, right? And yeah. so every once in a while, it's like a, being a teacher in class. I know the answer, but I'm going to call on you exactly, to see if yeah. you know the answer kind of a situation. There you go, Castle over on the left-hand side. So while all the military pressure is coming in on the, on the southern side, Jordan says, great, this is my opportunity to extend off to the left here, get a forward position, make sure that really it's going to be difficult for Mr. Yo to send units in through that through that side, and now I really only have to defend against this large group Oh, that of was beautiful there from Jordan. Yo. He drops a university and a couple houses to block the knights from running through. He will lose some units here, but he still has the eco lead, and he still should be able to push this back. So Yo's been active. Yo's found some good, solid kills, but he still can't break Jordan. Yeah, loses three monks, but finds two conversions before those monks go down. Jordan will continue to push these knights away again. Just about to hit 100 villagers as well. 30 population lead in total. More military numbers as yep. well. Jordan is looking really solid in game number one. Yeah, and I feel like when you've got the lead in these situations, 
this is where dropping three or four barracks and clicking the pikeman upgrade makes sense. Now, on a map where it's more expansive, where there's more space between them, sometimes players won't do that because you need the mobility still. But I'd like to see Jordan consider that now. You've got the lead with the Knights. Try and get an even bigger lead if you can. Yeah, taking another fight here. And actually, this time around, Jordan's going to retreat while having the tech advantage. Cast Iron just about to come in for Mr. Yo, which will make them match. And as we talked about, maybe Jordan going for the pikes. It's going to be Yo yep. who clicks the upgrade, going to continue that Castle Age aggression, feeling that he's behind and he needs to find damage. Yeah, remember, when you're playing, you can't select all your own units and the opponent's units to see the HP like that. So I think Jordan could have actually stayed in that fight the whole way through. Mm -hmm. But he, you've got to like manually hover over it. It's a little bit different there. There are actually options to show it all, but it looks horrible, so. <laughs> Jordan's got 47 military units on the field. 42 of those are Frank Knights to the 28 of Mr. Yeah. Yo on the other side. Of course, we do have four pikemen in the queue. And so if he gets those numbers up and Jordan takes an ill-advised engagement, we could start to see things swing back in the other direction, Squires, as well for the movement speed. But there's the Imperial Age wow. click for Jordan. And uh, I think this is scary because while we did see what Castle Age Aggression, late Castle Age Aggression can do in set number one of the day as Freaking Andy was typically the one to click to imp first and Tato would punish him for that. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is going to be a similar situation. Jordan, I think, has done enough in the Castle Age to make sure he'll get to imp without sustaining too much damage. Yeah, and what I love about what Jordan has done here, he's made it really easy to know where Yo is going to arrive from. So to take a fight here, that should be an amazing fight for Jordan. Could be even better if he brings in more units here, and he does. But on the other side, he's stonewalled to his castle. Yep. And then here, he's housewalled and used the archery range towards that opening. Because you cannot wall on that stone terrain. But he's essentially made it so there's like a 15-tile choke on both sides. He's always going to know where his opponent's coming from. Exactly. Yeah, and, and you're, the last thing you're going to want to do is run through a choke with a castle defending it. And yep. so, again, funneling Yo into just one Ooh, side of the map. This is big. This is big. This is a big fight here because we're like 90 seconds away from him. It's if a Yo big can fight. bring pikes forward, he doesn't have the pikes here. That's the big thing. We see that armor upgrade coming in for the pikes, and there they are making their way forward now. But Jordan just playing so conservatively, right? I mean, making sure that he's holding all of his military units in this choke, protecting the monks, getting the healing out, another stable, and now moving that mining camp. As you mentioned, the two tiles at a time. But he's going to defend that mining camp and get himself to a second castle. Yep. Jordan has just played like every, you know, thousand Elo Franks player. Just the whole game, <laughs> the whole game, you boom, you drop castles, you make knights. That's it. Yep. Done. And it's so good. It Franks is. have always been so good at this. It's not a diss on Jordan. And a big fight where Yoke pretty much needs to win, but that's just too many knights. Yeah. There's no way you're going to clear that up. It's 46 knights here for Jordan. Yes, he's 12 seconds from the Imperial Age, but he doesn't need it to win it. And so he's going to push all of this back here for Mr. Yo. At the same time, raiding with four knights, making a mess of Mr. Yo's eco. Where are the pikes, right, at this point? You've put all that investment into getting the pikes out onto the field, and I don't feel like it's netted you the result you needed to keep yourself in the game. We've got imp resources for Mr. Yo, but the click hasn't come in yet. And there it is. We've got the Cav uh, Cavalier upgrade on top of plate barding, on top of chemistry and conscription. Everything's looking good for Jordan here in game number Yo, one to close it out. Yo is a he's a master of comebacks, but he is really gonna have his work cut out for him. Jordan is gonna be max pop. He's gonna have Cavalier. He's actually under no pressure, so he could even just click Paladin. Sometimes you think maybe that's too expensive. Maybe I need to invest in other things. Is that herbal medicine? Uh, herbal can't. medicine. Okay, yeah, I was it gonna is. Say, my, <laughs> eyes, my, my eyes aren't great, but uh, even the herbal medicine tech, he's got two castles. He can just heal pop up. all those knights into yep. the castles and heal them back up. You love to see that. Yeah, Jordan researched handcart fastest out of all the players who qualified for NEC5. All right, cool stuff. Okay, and he got it very early. And, yeah, and this, also very timely game. stat because Yo does not have handcart. There you have it. <laughs> Which at 111 villagers, you would definitely want. But it's, it is one of those things. There's handcart now, actually. It's it's hard when you're under pressure to get the timings right with everything. There go those Cavalier on the in the north. And now. Jordan's eco so good. Look, dropping the archery range is he gonna go into hand cannons? Already has chemistry. He just clicked Paladin yep. T90. What is going on? And I think with chivalry being in, he must have the, the tech research is faster because it affects stable. So this is this is bad timing for Yo. You've got uh, 90 seconds till you're an imp to click the upgrades. Yeah. And your your opponent's 60 seconds away from Paladin. This is going to be a complete and utter wipe. Yeah. 
I was going to say, normally you don't mind having 1,700 food in the bank with 600 gold as yep. the slabs making your way to Imperial Age. Yep. But the time you do care about it is when your opponent's already there, and they're going to get Paladin before you make it to the Imperial Age. Yep, and, and this is all before hand cannons come out, which are a perfect addition here, mm -hmm. and that's, that's going to help against those pikes. Uh, Jordan being very patient. Right, he, he probably could have won the game already, but even before Paladin, but Paladin comes in, fully upgraded Paladin. That is 60 Paladin on your screen, folks. And Yo has no choice but to fight. He's got a hill to work with. Yeah. He's like, all right, let's hope for the best here. He doesn't even need the hand cannons, but they are his insurance policy in case things go wrong. Massive engagement, as you said. Yo has to take it. It's Castle Age Knights trying to force away Imperial Age Paladins. A couple boyars in the mix. All the pikemen go down, and Jordan is just running over over Mr. Yo. Yeah, and, and if Jordan's really thinking about it, he can start to raid the other side. Like, there's so much he can do. This fight, still going to be domination as he pushes deeper and deeper into Yo's base. Yo will go for Elite Boyar, which is the unit that could beat Paladin. Yep. But he's only got nine of them right now. Yeah, doing his best to pull the units back, try and suck Jordan into the center of his base, let the castle do work. But again, he's fighting at a massive tech disadvantage. Most of his units have already been eliminated, doing his best to keep those boy Boyars alive. 15 more seconds before, before Elite comes in, but it won't be enough. The GG is called. Mr. Yo takes, or uh, Jordan takes it. Yeah, it was a fantastic game from Jordan. I mean, honestly, we, we t had a lot of discussion about the archers. That is extremely uncommon in this matchup. Extremely uncommon. And it was only four. It was four archers. Four archers. But Yo and maybe Yo's decision to not make more scouts and to then drop the tower, losing yeah. the villager, being late with the town centers. Like, that was the big thing. You know, I was looking at Yo's resources when he made it to Castle because he dropped the market. And a lot of players will mm. buy that stone to build the TC, and he didn't do that. He chose to send the villagers to stone. It took too much time, and Jordan's eco won him that game. Yeah, just a little bit of damage there in the Feudal Age, right? Just stalling your opponent out a little bit, letting yourself get to the Castle Age. Look, goes right back into Zen mode. Yeah, Leans seriously, back, is that what that closed. is? Yeah, yeah I, you know? But hey, how interesting when shoes on the other foot, right? We talked about how they played this matchup last time around, and mm -hmm. it was the Slavs who got it, and Jordan with the Slavs. This time around, he wins the opposite side of the matchup, so he clearly understood it very well. Jordan is 2-0 against Yo on enclosed. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> on enclosed. Let's go. But can he take the set because you called it out, and recent history suggests that Mr. Yo will take it. Yeah. Um, and so what will he respond with, I think, now becomes the question, right? You've taken the first loss. Both players used later pick sips, yep. right? So it's not like you... you threw everything you had at game number one. Shouldn't be too off kilter. But now, we got four different choices of map to go to. Yeah. Now, you can, and someone can scream at me and correct me if I'm wrong here, but you can technically go to your opponent's home maps if you wish to. Yeah. That's rare, though. Very rare. So I would say that it's going to be uh, Langanati. Le okay, sorry. It's been a couple weeks since I've said that. Mm -hmm. Or Acropolis here for Yo. Um, you base it on uh, how you feel you're going to match up, obviously. I think Acropolis makes a lot of sense, but you might be a little bit scared about the Chinese on the other side of things. But I would say that Jordan is going to save Chinese for Copenhagen. Okay. And then we could see something like uh, Gurjara's or Lithuanians maybe on Acropolis here for you. Yeah, I, I personally would lean towards Acropolis. Um, I, I just think it's a map that would suit um, Yo very well. I like the Gurjara's pick personally uh, for that. Again, I want to see more aggression out of Mr. Yo, yeah. especially in this matchup, right? I think uh, Jordan does exceptionally well if you give him time. Yeah, I think I think something that could be difficult about this particular map draft is that Yo can't really make it that messy with mm. a lot of these. Like, there's not like any like forward style potential. It is going to be Acropolis, though. It is Gajaras here for Yo. And Saracen's for Jordan, which as we're a minute and a half into this game and it's a nine villager start, we've already got to really start to think about strategy. Like... And also, I mean, just how about it, it, this map, Gen? They're very close to each other. Oh, shoot. They're very close to each it, other. It's a, it's an irregular map generation, but this has always been known to happen at mm -hmm. times. What will be really fun, actually, is when the players move out to scout each other, which they're not going to do until after they push in all their deer, how far are they going to go into the darkness? Right? Right? Because, like, they, I want to see them both loop down. I and, think like, they will. Scouts pass each other. I like, think they're both hey. going to go. <laughs> I think they're both going to end up going, like, to the south or, like, around that pond. And you're going to be looking for the rock terrain. But I guess, like, the positive here is that's a pretty big area. Mm -hmm. So you're going to hopefully find the rock terrain eventually. Yeah. Uh, we've got back berries here for Jordan, whereas the berries are very forward on the hill there for Mr. Mm -hmm. Yo. So a possible target if Jordan wants to go for some early aggression. 
We've got Mr. Yo now moving out to the lumber camp. That's always one of those questions to be answered early on Acropolis. Do you go for that safe, however less efficient, you know, small wood line near the yep. TC, or do you go, to, you know, do you move outside initially? And it looks like both players will uh, bring their villagers down. It is a weird spot for me to ask Vodka to look, but Vodka, if we could see the edge of Yo's map in the back, I want to see the wall potential there. So you can wall to the edge of the map mm. if there's no rock, right? So that is actually really nice for Yo because he's got kind of like an, an ovalish uh, base. I could actually see a full wall potential. Jordan on that right side of his map has the same. Will they scout that dash? Will they like that right there? That's, that's the gonna tough be, part. That's going to be awkward. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, a really good point. So more difficult walling effort here for Jordan, and that might put the onus on him, right? Being aggressive early, yep. and uh, we'll see what his choices there. Obviously, Saracens can absolutely pack a punch even against walls, right? Yep. Archer's going to break through those a little bit easier. Okay, scouting. They're going to be moving out soon here, and I. I mean, for entertainment's sake, I really want to see them go into the wrong direction. Yo's is pushing another deer here, I think. It's another one. Like, listen, these Nineville starts, they streamline their builds. Players are like, all right, we, we have a little bit less time now. I could maybe, like, 25% of the time get crucial scouting intel. Yep. But 100% of the time, I can push in that deer. So <laughs> that's what the players do. They're going to push in those deer. Okay, second Longbrook camp here for Jordan. Minute and 30 away from the castle. I just a slight pause here for both of the players. Yeah, hopefully no issues. Yo did take an immediate little sip yes. of his drink there. Jordan was fixing something. We're back. And uh, I, 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 a big deal here, and some memories are flooding back. Okay. Yo loves a tower behind these wood lines here. Mm. So Jordan's wood line, it's actually shaped in a way where I think it could be awkward for Yo to find a real good tower spot, but it, it's something Jordan's got to think about. Yeah, at least, at the very least, he has that second lumber camp that he could relocate to if that tower pressure does come in. And also, contrary to map number one of this series, it's actually Yo who goes up a little bit faster at 19 pop, 18 vils, yep. and Jordan will go one later. And look at the scouting, right? He's like, he's going, he's, he's oh, like, okay. Oh, no, he's going he to so miss him. Yeah, he's like, okay, here we go. Now you get a little bit more mobility. Uh, in Feudal Age, but he's headed right Dude. towards where he thinks it's going to be. And he's like, okay, well, it must be to the left then, and he's going to guess wrong. No, this can be, and this can be so massive. You're Don't worry. first to the Feudal Age. You want to get some damage in if possible. <laughs> and Jordan's going right, to do the same thing. Jordan's, Jordan's going to do same the same thing. thing. But oh, hold on, Jordan, I think, saw the rocks. Ah. So Jordan might be able, did he see? He did. There we go. He did. Yeah, uh, Mr. Yo still still searching as best he can to find his opponent, but in the meantime, actually opting to go for those eco upgrades and just now producing Ooh. his first scout. Archery range here for Jordan. I mean, not that surprising for the Saracens to a degree, but you want to make sure you get a couple spears out and we see two in the queue. Yeah. Well, I'd say the big thing here is you want to scout the gold, you want to scout the archery range at this point in the game, if you're Yo. And Yo hasn't seen any blue whatsoever, so... He he's gonna keep moving. He's gonna see the wood line. It'd be natural for him to maybe go up the hill to look for buildings or around the front. And there we go. He sees the archer range. He should be good now. Okay, sweet. Not gonna be surprised at this point with what Jordan's going into. But the walls are already up around the wood lines here for Jordan. So safety against the scout aggression. On the other side, we don't have walls around the wood lines, but that's less relevant when you're playing against archers. Yep. Now this is the window where. Two archers, two spearmen completely wreck the scout build. So Jordan's going to want to move those archers forward, and he's doing so. Yo sees that archer and is going to go in to attack it, but the spearmen are there to protect. So now what do you do if you're Yo? You don't have skirmishers out yet. You can't really engage against that. It could be some nice little chip damage from Jordan if he could get onto that hill maybe right by the wood line. There's the archery range, so it's not going to be long until the first skirmisher comes out. Yep. Uh, but you definitely have to be concerned about uh, the wood line because Yo has actually concentrated all of his lumberjacks on the same wood line. So if, if Jordan ever feels like he has enough to move forward, mm -hmm. he could find some real damage here early on. I'm a I'm a big fan of how Yo even uh, made Jordan make an extra spearman. He like, kind of lingered around that archery range. So Jordan didn't push forward quite as early. I think this is where Jordan could, could really get some picks. The skirm's going to be out, but there's no spearman to protect it. So that starting scout could push. Yo might need to pull vills. It gets very awkward here. Best of luck to Yo to micro this one. Yeah, Mr. Yo actually hasn't even built a spear. No spear in the queue either. So three skirmishers on the field, but a scout can make quick work of those yeah. if they're left unattended. Either way, he pulls his scouts back to play defense. Jordan now going to move himself onto a stable while the market comes up as well. Saracens can make great use of that. And we saw the stat earlier yeah. on the screen 
seen a lot of players make big market use on this map alone, Acropolis. Yeah, that's true. You know, I, I just love that, though, what we just saw. I know nothing really happened, but it really shows you how, how small your window is to take advantage of. Jordan could maybe had like 10 seconds to force the issue. He didn't, and he was like, oh, boy. There's going to be another skirm or two. I could actually lose this. Now I need the scouts. And so the scouts are, are going to be good at pushing those skirms back. But a lot has happened here for zero kills, zero deaths, yep. right? Um, and we're going to see how things play out from here. But there is a villager exposed there for Jordan. Yeah, this will be the first vill pick of the game. No opportunity to save this one. And so Yo finally finds some damage. Fletching is on the way here for Jordan, though. So that'll make his archers a little bit more potent. Yo's but the wood line getting harassed, and Jordan doesn't have the units he needs, or at least doesn't have the ones yeah. he feels he needs to contest this just yet. Yeah, Yo's got to know, though. It's gonna, it's about to go down, and Jordan hops out of his archer range. Those skirms need to do work for Yo. It'll do good against everything out there except for those scouts. Good engagement there for Yo. I think he did lose his camel scout, which can be pretty helpful here, but he, he needs to get out of here before Jordan gets a bigger mass. Exactly. One for one trade overall there in that engagement. Yo now going to retreat and regroup. Now it's about checking out those farm counts, right? We've kind of hit a little bit of that static mm -hmm. feudal age state where players are now trying to they're trying to suss each other out is he is he going to keep how much is he going to invest in military is it a race to the castle age so it is much easier to micro and get value from scout archer compared to scout skirm but i i think honestly if i were to ask some of the players here now i think the the thinking is even shifting to where maybe skirm scout might be a little bit better mm. basically the main difference here is that archers could do damage against scouts, skirms cannot, right? Right. So if you have ranged melee combo, which is what we've got here, it should be better for scout archer, but it's obviously cost three different types of resources to get there, uh, whereas it is just food and wood basically for Yo's side right now. Right, absolutely. We also had forging come in for, jo uh, for Jordan. We've got bloodlines as well. Perhaps wants to wait 20 more seconds before he forces an engagement. Great numbers here for Mr. Yo and bloodlines to match as well. So that's a 40 second window there that Jordan could maybe take a fight with much stronger scouts. Yep. The scouts obviously going to target those skirms as best they can, first going for the spear to pick that off, and now they're gonna chase down the skirms. Jordan's not gonna let up while he has this tech advantage. He's trying to do work as well with his archers, targeting those different scouts. The spearmen come in. Mr. Yo looking to target the spearmen with the skirms. This is a very close fight, T90. Yeah, but we're seeing the difference, right? The archers have cleared out the majority of those scouts and the scouts for, for Jordan are going to clear up what's left of the skirms, and the, the KD is just abysmal right now, and Yo never expected oh. to lose this fight. He never dropped the tower until he lost the fight, and Jordan is all over Yo right now. Yeah, the tower comes down now, but not before a few villagers will fall, and not enough room in that tower for all the villagers to jump in. Jordan can camp underneath it, look to find more damage, and T90, after all is said and done, Bloodlines was invested into, and there's only one scout on the field yeah. for Mr. Yo. Well, Jordan, I mean, he's in a great spot right now, don't get me wrong, but I really thought he could have stayed underneath that tower, and he, he wouldn't have lost that much. He lost five archers after that, so for, for Yo fans, he, that's a little bit more room to breathe. You didn't lose that many villagers, but man, what a great timing from Jordan. This whole game, it's like, I mean, the whole series so far, he's been able to hit the timings on the economic decisions and mm -hmm. the military units. Yeah, it's a great point that the eco is still very close, at least in terms of the vill counts. So while Jordan definitely got the better of that military engagement and is in the driver's seat, Yo is not entirely out of it. I will point out, though, that the worker efficiency in the last minute, abysmal because of the investment yep. into that tower and having to run the villagers. So what can Jordan do with now a 600 food in the bank to to the 180 of Mr. Yo might be Castle Age play with the advantage he has and look for the killing blow then. Yeah, it's it's just it's just perfect, right? Like you yeah, you could make more in feudal age, but you have the lead now. You know that Yo has to produce more army to stop you. And not only that, but you immediately like go to the back of his base. You start to force an issue in an area where it could do damage to Yo, but it's also further from your base. So if Yo ever does get a counter attack, it might not accomplish too much. This is incredible from Jordan. Yeah, even still, this is a winning fight for Jordan here around the gold. Full retreat with the villagers, but four archers with fletching is enough to do damage. This is, I mean, I'm really impressed with Jordan, but we said it, right? Like, Jordan has been incredible the last 12 months. Yeah.
And I'm really glad you and I both predicted 3-1-3-2 uh, for, for Jordan <laughs> before this set, and nobody else did. Let that was really smart of us. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it, it, it was going to be hard to, to make any proper predictions here because these guys are so good. And if Yo loses this game, wouldn't put it past him to maybe win a couple more after. Oh, but we could see the reverse sweep, no question. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it, just, it just has to be restated how good – Jordan is playing and how well prepared he seems right now. Yo's not, he's not played bad in the first game. He has not played bad here, but Jordan just perfect so far. Honestly, perfect is the word for it. Now, I'm really curious. He's going to be in Castle Age. Saracens are a camel civilization, mm -hmm. but camels don't kill villagers as quickly. I wonder if Jordan's going to be tempted to go for knights instead. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we've got, yeah, of course he is leaning towards cavalry regardless because we see the armor upgrade coming in. So no questions there that it will be cavalry units, at least as his primary. Some more archers coming forward, though. So a good mix of units. Will we see a forward villager as well and a siege workshop? Yeah, I could see it. I mean, we're definitely going to see crossbow now that I see more archers. And that wood line is just far too tasty. Yeah. I think crossbow, maybe something like crossbow, bodkin arrow, and then like one or two knights. Right? Maybe not heavy commitment here from Jordan, because yep. he might not have the resources for it. There it is. We have the Castle Age click here for Mr. Yo. So he's going to try and hold on. Drops another tower in defense around that wood line. Again, he's so committed to that wood line, being his only lumber camp and being in such a precarious position. Going to make sure two towers are there, but loses another villager in the process. The scouts come in as well to look for damage. A second stable now coming onto the field for Mr. Yo. You remember that conversation in the previous game where we're like, that tower was forced by Yo, and then Yo was late to some economic decisions? Yep. Same thing here, right? Now, with the market, obviously, we could see a purchase there for Jordan. He doesn't have any right now, but Jordan in a position to, to push, get some damage done, or expand his eco a little bit at home. And Jordan, love and life right now, up 1-0 here on Yo, who's a top four player. And there is a hole. Oh, that is a brutal oh. hole. And, oh, man, Yo does not need this right now. Yeah, eight, nine crossbows sneaking their way in with a camel as well to play defense against any scouts that would maybe be able to put up some kind of a fight. Has to retreat from the gold once again. That's disastrous for a player who's already behind. Jordan just exercising so much control over the map, and he's going to stop on those eight crossbows and now start to invest into mm -hmm. those camels. Yeah, and, and you're thinking, I need more numbers. and. If you want more numbers, you're going to need gold, and he doesn't exactly have that. You know, maybe the market rates will be a little bit different than your average game because the Saracens have been buying and selling things a bit. That could potentially help in some ways, but look at Jordan. He's like, okay, I got the lead. I sit here. You have to come deal with me again. I will just sit here, and then I will do my thing at home. Yeah, look at Yo with a whole bunch of villagers swinging out to the left-hand side. He's going to look to expand his eco. Wow, Jordan Spearman. is scouting. I wonder if he's scouting with it or if he if he's going to like sit it there. Wow. I mean, let's see how long it takes him to actually realize. I think cuz he saw a tile he's of going, that. He's going now. A leftover Spearman was just like, "Oh, okay, I got to sit there just in case." Yeah. That is incredible. He sees it. This oh is about my to God. be That this, is so good. This is going to be he's utter locked disaster. In, dude. This he is, is locked in. GG moment right here because of that scouting, because of finding that one single tile of vision there. 15 villagers about to get absolutely obliterated. <laughs> now that Spearman, listen people, we remember, we credit the Spearman for what's about to happen, all right? People are going to want to credit the camels and credit the crossbows when no. the history books are written. No. But you got to credit the Spearman. It was that half hell Spearman who's the hero of this game. Of course, Jordan was already in a winning position, and now he's looking for the killing blow. A lot of military units, though, here for Yo. He knows that this is the last stand. If he loses these villagers, he stands no chance in this one. It's Shavamshas and Camels against Camels and Crossbows. Who's going to find the better engagement in this one? It looks like wow. Mr. Yo will be able to clean it up without losing any of those villagers. Wow, you know, he, he got the perfect engagement. The Shavamshas hit those crossbows dead on. The Jordan wasn't able to get the block. And again, Jordan still has a lead here. Don't get me wrong, but Yo stays alive. Still, you got to remember, though, even though Gurjaras do extra bonus damage with their camels, you don't have a significant boost in a camel v. camel battle. Right. And the Saracen HP is just insane for Castle Age. It's also 11 camels on the field here for Jordan to the three of Mr. Yo. So while Yo is able to push back that initial aggression, he's still on the back foot yep. in a massive way. But either way, 50 villagers to 51, right? We talk about, hey, the longer this game goes on, and all of a sudden, Yo can claw himself back into it. Yeah, it's like, how do you find the engagement, though? You have, you can't counterattack because this is so bad. You have to react at home. And if you continue to react at home, 
Jordan will eventually just, just continue this cycle until he wins the game. So he was going to find a defensive engagement, which puts him in a good enough spot, or just repair there endlessly, and then somehow get something Ooh. to Jordan's base. Crazy inefficient Vils on that gold now because of them being forced to uh, repair those Palisade walls. And also, the military queue here for Jordan has been constant while there's been intermittent stops here for yep. Mr. Yo. He just doesn't have the eco to support constant military production. And in a camel v. camel battle, as you say, regardless of upgrades, regardless of, you know, civ bonuses, it's yep. really going to be the numbers that matter. That no one, like, I don't think the words camels OP have ever been used <laughs> before, but if you put Saracen in front of it for Castle Age after a recent change, the HP is pretty ridiculous. 145 HP in the Castle Age against 120 HP. So you get, like, one additional damage per hit, I think, with Gajara bonus damage. Mm -hmm. So you got that, that, which is, like, a bonus I get all that HP, it's ridiculous. Yeah, Delete comes through on the camel as Mr. Yo looks for the conversion, still with the repairs on the Palisade walls. And you know what? If there's anything that you can say about camels that they're really bad at, it's getting through walls. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's 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 true. That I mean it hasn't been the most impressive job at that, but here comes Yo because he wants his villagers to work for once and Jordan's gonna take that fight and he might even take that fight right through the conversion. A lot of times players will run. Even uphill. Even uphill, but he doesn't he's gonna, care. He's going to pull something to the other side. That's the way to do it. And this might end the game here. Yo might just realize, I, I can't beat these camels right now. Yeah, let's see. Still trying to get a few more camels onto uh, the field. It's 13 to 17 in numbers, but very weak camels yeah. on Mr. Yo's side. Each of those, only a couple of hits from going down. Jordan, though, going to retreat. Again, continuing to play it safe, knowing that he has the advantage yeah. and is in the winning position. We yep. have Wheelbarrow coming in just to help with that eco, and now he finds damage on the wood line, splitting Mr. Yo's attention. Yep, this is good. Jordan hasn't done this in a while. He was just in one spot. This is the first time he's he's controlled one area and moved over to another. He is dropping a town center on that wood line. That's the spot of concern if mm -hmm. there's a counter attack because it's very forward. Still, we have this AO. I mean, you don't get points for this, but he's done a good job staying alive, right? Yeah. It's very impressive. He's been behind for a long time here, so if he could stay in it, and a conversion here would help. Unfortunately, he doesn't get it. Maybe with Gurjara's later on. They've got the Chakram, which we're a long way from seeing. But that unique unit, also incredible if you can get the mast. They have that great unique tech, which, which saves you so much food and all the units you might want to make. But right now, Jordan really building up for a big economy. Yeah, Devotion on the way. Third TC coming down. It took 30 minutes for us to get our, our first second TC in the game. But Jordan feels like he's done enough damage after he found those snipes on the wood line. Uh, that he can now kind of rest back on those three TCs, put himself in, you know, an unlosable yep. position. This is like, this is so good. Like, Jordan, I don't know if there's actually been like a key moment, like those highlight moments where you like send a text to your buddies, like, yo, look at that fight, look at that micro. There, there hasn't really been that yet. But every single element, every single decision has just been so smooth and so clean. And that's the dream as a player. You want those key moments. You want those highlights. Sure. But a great player does exactly what Jordan's done so far this series. Yeah, and he's even done a lot of the little things, right? While we've been paying a lot of attention to the military engagements, take a look at the relic count. Three relics already at home here for Jordan. So yep. what was already going to be a better eco gets that much better because he's invested in the little things for the long term. Yep, and, and some good patience at times, not forcing engagements that you or I might have stayed in and maybe things would have gone wrong. He's really confident in his long term here. He's got a 10 villager lead, but he's got three TCs against one, so that will grow. It is a big old camel battle here, folks. And it's all about the monk conversions, I feel like. Mr. Yo looking for a few and find some before the engagement starts. And now we just take a look at the health bars. Which camels win out is the big question. We have an extra attack upgrade on Jordan's side, as well as the health bonus. But even still, he feels like maybe he needs to retreat, play it safe. The numbers for Mr. Yo are massive, and he continues to push forward looking for damage. Yeah, I mean, Yo, is that was, that was pretty close to being a good fight for him. So he's like, I wasn't expecting that this is good for me he's got a nice position too he's banking up some stone yo likes to go for those forward castles so i expect more and more numbers from both right now that fight i was surprised at how that went honestly because a lot of yo's camels were weak from before i think yo did a good job to heal up those camels before he brought them into the fight though 
And he's got 22 camels versus Jordan 17. Yeah, so a small victory in some ways for Mr. Yo there, but even still didn't find any economic damage. So we take a look at those numbers at the top of your screen. You see 78 to 61. Mr. Yo just now going to his second and third TC to try and match. So investing some of that stone that could have maybe been a forward castle in a last yep. ditch effort is instead going to go into trying to match the boom and extend the game to late. So we've seen pretty much camel v camel here. It's, it's kind of a weird battle to explain numbers-wise in Age of Empires, right? But Camels as a unit, they rely mostly on bonus damage, right? Right. So their base attack is six. I found out, actually, that in Age of Kings, the base attack was five. Yeah. I bet Dave $100. He was wrong, and I got to give him 100 bucks. But anyways, I <laughs> uh, forgot about that. Sorry, Dave. Uh, but anyways, so the, the, my point of this is six base attack, if you're not getting any bonus damage on top of it, it's not great, right? right? And so when you had the Knights in the previous game against Pikeman, you got like the 10 base attack, you got the additional attack. That that was enough to see Knights swing fights against Pikes. When you mix in Pikeman in a Camel v. Camel War, mm -hmm. the Pikes do a lot better here. So I think Jordan should be in a good spot to hold against what Yo sent in this way. I love this castle too, right? Again, Jordan's thinking about all the ways in which he can lose the game. And I think that's what some of the top players do best, right? Yeah. Is when you're in a winning position, you, you don't need to focus as much on how do I close the game out and win it. It's what are the things that could allow my opponent back into it. Yep. One of those things is a forward castle that eliminates a TC, gets a bunch of vil kills, and, yep. and gets map control. So I'm gonna guard against that immediately. Pikes are now on the field. The army composition looks brilliant for Jordan against monks, camels, and a few light cav. Mr. Yo is gonna struggle to find some answers I'm, at the moment. I'm like, I'm wondering what, where does Yo go with his castle now? Oh, he's gonna go there. Okay. <laughs> Goes for the counter castle. I mean, that feels pretty natural. Two golds, you, you need to control this, right? Yeah, yep. As best you can. And so he will go for the counter castle with far more villagers. So Yo's is guaranteed to go up. I think because Jordan got there first, his will go up as well, but it might be close. Yeah, I mean, there's gonna be a big fight here. Both players are gonna have military units that will likely be the target of the castles first. Yep. So the, yeah, the castles are gonna go up here. Jordan even brought more villagers to make sure of it. Next, I would love to see Rams from either player. I don't think there's a Siege Workshop out, but like Rams or Petards players will do out of neighboring castles like this to try to take the other player's castle down. Yeah, and some Mamelukes in the queue, but then canceled uh, from Jordan. So initially thinking I can go for my unique unit, but instead I'll wait on that. No need to extend to the uh, Mamelukes just yet. How is Yo still in this game? I mean, he's I'm, still behind, but crazy. he's done such a good job. But I love how Jordan just was like, ah. he went from one castle, right? And then he said, ooh. Yo was probably building up towards one. I got the market. Let's just make it two. Let's just make it two castles in that area. Make it easy. Two castles in that area and enough stone in the bank to go for a third if he wants to. Almost on Imperial Age resources as well. You see Yo trying to abuse the market as well to keep he, to keep his eco in check. Uh, but still very much behind when it comes to this game. There's the Imperial Age click for Jordan. Yeah, and, and right now Yo needs to stay in Castle Age to be able to accomplish much. The hope here is he can take out that castle from Jordan, which feels likely, and then move beyond it. There's your there's way. your siege ram, or not siege ram, sorry, your elephants. Siege elephants. Siege yeah. elephants uh, coming in here for Mr. Yo. So he does understand that it's do or die in castle for him. It's actually really painful. He's got low food count. If he was a sieve that had rams, that was wood gold, that would actually be a little bit better for his situation as Jordan's going to go for another castle. His pikemen are out of position, but he's got enough camels with the pikes coming in in support where he should be able to complete another castle and push Yo back from that TC. Yeah, and this just feels so bad for Mr. Yo when you're in this position. You're getting choked out by castles. You're doing your best to defend each of your TC positions. But even still, while he might take down this one castle here from Jordan, the second one behind it is still a, tr a solid treb position yep. as he's a minute and 30 seconds away from the castle age and now focusing back on those economic upgrades just to make sure that he's further ahead. Jordan's definitely in a spot where he's like, I'm going to go for trebs, but is Camel still my unit? Like, he's not seeing enough to know if Yo's making a hard switch to anything. It's oftentimes you're going to see like maybe hand cannons come out eventually, so we might see university, but yo, not showing him a different army type yet. I think he's about to, though. We've got the chakrams coming in. Now, the thing about this unit dash is you need a massive of them, and you, you need to have uh, elite. 
And when you get the when you get like 20 of them with elite, they shred groups of units coming in. I'm not sure this is going to be enough. I think Jordan with that HP is going to try and engage. Yeah, we've only got about 10 chakrams on the field, soon to be zero as they get surrounded by the camels. Now looking for a retreat back to the safety of that castle position, and actually we'll get out good, yeah. with quite a few of them. Impressed by uh, that movement there from Mr. Yo, only losing two in the engagement, but Imp is hit, and Yo doesn't even need to see the fight to know that this one's lost. It's a 2-0 lead here for Jordan in day one of the group stage. It really goes back to that timing with the scout archers. We had the conversation right before scout archer versus scout skirm. Jordan, I, he almost looks surprised that he's in this position, like with that yeah, little, yeah, a little bit eyebrow flick. Yeah, he's like, oh, this. How did I get here? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean. Jordan has shown that recent times when he uh, when they won cartographers with Viper afterwards he had Viper were like Viper's like Jordy man and Jordan's like oh how did we do it <laughs> there's been other examples but I mean the dude's playing insane oh right? he's, he's, he's playing, playing insane phenomenally phenomenally and to take the win on one of your opponent's home maps and to put yourself in 2-0 position yeah you're feeling really good so Mr. Yo is going to have to get it done we assume that he will reach for the last of his home maps. But as you mentioned in the previous break, he has the opportunity to go for one of Jordan's if he feels like he just needs to switch it up yeah. a little bit. Okay, so, but uh, having spoke to Yo this morning, I said, Yo, how are you feeling? He said, no feeling. You know, he's like, yeah. no pressure, you know, whatever. Do you think there's a little bit of like, what's, there's you gotta, gotta be something more. You, you gotta be feeling it now, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I don't even know about like pressure, but like maybe even just like a little bit of like, Come on, I'm better than this. That's exactly. I was gonna say it's probably just more inward reflection, right? Yeah, like yeah. he he knows what he's capable of. He know, and I'm sure he's got high expectations for himself, and would have wanted to start this tournament out on a very strong foot. Again, it's a Swiss stage, right? And so every element of the series matters, not just the win, but the game difference, things like that. As we get into what could be tiebreakers later on, and so for Jordan, he wants to end it in three zero fashion. As we take a look into the peanut gallery, hello everyone, good to see y'all. <laughs> yeah, we've got. Uh, Quite a few people lurking around. We've got a lot of players in the practice room right now planning for future sets. We'll have three more sets after this one. But uh, I am hoping well, there's a peek into the practice room. Yeah, we have a different setup this time around. We put them in like the, the circle so that now they can all stare at I each think, other while I they think play. I think a really fun... B okay, there's no one in there, actually. <laughs> Wow, ACCM really hey, staying on the practice. I was gonna say here. everybody's working hard here at NAC. Actually, this was a this was a, a comment last Who's night. Who's he practicing with? While we were all hanging out, is he out. playing against the AI? Is he play? He's playing, dude. He's actually just doing like a quick wall speed run or something like that. Uh, I mean, no. he's, I've heard he's been beating everyone in practice. He's okay. been doing good. So I mean, I, it was pretty unanimous between everybody here last night that ACCM is like the puts in the most hours, like yeah. the hardest practicer last, of anyone. Last NAC, he beat. Everyone in practice, and he got tenth place. <laughs> it was like it was so sad. He came out from the kitchen. He goes, he goes. Uh, I win practice, I lose tournament. I suck. Uh, I suck, man. No. <laughs> uh, uh, I know that's painful to hear because yeah, end of the day, again, we're playing with the top ten players yeah, in the world, yeah. right? And somebody's got to end up yep, tenth. Yep. Someone's got to. Yeah. But you mentioned how yes, he went 0-5 last time around, but most of the series were very close, right? He he lost two three twos, lost two three ones. And then a 3-0. And his opponents were, were quite strong, right? Yeah. You're looking at Tat O'Hara and Mr. Yo that he had to play in the group stage. That was, you know. And he'll be, ACCM will be playing Hera in our very next series. So that should be a good one. Yep. But we've got game three here. And positive for Yo, he has all three of his top civilizations saved. Very true. So maybe he figured it would be a little bit more experimental in the first game or two. He probably was hoping to have that split 1-1 and not be down two games. But I've seen some pretty incredible comebacks from Yo over the years. He's got great fight, as we see Yo's point of view here on African reed beds. And Yo has gone for the Malians. Uh, or is this? No, no this, this is, is not African reed beds. This is. Uh, it's the. There you go. Langanati. La, 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 sorry. <laughs> I, I love how I'm saying. Is it, it. Langanati or Yanganati? Because double L, is it Spanish? Because then it would be. The yeah versus like I've, Italian where it's I Langanati. Never, I, it's I probably mean, Langanati. I'm going to trust you on that one. Yeah. I mean, thanks, thanks for trusting me with the pronunciation. <laughs> I think I'm the wrong person. Okay, Georgians, right? Georgians, the number one pick there for Jordan, and we were wondering where and how it was going to be used, and yeah. it will be against Yo's number one pick of the Malians. Yep. I, I mean, I, I, the scout opening has been common here, uh, so that is an argument for the Georgians. You also have that mule cart, which Jordan's going to be using at home, most likely on a wood line right now. But, like, I just... 
this wasn't what I thought would be first pick. You know, when I think of a map like this, you, you think the Malians, right? You, mm -hmm. you spend the wood on the dock. You have flexible wood buildings, great calf, great monks. You think, like, maybe the Japanese. We've seen Portuguese, Franks. So the draft is complicated. There's a lot of bands, and that is different every single series. But I'll see what Jordan does with the Georgians here. There's nothing that really sticks out at me beyond their, their cavalry regenerating over time. Which would be very nice, right? On a very open map, I assume that yep. we'll see cavalry openings for both players. Perhaps a contest in the middle on water. I don't know uh, if that fish is really worth fighting over. Yeah. Nilly said uh, in his one of his early casts of the qualifier on this map, he said that he thinks it might actually be at a point where making zero ships is the play in the middle. Now, I think one fire ship's the way to do it, but like if you double click those fish there for his vodka, you're going to see how much food is left. You got 600 now, which is way more than I was expecting, but I don't know if something changed. But uh, by the time they can make a ship, it's going to be down to like three, 200. It's like, mm -hmm. do you really want to go mine gold to make Navy there? I think it might just be better to take what food you can, make one ship, which is what you can afford, and then take it from there. Yeah, I think that that's an interesting element of the fish on this map, right? Because it's kind of split between the deep fish and the shore fish yep. that are only accessible by the villagers, right? Yep. Sometimes when you have those extra shore fish, you're like, fine, if my fishing ships have to move to those afterwards, at least they still bring value. But you could very well find yourself in a position where you invested into three, four fishing ships, and as soon as you hit feudal age, they're not working anymore. Yeah, you know, I've seen someone in our chat here confused that I said the word vodka. That would be our, the name of our observer. Uh, here at NAC5, we are writing our names on our water bottles. We and are. So one of the clear water bottles here it says vodka on it. <laughs> and I, I that's dangerous. I was like, ooh, you know, like, okay, I have a little bit of vodka, but. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, feudal age about to come in here for Jordan. Uh, Mr. Yo, just about 20 seconds behind him in that, the scouting here for Jordan is very nice. We'll find that gold immediately. That's that's a big deal. That that will tell Jordan it's either archers. Well, it will tell Jordan it could be archers, but also that there's going to be uh, more than one fire galley here in the middle, like we said. And now, like I said, the fishing is going to start to be less important in theory. Did Jordan can't? I, saw, I think I saw him cue a fire and then cancel it. Yeah, canceled it. Okay, so look at that following Nilly's uh, advice, I guess, and not investing into the water too much. Only went for two fishing ships as well, so he's going to use that extra wood that he has to go straight into the stable, and he's going to try and abuse the openness of the map, and perhaps because of that scouting that he had, he now sees a couple things yeah. that he can attack, the wood line and the gold. And so this is it, right? So it's like, do you really want to make two fire galleys to get an extra 200 food when you're, you could use those resources for something else? So it's, it's interesting. I don't think it's bad to Villager? kill fishing ships. That scout has the hill bonus on the other side, though. It's Mr. Yo who also finds a villager. The quick wall coming in for Jordan, though. The other villager, though, left out to dry. <laughs> and, and, and you can't quick wall near the water because a fire galley is on the way. Oh, this could be disastrous. It's looking like perhaps two villagers go down. Jordan wants to use the scout to defend, oh, but man. with the spearman there, it's going to be difficult. Now looking for the quick wall on the second villager. Isn't going to find it, and that's going to be two vil picks, it looks like, unless this spearman comes to the rescue here for Mr. Yo. Doink! Gets it 2-0 in the eco kd and so while it's jordan who goes primarily into land military units it's yo who finds the first land base kills and and you get the fishing ship kills on top of that you know you get a little bit more score you yeah. get you're like i so nearly was wrong <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> well i mean you know we got to be careful man yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the name of the event we got to be careful but but like that, that was a good start. It, unfortunately for Jordan, I think he thought give up on water, but he yeah. forgot the two bills were there. Exactly. Like he forgot the step. I think it's, it's, it's easier said than done, I suppose, as, as far as that's concerned. Yeah, there's a lot to pay attention to on this map, again, because of how spread out all of your resources are. Ooh. Now we have three scouts aware of the wood line positioning here for Mr. Yo. Mr. Yo has I, not pre-walled this at all. I don't think he knows it's coming because he didn't scout it in time because he was killing the villagers. Oh. And now Jordan can return the favor. And this is horrible for Yo, who's it was just undermade army in defense, and he's yeah. forced to fight back with the villagers while he waits for the spearmen. Yeah, Jordan playing this pretty conservatively, pulling his scouts back up onto a slight hill to get a bonus, finds two picks to even things out. Although, I, and uh, or yeah, because that's the two fishing ships that went down to be yep. deported to KD, getting chased by the spearmen. Mr. Yo looking to get those walls up. And with the spear, we'll be able to force the scouts back. Yeah. Two more, though, coming in to reinforce. They could eliminate the spear and dive back in for more damage. Uh, this is, I mean, the pros and cons of every decision in this game is what keeps me coming back every day, Dash. It's like, yeah, Yo kills those villagers, but he didn't know scouts were coming in until it was a little too late. And 
Didn't have the Spearman in position, and that is five scouts on the oh. way. He doesn't even see it, and it comes to the other side of the wood line, and Yo is like playing so passive right now. He's not making any army, and he's getting punished for it. Jordan played the Fog of War so brilliantly on that one, dodging the villagers on the vision, getting now five scouts in for damage to the wood line. Two more villagers go down, looking for a third. He'll find it, perhaps a fourth. And more scouts ran right through the TC oh. anyways. This is just, it's looking, it's looking over here at this point for Mr. Yo. He has one Spearman defending and he's fighting with villagers as well. There are still six scouts inside of his walls. Yes, a few of them are weak, but they can still dish out a ton of damage if Jordan commits. Now he's looking for the Spearman. That'll open him up to dive back onto the wood line. Oh, no man. walls for Mr. Yo. Four more villagers looking to go down. Yeah, this is this is rough. I mean, he's got another Spearman on the right of your screen there. Yo, maybe just trying to gel and get used to things here at NAC5. Traveled a long way to get here. There's those, like, personal elements. And I, Jordan, I mean, he, he looks like he, he lives here. Yeah, <laughs> he, does, he does look like he lives here. I mean, Yo, somewhat salvaging there by keeping a few villagers alive with the Spearman finally coming back to defend. And he did get the walls up. Mm -hmm. But even still, it's a six villager lead That's now rough, here dude. for Jordan. So we, we end up in a similar position to the first two games where Jordan has found the early advantage yep. and now will quite possibly sit back and let himself snowball to a victory. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is these scouts are regenerating. True. So, like, normally you're like, oh, they're weak scouts. But if they don't get hit again over the next couple minutes, they're going to be strong scouts again. Yeah. So... This is the this is the ideal civilization to have scouts in your opponent's base with right now. Absolutely difficult though for Jordan to reinforce these three scouts at this point. Oh! He gets the doink. The That's doink. another another build down. Yes, the spear does get the snipe onto that scout. So it's only two scouts remaining inside of Mr. Yo's walls. A That's very not easy, dude. No. That's not easy because like you he, he probably recognized he he left one behind that was weak, but there's a lot of villagers there. And you have to select it, and then you have to do the work there while also macroing perfectly at home. His eco balance is looking good back at home. Yo, dropping a market with six villagers, so clearly feels like he's got to rush some some market usage here. Yeah, he wants to get to Castle Age. He had uh, uh, he's rushing that market up for the second building, and also had 600 gold in the bank. So uh, might look to balance his eco out just a little bit, moving 15 villagers off mm -hmm. of berries there as he tries to uh, gain some control back. This is this is rough. Zero farms for Yelp. He used all the berries that were around the TC. Mm -hmm. Jordan's been taking some hunt there with the mule cart, which is a nice touch. But Jordan's got, what, like 12 farms? Yeah. 12 farms at home? Yep, 14 now. I mean, this is like the long-term food ego is going to be incredible for Jordan. Yeah, so let's talk about comebacks or avenues to comebacks here for Mr. Yo. Number one, he's got Castle Age first, right? So there is opportunities to deal damage in early Castle Age, particularly because... Jordan has not completed his walls, right? Yeah, so yeah. Yo now finds himself with an element of safety back at home and can ideally put all of his focus into the offensive. Jordan. <laughs> that what? Jordan, that thing moves, bro. He that's is that just he's just hitting the hot key, right? Like he yeah, didn't think about rebuild. it. All right, so for those that don't know, Georgians have a mule cart. That that's thing right. can move. <laughs> so you don't need to make a new one for efficiency technically. It doesn't hurt. You know what? He'll split them as they kind of like eat towards the outside, right? <laughs> that's what I'm yeah, maybe Jordan just instinctively hitting the hotkey, like you said, and yeah. not really thinking about it. That's funny. But, you know, something on this map, and that is really cool to see, actually, from Jordan, is that the rest of the gold, your long-term gold, is trapped by wood. Mm -hmm. So I could see Yo trying to, as a comeback condition, maybe trying to deny that. But Jordan's the only one chopping through. I really love how he's using the mule cart for that. That's so creative. Yeah. To eventually break through to that gold. No, but it's a really good point, right? So uh, while Yo is going to, again, have the advantage to Castle Age and whatnot, only has so much gold available to him. Mm -hmm. And yep. at a certain point, he's going to have to consider things outside of market abuse. Castle Age is in, though. What will be the first play? Don't see any military units in the queue. A castle. So. A castle for Yo. He's been mining stone. He, I think he bought a little bit of it as well. He's going to try and go for Gabetto. Yo loves his unique units. Gabetto, if you can get like seven to ten of them with a monk or two, can be devastating. But it's, it's still, with any low economic build, I can't get too excited about Yo's position to have to also then invest into a castle. A cheeky siege workshop looking to... Uh to keep the walls up and keep these units out. The spearmen being tossed away just to buy time here for Mr. Yo as the castle's just about to complete. 
But that castle really only protects, you know, some farming space and, and that remaining gold. Does Jordan know about that foundation? I don't think he does. And I don't think anything... Oh, he does now. Okay. Yeah, the archers have yeah got a peek at it. That will come as a surprise to him. And Jordan is a player who's probably very well prepared and practiced. I can't tell you... If, I, I'm guessing he's never played against Gabetto on this map in any of his practice games. So sometimes this can happen where, like, you practice, you prepare, and Cav then response. you're up against something new. You got to figure out what to do about it. But the Cav Archer response is really nice. I think it's a brilliant response, right? You're going to use the range and mobility yep. against uh, another ranged unit in the Gabetto that you will ultimately outrange. Uh, and so I think a very intelligent swap here in terms of military units for Jordan as soon as he gets that scouting information about what his opponent's going for. First to the second TC and third one as he has been in all of the games so far in this series also going for Wheelbarrow. So, I mean, the eco upgrades have just been on point today for Jordan following what is always early aggression that finds significant damage. The Gabettos, though, is what we got to keep our eyes on in terms of how Yo gets back into the game. He's going to have to manage those units incredibly well well and find damage as best he can but he's gonna have to do that with the TC's already in play yep that's true this is all this honestly feels like snowball the main base type of territory for yo he loves his unique unit takes a good engagement into a forward another forward castle so um, we'll see if he can find those engagements again this is such a tiny detail Jordan knows those three like have could find the reinforcements so mm. he's making it more and more awkward for yo to move forward meaning Yo only moves forward with five. Yeah, Bloodline's coming in as well to benefit those light cab as well as the cab archers. And once again, happy to take out spears because in the end, those light cab will regenerate, as you mentioned earlier. So what a fantastic set of units to use to pick off those reinforcements, force the Gabettos back. The gate gets open and Jordan is let in, but to his own demise, the castle makes quick work of the light cab. Yeah, Jordan was distracted here. He got hit on, his, on the other side. He was reacting to that. Also managing the three town centers. Speaking of, Yo will drop a TC in the south there, so he'll have to make a lumber camp, eventually chop through, but he has been thinking about that gold. This is the same thing we said in every game. Jordan with the economic lead. And Which is only going to get worse as you've got the, you're playing the Georgians. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you're playing the Georgians. It's three TCs. Jordan's getting relics. And I, I was just about to say, like, the one thing that could maybe be an issue for Jordan, he was just on the one range with Cav Archers. He's got the second range now. I really like the, the idea of the, the churches, too. So the fortified churches for the Georgians only increase work rate exactly. in a radius around it. So, and you can also garrison villagers inside. So if, if you're in trouble, you can hide. Uh, there's a couple arrows that fire as well, but then you also have that crazy work rate. So uh, Jordan's playing the Georgians perfectly right now. Uh, he's playing it phenomenally. And yeah, it's that eco bonus on top of the repositioning of the mule carts that just accelerates you even more. Yep. Not spending extra wood on replacing lumber camps and things like that. Well, I guess unless you're Jordan and you build, <laughs> build new mule carts every single time. So maybe a moot point in this uh, situation, but uh, the Cav Archers on the field. Uh, Jordan needs to, there we go, becomes aware of the scorpion and we'll be able to take that out with solid micro and yo still looking i, I mean i thought it was all in it, it wasn't in a good enough spot to really get the damage so now he's catching up with the boom and it feels like another game where jordan has been has played clinically to get ahead and is playing super well with the lead you know what's also crazy is the cav archers also regenerate yeah like what is this sim <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's it i will say Jordan has used every bonus, right? There could be some awkward aspects of the civilization, but but I mean the fact that you can hit and run like it's cab. It's not like it's, it's infantry. It's so gross. It's not like infantry where infantry slow and kind of hard to get away from fights. But yeah. uh, if, you can, if you can use your mobility, as Jordan has, you're gonna have a brand new army soon. Yeah. And while I say what is this civ, I think you make a great point that it is also on the player to utilize the bonuses Correct. that their civ gives them. And Jordan yep. has put every single bonus of the of the Georgians to use here. Yeah. The 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 Georgians. The George. It's hard to, I don't know. I mean, Georgians, that's, Georg that's it. That's actually yeah. it. <laughs> I, I, I thought when people were typing that, that I could say it and distinguish between the two, but at Siege Workshops denied there for Yo, and again, just not what you wanted if you're a Yo fan today. Look at Jordan's micro, dodging some of the Gabetto hits to kill the Scorpion. Beautiful play. Who now, is this guy? 73 Eco versus 59. 
yeah, with a military advantage as well in terms of numbers, ballistics coming in on top of all that with Bodkin. So you have the more mobile unit with longer range that's going to very easily be able to snipe units because of, of Bodkin now and chase down. Like these Gabettos, yep. you have to turn and, and fight, don't you? Yeah, uh, uh, maybe you run. It's just, it's just bad. It's just, it's just not a good spot. Yeah. You get in the hill, you turn and fight, you try and get some kills. But ultimately, you built a castle to make that unit. And the other guy just had to make archer ranges, which is so much easier to do. Yeah. And I think Jordan might just, we might just be moments away from an end of game castle here. He's got the stone for it. He knows that Yo is in the south with that TC, mm. and he knows Yo is not through yet. He sh Yo has shown very little resistance there beyond scorpions. Here we go. Let's see. There it is. There's the castle placement. It's still fairly conservative. Jordan wants to make sure it goes up and prevent. Mr. Yo from uh, getting through this wood line and onto the gold. It's the Cav Archers up against the Scorpions and Look the Cabetos. Look at Cabettos. that micro, dude. He's so many runners, right? He recognizes where the Scorpions are firing, and he's pulling those units so the shots are getting dodged. And all the while behind this, he's building the perfect castle. It's it's high risk, like, I'd say medium risk, right? Yeah. It's likely it'll go up, but it will deny a crucial resource here from Yo. And I know Yo has been able to bring games back in the past, but with how Jordan's playing, with what the score line's looking like, we might just be moments from him calling it. Yo, part-time Jordan is playing like a full-time champion right now. I mean, this is a ridiculous showing in Series 1 of NAC5. Looking, staring down the barrel, rather, of a 3-0 mm -hmm. victory. Uh, it would take a miracle. Against an invited player. Yo's yeah. top four. Yo's top four. Uh, if you were to ask random people on the street, well, maybe not the street, because they might not know, but, you know, people on the streets of the Twitch chat or YouTube chat we've got now, who, what's your top five look like? Right. I think they'd put Yo in it. They wouldn't put Jordan in many cases, unless they're from Germany. There might See, be a slight German <laughs> bias, but... <laughs> Vodka, thank you for showing us that stone, because <laughs> I'm going to have a discussion with Jordan about mule carts after this series. The only series. thing he's done wrong. Yeah, the whole it's series. literally the only thing he's done incorrectly in this series. Yeah, but I mean, in all, fair <laughs> in all fairness, though, that one's tricky. He's he's microing, he's killing, he's, he's yeah, going for the jugular here. It's absolutely the least important thing on the map, but it's still something that we as casters will of have, have fun poking fun at. Absolutely. Oh, man. I mean, for, for Mr. Yo, I'm trying to find the answer, and I'm struggling to do so. I mean, this is also quintessential Yo. Uh, he's a fighter, yep. right? He is absolutely a fighter <laughs> and one of the people who's vodka, most... <laughs> vodka, get out of here, dude. The vodka's just looking for all the little things with the mule carts now. I love it, though, and I love what Jordan's doing here with the Knights and the Manaspa now, and he will kill the Scorpions. And Jordan 3 owes yo wow. to start off in AC5. Wow, what a showing uh, for Jordan here. Set one of the Swiss stage, gets the 3-0 victory. That's going to be a huge confident boost. It sets him up beautifully in the standings. And That's big. Uh, wow. That is, wow. That is big to get you know, those wins off yo and, and the confidence, right? Yeah. Like Jordan, Jordan? Maybe he'll look at it and say, okay, well, Yo didn't bring what he's brought against me in previous sets. But Jordan's going to look at his own gameplay and say, I delivered. Yeah. I delivered with consistency. And I, and he, I, I think he's here. Again, it's subtle, but he's no longer a GL. He's with those boys for so long. Yeah. He is no, no, no team at the moment. What a showing. I, I love mean, it. Yeah, incredible consistency across the series in his play, but also strategically. Yeah, Just felt like really he good. had a lock, really right? In, in all three of those matchups, in terms of the sieves, he had an understanding of what he needed to do to get an early advantage. And all three times, Feudal found himself that advantage mm -hmm. and then took a breath. Yeah, that took was a so breath good. and extended it, which I think is huge. Sometimes, especially early on in in a, a tournament like this, you want to go pedal to the metal. You really want to to ride that momentum all the way to the end. But he played it smart. Never gave Yo uh, really an opportunity to get back in a lot of those games. Yeah, and I think for Yo, you know, there's times we just saw this from Jordan where you prepare, you have the strategy, and then the execution clicks. Can't really say that the strategy was wrong necessarily. I just think the execution wasn't there for Yo today. Mm -hmm. Back to the drawing board for him. Gets to watch a full day of games and hang out and then right. think about like maybe what he goes into uh, strategically tomorrow. But uh, I don't think there's any like big worry signs for Yo. It is group stage. I'm sure he'll come back firing tomorrow. Oh, absolutely not. Right. We have to remember it is a five-day 
group stage here. Yep. So there's a lot of movement that can happen uh, in those uh, you know consecutive days. And so we'll look for Mr. Yo to bounce back tomorrow. But for Jordan, starts it out on an absolutely brilliant foot. Yep. And uh, I'll be curious to get uh, a word with him as soon as he's ready. I'll be the one who hops into the interview because you've, you're pulling double duty. Double duty. Another set right after this and one. That's true. I like that. Defending champion Hera is stepping on a stage next. But, uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be curious to hear from Jordan. I mean, one, how this result compared to his expectations yeah. against Mr. Yo. Because yeah. I, Jordan's also a player that pretty conservative, I think has a very conservative perspective of his own ability. Agreed. Agreed. Right? He's Agreed. a very humble guy. He is, yeah. Um, so he'll probably, he'll pro I'm expecting a, I was going to get 3-1 to 3 2 Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and whatnot. But also want to know what his approach and prep was like from a, a map and sieve perspective, sp especially considering the, le the lesser investment of time into the game, right? He has to be more... He has to use his time more effectively to stay I, competitive. I'm really curious about that question because I think, you know, Jordan became it when he was full-time stream big black forest guy, big yeah. troll games with the viewers guy, right? Because he's putting in more hours. I think his time, he's still spending lots of time in the game, yep. and it's when he shows up, it's focus and it's training mode. And I, I think, I don't know if that's helped him, mm -hmm. but I really, I mean, the level he just showed and the level he showed in tournaments right before this, yeah. I don't think the level's dipped. I think he's still... Putting a lot of time into this game, and he's still a great player. So I'm All excited right. for him. The man himself is on the couch, so I'm going to go grab a microphone and get a word with Jordan now. I think we're both on. We'll make sure about that. 3-0? Uh, Day one? Yeah. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, well, as I was going to say, so talk to me. I mean, Mr. Yo, top four last year at this very tournament, uh, if for most people uh, across the whole of the Age of Empire scene would put him in the top five of players. And so, uh, yeah, what was your actual expectation coming in? Uh, you know, I felt like I was playing very well. I trained a lot uh, for this tournament. Oh, okay. let's redo it. Yeah. Pourquoi? <laughs> Did we not have uh, audio yet? Okay. Okay. Are we good now? Okay. Beautiful. All right, everybody. I'm here with Jordan. 3-0 on day one. You did mention right off the top you didn't expect it, as you assumed most people didn't expect this kind of a dominant victory. Uh, but my first question was, so then what was your expectation? Because you're going up against a guy who finished top four just last year. Absolutely. And uh, the thing about Mr. Yo is uh, I think he's just, as you said, top five, uh, one of the most consistent players out there. And uh, he has always been able to beat me uh, in our series. I think it was always very close, but uh, it was just, he's just a monster, right? So I knew exactly it's going to be super, super tough. Yeah, I don't even know if you're aware of the statistics. Of the last nine series you guys played, you've only won one of them. Yeah. Uh, which was the Hidden Cup 4. However, the last series you played was a 4-3, very close in exactly. Warlords 2. Yeah. So again, it yeah. speaks to just the closest of you guys as players. Game one, though, rematch of an enclosed game that you had against him last time. But yeah. you were the Slavs player, and he was the Franks. Now you get Franks into Slavs, yeah. and you've now won both sides of the matchup. So what was different this time? Like, what, what did you do differently with Franks that allowed you to overcome Slavs? I think adding the archer range uh, was really crucial because that allowed me to get the map control and also disturb his uh, gold income. So that was very helpful. And I forced him to build a tower. Yeah. So that was the biggest thing because he cannot add TCs that as fast as I can. And then I just knew, okay, economy-wise, I should be ahead and just play it smart. Uh, don't take any stupid uh, fights. Uh, yeah, this one was not the best. <laughs> Honestly, the, the, the trade still ended up well because, yeah, you yeah. had like 12 AFK Knights there. Uh, but we <laughs> see the numbers for you are just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, while it seemed like Yo was indexing into the Castle Age, he had this idea he needed to get damage in. The pike numbers were never quite there. And, yeah. uh, I mean, it was just this one was, I think, such a great table setter for the game. And I'm curious how you felt in terms of your confidence level following this one. Did you feel like, oh, all of a sudden I'm locked in today? I'm not, not really. I don't really get affected by that if okay. I win or lose. It's more about how I play, how smooth I play. And uh, during this game, I had two, three moments where I'm like, oh, that, that was not ideal. Wait, what moments? Like, like the fight. That uh, little fight. One. Like, okay. you're not supposed to have uh, units not fighting. Sure. Like, that's not something you should uh, allow. So I was not too happy about that. but. Uh, I just felt like I was in such a good position, and when I saw his pikes uh, in Castle Age, I was okay. He is really committing in Castle Age. Uh, I have two castles on the sides, almost finished. Uh, I just knew, okay, this, this is no way I can lose this game. I mean, late game, you had Paladin against Castle Age Knights. Hey, here we go on to the second map. This fight as well, I mean, 
scouts, skirms versus scouts, archers. Yeah. We saw a couple of those scouts not in the engagement there early for yeah. Yo and kind of speaks to what you were talking about. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, and the thing is, I asked him as well, like, uh, was there a glitch? Because I saw his scouts not fighting. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I take the fight. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. If he had fought with those scouts, it would have been much cl uh, closer, but I was able to over overrun. Diving under the tower there, obviously an incredible amount of eco damage that you found. Uh, but w do you feel like, how, or rather, how do you evaluate your approach to the game in terms of how conservative you are when you get small victories? Sometimes I panic. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, I did not expect to be in that <laughs> position. What do I do now? <laughs> because usually I always come back from certain situations. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to have uh, advantage in fuel ages, so uh, I was like, oh god, well, that's only my game plan. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, yeah. but from here, once again, it felt like you had such a great rhythm throughout this series where you would get that small feudal age advantage, you know, pick off three, four, five villagers, whatever it is. Yeah. And then your first to three TCs, I, this this castle placement felt brilliant because as T90 and, we're, and I were talking about, how does Yo, what's Yo's only opportunity to get back in? It's a forward castle position, yeah. controlling your wood lines. Yeah. When you're in winning positions, how do you evaluate the game? Are you thinking more about your win conditions and how you close it out? Or when you're in a winning position, are you thinking about what the opponent is going to do to get back into it and how to stop that? I, I think both. Both. Uh, the, the, the both are. Okay, I only important. have enough room in my brain for, <laughs> for one or the other. But. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, it should be both, right? Uh, you have to think about what can he come up with in order to win. And uh, then you have to counter that, right? So you have to have all the combinations in your head. And. Uh, you know, uh, this time it worked out. Okay, talk to me about the approach on this map because we were even having a debate between the importance of the water in the middle or just foregoing it for land aggression. And you opted to invest nothing on water, yeah. gave that up, even unfortunately lost those two vills, which started to get scary. Yeah. But it was, it was all for this scout investment. Is that, you think the proper approach to this map is ignore water and go land? <laughs> it depends on the sieve, okay. I would say. Uh, I was very surprised by the fact that he did not have any fuel age uh, army out at all. So uh, when I was feasting those villagers, I was like, okay, uh, this is uh, making up for my losses there. I mean, the first scout engagement on the villagers was fantastic. Then you brought in the reinforcements. Yeah. I don't know if you, I mean, obviously you were playing the game. You skirted the, uh, the fog of war brilliantly to get back in with those five, find a bunch more kills. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, at the end of all of this, Yo's got walls up, yes, but you've now eliminated 10 plus vills or something like exactly. that. Exactly. So I knew at that point, I uh, this is my game, right? And uh, I knew Jabettos are going to come as I was uh, scouting it. Like, that was uh, on point. Everything worked out so well for me. And then uh, I never built CA with uh, Georgians, but I was like, hey, they have a good unit there as well. They're so actually kind of nuts. Awesome. They also have the regen on the CA, just like they do on the other cavalry. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, though, Jordan, do you understand how mule carts work? <laughs> no, I do, but... Because do you realize that you remade, you made a new mule cart on your wood line? Uh, when you had you had <laughs> <laughs> We were just, again, we got to find small things to poke fun at when you're, when you're playing such a brilliant series. And there was a couple times I was like, we're going to talk to him about <laughs> mule carts after this. That, that was the plan, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. That is so good. That is so good. Okay, well now talk Love to it. me about the uh, the tournament as. Or actually, no. Before I t we talk about the tournament as a whole, I want to talk or get some perspective from you about um, where you're at in uh, your Age of Empires career right now, because no secret, you took a small step back, mm -hmm. uh, exiting GL, but still trying, and st well, and still clearly effectively yeah. um, remaining in the top ten of players. How has uh, the division of time uh, for you between, you know, AOE and the rest of your life, like, how has that evolved this year that you've still been able to stay as competitive as you are? Uh, it's very interesting because uh, obviously things have changed for me. Uh, I have a full-time job now and uh, I, I feel like I managed to uh, have a great balance between what I'm doing for myself, uh, st staying healthy, staying focused, and uh, also working, and then also investing a lot of time in into Age of Empires, right? Because it is so important to me. 
and uh, especially NAC, my favorite tournament, and I just wanted to perform as good as I can, right? Because I don't know how much more time I have in the future to, to prove myself, right? So uh, that was... You have as much time as doubt, so... Uh, oh, that doubt is a special... Like <laughs> you know, <laughs> he, he will still perform... Doubt gives all of us hope. 60. It gives us all hope. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, still th I, I still hope that I could be an AOE2 pro. The, uh, yeah, the funny thing is when I uh, got into eSports, uh, people told me, like, okay, 25 is your golden age, right? And yeah. after 30, you can forget it. And then I see doubt with almost 40. It's like... He has never played better, right? So <laughs> we have time. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Okay, talk to me then about expectations for this tournament, uh, considering, um, again, the change in perspective for you in relationship with Age of Empires, like, and considering now this 3-0. Because wh yeah. what, what was maybe your expectation of a finish or hope of a finish in this tournament coming in versus now you've started out on a brilliant foot 3-0 yeah. in a Swiss stage? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I think in last NEC I lost uh, the first three rounds 3-0, so it's already better than, than that. Um, my expectations was just to be part of this event. Uh, so qualifying was a huge, huge uh, milestone for me. Mm -hmm. And now it's just like I, I can play, play freely. And uh, I think that makes me very dangerous as well as a player. Yeah. Heck yeah. Well, again, it was a brilliant start. Congratulations on the victory. You'll actually be joining me for yes. the fourth cast of the day. So that will come after Hera ACCM, which is going to take place in just a moment. Any thoughts on the Hera ACCM matchup? Mm -hmm. It is our defending NAC4 yeah. champion here. Yeah, uh, it, it's tricky because I feel like ACCM is playing very well, right? Uh, he's so consistent and uh, is especially excelling if it's about meta. But Hera, I feel like he has stepped it up even more. Um, best level we have ever seen in Age of Empires, so it's going to be hard for ACCM. I think 3-1 for, uh, for Hera. Okay, 3-1 for Hera is the prediction. He had a brilliant 2023. We'll see if he can start Absolutely. 2024 out on the right foot. A wild Nilly has appeared. Not that wild, but <laughs> I appeared indeed. <laughs> and yeah, obviously Hera, ACCM, quite anticipated. A lot of weird rumors happening and... some. I've seen some talk on social media. So, some, some sneaky stuff happened there. Do you have any more info on that whole well, conversation? Let's take a look. Maybe we have some. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. It has been more than two years since Gamer Legion ventured out into the world of Age of Empires. Since then, we have fought in many prestigious events. Through the heat of the Arabian Desert, or the challenges laid before us by a mysterious organization. Whether online or on stage in front of the roaring crowds, the goal was always the same, to be the best Age of Empires 2 team in the world. And for that, we need the best players. Welcome, Hera. Hera is joining Gamer Legion, and you have a smile on your face. I do. Um, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's big news and it's great news, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah. So obviously, this is something really tricky to understand behind the scenes. Um, maybe walk us through the process there. Who approached whom? Like, how how did we get to this situation? Yeah, so uh, GL approached me and they <clears throat> they said they were interested in signing with me start of 2024. And uh, it was a really interesting offer because obviously I was with the AM guys for the longest of times. And so I had to weigh the pros and cons. Uh, in the end, I decided, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a good chance for me. It's a good opportunity. And I, I capitalized on it. And mm -hmm. I'm actually really excited about the future. Yeah, yeah, I, I can absolutely understand. Obviously, Gamer Legion is a great organization. And maybe walk us a bit through the process. Like, obviously, you're good friends with the AM guys. You practice a lot with Leary, Hart, try to practice with MBL as well, Nikov. How was it for you? Because obviously, those are also your good real life friends. Yeah, I mean, f to be honest, like, nothing changes. Like, you know, Practice partners are, uh, is one thing, and and friends is another, right? So like the friendship is is tight, and it's even as far as like you know practicing with AM guys 
<clears throat> it's still definitely possible. You can still run sets. In, in general, I practice with everyone. I, I ran sets with, you know, Doubt. I practice with ACCM. He's my round one opponent. So, <laughs> yeah, you practice with everyone. You, you try to get a good feel. And, uh, you know, uh, friendship, that's one thing. Me and AM guys will still mm -hmm. always be close. I mm -hmm. spoke to all of them. You know, I let them know ahead of time. They were cool with the decision. And, you know, we kind of talked it out. And, yeah, we're, our relationship will stay, will stay definitely very close. And um, yeah, going forward, I think it'll just be uh, a bit more maybe uh, diverse for my practice partners and mm -hmm. we'll see how that goes. Maybe let's talk about the NSC5 practice because you obviously knew for quite some time that you were going to join Game Allegion. How, like, you kind of knew already when we had the qualification stages as well and you still try to support your AM guy because you're like the good teammate there, right? Yeah, so I actually, <clears throat> I told Doubt in the, in, the, in the qualifier round one or qualifier one, I helped hard practice and train mm -hmm. and he qualified. Qualifier two, I focused more of my energy towards NBL and Nikov. Mm -hmm. Nikov was How did that work out? Uh, I told MBL to run his king away. <laughs> he didn't listen. Um, no, but, uh, you know, Doubt and Nikov were playing. They were in the final round. And I told Doubt, he asked me for some practice. I said, listen, this is my last tournament with AM. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the practice with AM. Mm -hmm. And I, I declined practice with Doubt for that one. I said, main event comes. It's a different story. Mm -hmm. For the qualifiers, I'm going to practice with Nikov. I, I did the best I could, you know, helped him with whatever he needed. And in the end, you know, that ended up winning. And uh, afterwards, we did some sessions. So... This was my last, the qualifiers was my last, you know, full, full for, for AM tournaments. Mm -hmm. And now, like I said, it's going to be a bit more diverse. Yeah, I think the honorable way, like fully committed to the team there. And obviously, if we think about teams, we think a lot about team game tournaments. And we think about a lot of like practice for one-on-one -on -one tournaments. But you also said there are a lot of other motivations for you to join Game Allegiance. Another reason for you joining the team. Yeah, so uh, I'm actually really excited about this because, like, tournaments aside, right, um, this gives a lot of opportunities for content creation, which is something that I've been super passionate about. I've, the last couple of years, I've been, you know, really up in the quality of my YouTube videos, up in the quality of, you know, my streams, the social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think this gives an opportunity for me to, you know, do some collaborations with people that are like-minded and, you know, all the GL guys doing really well in, uh, you know, the socials, the YouTube, you know, uh, stuff as well. And I feel like some collaborations between us, some never-before-seen Age of Empire content that's, you know, oh boy, never it just seen. hasn't been done yet. And there's a lot of ideas on the table. Um, I'm really excited to tap in there and see what we can do. And just excited to join them in some of, like, the, you know, post-tournament uh, you know post -tournament you know, talks, the podcasts, mm -hmm. just, you know, create a little bit more content together. I think that's going to be really cool, really exciting. Uh, also, we'll mix things up for the past four or five years. It's kind of been like, you know, them on one side and, you know, me and the AM guys on the other. And I feel like this is a shakeup that the AV2 community kind of needed. This is going to bring new things. It's going to ex bring exciting things. And um, it definitely gives a lot of, you know, a lot more, you know, opportunities. Okay, and then maybe it's now your time to address the fans that learn to love the AM Hera. Let's think about how will they love the GL Hera in the future. Yeah, I hope so. So I want to say a like, big thank you to everyone who supported my journey throughout AM. I was not the first member of AM. I joined, I was the last member of AM, actually. Well, you, you left twice, joined three times, <laughs> left another time, <laughs> then just left on Woobly, insulted MBL, then you joined again. I mean, I I'm, maybe I'm mixing up some stuff. I think that was more like teenage drama. And I think it was <laughs> MBL leaving more than me. I don't think I ever left officially, but uh, yeah, I was the last to join AM and... Uh, you know, it was definitely a team that, you know, I feel like I grew a lot as a player in person with. I had a lot of, you know, good memories with them. And I'm still going to be, you know, obviously rooting for them and cheering them on in real life and in tournaments. And uh, I, I wish nothing but the best for the AM guys. And uh, I hope to find you know, a similar journey for me in GL as well. Well, then, best of luck to you. You will have a set against ACCM. Your thoughts on that one? ACCM is the chef. He's the cook. He... I mean, yeah, he is very, very solid. And um, he destroyed Yo in practice, which, I don't know, apparently it's nothing new. Jordan just did the same in the tournament. Maybe too soon, maybe too soon. But, you know, ACCM is playing very solid. So I think it's going to be a good set. I'm excited for it. And uh, he was my number one practice partner. I'm, I'm not joking. Like, mm -hmm. I practiced like five, ten sets against him. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I'm excited for the sets. And I, I hope it's going to be a good one for the viewers. Nice. Then best of luck to you. And you already prepared the draft, so we will jump into that one within two, three minutes. Thank you so much and best of luck, GL Hera. Thank you very much, everyone. And I just remember, I think it was teammates with you at one point as well, right? We were together in Heresy before oh, we ECL were days. Yeah, I think yeah. we never played a game together. But that was post uh, pre ECL. Yeah, I, I joined Heresy for a couple months and I think you were in there as well. And it was some good times. I was in there as well. Yeah. yeah. 
And yeah, good luck. I think I will let you set up. Obviously, the draft is already prepared, and we were really tight behind the scenes. So great job by Dash and Jordan to fill us in there. And I'm really excited. Hera against ACCM. Uh, obviously, we are ahead of schedule, so we we are ready for an ACCM set, and we will have two great voices that will guide you through this whole set. It will be T90 and Dave for GL Hera versus ACCM. Hey, how's it going? I'm back. Second set of the day. Second set of the day for this guy, and that's uh, that's some big news, dude. Big news. That's huge. Big news. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, Jordan. Leaving GL was big enough news. Didn't happen like here, but teamed with Viper, mm -hmm. teamed with Tato, teamed with Doubt. I mean, just just Viper and Doubt for a, a decade, yep. right? He's still competing. He's still doing really well. Yep. And then you got Hera joining when Hera's with AM for about six or seven years. Big deal. Mm -hmm. We'll see how things shake out. Obviously, I wish the best to Hera and GL. Yeah. And uh, we'll see if that brings Hera additional motivation to, to show people, you know, something today. We'll see. ACCM, though, he didn't get to sit down. He didn't get a little spotlight. He didn't get a little video. Let's see what no, he brings he's in to the there, table. Dude, he's Let's in there he cooking. The table, he's yeah. in there cooking. And we saw the, the shot of ACCM alone in that training room, yeah, right? Yeah. Practicing. That's what he does. Like, you talk to all the players here, and they all say, ACCM probably prepared the most I out of everyone. Yep, and I, I like, when I first saw him, um, of course, I was waiting for him for like two hours at the airport, and then, he, <laughs> and then I we figured up. out that he's circling the airport in a taxi waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> Classic <laughs> ACCM moment. But, uh, when I first talked to him, when he showed up, he was fully prepared um, to have a deep run in this tournament. He didn't want it to end up like last time where he was at the bottom mm -hmm. and he was really disappointed in himself. And, you know, he, I, I asked him, I said, is it a problem that you're fighting up against Hera first? Right. And he said, no. He said, I have to get it out of the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't have a problem losing against Hera. And if I have a good result against Hera, it makes me feel really good for the tournament. And he yep. said, it's good practice. I can learn from my losses. Yep. And I also, I, I asked him a bunch of questions, and I thought this perspective was really interesting. I actually asked him about Sebastian, because you know on his journey in here uh, with the qualifiers that he almost lost to Sebastian. I asked him about that, and he said, Sebastian's really good. He needs to lose more. Yeah, yeah. He I said he needs to lose more to get better. Yeah, yeah, and that that's actually, you just took the words right out of my mouth here because that's mm -hmm. what I was about to talk about, right? I think ACCM, his experience last year will will bring him a little bit more comfortability now, right? You come into now the next NAC, mm -hmm. you, you, you kind of got the first one out of the way. Every great Age of Empires player that goes to champion in anything has didn't, lost didn't so start much. off oh Didn't God, start yeah. off good, yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm currently really working on the losing part. Uh, the winning, oh, you're doing you're doing great. The dude. winning hasn't <laughs> happened yet. It's it's funny. Like I don't know if it works the same way for everyone losing yeah. going to winning, but but yeah, I think that ACCM even last year was the same thing. His preparation was good. Everyone was surprised he was tenth. I do think that he'll do fantastic here today. And they did face last time in the group stage. It was a three-one victory for Hera. I forget if I casted that or not, but I have very specific memories of it. And I recall that it could have easily gone to that fifth game too. Um, so I, I would like to see uh, a closer series than the first two sets today. And I think we will have that. I think we'll have potentially some longer games. I mm -hmm. think like Copenhagen being game one, Rocky Forest, those have the potential to go on for a bit. But otherwise, Hippopotamus, Marsh Madness, Brood War, pretty aggressive yep. maps out there. Well, if you look at their history, like they played what? They played, I'm looking at nine sets over the last three years. And one, two, three, four of those sets have gone to the final game. Yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. And actually. ACCM has only won one of them. Yeah. So it's like ACCM is constantly taking Hera to the limit. And Hera is, you know, always ending up on top. But all it takes is one game there in those deciders to make it happen. So ACCM, incredible competitor. Hera, obviously the favorite coming into this tournament. I think for many people, having won uh, the previous NAC and having, th like, made the sweep basically on on S tier events this year. So yep. uh definitely, definitely gonna be a great matchup here. Let's talk a little bit about the map drafts here. We got Brood War, Marsh Madness, Hippopotamus, Rocky Forest, really close maps. Yeah, I think the picks are, are really interesting actually, because you don't normally have both players picking the same type of map. Marsh Madness and Hippopotamus. There are some differences which we'll break down. But they are hybrid style, right? So both players showing they're comfortable there. 
Brudor is a nice pick for ACCM because I think game plan wise here against Hera today, he's not going to want to put Hera in situations that where Hera is is expecting whatever's coming. And mm -hmm. after lots of practice and and well, you know you're you're going to get a good feel for things. Brudor. The starting positions vary from game to game. So there's a lot more like in-game adapting, and I think ACCM could potentially get a good win there. Persians, Japanese, Chinese, Georgians, Incas, there's Georgians again. There it is again. Mm -hmm. yep. Probably Rocky Forest this time around, right? Those mule carts are so useful. And, and I think we might see the other mule cart sieve, Armenians, mm -hmm. on the flip side on Rocky Forest too. I was wondering, I, I, I covered a game, uh, a series with Margugu, and Margugu was the first player I saw using the mule carts as a wall, Dave, yep. on Rocky yep. Forest. You just put one right there, and then you have, like, a tower yep. so that they, they can't work away on the mule cart. Your tower pushes them back, and they can't get past. Yeah, the mule carts are really strong. So we might have the double mule cart wall. <laughs> Hera and ACCM both known for defensive play in the early game, so it could be pretty fun. Uh, obviously, we'll see. Copenhagen's going to be game number one, though. That is a, a water map mixed with a regicide start. It is the only map in this tournament where they start with a king. And uh, also, it's really uncommon to have uh, castle and water combined. So, should be fun. I think Chinese would make sense on ACCM side. Mm -hmm. For Hera, I think we've seen Italians picked a lot, so maybe he'll choose to go for that. But there is the seed coming into this. There's also their, their earnings and their career, what they are known for. I, I think whoever created the known for... Uh, it's the same as last year. On. I'm pretty sure this yeah. is the same. Like, they haven't <laughs> changed as players. If yeah. anything, they've gotten even more so. Like, unbreakable defense, Hera has just become incredible. Like, you'll you'll see him defend against a, a Mangonel push with four skirmishers, and the other player just doesn't feel comfortable pushing into his base. Yeah. You know? <laughs> He's got four skirmishers and a TC, and he's somehow booming behind it. Fighting spirit for ACCM. How many times have we seen this guy not only drag out a game into a loss, which is, you know, what everyone memes on, <laughs> but also drag out a game and end up winning the thing. Bring it back, yeah. From a losing position, just because he refuses to give up. You can see the previous NAC finishes. I mean, second at NAC3, that was really like the, the coming out party there. Um, and then NAC4 first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and again, this is the second time ACCM will have been in N NAC. So let's hope that his nerves have calmed down a little bit compared to maybe last year. I don't know about signature unit and Sivbinger jars for ACCM. I'm not sure about that one, but I'm not sure what I would also pick besides the Gurjars. I think he's just so well-rounded. He could do so much with consistency, that guy. So... The, the thing about ACCM that I, I think people don't really get as much, maybe get it in interview at some point, he's, like, incredibly funny, and he's incredibly kind. Yeah. Um, and a recent memory, I played against ACCM in a tournament, and he was apologizing to me for how badly he brutalized me. T90, T90, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, I'm like, ah, oh, it's all good. I suck anyways. And he's like, no, T90, I'm in good shape right now. And blah, blah, blah. Like, it was like a 10 minute thing. He's just like apologizing. Dude, he just wants to be invited to the next hit. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, I mean, he's he, going to gas you up as much yeah, as he can. I mean, he was invited, not for that reason. But, but yeah, it's just so funny. And we were just, we talked to him on like our, our, our uh, taxi and everything else. And he's just got such a good sense of humor. And um, but then he's got the serious mode, and you're gonna see as a lot of these guys when they really dial in, like there's full serious mode yep. as well. I love this guy. ACCM has been around for so long. I still remember like early Red Bull interviews, very first interview, live stream, and uh, just how happy he was when how he won. He was like, "Go Vietnam," you know, and people were all rooting for him. How how much? Oh, I, I was gonna say that uh, they probably forgot the regicide setting, but no, they, they forgot, forgot the spectators. Yeah, these guys flew all the way here and forgot that we need to watch the game. Yep, flew all the way here for us to watch the game, and then yeah, 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 yeah. So they're having a good time right it's now. It's interesting. You know, there's always uh, some bumps along the road for getting the game set up. Even the pros that do it all the time, especially <laughs> when, when they were probably focusing, honestly, on ha making sure it was regicide. <laughs> <laughs> they were so busy. Like, gotta have a king yeah. on this one. And then I mean, I, I get it, right? Um, the it, There's so many settings you need to have. And so you, you prioritize like yep. the map and a million different things. And luckily we are here. Uh, there have been times in online tournaments where the players can't be contacted. And it's a little awkward, but I think I saw a smirk from Hera. I think they've been told at this point we should just be in uh, just, uh, just well, that, a couple moments away from being That's in an interesting one because on Copenhagen, uh, if you see whether they're going for a dock in that pond, 
or whether mm, like true. it'll give you a lot of information. But I've also seen double restart on Copenhagen. I think it was in a barrel set where they had forgotten Regicide or they forgot some other, it was a bug map or whatever. And they kept changing. The strategy didn't remain the same. Like he went out for a dock the first time, yep. didn't go out the second time for the restart. And then the third game, he went out with two villagers for the dock. So it was like, it was just like this whole mix up. Yeah. And both players were like playing off of that. So it's crazy how they can, uh, they can adapt with the, with the openings, right? And, and all of the information that they're being given. But here we go. First game, ACCM against Hera. And he, uh, he's gone for the Aztecs. Aztecs, yo. <laughs> okay, he's okay. cooking, man. He's cooking. Wow, I mean, I think this, uh, we'll get the stat guy is working furiously right now, but I believe. Aztecs have probably not played a single time on Copenhagen in either the qualifier. This is day one yet, and we didn't see yeah, Aztecs we might, yet either. We, so. we might need a dramatic name change as well for Hera oh. over there. I think Hera I th didn't change his Steam <laughs> name! Hera! But luckily we can do Hera. that in Capture Age because I mean, we're in the Gamer Legion oh. uh, house right now. So um, we're going to have to... Get that one. Um, <clears throat> technical difficulties here. Just, uh, <laughs> just a moment, folks. Um, oh, poor guy. We might need to do it on the score no as clue. well. Um, this is the same guy who posted a photo last night that showed the bottom of his GL jersey, and everyone called that he was joining <laughs> GL. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy. Well, I mean, you gotta laugh at it, right? Yep. You gotta laugh at it. It uh, just happens, man. He it is, happens. He has no clue. Yeah. I mean, he was so proud of joining the team too. Like all of yesterday, was he was wearing the the jersey around. Yeah. Like he's, he's really happy about it. And then uh, you know, it's uh, well. Anyway, it's an anyway. interesting development, <laughs> and it kills the first minute of the game where both players are wandering around the scout. Yeah, we but, don't have the forward dog. But but let let's talk about this, right? So typically it's like you take the the left, you have the l water on the left side, you then maybe you go diverse to the right side, you play out, you boom. I don't think boom war is good for Aztecs. I think at some point there needs to be a snowball towards the middle here, but then there's a castle. There's all these things. Going late game with Aztecs is really, really really bad. Right, like like Aztec late game here against it. Well, against Italians, maybe they have some options. <laughs> ZBL sweating the king. Uh, part that honestly too soon. All right, all right, overlay guy too soon. <laughs> You're talking to like two of the biggest NBL fans. Yeah, <laughs> come on, dude. Hera just left them. You're showing the king up here. What is this? Oh man, but uh, I I mean Aztecs would have options late game against Italians. Yeah, but it's yeah, just, yeah. it's not a great sieve on water. You know, their castles, if you're going for a forward castle, are the weakest in the game. So it's probably going to get forced down, right? You, your opponent has a castle, so even an all-in monk push mm -hmm. is going to stall out on your opponent's castle. So, like, yeah. where, what, are you go, what are you going for? What, what are you doing here? What well, plan? well, for now, we just have both players going for water. That's it. There's, we, we got time to, for them to ease into it. But we do have Fire Galleys as the opening for ACCM, and galleys it's going to be Galleys for Hera. Every other time I have seen Double Dock on this, the Galleys tends to win out. Those Fires are going to do well, though, in the early going mm -hmm. when the numbers are low. So that's why ACCM is advancing forward. Hera's actually going to go a little just passing here. Whoa. And ACCM didn't see him immediately. I'm he missed by one towel, but Hera turns around and starts dealing with this. I'm a little surprised Hera's actually turned around there because now he's giving the Fire Galleys a fight Yep. that they were looking for. I thought he would maybe go past to kill fish. Yep. But he, he's got great micro on him. And he's going to have more galleys popping out here. But He's got the micro and he's got the confidence. Like, he wants to take the fights. Yep. He wants to be diving around with these. He's probably going to use his fishing ships to block it. He's going to dare ACCM to start <coughs> attacking those. Look, he goes after that one galley, or fire galley with his own galley, and manages to clear it up. And he's not even going to take any damage whatsoever on the fish. Now, down below, we have Eagle Spearman for ACCM. So that's a really nice touch. And now he can, if he feels like it, go out and fish that bottom mm -hmm. pond. Yeah, it's just with Aztecs, you're normally, you're not thinking about fishing ships. With Italians, you are. You know, it's, it still brings you back to the choice of Aztecs. This is, wait, when you're the underdog, you go high risk, high reward sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. And so we might not get to see how what the what matchup AC Sam was looking for or how he was envisioning to play at all. But maybe there's this moment in this game that's going to really like open our eyes up to what's possible here. There, with the I mean, there are what seven relics on the field. That could be a big big factor actually. Yeah, yeah like the relics. There's there's three relics down below in on the marshy island on that pond, and then there's four relics in the center. Maybe ACCM feels like that 30% extra relic generation is like. That, like, the guy loves his relics. I know that much. Yep. And we got to pause. Hopefully no big technical difficulties. I don't think this was 
regards to the username. You can't change the username in game. We've got it sorted. They're back. ACCM apologizes and we keep moving. But, you know, it has to be said, fire galleys haven't looked too good so far, Dave. No fishing ship kills. The galley mass is there. Yeah. And it, Hera's just going to be able to whittle down these fires. Yeah, and, and that's the perfect amount of galleys for Hera to feel so comfortable, right? ACCM loses that villager. That is unfortunate. He pulled her away early, too. Hera still managed to get her, and Hera's just killing every single fire galley here. ACCM not able to do any damage to the fish, but we were talking about the fish in the bottom, and ACCM has a dock up there now. Mm -hmm, yep. And, like, maybe you're... What you want to do here is you just don't want the Italians to have the water uncontested. Mm -hmm. that, that could be the thinking. But it does seem like... I mean, I, I like this from Hera. He's actually adding in his own fires as a buffer, and those fires will help eventually yep. take out the docks, too. So Hera might be able to get quite a few fishing ships going on his side as he moves in, and this has been all Hera so far. About to be a 7-0 KD for him, and, and he's fishing behind. And him. he's going to go up. Yeah. A cheaper uh, cost for the next age for Italians, which is really, really nice. But, I mean, if you compare his eco to ACCM's eco, ACCM doesn't have that much food in the bank. So Hera clicks up to Castle Age. ACCM is not yet on the way to the next age, but he does have more fishing ships being added, and he does have some control over the middle with that eagle and the spearman. Yeah, it's just, you know, you, you would hope as a player you have a few more things clicking for you in terms of bonuses soon. And Hera Civ is perfect for this. We called it before the game started to the cheaper fishing ships, great with the dock play on a double water map cheaper to go up to the next age and Hera knows relics are important so this is just this is perfect from Hera there could be no questions on maybe being a little bit shaky yep. showing up here first series um, and I don't think he's going to be too disappointed I, with how this has gone so far I love the fact that Hera is sending a villager into the center here it's going to get found by that spearman but it'll just bait it back in it'll die for the, the fire, fire galley yep, yep. I, I really like the idea of placing a dock in that middle there it not only gets you more efficient fish but there is an opportunity it once ACCM gets up to Castle Age for him to go for a sneaky dock there yep and and then upgrade to war galley and kill all your fish that you've invested into so that's really really nice from Hera now you're a big fan of transport ships. It's unlikely, but you also, if you have full water control, could potentially transport down that shoreline as well. Yeah, I, but I, it's a, it's it's like I maybe saw when you run out of other things twice on this map, and they've just been so wildly unsuccessful. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first time I saw it, someone transported uh, condos over, and the other guy already had a full stone wall. Oh set yeah, up. I remember that. Yeah, I, I think it was Barrels against yeah, Tato, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was so smart. Well, Hera's going to be in Castle Age faster with this being a boom map. He'll drop town centers. We might see a monastery as well. I think the war galley upgrade could make sense here. Uh, that said, he's he's already holding control of he's water. He's just going to so go light cav, yeah. Might not prioritize he that. Kn he knows that anything the Aztecs, um, anything ACCM is going to try and do with the Aztecs involves monks. Mm -hmm. And it involves grabbing those relics. ACCM already has a couple eagles. He's going for his fourth now, but he's still a minute and a half away from the castle agent. Hera's already adding an additional town center. Okay, give me a number between zero. Seven. Between zero yeah. and 7,672. Okay. How many Jaguars are we going to see in this game? Uh, oh, it has to be between zero. And 7,672. <sighs> One. Okay. All right. Not 7,600. I was going to go with zero. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to be repping zero. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I'm just curious. You know, we need to think about this, people. Yeah. We do have infantry armor, but of course, that's going to be for the Eagles, and that's going to be for the Spearmen. And you know, like Cav, more mobile than the Eagles. Everything just seems to feel so much more natural for Hera right now. Not what ACCM would have wanted. The Castle Age is so late behind it too it, 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 obviously he lost his fish rather early but yeah. still economically if, it wasn't perfect if either. he wants to take out the fish there he's gonna have to get the war galley upgrade to do so and he's already got three galleys in there fire galleys he's making a fourth that's not going to be enough to take it back against Hera's micro like Hera will notice that right away mm -hmm. and if you want to take out the fish which should be your objective in the north you're going to need the war galley upgrade yeah I agree fortunately yeah. you have another dock to get it from. Yeah, that's true. That's not Research currently it on dying, the other side. But it just, it's so tough because you're like, do I really want to fight back on water when yeah. I've already lost it? Yeah. But you got to kill those fish. You, you got to kill Harris fishing ships, nine fishing ships, and then also three TCs. Do you even engage against the Navy once you get fire ships? Do you, or do you just go straight for the fish? I think because there's only one fire there, you do engage. Yeah. But to what probably you were thinking, it does give Hera time to, to possibly adapt. 
Yeah, but Honestly. I mean, Hera has played this perfect. That's a perfect TC spot. That's where you want to be. I think ACCM can't really advance out right now because he's concerned. Ooh, demo raft. Okay, comes out and boom. Okay, repairing. And Hera knows now that he's prioritizing water because he's re been repairing that dock and that flag's been on there for a long time. The demo also came out. And there we go. That's a nice little eject from ACCM. He immediately gets value even before the War Galley upgrade is in. It's in now. And Herod doesn't have all that much time to adapt to this. He's going for Fire Galleys of his own to buy himself that time. Um, also, War Galley is uh, potential for him if he wants to save those fish. Yeah, really good job from ACCM there because you don't know how many ships are there as Hera goes oh, to the quick wall. Oh, that quick wall. Oh, that's you, disgusting. You don't, you don't know how many ships are, are in that dock, right? Mm. It's one flag for, for Max Garrison or just one. So I think ACCM kind of baited Hera a little bit. At the same time, though, I think you're comfortable losing a couple fishing ships now to gain the lead that you have on land. And res collected doesn't actually reflect... I was. I said the words. I was expecting to look at the bottom right and see res collected being higher for Hera. Way higher it's for not. Hera. It's not. No, <laughs> it's not somehow. Um, that extra Aztec carry capacity coming in. Yeah. I mean, normally you look at the gold. Does he have a lot yeah. on gold? He doesn't. So, I mean, we got it. We, well done, ACCM, in that regard. And he's not that far behind in workers, especially if, he's en if he ends up being able to kill these fishing ships. And ACCM advancing out. Everything looked so good for Hera. He had the potential to hold on to water. Demos? And now he needs to defend. Demo goes Boom. in and... and... Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it w I was whelmed. Yeah, I was I was, I was very... I was... What's, oh, what's no. between under and overwhelmed? Whelmed. Well, that could happen. It's well, the that's... perfect middle ground. <laughs> Speaking of middle grounds, I think you could potentially see a couple outposts and houses from the players towards the middle there. There's those golds. If you're not going to take that gold... Outside your base to the sides, you really need to have that gold control. And I think if this becomes a no-gold game for the Italians, they're actually pretty good, right? They've got the skirmishers. They've got hussars with full upgrades. Hera is very comfortable there. When you think Aztec comps, it's all gold, right? you got the eagles. you got the monks. Those are the two big things. Is that a wall from Hera near ACCM's dock? He was he was going for a house wall mm, before, yeah. <coughs> which we didn't we never really had time to talk about. But it's pretty smart. And actually, that monk just hopped out. We just missed it there. Is he in the transport ship? He was thinking about it. Is he? Uh, the monk dead. Yeah, he's died. dead. Okay, well. Yeah. I would have been sick if he hopped out right into that transport ship. Great transport ship micro from ACCM here. ACCM also pushing with eagles over on the side, but the eagles aren't finding that much value because it's a good TC there from Hera. And he can even extend the wall like from his main base down to that TC, and the yeah. eagles are going to have very limited mobility. You see Hera trying to go after the transport ship. He's trying to take out the walls as well so that he can deny any of those relics coming back. Yep, this is really good for Hera right now. The other thing too is like, maybe there's a little bit of concern for Hera on land because the only land control he's had has been the light cav and there's a couple eagle warriors out, but he's already prepped for the castle soon. Mm -hmm. So I could see a, a defensive castle on those TCs on the right coming up. And then it's just prepping for the late game. Hera with some nice house walls there. That was a bit risky. But the Eagles, they probably won't deny that TC. I just wonder, like, in an ideal world, right? Let's say ACCM is is happily asleep, you know, and <laughs> he's dreaming about this game. Okay. What, what are the, what's the Aztec, like, I win think, condition here? I think it's possible that he w picked Aztecs expecting Hera to save Italians for another map. Like, we are maybe not seeing the full dream here. Okay. And I think 30 seconds in, the dream was dead for ACCM. But, oh, look at that tweet. That is awesome. Four-year-old son loves AOE 2. Watching AOE 2 together. Yes, dude. I remember my first AOE 2 game with my dad. We walled, uh, he, we walled a square. And then I didn't know about the delete key, so we were stuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, how do we get out? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I have. I never played with my my parents. I have a vivid memory of watching my brother Laura Bohr. I told him that, and he said, "I was never good enough for that." So I don't it was know. by accident. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it was like Yucatan, and there was too many out Half there. Half the but. eco died. Yep. Lightcap now finding the villagers building another monastery, and they're going to snipe another monk. And uh, well, the KD has evened out a little bit because ACCM continued to contest on water. He found himself some value a little bit. 
Uh, but still, Hera is pretty decently ahead at this point. And you can see that res collected stat st finally starting to uh, relate what's actually happened. How yeah. how do condos do against fully upgraded Aztec Eagles, I wonder? Uh. I imagine they do reasonable cost-wise, but like I think plus eight Eagles should do pretty well. I think so it should be a fairly even trade-off. I could see. I know the eco is not looking good right now. But yeah. You, know, you you mentioned the but then we're scenario. seeing then we're seeing the between zero and seven thousand two hundred eighteen jaguar warrior <laughs> that's number true coming into play, right? <laughs> true yeah ACCM I mean, is doing such a good job look snagging at him these relics yeah, he's, he's being so away. sneaky dude such crazy oh, moving here from Hera. Hera nice nice dodge there from Hera he's gonna save his monks but those monks are waiting to get into the transport ships to get the relics and one of those monks look at those relics they're gonna go home now. Wow, he's done such a good job How? with that. Hera was controlling the water. How? ACCM is just creeping in there with the transport ship. Wonderful job from him. Getting two relics with Aztecs is uh, it's really, really big. And he's already got three in the bank, so that's going to make five for him. Yeah. And Hera's not going to see them there. He's going to be thinking, what on earth happened? But he should assume that his opponent has them now. A bit interesting. You know, Hera... I think he's in the perfect position to take and win this game, but I'm not seeing any blacksmith upgrades right now to prep for condos. Hussars, no additional stables, so it really feels like he's comfortable with his eco and is kind of taking his time here. But if there is a world where the Aztecs would come back here, it'd be getting the additional relics, which is going to be good for ACCM soon. He's got five. And not being killed in the early Imperial Age, if you know, he has a little bit more time here. And so we'll see. Hera does queue up some condos. He's just now getting the first armor. Actually, Dave, actually the ideal spot and this might become meta. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna say this happens one time in the group stage. Yeah. Condos in a siege tower across that wall into the main base. What do you think about it? Okay, and then he just makes one jag and they're not gonna be up against Aztecs. Womp. It's not Womp. Oh, oh, you mean against a different I'm tip. saying I'm saying oh, I see. I still think it's worth it against this sieve. Yeah. Because your units are just gonna kinda hit walls right now. But yeah, I think it's actually kind of underrated. Okay, hear me out. Eagle at lateral skirm. I think it can work. But you need time. You need a lot you of time. You need a lot of time. <laughs> and that's going to buy him some time, denying that foundation a little bit. Plus, he's got the monks behind. Yep. So those, one, Hera has one, to respect you, you already that. Lost, you already lost. There's two jacks. No! Did, no, I said, oh. You said one. There's more. You said he's what? got four in the queue. Yeah, baby, it's Let's a crowd go, to the condos. Dude. Let's go. I'm actually, I'm, I'm not mad that I lost. <laughs> I'm not mad. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great unit against infantry, and where it tends to be weak is up against archers. Eagles could possibly do the job there, and Hera, he has the condos, but he doesn't have many upgrades, and he can, he absolutely, even in the Imperial Age, cannot engage against. Them. You were talking about buying time. These jags are buying time because now Hera has to make a tech switch. Yep. Away from the condos. Did Hera get chemistry? Did he prep that at all? Uh, I don't know. Did he get the second wood upgrade? No. Yeah. I'm just thinking, like, you know, there's there's definitely a world here where after the perfect start for Hera, things could fall apart. He takes the engagement against Jags. And uh, will these Castle Age Jags hold oh, up well feasting, enough against dude. the condos? They're feasting. The monks are healing behind, but there's just too many condos. You have all the reinforcements, and now you have the uh, Genbos getting value against the monks as Hera tries to now trap in. Oh, my God. It's not a... Massive engagement, <laughs> but it was it's, it was incredibly impressive. I like how you realized midway through that it wasn't I the was, biggest trap ever. I wasn't looking like, at the army that was trapped. I was just you enjoying the, the process. You lowered the hype there. Well played, Dave. That's but, a that's a nutty play, dude. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, <laughs> with with Hera's standards, I I think it's just another day. You know, mm -hmm. he's got the Trebs now pushing that castle. That's the castle that's been producing the Jags, and just now ACCM is going to hit Imp. But as we expected, based on this game flow, man, it is all Hera here. Yeah. He's got such a big eco lead, and I mean, there's a king back there inside the base. You got to keep that alive here. And ACCM, I just I just don't know what it, what he does from here to stop this. There's always going to be an answer from his opponent here. Eagles, send them towards the base. Hope a villager opens the gate and surround the tower and kill the king. I, I, I do think in some rare scenarios, players, like if the opponent doesn't have the side castles like Hera does, before you resign here, you should absolutely be going for the king. Yeah. If you're dead anyways, like there's actually a condition there. Oh, ACCM's one king is on the move. All right, there we go. Oh, he's just smart thinking. It out. Yep, smart thinking. He is going for more jacks. Garland Wars. Garland Wars plus four attack on top of the attack that's already in, so it'd be plus five in total. 
But you will need to see Elite Jag as well to really bump up those stats. Hera in a position to add ranged units out of his castles. Genoese Crossbowman, not really the unit against infantry, but it is a ranged unit, which at the end of the day is still going to serve that purpose pretty well. But it's really hard here for your ACCM. Even if you clean it up, you are reacting all the time. You don't have the map control Hera does. And there's the ranges from Hera. That's probably going to be for an Arbalest switch. Yeah, I love it. Hera is taking advantage. Every time he takes some map control, he's putting production buildings behind it, right? He's making outposts near there, so there's no surprises from ACCM. Good little wall there to buy himself some time. Unfortunately, there's three, now four trebs to immediately kill the walls um, once those villagers are done there. But ACCM is just trying to keep himself in this. He's getting all his monk technologies. The Aztec monks will be fairly strong soon. And he still has 121 villagers. You're just kind of looking for how. Like, how can he make it happen? How can he buy himself... Enough. You, you hope here that you get a really big engagement with elite Jags before Hera can have something to accompany these condos. And these condos are killing villagers, just ripping through the wood line that's remaining there. And and there Hera runs into a castle. We'll see the Jags. Condos that are pretty quick. Here, listen for the clang. Clang! What'd you say? Walk? It sounds like that blacksmith video that Hera did. <laughs> you, what, I'm pretty sure you said womp earlier, though. Where did the, it is a womp, I dude. Can't let it's, this not a cla it's definitely not a clang. Where did the womp come it's from? It's a womp, dude. Do you not hear the <laughs> and then no, it hits? it's a clang. It's a womp, it's chat. Let us know. Can we do a poll? Yeah, can we do womp a clang or clang? Womp? Clang? Clank? Clank? It's not, a, it's not a clang, so I don't even know what you're talking about. It's a womp. Yeah, I don't know. But we'll do a poll. We'll see what happens. Yep. And right now, Hera, well, he's so far ahead, he's making us talk about womps and clangs, right? There's uh, a lot more womps in the chat. Yeah, there. but I mean, they're, they're, come on. I don't know if we can trust them. There's a Jaguar raid, I think, at the back. All right. Big now, elite now, with Garland Wars. These bills will melt. Now go find the king. Go find that True. king. Hope, hope that Hera doesn't have a garrison, maybe. I mean, that's a start for ACCM. Hera just has to shift those four trebs, though. He hasn't gone for the finishing blow. He's got to shift those four trebs over towards those castles with some Arbalest in the mix. And that is then where ACCM clearly doesn't have an answer. He's just now trying to tech switch into skirms. A lot, a lot of upgrades are, are needed here. And he might lose his castles before he ends up getting the skirms out. ACCM has a stubborn refusal to die. Well, like he's rewalling everything. He's getting at Laddle here. He's making more bills. He's up to 131 bills now. Yeah, I do think, like Hera's, you know, maybe doing some housekeeping, making sure his farms are tidy. But Hera hasn't killed him yet, right? Like, I, I agree. ACCM. This is why he fights. This is why you will probably see instances from ACCM either in this series or others where he's not resigning when most people would, right? And this might even be a situation where most people would, but. There's anything to be critical of for Hera in this particular game, and there's not much. It would just be late with tech switches and late with some upgrades. He could be fully popped and pushing those castles right now. He could be, but then he's not focusing on like walling the edges or all those other things, right? So he's like he's allocating his time, mm -hmm. I think, pretty well. And honestly, uh, it's just a it's just a matter of playing up against ACCM, right? If guys stretch games like this. It, it kind of opens the door and people are saying like, why didn't you kill him faster? Yep. Well, you're setting yourself up to win 100% of the time. Okay, hold on. Harris King Refuge is under attack? Is that Capture H bugging or is that actually happening? That would be where the tower is. It's under attack by that bird. <laughs> They're coming! <laughs> I mean, dude, I had a heart attack. It just took the crap on the tower. <laughs> I had a heart attack. Capture H doesn't put that up for no reason. <laughs> oh, it was AC wait, ACCM. I got it confused. Yeah. I'm stupid. Yeah, okay, yeah. so yeah, okay, I apologize. Uh, thank you, Vodka, for humoring me and looking at Hera's uh, base there. But yeah, I mean, obviously the king goes down. This is game over, but I don't think that's needed. The GG's called. ACCM, he goes down. And the dreams start for Hera. I don't think there were many questions there for ACCM. We immediately questioned the Civ choice. So yeah. that, that could be seen as a negative, right? That's pretty bad for us to say didn't agree with it. But... He's ultimately going to have better civilization. Things are going to probably be a little bit more tested for some of these future maps. That was a neutral map that was not picked by either here. So of all the practice he's done, maybe he just didn't practice Copenhagen that much. I or mean, something. we'll see. Like you said, we'll have to look at Hera's draft. Like what other civs could he have picked there that ACCM might have suspected he would go for? Because yep. Italians seem like a really rough matchup. They're yep. always going to match you early in that water pressure, right? And you're never going to really accomplish or anything. This is the other side of it, Dave. Aztec's last pick 
So I think ACCM basically drafted fully for the other maps. Yeah. And then at the end, he was like, ooh, well, boy, maybe, I mean, you what might, do I do? You might be thinking he's playing Italians on Marsh Madness, and then he's going to play Bohemians on Copenhagen. Aztecs, I think, have a better Actually, matchup that's true. against Bohemians. That's a really good point. Like, yep. Bohemians against Aztec Monks can be... Like, it can be pretty brutal. Actually, Bohemian, yeah, just Monk Skirm. Yeah, Actually, and they're against. not likely to play water yep. early. They're likely to go FC. So then your fire galleys are there early killing their fish. Yep. It, I think it, that's it. I that, think That might have been it. I think that's a big part of it. And and you got to, you know, on some level, you have to look at that and say, is it good if you're trying to counter pick? But when you're looking at a player like Hera, that's kind of what you have to shoot for sometimes. You have to, you have to have the better matchups to mm -hmm. be able to get those wins. So I... Again, you, you just kind of forget about that one if you're ACCM. You move on now. And I think his civilizations are, are really solid for Marsh Madness. Persians and Japanese, both incredible. Yep. Uh, Brood War, though, that was the map that I said at the start, I think. You pick a map where the starting positions can differ, harder to game plan, uh, which could potentially be an issue for Hera. We'll see. So maybe Brood War. I think Persians or Japanese on Brood War just makes sense. You've got water. Mm -hmm. Um, I would I would lean a little bit more towards the Persians because fishing is less important than maybe Marsh Madness or Hippopotamus. But actually, now that I'm reminded Hippopotamus is out there, I think Japanese Persians are really good there. So I don't know, man. I really don't know. I could actually see Georgians on Brood War because it's oftentimes it's probably players Inca, It's wall. probably Incas on Brood War. I've yeah. seen them before okay. a couple how do they, times. How do they play out? Like into like Eagles, <coughs> Arbalest? Usually you're going for the water contest. And then it's like, you know, you Adapt. have... Adapt. Whatever exactly. you want. Yeah. Exactly. Because you can go monks, you can go eagles, you can go, like, spearmen, archers, anything. Okay. Like. Yeah. Yeah, I think Georgians and Armenians will be saved by both for hip, uh, for Rocky Forest, excuse me. But remember, guys, <clears throat> you know, these players are going to play practice sets, they're going to practice drafts, but that random ban list at the top is different every single series. So that, that can definitely make it awkward, and I think that could have been part of ACCM's Civ Selection Game 1. But Hera, who's just announced to have left Aftermath, joined Gamer Legion, that was his first game as a GL player, gets the job done. And, I mean, obviously you're not expecting a level change. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason We know what in. to expect from exactly, Hera. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Like, the Hera, from GL's perspective, is the closest thing to a sure bet yeah. <laughs> that you'll ever get, right? Yep, like, yep. It's crazy. Is ACCM on Puma? That'd be sick. He might be. Maybe another announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd buy that clothing line. The ACCM dude, hit, special? Yo, Puma, hit me up too. Yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd have, uh, dude, if I could find ACCM socks, I'd wear those. You know, Dash was saying that, you know, because there's the doubt socks. The yeah. Cells. Dash yeah, yeah. was saying that with the amount of times we do interviews here on the couch at NAC and we have like our feet propped up. Yep. If we all had like silly socks, it'd be a good time. But I, I didn't. I've left my silly socks at home. I, I thought, thought about judged. bringing the socks with the holes in them, but I felt like that wouldn't. Why uh, do you still own? You mean one hole where you put your foot into? Or I do like have. Other holes? I do have a sock that has a hole in it that has just been sitting in my drawer forever. And you just, you just, are you emotionally <laughs> attached to this? Don't have the heart to throw it out. <laughs> That sock has been through everyone's, some good moments. Hey, dude, everyone's got one. All right, okay. I named it Tony. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well. Wasn't expecting this in our cast today, but we move on. Incas for ACCM on his home map. And we've got Hera playing as the Magyars here. So it's, it's interesting. So this uh, map, Marsh Madness, based on Land's Madness, a map that's solely land, and then obviously he's added some Marsh, right? But Incas, Magyars, two amazing Land's Madness civilizations. So they've opted more for land options than water here. Mm -hmm. This this map was not... I. I think we saw it in a bunch of sets, but there wasn't many like great games on it in the qualifiers. So we'll, I'll be interested to see like how the meta has developed throughout the practice games for this one. I even I think I put in the notes like it's a little bit one dimensional, mm -hmm. but I, I'm sure with players of this level, it's gonna get it's gonna get crazy. Yeah, I mean, I actually think there's there's a a little, a, a deceivingly little amount of space out there. Mm -hmm. If you just look at the map layout, it, yep. it's like, okay, it's a big map, there's lots of land, but you have the marsh through the middle. And then you have all the rocky terrain around the, yeah. the wood lines. It's actually really hard to go for a, a boomy game. So I'm expecting lots of army. Hera loves to go for scouts. 
So, you know, my thinking here is we'll see very little water focus, maybe just one dock from both of them. They both do have to fish because fishing is so helpful. But, mm -hmm. And then I think it shifts to land where I remember a game Hera himself played as the Incas in a recent tournament and went for lots of eagles and pikes. It's look so easy the, to do that. So Look at the gold positions for Hera. Yuck. Actually, it's pretty yuck for ACCM as well. But look at Harris Island. They're all next to the water, dude, except for the one right beside his CC and then the yeah. other one in the north. Safe to say that if you're uh, not protecting your golds, you're in trouble this game. Oh, big time. <laughs> yeah, big, big time. Um, can we zoom in on the signage, though, on the crossing? I saw on the very north gold. There's it always says the same thing. Is it the uh, Austria Munich? Yeah, is that yeah. What it is? Like if you, if you zoom in and really close, really close, really close. Uh... I, I can't I can't even see it. I, it says here. pixels. <laughs> okay. It says get a job. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a Black Forest game between an, uh, Jordan and Andy, who are both here, and it was Austria Germany, and there was one of those signs in Black Forest, and it pointed to Austria Germany. It was pretty sick. The odds of that, but uh, anyways, I just wanted people to know. I, I like that touch. I like when map scripts have a couple, a little bit of flair to them, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So what are we expecting here from the Incas? You know, Drushing's kind of out of out of meta right now. Players aren't making many militia. It's probably just some fire galleys for defense or aggression, like just one or two, and yeah. then uh, adapt based on what your opponent is making. And then you're going like spearmen with some archers, and maybe yep. a couple skirmishers mixed in. Yep, we see four oh, villagers. Oh, where are they going, though? Are they going to the gold? Or four are you, villagers. Are you, it looks like they're... He already has two lumber go forward. camps. Yeah, four villagers. Let's look at ACCM scouting here and see what he's seen. Remember, the golds are forward. So he's scouted everything now, and he's going to see this That's woodline. That's a tower forward. And, oh, you notice, how, you notice how he didn't even pass it. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to give Hera an idea. Is it a forward range, too? Probably, right? It could be. Actually, think about it, right? Like, the Byzantines, for example, have cheap spearmen skirms. Mm -hmm. It's common to see the tr the trash rush forward. And Hera's scout is in the wrong position to spot yeah, this. Yeah, but but then like the Incas have che cheaper food costs than all their military, so that applies to their spearmen skirms. Yep. So you don't think of them as like a good trash tip, but they actually they really are. And that is, I, I mean, amazing stat there. The Incas have been banned out a lot in the qualifier, but also to whoever decided on Kama Yuck, well played. Yeah, Hera's going to be looking now. Looking for a military building. And he hasn't scouted the front right now. So he really he doesn't have to have any alarm bells going off in his head right now. The scouting's pretty poor from Hera, all things considered. Still hasn't really scouted the front. There's the range. So probably a spearman comes out, some skirms come out, and then we're going to see that tower on the wood line for Hera. Hera is just now scouting the gold from ACCM. Yeah. So Hera is seeing that there's nothing on gold, and he's kind of curious. Yeah, he's, he's really like, where, where is this barracks? Okay. What is going on? But Harris should know now. He should say, okay, this well, is... Well, he's definitely going to know now. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it's definitely going to be aware <laughs> of what's going... Oh, I love this! ACCM walling off the wood line. If your opponent runs away from the villager war, why not? Yep. Drop a few palisade walls, force them into another lumber camp, and maybe a more exposed position. This is crazy energy from ACCM. He just lost the first game, but he says, hey, wall off the there were side. walls. Yep, there wall were stone walls. Let's fight this here. Yep. Uh, Hera's gonna. It's actually a bit easier as the defender because you you look and you see which villagers weak. You pull back. You bring in a fresh villager, but you're still using villagers to fight, and he's using more villagers to fight than ACCM is right now. And a little good, nice block there, and that's gonna be a villager down for the Canadian. One dead vill, one dead vill, and ACCM's vills are still relatively healthy. And he just goes back and he walls off the other side of that wood line. Oh, so wow. uh, Hera could theoretically come forward and attack those palisades with villagers. He could maybe make another lumber camp on that wood line, but it's more likely he's going to go out to a more exposed wood line, like mm -hmm. the one at the back there. Yeah. And ACCM can just kind of recenter his focus somewhere else. ACCM, it's so weird to place a tower on a resource that your opponent is not presently taking these days, mm -hmm. but I think with his scouting, he actually should tower that. Or wall that gold in. Wall it, wall it off with even like 20 palace, or 20, sorry, like like four or five to try and disrupt it in the future as well. Harris just coming out to the top there. So he's going to go, so mm, that's an interesting tower there from ACCM. Harris looking for, for resources, I think. Is he running blindly to the north right Does now? he see the gold to there's the... There's also, hold on, there's a lot. There's a counterattack yeah. as well from Harris right now. yeah. And the Spearmans come home from ACCM. Harris sees it, knows it's only one Spearman. He's Magyars. He gets the kill. 
Now he hesitates because he's defending at home and there could be losses there. There's a lot of things happening right now. But ACCM in the end doesn't lose villagers there. Yeah, one to one. Units are on stand ground there, so he doesn't run into the TC while he's dealing with the scouts. I was just wondering if Harris saw that other gold. So yeah, he knows I, about I the gold to the does. left. But now he's found this, so oh, I wonder wow. if he's going there. Yeah, that, that was him just blindly running forward looking for a gold, and fortunately for him, he finds it. But as we say that, ACCM finds another villager kill. And really nice shot from both here. They do both have a fire galley traveling in the south right now that will most likely engage against oh, each other. So much to look at. But Dave, this is the perfect type of style you need to bring against Hera. Make it messy and make it awkward. Yeah, and Hera, this is just classic Hera, right? He's utilizing the mobility of the scouts, especially Magyar scouts with that extra attack. He got that one villager, and then he comes back, and he saves his villagers on the wood line from being damaged by attacking the forward villagers from ACCM. So really, really solid stuff from Hera, and suddenly his army is back home again. Mm -hmm. So he's got a defensive force here. He can kind of think about how he wants to approach going out for gold. Hera's actually on stone right now, so I think those forward villagers that were looking for the gold ended up on a stone mine to the left. Or no, they're on the berries there. Interesting. The, I gotta say, the wood that is a weird spot to be. The wood efficiency for Hera is not pretty right now. He really needs a tower down. And eventually, the hope is, if you're ACCM, that you're going to have a vill lead and your eco on home has been untouched. And it hasn't been completely untouched, but yeah. Yeah, like that for Hera is awkward. Good. Here he could lose another villager, and he will lose Does. another villager. So eco KD, 3-1 to one in favor of ACCM. Not really much damage being done on water. The fire galleys were just canceling each other out. And you can't really blame both players because it's been kind of crazy yeah. so far in the early stages <laughs> as ACCM pushes forward with yet another tower, this one will be within range of Hera's defensive tower, but ACCM has that army forward. Unfortunately for him, the army forward means there's not a lot back home to the fence, so if he doesn't keep up with the overchops, Hera could sneak in there and snipe a few bills. I do want to credit Hera here. Uh, when, he, when he saw the forward, he added a few more fishing ships. He's been at seven this entire time. He's even going up to eight. This has been a strength for Hera, particularly over the last year or so on a map like this where when it when it shifts to land focus, remember El Dorado and TTL, mm -hmm. he goes, okay, I'm gonna fish behind this and that's why Hera has the, the food income he has right now. Yeah, and he you saw that tower that he was just making on ACCM's wood line. Like he's got one villager forward making that kind of Vivi-esque, right? But he has the army to support if that tower pushes the villagers away from that wood line. ACCM though, couple spearmen are damaging the scouts, and the scouts need to leave, and ACCM will just simply go for another tower on the farms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's like both players are kind of losing some crucial map right now, but if that tower ranges those villagers when they're within those walls, could be problematic. ACCM moves away from the wood line, though. And, and his resources are looking fairly strong. Same with Hera. Yeah, what a game, dude. This is so Really good. solid. I think the biggest thing right now is Hera on that gold in the south. Mm -hmm. ACCM probably isn't believing, I assume he scouted that, he probably doesn't think that Hera's ever going to be out there because that is wildly... Oh, he's going to find it, out it's, now. It's a wild thought to even think about it, but... Yeah, good scouting from him. Yeah, now he sees it, and now he'll probably think about towering it. Hera should maybe counter tower. Or maybe go heavier on water. You could do either, right? I, I mean, at this point, do, are you looking to push forward with another tower over there that just takes him off that gold specifically? Like, he can always run to another one. If I mean, your, your your army as well can, right? Yeah. It's like a, it's a tiny little trash army, but honestly, you could just use that to, to push him off the gold. I don't love how some of these towers aren't fully walled in, like the one next to the stable, and the one next to the new farms. But in general, ACCM's focus has been on the, on the front, and Two he finds fills. his villagers... It's awkward with skirms to kill villagers. He's going to let the one weak one get away and to make sure he gets this one. And actually, he's trying to do both things. He's deliberately not attacking that bill because he knows at any point he can turn around and kill her. <laughs> L like that. Yeah, he was trying to get the weak one in front. Look at the tower surround that he has on Hera's base right now. Hera is finding it very difficult to farm, but he does have those fishing ships like you mentioned. And uh, we've got Spearman now chasing those away. We've got Bears chasing Bills. <laughs> Shout out, you know what? My MVP from this game is honestly Vodka for keeping us up to date <laughs> on literally everything because we've looked at six or seven different points of the map continuously throughout this. Yeah, where are those fire galleys for ACCM? They're going to be moving forward. He's got two, had two for a bit. Maybe had a little bit of defense going here. But honestly, I think a huge upgrade here is War Galley. If both players get like three to four fires out and upgrade War Galley, it's going to be a, a like a 10 eco swing, maybe even a 15 eco swing if Herod will lose 
uh, some of his eco. Villagers being on the front, Villagers still exposed at home. There's all this stuff happening, but what's ACCM's kill unit in the next stage? He, he is a defense unit now, but like killing Villagers with trash? Yeah. It's probably not going to happen. It's going to be difficult as long as those scouts are alive too, because you want to add a monastery, right? And yeah. eagles, but uh, you know Hera with the light cap and the scouts, and there's the light cap tech right there. He's going to be pretty devastating with those. I feel like you have to get back on water at some point and start really pressuring because you can't let Hera just not farm. Yep, agreed. And listen, guys, like if you watch game number one, we're perhaps concerned that maybe this would be a stomp. This is the ACCM people get excited about, yep. right? It's been a great strategy, but also at the same time, like this is Hera doing Hera things where he's so consistent. But both strategies have really clicked for me. Both, a lot of it's made sense. Hera has swatted away a lot of these attacks and got his own counterattacks in. But Hera, he's not dropping that second town center. And I don't even know where he would drop it with how many towers are up at his base. ACCM's going to take a couple more losses, but TC number two comes up. And, and here, go. he, here he's the got the War Galley upgrade. So he's going to compete on water here, too. Yep. You can always go for another dock on the other side, too, but I don't think he knows that Hera's fishing eco is, is as extensive. Yeah, I agreed. That's a good point, because he never saw that other dock. Actually, yeah. I think he did get a glimpse of that dock at one point. But, but it could have just been a replacement dock for the original five fishing ships, yep. right? If you were to ask him, I don't think he would suspect Hera has, like, nine ships right now, yep. or had ten at one point. And at the end of the day, where's Hera's strength with his sieve? Land. Where's ACCM's strength? Land. <laughs> That gold, the big concern here, like we said before. And Hera's got to get army over here. You know, if you were to remove the names from the screen and just look at the positions, it's ACCM's oh, position goal. all the way here. He's got the double TC stack. He's got Hera off of gold. He's got Hera on the run in a lot of ways. And I don't see Hera with much army on land. He's got two light calf mm -hmm. and he's got three knights right now. But if you look at the economy there, I mean, he's making up for it with the fishing ships. Yep. Right? Res well, collected. It's pretty close. ACCM is ahead right now. Um, but the Spearmen are still kind of tracking those knights. And Hera is still, you know, fishing on the outside, which ACCM hasn't been able to stall. I think Hera's going to drop a castle here. He's not really in a position to drop it forward. Usually when players get the stone for a castle, they're committing to it. Maybe like a, a castle that could defend that main gold on uh, the front. Yeah, or you could even secure maybe two of those golds. I, I think some of those towers got taken down around Hera's base. Yeah. So, oh, wow, nice raid there from ACCM, killing another two villagers and keeping them off the gold. He's working away on that tower, and maybe a castle on that hill or something, just to protect a gold. Yeah. A gold and a wood line would be really, really nice for Hera at the moment. Uh, Hera's still going to take advantage of the fish. If Hera would not have added fish, he would be dead at this point. Like The fish have kept him in this game. Still, though, War Galley upgrade was in, so the upgraded fires are there, and actually think, yeah, Beautiful. they're killing fishing yeah. ships there, and finally ACCM starts to realize that Hera's had a lot more fish out there than he originally Things are going to get a little bit messier for Hera. He's going to have to place a bunch of farms now that the, the fishing ships are potentially dying on that side. He's still got a lot of food in the bank, though, and it says he's got 28 on food, so even after those 11 fishing ships go down, it looks like he's gonna have a solid-ish eco. ACCM though, with two TC production, and ACCM at 53 villagers, Hera at 46. And 84 total population against 67. ACCM has come to play. He will keep that tower up. Hera losing so many expensive units he doesn't because realize. he's distracted. Yep. He's distracted by the other areas that ACCM's pressuring at oh. the moment. Oh. Eagles popping out of nowhere. Pop, pop. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay, that hill right next to Hera's gold, though, was made for a castle if I've ever seen it. Right where the pikes are. If, if you have army control in five minutes' time with the Incas and the castles are a bit cheaper, that would be an amazing castle. Mm -hmm. Great find from Hera here. Remember, Incan, Inca villagers are armored as well in Castle Age and Beyond with the infantry upgrades. So. But Magyars get the attack upgrades for free, so it's basically a can they cancel each other out. In some ways. <laughs> <laughs> in some ways, yeah. In some ways, yeah. Eagles. Oh, nice raid there. Pikemen here, still plus, a problem. Plus two on those infantry. And we don't have fletching for Hera, yeah, so actually can tank quite a bit of the tower damage. Dude, this is just like, this type of game has to be so annoying. Hera's used to it, right? But this is so annoying. ACCM has been all over him. Towers, water, and land. Such a diverse push from ACCM. And he's got the lead in this game. Hera's still behind economically. Hera still needs to find army. It's primarily light cap for him, which can work against the Eagles. It will be a problem if there's more pikemen, but ACCM doesn't have many, and Hera's going to make sure he does not escape here. 
Yeah, and AC Sims like, you know what? I'll take this fight. Yeah, whatever. It's not even the worst fight <laughs> for me. I've got some uh, I've got some pikemen, I got some eagles there, I'll get some value against you. I think Hera should I mean if he can, start adding in some Magyar Hassar here. It's just you've got plenty of gold in the bank. And I think it's less costly on food as well. I actually don't know how good like how much HP a Magyar Hussar has in Cast Lage versus I think it's Alenka. 90. 90? That's I pretty think good. it's 90. HP is HP. It's not bad. I yeah. think it's 100 for the Elite, right? Okay. I mean, I Could love the unit. It's one of my favorite units, but I, I normally am going for the Elite. It just unit. looks cool. Yeah, it does. I just think they're neat. They're neat? Yeah. And I kind of feel bad for them because they, they have a Lance, but they don't get the plus one range. Mm -hmm. Not that they should balance-wise or anything, as Hera... Again, maybe a little frustrated with ACCM's presence here. Is going to clear out a tower, but ACCM was able to squeak up another one. So that's just another area for ACCM to be able to target with Pikeman. I am noticed, though, like the flow of the game hasn't been too good with Army the last couple minutes for ACCM. He must yep. be shifting back. I guess that may be the fourth TC at home. That would explain it. Just yeah, a lot more. I difficult. like how he set him up. It's kind of like got like a square. He's got like a TC in every corner. Yeah, and the like, safe area in the middle. He's like raid this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, what are you gonna raid? Mobility this, loser. <laughs> <laughs> like the most effective town bell click ever. <laughs> it's all in the same part of the screen. It protects every resource. Boom. Yeah, and you know Hera is still in this game, but he is still falling further and further behind economically. And I, I still think, like, Castle on that gold would be beautiful. But if there's Siege, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe that, that will never happen as Hera drops the Siege Workshop. Oh, Monk's there. ACCM has to be careful. This is a classic situation where Hera just snipes in Whoop. or comes in, snipes two Monk's. But ACCM, I mean, he's got four TC's to hide at those in. So yep. from Hera's perspective, this must be so wild. Just like, uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Hera is never going to be upset with even just idle time for the opponent there, right? The garrison's in and out of the TCs. That's annoying for the opponent. But you know what's annoying? Hera losing his monks. Hera losing light cav. Yep. And now Hera's woodline's exposed. And as he goes in, there's monks waiting from ACCM. And it's he converts two with. out of the three knights. Like Crazy it, defense and offense. If Hera was only paying attention to that, those knights get deleted or he... He runs away earlier, but he, it, there's too many things. ACCM is on water, killing his fish. He's on that wood line on the tower. He's has monks converting the knights at home, and ACCM is in a really, really solid position right now. I would just like to see his food eco climb up a little bit more. Hera, classic situation. 32 on food, somehow. He's being raided everywhere, right? Yeah, I will say Hera, no horse collar. Again, back to all the things that are happening. That's going to hurt a lot here. A lot of those farms are receding. He's not thinking about that. But at the end of the day, he still has the farm. So oh, still forward has that castle from ACCM. Oh, forward man. castle oh, there. Man. For oh, oh it's right on the hill, He's dude. going in. My man has zero chill. Literally zero chill. Oh, my God. He's what gonna a have, castle. He's got to be careful, though. There's, There's a Meganel there. There's oh. a Meganel. Thank God he's got that armor. Oh, no. ACCM. He's got to be careful here. He's got enough pikemen to just dive. But if he leaves his villagers, then the knights could go in. What a play here. But he converts a knight. The Manganel will go down. The army goes down for Hera. And I think Hera will have no choice but to tap out of this He doesn't one. even have a woodline, dude. He doesn't even have a woodline. ACCM taking game two with just an incredible display of, like, being everywhere yeah, at that was, once. That was so beautiful, man. Uh, and, and that's exactly it. It's like, okay, um, everyone here can manage, let's say, four things at once. He bumped it up to five and six, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, you need to be paying attention to... Everywhere I'm pressuring you, and that was beautiful. Play that castle him. on the hill is wild. It's within range of the other castle. There's a TC there, yep. and he's just like, nope, I'm taking this. I just love how the the story that that paints, because his eagle was intently scouting Hera's mm -hmm. base the entire time, and then remember, Hera was like, well, I'm gonna make scouts. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't planning to play the same way, so he wasn't necessarily thinking that intently about the resources and how to pressure them. But yep. ACCM did that very early. And now the Aztecs game, game one's forgotten. You say, okay, well, that one doesn't mean anything now. We're all yep. tied up here against Hera. Yep. That's good stuff. No, great display from ACCM. I think Hera held against that a lot better than a lot of other people would have. I agree too. with that. I Adding agree. the fish was perfect. He had a good food eco the whole way through. Yep. Um, his light cap were constantly roaming around. But ACCM kind of took care of those issues by keeping his TCs close, not going for any exposed um, resources whatsoever, and then having a little bit of pressure on Hera's resources at the same time. So he has to keep thinking about pulling the army back. Yep.
away from his economy. Really, really solid stuff. And the the switch to War Galley, you know, getting the the fire ships to kill the fish was huge. That was that was a clinic. Yeah. yeah that, I mean, there's not going to be many games today that you look at when a player wins and say, "Man, did that game plan go according to plan?" Because, like you said, Hera played so good. Not many things I can really think back to mm -hmm. to say that he could he really did wrong. His counterattacks were perfect, but. A relatively early pick as well goes down for Hera, one of his comfort picks. So his highest pick remaining is Armenians, which is can be very strong in some situations, but I do think still falls into the category of um, players are still figuring them out a little bit. It's still new. I think players have used them a lot on water maps. I think they're pretty well established as, as high up there in the water tier. But as for a land map, which will, I think, be Rocky Forest, we'll see. But it is Hera's choice now. We are in game number three. It is going to be Rocky Forest. Forest. And oh, baby, get ready for some Yule carts, people. This is going to be fun. The Armenians have to build theirs. The Georgians start with them. This is the only, uh, the only civilizations that get this. This is a recent DLC. And it, you could collect wood, and you can collect gold and stone and actually hunt from the mule carts. But you can move them around, inspired by uh, AOM, I believe. But the th cool thing about this map, or actually, you know, that I would say the awkward thing about this map actually is normally if you try and build a lumber camp, you can't build on the rock. Yeah. So you are forced to place a very inefficient lumber camp. Th these civilizations were made for this map. You can just roll that right over the rocks. Yeah, and you don't have to build as many yeah. as you would previously. Obviously, it costs food, so that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the better fade? I don't know, man. Harris is a more traditional fade, but ACCMs is pretty clean. I mean, I'm not the expert. I was going to say, you have a haircuts. lot of opinions on hair. I, I do kind of cut my hair like a couple times a week. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's more than me, honestly. So, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Uh, did we ever do a poll on Womp versus whatever else? We could do a poll on that, maybe. But uh, love that. Shout out to Salad. Salad's been around a long time. I know dude. All he goes back. Yeah, I know, dude, I know all about fading hairlines. Trust me. <laughs> I'm just, an you just you just you just faded the whole head. <laughs> <laughs> just the fade went a little too far. Thanos snap uh. years ago. All right, so Georgians and Armenians, who are you favoring here? Mm. I mean, Armenians actually have pretty solid counterplay against the Georgians because you start with the Georgians, you think about their cav, their cav and their eco, but then the Armenians have arguably better eco. They have monks, and they have they have pikes. That are like you can get pikemen in um, in feudal age. Feudal age, you can get spearmen in dark. You can get halbin oh castle. Yeah, yeah, you can just you can go for it. So I actually think the Armenians match up very nicely, and I, I'm gonna lean a little bit more towards the Armenians here. But yep. it, funnily enough, the Georgians actually are I've been picked more commonly here, but it's it's been picked against other civs, right? But in this matchup, I'll go Armenians. I I think so too. Warrior priest is great here as well. Like mm -hmm. just grabbing those relics really quickly. Yep. And having that infantry unit that the Georgians might struggle against, right? You you think when G you think Georgians, you think Manaspa. Yeah. But Armenians have help. Like Hera's gold position, I, I just noticed it. I almost puked, almost. I held it together. Just but a little bit. That is rough. Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is. Oh my god! You compare so to ACCM. Dude, so that oh is. Oh my god! I don't know what Hera Ooh. said to the devs or what he said. He's to got the map fortified strippers. churches. All right. He can. He can. Squeeze one in on the other side Listen, there. He just joined GL. He hasn't gotten the map hacks from Viper yet. So. No, he hasn't downloaded those <laughs> He hasn't yet. downloaded As soon yet. as he changes his name, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, we'll see. Now, guys, to the left of that house, that rocky opening, normally you can't wall that. That's where Dave and I were talking about mm -hmm. a mule cart sitting. And a mule cart's got 300 HP. So mule cart, uh, mule cart sorry, can hold out Feudal Age armies pretty effectively. Yep. So I think... Players may play more uh, defensive because of that. And you could still collect wood from it, obviously, mm -hmm. if you put it there. Yeah, and you could, uh, if someone sneaks by, you could block with then a villager and wait for the spearman or something like that. Yeah. There's, uh, well, there's a lot you can do with the mules, and there's a lot you can do with a forward archer range, as we found out from ACCM last game. And he's going to attempt to do that again. As he pushes in here, what's the HP on ACCM Scout, I wonder? I think it might have taken a hit there from the Spearman. Ooh. It did, and whoa! Took another hit from the Spearman, okay. That, that Spearman had a little bit he of range that. there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was a javelin, that's what that was. Arch range going up, but Hera has discovered it early. He won't be able to stop it, but he's got that information in his mind. 
and ACCM is just going to continue to add spears, and he's going to go skirmisher. So I love, skirm again. I love how Hera added spearmen in Dark Age. Yes. That was that caught ACCM off guard. That's the Armenian bonus there. Now, we talked about how bad Hera's gold is, but honestly, for gold long term, it's all about the middle there, the middle and that stone. So having constant pressure and vision through the middle area yeah. makes a lot of sense. There's there also Hunt out there, which you can drop off with the mule cart. So like, this could be great. Also, they're really close yeah, on this generation. I agree. You could loop around. I, I know the tendency on this map is not to loop around the, the outside, Yeah. but you're so close <laughs> to your opponent. Yeah, you true. could actually just go for a raid on that side. Yeah. They'd never expect it. Let's hope they don't try and be too sneaky because it's going to take like 20 minutes to go around the other way. <laughs> yeah, true. I think they know. So <laughs> he, like ACCM literally lost his scout in the other yeah. space, so I think they're going to they're gonna figure it out. All right, so Hera building up from home. There's the mule cart in the middle, so that's Hunt Cup. Coming in, Hera sees that. Hera making skirms behind all this. Uh, Hera maybe thinking about waiting for his opponent to overextend a little bit. There's no real eco pressure coming in right now. Everything's pretty smooth. But the Armenians, their uh, their mule cart upgrades are more efficient for their eco. And Hera's got uh, the wood upgrade as as does ACCM, of course. And on average, players sell 257 wood in Feudal Age on Rocky Forest, the most of all maps. That is a very specific stat there. Extremely specific. That has that, nothing to do with mule carts, but well done stat people anyways. Yeah, that's what you want from your stat guy, something <laughs> extremely specific. <laughs> if your stat guy no. is saying, like, they sell around, uh, you know, a couple times, <laughs> probably not reliable. Yeah, that's like, that's, that's like bottom of the barrel stats. Yeah. They ran out of ideas. Stats from Wish. But we... <laughs> We appreciate it, though. We appreciate it. And we appreciate that micro there from ACCM. Not bad. Three, one, guys. <laughs> Hera's got the better KD so far, so don't listen to a word I say. And Hera, of course, knows that those villagers are out there. But he can't, again, he can't kill the villagers. So, like, this, to me, seems like it is doing something for uh, ACCM. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a pretty solid map control here from ACCM. Hera ha getting such value from that scout, though. By the way, stat guy, we appreciate all the stats that come up here. It's very, very interesting. Yeah, don't stop. <laughs> don't stop. But, I I mean, we got to talk about it, you know, so keep them coming. We also appreciate all the viewers watching. We see you guys. We it's see the stats that day one has brought for I think I think the stats are being provided by Nerfox, I believe, right? I, I do not know. Okay. Okay, I'm being told yes. Okay, yeah. yep, I knew that. That gold, dude, that gold. I mean, Hera is definitely prepped to, to survive without gold at the moment because he's got such good farming eco, which is a very Hera thing. You don't really see Hera taking risks to take haunts or fit. Well, fish, of course, with fishing maps, but here he's just set up those farms at 400 food. He sees a lot of skirms from his opponent. A lot of the spears from ACCM have gone down. And Hera's going to start to make scouts, but I think on some level you need to expect this could come if you're ACCM. You can't go too far here. It's kind of, yeah, and it's kind of interesting how he sees all those villagers, takes one hit at them, and then immediately turns away, right? Yep. yep. Because he's nervous. But he knows how close that wood line is to him. And if they get to Castle Age, like even just walking a few villagers over and making a fortified church on either player's wood line over there could mm -hmm. be really, really solid. But at, on the same token, I mean, they could just pack up their mule cart and go I'm, somewhere. <laughs> I, 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 this, is, this is so bad for these skirmishers for ACCM, unless Harold. Wow, I'm shocked, actually. See, I thought Hera was going to advance forward, snipe the yep. spears, and sit in the choke. So no more spears could come through, and then the scouts could collapse. But ACCM gets out just in time, and he's adding more spearmen. So he, he knows. He never saw that stable, but he's got amazing game sense here on what your, his opponent should be doing, right? He thinks, okay, if I was in his position against what I'm making, what would I do? And he knew it would be scouts. He expected it. Well played from him. Feels like Hera right now is, is trying to defend with Six skirms, no fletching, just add a couple extras and go up to Castle Age. Yeah. ACCM is committing a little bit. Yeah, that's true. Well, ACCM might be committing because he sees the gold isn't being taken. Mm -hmm. But in reality, Hera's actually shifted to that gold in the north of his base. There's enough there. So Hera's got more than enough to work with, and, and that could really be poor for ACCM if he really thinks Hera's off gold. But he's got the spearmen kind of protecting the skirmishers, and the skirmishers are working away on the villas. They've got fletching now, so they do outrange the skirmishers from Hera. Yeah, and you know Hera has less army at the moment, and he, he's got, I think, the potential here, but he doesn't have the scout numbers. 
And Hero. He's trying to, dude, he's trying to save for Castle Age, he but is. he's putting himself in a in a potentially rough position here because he's not adding the extra scouts. A couple extra scouts here would have gone a, a long way. Yeah, but again, he does find an opportunity. He's still not taking losses. Hera, good engagement. 13 kills, 7 deaths for him. And at the end of the day, all this army ACCM has is still in the middle of the map. Yep, so good decision making, I guess, from Hera at the end. Like, the end of the day, it, it worked, and he's pulling all of the army away, and he's going to go up to Castle Age first. Yep, and Hera, Hera doesn't care if he loses a couple skirms at this point. His opponent is heavy skirm, so he's probably thinking that he'll want to go into Knights. And Hera clicks up. Very clean economic game from him. Has the economic lead. And as the Donos fly in, that go towards covering NAC cost. I don't know exactly where we are on the progress on that, but... Once we've covered the cost, it goes towards the prize pool. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So any, any donation you can you can provide would be, I mean, it's amazingly generous of you. Thank you for supporting the community. And it also relieves a lot of stress on Nilly. <laughs> uh, Nilly uh, just came. Yep. <laughs> well, it scared me. <laughs> Nilly was in Nilly my just soul. just got into my ears. He said 11,000 to break even. So. Yep. Oh, my God, Nilly. I got to turn you down. <laughs> it was like, is that God? <laughs> well. Again, we found a <laughs> ACCM, as Nilly says, kind of, uh, in, a, in a similar position to where he was before, right? He's advancing forward through this area, an area we thought would be a problem for Hera. But Hera's defended pretty nicely, just buying himself some time. And he, again, sees those Spearmen as the main threat. And if the Spearmen are taken out, he can then use the, the Knights more efficiently and effectively. And yeah, this is so good for Hera. Because like, th that could be Pikemen in the next stage. But yep. all those Spears going down? Oh, man, that's going to hurt for ACCM. Absolutely yeah. beautiful here from Hera. And the value he's gotten with the scouts is just insane. Look at the kills on that army. 13 kills Yeah, that is on the army. So good. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. And I, I think it uh, also a high level of patience and uh, the early recognition to realize I can just take the other gold. We don't need to panic. Yeah. Everything's fine. Castle Age is in. Knights alone should be enough. And now if he wants to, he can. J he, I think he can squeeze the TC in front of that gold. Maybe. I don't know if there's enough space there, but I mean, he's still getting value with the scouts, still just running through, clearing up the skirmishers as well. And ACCM is just constantly chasing him all over the place. And now it's ACCM going for Bloodline. So he's going to start adding in potentially some knights here. The Georgians are the better knight Civ. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really important to reiterate here. If this becomes a knight v knight battle, advantage Georgians, especially headed towards him. But we'll see. Uh, Armenians have the monks and they have the infantry. Hera is never really thinking about knights super long term here, though. He just got bloodlines. He knows that, like, this is the dream scenario for him where two or three knights get amazing value and then yep. he can shift into something else. Yep. And now he's just taking fights against the spearmen. And he, of course, he just pulls away the weak scout and he's going to pull away another one. Can we just check the damage done by Hera's army there? This is scouts, maybe. Like, that's pretty solid, honestly. Yep. Yeah, he's getting so much value from skirmishers. Yep. Unbelievable. And again, he had lesser numbers, but I think part of it was Hera's patience, and he, he waited for ACCM to take the risk to come in too far many times. And that is what you associate with Hera, is, is good, like calm under pressure. He'll soak up that pressure, and then eventually push it back with his eco. He's got the second TC coming up now on the gold, so the main gold can now be used. And when you complete your first fortified church with the you Armenians, get a relic. you get a relic. Yep. And, the, I mean, warrior priests are super quick. It's not only the attack value, but it's how fast they walk. Like, you can grab the relics on the, the outside of the, the map so fast yep. in comparison to monks. And you can garrison inside with your monks and warrior priests. So, like... You know, there with any other save, those units would have gone down. I love the skirmishers on the other side. Of yeah, the that's, that's kind of funny. Like, Yo, where are you going, bro? <laughs> where are you going? I mean, for all the all the credit we gave Hera for his defense, that is all it's been mm -hmm. for the last like. Yeah, we haven't looked minute. at ACCM's base in, yeah. in a minute. Like, it, it's oh, mule cart block. Let's go on the left side. Crazy, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, won't stop the knights though. Well, it, you know, he 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 wants he needs to walk through as well, so he's kept that side open and. I don't like that ACCM made a church, which adds efficiency for your eco for four villagers in the middle. Well, it, that's for the safety element, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm right. sure they had a big say in the decision to build that. Yeah. But the rest of the economy is not happy it's there. No, that's for sure. But he's got another one at the back here. It doesn't cost that much to yeah. add them. And they added 10% boost within a certain radius. So 
Uh, you might as well if you can afford it, and he obviously could. Knight's still getting some value at the back there. Fortified Church firing a few arrows, but don't let the arrows deceive you on the Fortified Church. It's it's very limited damage. <laughs> don't ever try, and I'm not saying this from personal experience, <laughs> yeah, okay. to deny a castle with two or three Fortified Churches and Villagers because it simply is not going to happen. Okay, but it was a creative thought for whoever tried that. Yeah, for whoever thought of it first. Yep, shout out to Ted who broke the Dono overlay. It was a nice message, though. We appreciate that. Oh, 49 Eco against 59 Eco right now. Arrow with the lead. And this has been the most competitive series of the day. We, of course, had the big announcement that Hera is a Gamer Legion player now. He's wearing that GL kit. Or do you call it a kit if it's eSports? I think it depends on where you're from, but I think kit is fine. Okay. Yeah, Jersey right. is great, Jersey, too. yeah, yeah. kit. Oh, Whatever wow, be, two, conversions. two conversions. Oh, there. my goodness. Double conversion on the Knights. I think ACCM thought he was going to get out of dodge on that one, but he wasn't fast enough. And he does end up clearing the Knights there, which is important, right? You don't want Harrow with a heavy Knight number. You want to be the guy that's putting on all the pressure. And, you know, ACCM keeping his TCs running. You can see he's got 10 villagers in the queue. He's got tons of knights on the field, and he's still taking decent engagements. Wow, in the middle of the series, ACCM taking a yeah, selfie taking with selfies. fans yeah, is incredible. A, he's an incredible gamer and also personality, yep. you know, active on social media, even when he's in an intense battle. Yeah, we, we said he was everywhere at once in the previous game. He's, he's upped it to the next level here. He's got good knight control. Hey, oh, jeez, there's monks there, though, and that's not a good spot to be. And Hera's going to get two conversions. Oh, boy. Luckily for ACCM, he can kill the monks, maybe. What? Okay, the Knights figured it out. Oh, that was brutal, though. That was that was a big loss for him. Hera's got to be so happy with his eco setup right I now. I mean, is that a fifth TC? Uh, that is a fifth TC. Math. Yeah, it's a fifth TC. Holy, and a university on that side. Hera has weathered the storm the entire game. ACCM has been knocking at the door the entire time, yep. and Hera just won't let him in. Yeah, or at times Hera said, come on in. And then I'll kill you. <laughs> and then I'll kill your units. Some sort of home units. alone. <laughs> Harris sitting at the top of the Dropping stairs. Dropping the paint cans. <laughs> With some feathers and some tar. Get out the Legos. <laughs> toss them in the hallway. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, Lightcap coming forward from ACCM, though, and Hera is completely exposed with his monks. You know, something I've realized with Hera here is it's been pure eco, and a couple monks, right? He doesn't have the biggest army to ever push with. And I'm just waiting for the clicks to come in for Hera. Like, when's Pikeman going to come in? Will he could try, like, like two-handed swordsman or something crazy in Castlades? Like, he, he at some point needs to commit to something. But the thing is, not now, because he always has just enough to hold it off. 90 eco against 70 right now. Yeah, and finally, Hera has the numbers, so he can start applying pressure to ACCM's base. I'm just surprised that, you know, we haven't seen more of those raids come in along the edge of the map. Yeah, the they, south. It's still south. been in the yeah. center here. I mean, there was one raid from ACCM, I think, down well, that side. But Well, you've got to think these generations are maybe one out of every 25, let's say. Yeah. Maybe they played a dozen games. So yeah. they're like so used to going through the middle. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to get away from that. Yeah, sure. and, and and also the access to stone and gold is a mm -hmm. big deal. So, But I agree. I think, like, how many times do we say push one area to take control of another? Raiding in the south could get, you know, whoever's on the defensive there a, a little bit paranoid yeah. about that area. Yeah. And then suddenly the middle could, could be the other players. I did term. like how many uh, fortified churches ACCM had set up at yeah. his uh, home base. He's yeah, got, the efficiency is going to be good. Yeah, there's four there. But Hera is on the way to Imp. Hera is decent enough middle control right now. And again, just wondering what will Hera's composition be in the Imperial Age. I think infantry would make sense as we see knights and monks engaging. He got it. He got the knight, and yeah. he saved the monk. Really nice job there from Hera. Hera, what's your choice here, my friend? I mean, this whole theme has just been boom, boom, boom. Defend with some monks. It looks like he might want to go archers. I see ballistics and bodkin on the way. Mm -hmm. Castle from ACCM, though. It's going to cut off that TC to the left side. Won't do much about the TC to the north. Uh, but at least he's getting some control, right? And he might be buying himself a little bit of time to maybe click up to Imperial Age, but then you look at his resources. Mm -hmm. Yep. Pretty far behind, and Hera's got stone, too. As Hera goes for a quick wall. Oh, that's pretty sick. Trap? Trap? No. He thought yeah, about it. Yeah, he thought it. about he it. Thought he thought about it. About it. And then he's, he, the problem is you can't build on that rocky terrain. Yeah. If ACCM went all the way in, oh, he was stuck. Dude, he, he was going to be stuck. Can you dude. imagine if he built a mule cart yeah. right there? And just <laughs> That would have been incredible. Got to respect the thought, though. And again, Hera 
thinking about archers, we haven't seen much. Still not producing a lot of army. Like, th this is, again, it, the only thing I could be re really be critical of with Hera today, even with the game one victory, yep. is he's very late to getting the army mm -hmm. and the upgrades in. Mm -hmm. The only the thing I will say for ACCM, he's going to have these castles forward, and you can see uh, Herat forced to delete that castle, and he's denying him off a lot yep. of this gold in the yep. center. Um, Georgians repair for less cost. So if, if ACCM wants to buy himself a lot of time to get up to Imperial Age, mm -hmm. repairing your castles is <clears throat> it's probably the best sieve yep. to do it with. It's, what, 33% now instead of 50? Uh, or is it 25? Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it's 25, but I think how, it dare, went you? Down to how 25. dare you? There's been so many changes. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Well, Hera is an imp. That castle's so critical for him because he has the ability to make trebs now. Still no massive investment into support for those trebuchets. He seems very concerned about raids. He's going to drop another TC. Yep. Number seven. It's going to be, or no, number six. It's going to be number uh, six total soon, as that yep. one will likely die. And Hera has found himself a nice little castle placement up there. Barracks coming up. Bracer, Pikeman, Chemistry, Handcart. He's getting all of the techs, and he's up to 133 villagers. And it's just this whole game has just been ACCM, Hera soaking up What are up you pressure. doing with that castle, my friend? How is there even space for that castle <laughs> in Hera's base? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I mean, I, okay. guess, I guess you could. Oh, Hera's going <laughs> to. <laughs> he's like, great idea, bro. <laughs> Oh, man. Hera stole the patent, stole the land, stole the design and everything. Boom, going yep. up. And, I mean, that is the ideal castle spot for either player here. Hera's castle will still go up. And, again, he's in the Imperial Age. We've not seen ACCM even click yet. And Hera's just been soaking up so much pressure. Still, like, very low army count for Hera, which is crazy. Yeah, Manaspa are getting shredded. Oh, my goodness. So many arrows between the fortified church, the castle, the TCs, and everything. Yep. Feels like all of them should have died there, but and they Hera, do make it their way into the back. And Hera won't need archers for this game. He just needs halves. He needs to protect those trebs in the middle. Obviously needs to defend his eco right now too, but the priority here is don't get too distracted. Mm -hmm. The Manaspa produced very quickly. Yeah, and ACCM still isn't up to him, yeah. Kristen. So like once Halb comes in, just position those defensively, maybe get some more fortified churches you can just garrison into until the Halbs arrive, and then keep the push rolling in the center. Eventually, ACCM, even with Georgians, gonna run out of stone. Yep. Yeah, and, and then it's, you know, your, your next option to counter Hera's play would likely be hand cannons, but that's an imp option. And so Hera's soaked up this pressure all game. He's got that eco lead. He has Halb, he has Trebs. He's got access to every resource. He can hop into a church there to defend. He's always got an option. And it looks like Hera's getting closer and closer to polishing off ACCM. But ACCM, he's a fighter. And he's been able to find a lot of economic kills here. 25 eco kills for him. Only four for Hera this game. Imperial Age on the way for ACCM. Bodkin coming in as well. But he will lose control of this middle area. Yeah, like, I, I don't deal. think I don't think he can hold that. By the time he gets to Imperial Age, it wouldn't surprise me if there was nothing there for him. Honestly, like a weird little pike knight ram push in the south like maybe something down there you they are close there's a lot of activity a lot in that of area Aspa. and they they shred like this unit has so much attack the, the way to get an attack boost with them is make more units <laughs> um put them in the group but now there's no castles and now there's no ACCM. castles so you can't really make more and so we see a skirmisher switch on the cards for ACCM makes sense Hera, as he drops yet another TC. It's wild how many TCs he's made. He's gone back to like 2003 doubt mode here. But yeah, he's going to push forward with that castle. That is the castle that's going to be really difficult for ACCM to stop. Yeah, the Halb's going to be putting out decent damage against everything. The Manaspa, they're going to be killing really, really quickly. And the monks will be taken care of. And it's just a mule cart, it's villagers, it's trebs, it's everything. Pushing forward from Harry. He's got enough stone for another castle, and he just puts it at the entrance there. ACCM running out of options. He's making a skirmisher switch because of the composite bowmen. But yeah, and I think because skirmishers thrive on armor, I actually think composite bowmen should be pretty decent against skirms, at least in, in like the damage output against them. They're still going to receive bonus damage because they're an archer, but composite bowmen ignore armor, right? So should be pretty good unit for Hera to mix in with the Howls. I mean, the score leads there for Hera. Is that the MTC? No? Yes? 
I, I no, I think it was the one to was. the left. <laughs> I, I think it was the one to the left. If yeah. it was the MTC, we that just had the clutch. closest hit <laughs> <laughs> of all time. Uh, ACCM. I mean, all the players have been talking about it. Uh, Viper set. I, I went over after series two. I was like, man, first two sets were kind of kind of fast. You know, it's not great. Viper looks at me, he goes, don't worry, ACCM is playing next. He says, hair is impossible to kill, and ACCM never dies. So <laughs> it's going to be a long one. I think already it, is, it has been at least close to the length of the first and Look second at set. Th this is what differentiates hair, how quickly he gets his, his farm eco set up. Yeah. Even when he's in a winning position like this, a lot That's of players would just, like, look yep. at that, 55 on food, and almost all of those are farms. Yep, and that's what he's doing. That's why, like, in these moments, we're like, ah, it's okay, behind on a couple techs, behind with the push. Mm -hmm. He's just expanding eco. And when you have this lead, when you have the relics, when you have the middle, it's like, the only way you lose is if you somehow forget about some of that stuff elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, he is losing some. And it wouldn't so. surprise me, it, because of the Manaspa raids that have been coming, whoa, they went a long way with that <laughs> teleport. Holy, they went 10 tiles. Um, <laughs> That's not that's not intended, by the way. <laughs> anyone anyone <laughs> no. who's new, we had a patch a couple months ago. It's when you it. chase villagers into a building, which it's firing at the enemy. Sometimes the unit will <laughs> act as the arrow, and then turn it's all right. The, the game's it only has, four years old. It, yeah, there, <laughs> there's been no game-changing ramifications because of that bug that I've seen yet. <laughs> It's just been a little bit interesting. Yeah, yeah, we we noticed it. it's given us something to talk about because ACCM refuses to quit right now. Yeah. And Hera, like we said, not necessarily pushing either. Like, feels like champion will make a lot of sense. Hera getting, I think it's Ferreters now, the unique tech. It gives you extra HP on your infantry, which which is insane. They get 100 HP, the champions do. And Hera's on two-handed swordsman now, but... I mean, comp-wise, I actually like the comp for ACCM a lot. Yep. Skirm, Manaspa's sick, but I don't think he can make Skirm Manaspa for much longer. Mm -hmm. Look at how much gold Hera has in the bank. Yeah. Look at how much gold he's saving he's... gold for the next game. Yeah. If you could do that, that would be what he's doing. For the next life, even. Because he's not actually producing a lot of gold units either. 65 on food now. So he's added in a bunch more farms. Actually, I, I would be curious to know how many placed farms Hera has and how many villagers he actually has active on farms. Yeah, because he, he probably lost like 30. Yeah. Like, you never send new vills to. Yeah, he's. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's it. That was a good call there. Yeah. But the GG's called. Hera gets the job done. And that entire game, ACCM was trying to be aggressive like he was in game number two. And he couldn't get the job done. Now, okay. Story time here, folks. Is ACCM's moving pretty quick. So last night, we're talking about things. He's and running. ACCM, <laughs> Hera, he's running down the hallway. So ACCM requested a smoke break in the middle of a series. And Nilly's like, we don't want any breaks. And ACCM says... He goes, one it minute. take one minute, one, one minute. minute. And we're one like, minute. there's no way you could just go freaking one minute. <laughs> Nilly's like, I seriously, I highly doubt that it takes one minute. He's like, one and a half, one minute to one and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. One minute to one and a half minutes. And eventually he bumped it up to two. He's like, two minutes. And then Dow gets the timer. He's like, go, you know. Yeah. And eventually we decide, they decided that there could be a five minute break five after minute break game three. After game three. Yeah. So we are in the gaming room now. Do we have a, does anyone have a clock running production? Can I sit can we, at this? Oh, we got, we can got I a pretend? clock. Can What are you? I'm pretending. I'm trying oh, to oh, be. I'm okay. putting, putting myself in the position of a player, you know? Okay. Well, I yeah. just looked over and saw you doing this, so it was kind of weird. It was kind of weird. It was like I was trying to put a spell on you or something. Yeah, it was It was weird. Yeah. So clock's ticking right now, and we'll keep you all updated, but we've got a little bit of a break here. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? he is ACCM is a great negotiator because he started at one. One. And then and he got, got it to five. five. <laughs> <laughs> Normally you start at <laughs> ten and you walk it down to I five. I love it too because Mr. Yo is behind him, and I could tell Yo is probably like poking him like, you got this, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you got this. There's Hart, who doesn't know he's on camera right now. No. You should just expect oh, to be you on gotta, camera. You got to back up. Yeah, back, it's all right. Oh, it's Moments fine. passed. Yeah. They don't love you there anymore. We've got, uh, is that Nilly with a hat Nilly, on? Yeah. Nilly with a hat on, yep. And we got uh, Roxy, I believe, and Dash, and everyone on yep. the couch there. There's Tato on the right. We got Timon from GL on the left, with Roxy. But yeah, that's where that's where we're chilling, guys. When yep. we're not casting, we're chilling there. Yep. Maybe playing some ping pong on the really tiny ping pong table. Maybe playing some pool on the really tiny, super tiny. Yep. Yeah. I, I want to, I got to play at some point. <laughs> we have to play a match for I, sure. I feel like, I don't know, who is the smallest hands here in the gaming house? Because they have the edge. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Nilly is now gaming. <laughs> Okay, so Nilly gets first break. Put the eight ball in the middle. Eight ball what in the middle. What are you doing? Use the use the triangle. Oh, it's it's a disaster. Okay. It was so good. All right, then we pick it up and okay. we got it. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. Oh, jeez. So we have to focus in here because I can barely see this. <laughs> we look extremely. All right. Here we go. Break by Nilly. And it's a good break. It's a good break. Solid break. He's got options. I I don't know if he really does. <laughs> <laughs> you know how in you know you ever play like a game of golf and you get close to the hole and then you like you just like want to like blow it in. With this, you one puff and yep. <laughs> Not that I cheat golf, but now he's examining his options. We got it. We got to do it like pool commentators, looking at the options and going in. It's an odd angle here, Tristan. There's his own head is creating quite a shadow. Yep. Oh, Ooh. and he missed it. Yeah. Mm, that's a tough one though. That's a tough one. Yeah, dude. I'm. I. I. I that's all I've got. I'm. <laughs> I can't do any more. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he. I, every time he backs away, I think he's just done. Just think golf commentary. <laughs> yeah, but just that's me not talking. Then, yeah. Right? I just. Yep. Mm, that's a bad miss. This oh, is rough. I mean, miss. it's his event. We gotta wait till he makes one yep. here. Mm. Hey, oh, let's there we go. go. Un oh, un there we unprecedented go. performance Woo. from the German competitor Nilly here. Tell as what it see. means to him. What? Where are we on the clock? ACCM's back. ACCM's back, dude. How much was it? Three. Look, three minutes. Wow. All right. He got a smoke in. There's the speed run. Well done, ACCM. This is this is the point where he's like, oh, something's bugged with my setup. <laughs> I mean, honestly, respect. <coughs> yeah. Um, and, and it was good. You know, th these games are intense, right? <coughs> Especially with ACCM. So a little bit of a break's fine. And we're going to be back here with this series. I hope you guys enjoyed the tiny pool mm -hmm. from I, the normal I don't, size Nilly. I don't think Hera minds that break either because he likes to take breaks. He likes he to, likes take, to breaks. take breaks. Yeah. yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. He and likes a little I, bit of a reset. I, I don't know about the viewers, but I personally feel like my life was enriched watching Nilly play pool on that table. Like after after this whole event ends, that's gonna be a top five moment for me. I could see the argument. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So Hippopotamus and Brood War, the maps remaining. Harold will get to choose which. It is his home map, Hippopotamus, so you would expect that one. Sivs for Hera. I could see Romans on Hippopotamus. We've seen Romans played on a lot of like hybrid maps. I do remember someone going Romans and Galleys before. But Japanese Persians are the civilizations I'm looking at for ACCM, and those civs I think are really solid. Uh, either one for Hippopotamus, Persians or Japanese. Mm -hmm. And then I, I think on Brood War, maybe maybe Chinese as an option there. I don't know how much that's been tested, but no, it's probably it's likely Persians on Hippopotamus, Hippopotamus. Japanese on Brood War, and then I think. Romans on Hippopotamus for Hera. And then Bohemians on Brood War would be my guess. Yeah. Or Saracens. The thing about Brood War is I, I tend to see a lot of Archer play. I, I Brood War really depends on like where your opponent is. Exactly. Honestly. You Are you close or is it a is it a far land map? Yeah. Right? Okay. Do you think <coughs> TC dropping with Persians no. is good on Hippopotamus? No. You did not even going to give that any thought. No, because it used to be, but because of the wood line being so far away, I don't think it is anymore. Okay. Because ACCM sends some, he sends some energy. And I feel like that could be potentially something in his yeah. book of strats. I but mean, maybe. But then again, it's, you are deleting your town center. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, <laughs> I have seen it, though, where, like, um, they, the players just happen to have that first house. You know how you get two houses immediately? Spawn on the front side, and then they're in a position to make more foundations, and then the guy's like oh, running yeah. around with the yep, TC trying to find a good spot. So yep. it's a little bit difficult, right? Well, here we are. Uh, this map is called Hippopotamus. I think some people out there have said it looks like a panda uh, or a raccoon. Romans, there you go. But uh, it is Persians against the Romans. We've got ACCM on the left side, hair on the right, and we kind of called this one. Now... I love this map. This is, I, I think it's my favorite NAC map because okay. I like map with options, right? Yep. So you could dock it everywhere, right? And there's some level of benefits. So right now, obviously, you're going to have the three deep fish towards the north. Makes sense to ACCM to dock up there. 
but you also have lots of shorefish. Like, if we could have a double click by the TCs where the shorefish are, this is a big point, because there's going to be a point in the game where players take advantage of it. Just a quick double click. You can kind of see them. That's a lot yeah, that's more that's nine than in one screen. Correct. Yeah, it's crazy. So a dock there, a mill, and then you have the hunt in yep. the back corners. There's, and then the player bases are so close. It, it is a really good map. And what you're looking for here is you're looking for the wood investment. Mm -hmm. uh, have they invested wood into a dock? Where have they docked? Is it double dock? If not, they probably added a barracks. Yep. Where's the barracks? Is it range? Is it scout? And good luck with that when you're trying to do, you know, make your own decisions. So it is a really complicated map. And I, I think with how good ACCM was in his win with, with fighting in all the different areas, I think he could definitely tie it up here against Hera here with Persians. He could, yeah. Per Persians a really strong sieve here. Now, Romans, I think the first person I saw play Romans was Sato in the qualifiers. Yes. And what he did was go galleys. Now, Romans, there's a couple things to mention. They have the extra Pierce armor on the galleys, which is nice. Mm -hmm. They don't have demos which can be really, really brutal. And that's why Sato actually, I think he ended up dock blocking and making galleys um, and building them up mm -hmm. because he didn't want to have fires all over him yes. without the opportunity to make demos. One of two sibs that can't make yeah. demos, Koreans and, uh, and, and Romans. And honestly, if you can't make demos, you might as well not make fires, in my opinion, because in Fire War, yep. the, the thing that is the differentiator there is the demo. Yeah. So that's how a lot of players have seen it. But, you know, typically with galleys, you are you have to go two docks. And you're committing a lot of wood and gold into that initially, which could lead to you then not investing also, into the land. like Roman's 5% bonus on all gathering that's and huge. building is it's just so nice, right? Yeah. It's like the Persian TC production. It's just something you always have the entire yep. game. And it's just always working away for you. Is it a, a huge difference? Is it a massive number? Not really, but I mean, you can already see it kind of reflected a little bit in the resources gathered. Yep. There's a little bit ahead. It's one of those bonuses, like, you know when you first start playing the game, you're like, well, actually, when I first started playing the game, I went by luck. Yeah. Then eventually I was like, which has the best attack, right? And I found Garland Wars for Aztecs to give that plus four. I was like, oh, my God, that's yeah. sick. Yeah, yeah. No, numbers are way better when you first start playing than percentages. Percentages <laughs> mean nothing. <laughs> exactly. It's like, I don't have the mental capacity to but do now, this math. But now, when you get old, right, <laughs> and you really, like, start playing the game, you're like, ooh, this feels really smooth over the whole hour I just played. And that's yeah. not fun when you first start. You want, like, instant stuff. Yeah. So I agree. Both of these civilizations good in that regard. Super consistent throughout the whole time. And yeah, five percent isn't that much until you're talking about your mortgage rate or something. <laughs> <laughs> it takes Anyone? a true adult to realize. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's some people out there who get that one. <laughs> uh, there go the scouts. There, Hera with the faster feud age. Very nice. It's 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 kind of difficult to do that against the Persian sometimes. And scouting is key here. We're not going to see anything on water from Hera. We're not going to see anything on water from ACCM, actually. I think both players going for the same build. Hera knows there's villagers there. And he might keep ACCM honest here, and they might dance there. But I think in the end, the scout will go down for ACCM when yep. played Hera. Yeah, good job from Hera there to find some value. And he's going to have that scout alive. Low HP, so can't get much more value. But the information he's going to get is going to be really, really valuable. ACCM now sending five villagers out to gold. Still has made the mining camp, though. He doesn't have the wood. Can we see Hera scouting at the moment and see his fog of war? So th this is all the stuff he gets to find out. Stable, now, how many on gold? So he knows dock, gold, yeah. stable. Now switch to ACCMs, and it's going to be much different. He knows dock. He doesn't have any other indicators. So he, for all he knows, it could be the galley opening from Hera. Yep. And so he's got to, you know, adapt to what he sees when he sees it. Very easy for this to fall apart for him. Mm, does and he get the scout? No, he Very well played. Away. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people would have committed for that scout, I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and exactly. And lost a lot of HP. Hera sending the scouts immediately to the north. He's got uh, fire that galleys is so coming smart, out. Dude. That is so smart. Inside the dock. I love this because those villagers on the shorefish is something he remembers. And I love how ACCM has realized the scouts haven't gone towards his base and he's got to get away there. That is a really good move from both players. It's interesting how Harry kept that inside of his dock at first. But, yeah, I mean, he's ejected it now and he's going to defend against the fire galleys on that side. So he is playing fire galley against fire galley, even without the potential to make demos. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, right? If it gets to three or four fires for both, that's where having Mutual a demo kill. should be nice. Yep, one for one there. Hera the aggressor here. 
And he, he definitely was more the defensive player in the previous game. So he's, he's turned it up a notch here, maybe fearing the Persian eco. Sees that villager, ACCM, doing his best to try and save this guy. And that villager is going to... Live! Die! No! The boy who died. <laughs> oh, man. He was so close. Half a tile, Mori teleports right into that town center. <laughs> they suck him into that. Oh, man. Uh, this is a lot of pressure for ACCM. I think he's looking at water right now. He did have spearmen. I don't think he was expecting Hera to have so many spearmen, though. Hera who built a mill on the shorefish there, has killed so much eco. Actually, I'm noticing Hera's killed three eco. ACCM lost four. Ah, ACCM lost something to a rhino. Yeah. Or maybe, actually, there's, uh, I think there's tigers wolves and tigers and, and stuff wolves, like that. so that's not good. And this isn't good for him either, as Hera gets another snipe there. And this has been all Hera in this game. He's up 2-1 here. And when Hera's got control like this, his, his eco is going to be great behind it, too. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how they both went for mills on the shorefish. I guess you need your your opening mill, right? But it's very interesting because I would I would tend towards a dock there. Yeah, it might have something to do with the cost. Yeah, the it's cost. It's only fifty and, more. Like. Yeah, that's true. But like we said, five percent, five percent, five percent, fifty woods, fifty wood. Who knows? Hera's get, still getting value with the scouts. Another villager goes down. Oh my god! Six. Six. So frustrating. Six. I actually think Hera should consider getting armor on those spearmen right now. Maybe. I it applies double, right? Yep. It's cheap. It's 100 food only. Another villager kill there from Hera. So it's seven eco loss from ACCM, and he'll know this is not going as he would have And it's not even like he can take advantage of his Persian fast to work in TC because he's got more idle time yeah. as well. So it's oh, just geez. it's a really, really rough opening for ACCM. I think ACCM is going to need something huge, like a demo on eight vills or something yep. on the shortfish, like some big swing here. <laughs> to get himself back into this game because this is a really rough position. He, he needs a building that we are probably going to see a lot in the upcoming series, Doubt against Leary, and that's the market. <laughs> He's got 400 gold. He doesn't have the farming eco to really go castle age easily. I think a market could help him. And then maybe then, you know, he could get the food because it's going to be hard to compete with that. That's 17 farms. It's Roman efficiency. There it is. And there's You're, the market. Oh, my God. Look, look at to the bills on the yeah, left. Yeah, but he, he's not against Romans. Too bad. Don't, too Romans bad. don't have demos, bro. Oh, that would Unless be so you give good. him one to convert, he can't be punished for that. Oh, jeez. It's sad, too, because that's, that's where both of our brains went. We immediately were, like, kind of hunched over. We yeah. stood up. Yeah. When we saw There that, is a but. fire galley coming in from ACCM over near Harris Shorefish. And there's one coming in at the at the north there, yep. but really not much value to be had. Scouts and uh, a fire galley will control the movement of Hera's villagers, so he can't shift over to the other side just yet. But it's not going to be able to kill anything. Interesting that Hera sells the stone here. Now a lot of players will buy it back. But I actually think he sold the stone because he's he's planning to go one TC here, and yep. he might feel like it's not worth trying to boom against the Romans, or sorry, against the uh, the Persians and that he can do damage with knights in the next stage. You just do knights, some siege, and yep. some you, monks. You could go yeah. long swords, not a very Hera unit. It's a bit slower. I feel like is knights strong. is just, it's faster to get into, and you have more mobility, and Hera loves that yep. mobility, yep. right? Agreed. And I think, like, if ACCM had more spears out, then suddenly you think about the long swords. Mm -hmm. You don't really need to go for that and unit line right With right knights, right you, don't need the Im you don't need the armor upgrades. Yeah, you Not just, for what you're doing right here. You just pick off villagers. Agreed. Away. That's pretty nice for ACCM right there. Having that little bit of luck there. That is a 1 HP fire galley. So as he kills a villager there, he's also going to kill some fishing ships. He needed this. He really did. Mm -hmm. He's on his way up. He'll be 30 seconds behind. Against knights, he has the opportunity to make camels with his sieve. He also has a stone, meaning that he's able to drop multiple town centers and protect some areas and then catch up economically. So the, these are all positives for him. Big negative, of course, is that Hera is going to be sending knights to his base out of two stables. But res collected, not as bad as I would have expected considering how Feudal Age looked a moment yeah. ago. But yeah. I, a part of that, I don't think res collected is affected by market usage anymore. But It is. Only for gold. Only for selling stuff for gold because okay. that shows up in the in the regular screen as well, statistic okay. screen. Yeah. So there, there might be some of that. Yeah. But again, your Persians drop the TC on that gold. Uh, we're in the back corner, maybe make a couple camels. ACCM has a chance here. Okay, Monastery being added from Hera. Two stable knights and the War Galley upgrade hmm. coming in. So that'll make sure 
that his fires are a lot more powerful, and I'm not sure that's a tech that ACCM is going to get yep. immediately. Yeah, I, I don't think he can justify it. I think he needs to, to be going for monks and knights. His gold is kind of protected with some of the walls. There in the north, he'll probably lose that if Hera moves in with ships. And we also saw those villagers from ACCM in the back corner. I, I think he wants to TC back there, but he doesn't have the resources to right now, so the timing's just not working for him. Do you like the scouting from ACCM? Easy to forget about that when you're behind? I, th I really do, because you're so tracking the movements yep, of Hera. Really you're, and now you're going to see that dock over there, so Hera will probably be fishing from ACCM's perspective. He's going to send Vils. Yeah. But from Hera's perspective, we know that that will likely produce military. Yep, Hera did notice that. And oh, Hera also noticed lights. this, and those villagers were on the shore fish. That was part of what ACCM used to come back here, but those villagers are exposed, and Hera with an easy block there kills another villager, and there's no monk yet. And Hera, this is exactly what he wanted, early Castle Age Night Pressure to pay off. He gets the kills he wants. Beautiful micro there from him, too. To pull that weak knight away, get back to that monk, that's huge. And ACCM, I think he was struggling for gold, so he couldn't queue up that monk for a very long time. It's still it's still in the queue right now. He's still waiting to come out as Hera is pulling the weak units away. Yep. Classic Hera is going to pull those back, heal them up, and then come back again to snipe more villagers. And look at the eco KD right now, 13 to 2 in favor of Hera. That is just a brutal situation for ACCM to be in. 33 villagers overall versus 43 from Hera. It does feel like a natural spot for Hera to boom, though. You've killed Vils, but you're not going to break your opponent or snowball right now. So he'll probably buy stone soon. It's either that or like a siege push. Mm -hmm. Or I, Hera's gone double monastery a lot in recent times in these situations, but I don't think Romans are, are really the best sieve for that. They have an okay monastery. Yeah, th that's it's that's my fantastic. thing. Is like it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like elite. But Hera just healing up those knights. And still hasn't fully been able to push through on water, and he's looking around now with that scout. But again, Persians, two TCs for ACCM. He can stay alive here. That monk's not going to stay alive, though. Monk will go down. There we have a knight attacking a fire. Monk's dead. And uh, fire ship going to go down. That, I mean, these are. this is a nice moment for ACCM. Two TCs. Hera's not pressuring. Hera's not booming himself. It's been interesting. I want to see a stat with non-meso sieves. How often does Hera not get the light cap upgrade? Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like, like with our... Almost every single game, It feels game, like, right? it, it, yeah, and I feel like with the way a lot of games play out these days, it is, like, so much more useful than it was in the past. I, I oh, yeah, it. 100%. It's so nice. It was like an afterthought in the past. Even on Arena, it was an afterthought in the past. I'm still a little shocked here. You know, double knights, I guess, is Hera's choice. No TC on that gold. ACCM, he's the master at getting value from these positions. If he could, like, he doesn't expect that gold to be a good spot to hit. He's expecting something in the back. That gold's exposed right now. Yep. Because the monks are pushing forward, oh, but this, this is Hera's focus bro. right now. Look at this pressure. That monk from ACCM is trapped in there, but it's a good trap because Hera can't actually target it. And uh. ACCM gets a conversion on the knight, but Hera still getting value over there. And ACCM does manage to actually kill two of those monks with converted knights. Pretty big. Yeah, I mean, Hera chose to convert the Vils. That's maybe not the best use, but at the end of the day, it's still villager kills, right? He's still taking ACCM completely off of that gold, mm -hmm. and he does now have that second TC at home. It feels like Hero will have a monk or two to convert that. And poor ACCM, man. He's not going to have a gold to work with, which means he'll need the gold in the back corner, but he's not taking that right now. So he will actually have no gold access because of this. Uh, three TCs, though. I mean, he's, he's going to try, right? He's adding in more farms. He's going to keep producing villagers, and... Persian TCs do produce quite quickly. That monk is <laughs> not he's trapped like, please, anymore. Please, 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 please. He gets, he gets, he it. gets the conversion. Wow. Yeah. He's like, please give me this, please. But yeah, Dave. This this is pretty rough, right? And if you think about how the game plays out, if you don't have gold, you're going to go pikes against knights, mm -hmm. and then the Romans have the longsword option against pikes. Yep. Or they have the scorpions. Yep. So like both of the like the the, the really go-to options really, for really the solid. Romans are good against pikemen. So ACCM, I think the only way to, to do this now, small counterattacks and raids with whatever numbers you can get, and then hoping your TCs kind of protect everything else for the time being. He really needed his TC to go up on that gold or the gold in the back, which he's still not taking right now. Can yeah, we see ACCM's vision, actually? I guess he can't move out there. Can, does he know about that gold? Yeah, he has it scouted. It's in that corner. Oh, man, Damn, more, more, more losses villagers. happening here.
Is that three, four villagers up at the top there? Hera just ignoring the fire from the TC. He's just going to kill as many villagers as he can. He's going to try and stay ahead for as long as he can. He even tried to save that guy at the last second. And those knights dive into the TC again. Hera could pull away here. If he goes a little too deep, could lose a knight to the conversion, and he gets away. Full control of this game for Hera. And he had beaten ACCM 3-1 in NAC4 a year ago, and Hera ended up winning that event. And here he is, up 2-1, looking like he's in a spot to win 3-1 yet again here. Stable finally goes down. Monks also converting from behind, and this is a really, really dangerous army. Only three camels, one spearman, one knight, one monk, two fire ships for ACCM. There's, a, there's nothing cohesive here. Yeah, you can't. You're stuck, right? Like, you convert a knight, Hera will convert it back. And you got to put food into trying Villagers. to reboot. Yeah, it's, it's a stuff. And trying to catch up. I think Hera, Hera knows he's in full control now, and it's not something you see every day from Hera, mm -hmm. but I think this is the most obvious forward castle decision I've ever seen. You're on the stone, you have full control of the area, that gold is hugely important. You killed the stable, put it right where that stable yep, was. That's true, that's the spot. Right there, that is the spot. And villagers, Will he do it though? A forward castle or yeah. put it there? Will he put it there? He's killing the barracks, so now he can put the it even further gone down. Forward. Yep. But that's unfortunately what this game has become for ACCM, a debate between the casters on where the castle that kills him is placed. <laughs> and I, I'm going to go with the uh, Barracks castle. He might put it up on the wood line. Barracks castle. Barracks, Barracks, Ooh. Barracks, please, Barracks. I think Stable's better, but I want Barracks, please. Oh! Yep. I think that is actually not good. <laughs> well, I mean, if you put it there, you can mine the stone to put another one. Yeah, in. but you could also take the stone if you build it where yeah, you yeah, want yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That it, you are making many compelling points. <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm trying to understand his perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's there. No forward castle is a bad castle if it goes up. Yeah. And the GG's called the yep. ACCM. He had a great series here, but Hera. Uh, he delivers just as everyone expected here, wins the first round of NAC5. That was really, really solid play from Hera, but really solid performance from ACCM. Agreed. You think about the games we Agreed. had there, right? The Rocky Forest game was a win for Hera, but ACCM had the pressure on yep. the entire time. Um, then you had the one on uh, Marsh Madness, which was just AC the ACCM show. Yep. And then the um, first game was also... A long one, if I remember correctly. Uh, it that was, was long, but it Copen was... Oh, Copenhagen, but that's like, right. That was the question mark. But honestly, dude, like, game one, he's going to look at and say, well, that shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. And, like, losing Hippopotamus, Hera's home map, that's okay. Yeah. I think you remove the game one out of the equation. He has a better performance there. Maybe yeah. it's 2-2. Two, two. It goes to game five, and then who knows, because it's ACCM's home map. So that 3-1, it, it's a dominant display from Hera. Mm -hmm. But from ACCM's perspective, I, I think a couple tweaks, that goes to game five, and, and that's huge against a player well, in Hera's caliber. I, I just remember what he said when I said, you're, you're playing Hera first, and he said, okay, good. Yeah. Good. I'm probably going to lose, but I, I'll learn a lot. Yeah. So and, and also with the way the format works uh, over the Swiss stage, too, mm -hmm. it's like losing to players who win more ends yeah. up helping you in the format later on. So I think, though, for Hera, first game as a GL member, yep. or first set as, first a, GL set as member, a GL member, really, really good precedent to set because mm -hmm. I think ACCM was playing really well and Hera just did all the Hera things, right? He was constantly running around with Lycav. He was constantly doing the quick walls. He was trapped. Remember when I got, I got so hyped about him trapping like three, three eagles? eagles? <laughs> <laughs> On the Copenhagen game? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. No, no I agree. Um, or is this a double interview situation? Are you doing well, the interview? We, Am I doing we the can, interview? We can do the double or we can do the single. Uh, I'll let you do it because okay. I've cast okay. it two sets okay. in a row. We're going to uh, interview Hera now, hear his thoughts on the series. Apologies for the weird transition there, but uh, lower your expectations because everything's much better than me. Uh, have at it, guys. Speaking of things that are better than T90, I have Hera with me. <laughs> Congratulations, Hera, on that uh, ACCM. It, it didn't seem easy today. No, no. Um, well, first of all, thank you. And it's definitely not easy. Also, he had his whole map left, so it was a really close series. How did you feel uh, going into game one? You saw him pick Aztecs. Were you expecting that? Uh, no. Obviously, I was expecting Chinese. Yeah. He had a third in his draft. I've actually never played against Aztecs, so that was, again, he I don't think anyone has, yeah, honestly. <laughs> he really cooked that up, and it's actually not bad because he used the Eagles to grab the relics. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> he also won the bottom leg, which, you know, 
uh, get him an extra two, re two relics. So that was pretty scary. Yeah. But I had a big timing window with Italians. And I was able to win with condos, which was pretty sick. We were kind of like theory crafting. Maybe he thought you were going to go Bohemians there. And then Aztecs would be like a way better matchup. True. I, Bohemians. <clears throat> I actually picked Bohemians to mind game on Brood War and this map. It was a double mind game because yes. Tato played it on Brood War earlier. So it was a double mind game. I never wanted to play it. Just yeah. wanted to mind game. And I'm glad it worked. Maybe, maybe that's, that's what happened. Yeah. Well, you had control that entire time. And, you know, I, I was talking with T90. You might have heard us. When you trapped in those eagles, dude, I got so hyped. <laughs> and then I realized it was only three units. <laughs> I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Here it is right here, right? I was like screaming. <laughs> <laughs> three units. Three, three weak eagles, you know? <laughs> this is the the value, boy. though. <laughs> you, showed him, you showed him who's boss. <laughs> that was, yeah, it was just methodical, right? Like, you got up to 140 bills mm -hmm. or something, and then you just carried it home. But uh, going into game two, Marsh Madness. Do you have much experience on Marsh Madness? Yeah, I actually played a lot of Marsh Madness, um, and I played a lot against ACCM, and I've never beat ACCM on that map. Yeah. So I, I, I lost. So it continues. I'm then. like 05 against him on that map. <laughs> I thought this time I would do something a little different mm -hmm. and mix it up, and it didn't work out. I think maybe I should have went Cav Archers in Castle Age. Yep. Um, I'm not very confident with Cav Archers on that map. It's a bit you know tricky, but in hindsight, like, Knights like Cav would always lose versus Inca Pike. So I maybe think your golds were really like your golds were really exposed. Too. I felt that as well. Nothing yeah. in the back, you know. It was very very tricky. So yeah, maybe Cav archers could help, but it, it was a really hard situation. I, I couldn't deal with the, the pressure and the amount of units he had on the field. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like he was everywhere. Poor vodka was in like eight different places <laughs> at once on the thing. He was it's like dragging cool. your tower, his towers, the knights, the eagles, everything. And, and all the while, there's like water play on the yeah. outside as yeah. well. So there was so much going on. That was one of the hardest games I've had to play in a while. Yeah, it seemed pretty stressful. Mm. We went um, from this one, which, you know, we're watching the highlights from. He also set up four TCs within like 10 tiles of each other, yeah, yeah. which makes it so difficult for you to do anything. Uh, I couldn't raid him much past the early castleage. I felt like I got really good value with my calf, yeah. but you know, it just wasn't enough. And um, you know, even if he doesn't forward castle, that's a that's a ballsy castle Dude, right I there. I was losing my mind about <laughs> this. Well, you have a mangonel there too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw coming forward. I was like, no way he drops it there, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, this, this cast is, you know, very alpha. Even if without this cast, I, I just slowly lose. But this is just, you know, get me out of there quick kind of thing. Yeah. ACC, I'm in a rush. I think, no, not this game, but after this one, he, he wanted to smoke. Him. Yeah. He literally <laughs> ran <that laughs> He wanted to smoke. Well, he bargained for it, you know, so yeah, he didn't yeah. get it. Game three, it felt like the pressure was on you the entire early game. Like, you did, you weren't even in his base at all. Mm -hmm. And then you slowly, slowly started to push back. What, what happened here? Um, so I actually want to put the pressure with the two spearmen. I made yep. them in Dark Age, actually. Um, I want to be the guy attacking, but I saw him making a range in the center. So when your opponent does that, you know he's going to go all out for control of yep. like the, the middle and all out military. So I just I conceded. I picked up Horse Caller, played for economy, and just wanted to play for the, the mid late game. I think it was a good decision. Oh, you almost had the trap here. Oh, that was Oh, sick. you uh, almost had it. He didn't let you, though. Yeah, that would have been sick. I was going to have to build a mule cart, by yeah, the way. Yeah, oh, you should have <laughs> built a mule cart. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I was going for it, but <laughs> yeah, that would have been nuts. And then, of course, you know, you carry forward, and suddenly, from his perspective, he's been pushing you all game, and then there's the Trev's mule carts, everything rolling forward, right? So, brutal position for him. Do you think Armenians are just better than Georgians there? No, no. Uh, this is a very even, evenly matched, okay. uh, si you know, Civ match, Civ match up. Uh, both these Civs are actually very well balanced. Uh, and very interesting. They have a lot of options. So you play this 10 times, I think it's 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really close. So that was a, another pretty close game, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. you started to pull away at the end with 6TC. The stats are going to skew for you, but you know that that was, like, pretty back and forth there. And then yeah. finally, Hippopotamus, take us through Romans. Like, what was your plan and what ended up happening? Yeah, Romans kind of suck here. They don't have demos, which is kind of unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, I actually knew that going in, but I, I forgot mid-game, so I, I tried to make some demo. I, I just wanted to go for, you know, a lot of pressure on, on land. I, I got a lot of value with my scouts. Yeah. I just felt like if I just continue pressuring him, um, Knight Monk is very mirror match in the situation. Monks on the field, so camels aren't really a threat. And, uh, yeah, I just felt like um, if I go even here, I have a good late game. Yeah. But I ended up winning uh, with the Knight Monk uh, so hard that I was able to go for the forward castle and kind of close it out. Yeah. Well, you got a lot of value early, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like on his villagers. You got a crazy amount of value with those scouts. Yeah, yeah. And he could never really recover from that. And you, that's three wins. I mean, that's a really, really good start to NAC. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you beat ACCM 3-1 last year, too. Oh, did I? I think so. Okay. 
So you're right on track. And you won last year. <laughs> you're, well, on, you're on it's, pace. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> With you're that on logic. Pace. With that also, logic, first win good. in the New Jersey. Yeah, I'm happy. There's a lot of pressure for this one. Imagine, yeah. like, game one. Like, yeah, you get made swept. This, the whole video, <laughs> it's like, oh, three, the quickest you've ever seen. So there's a little bit of pressure, but uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm very confident these days. I yeah. just go in. If I lose, I lose. It is what it is. Yeah. But um, just felt really confident. Only problem today it was very cold in the room. Very cold. I was, like, really, really freezing. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe you so should play at the caster desk because it's kind of hot, uh, hot up there. <laughs> we should mix a little bit. Take some air in a bucket or something. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was like the only issue. Felt a little, a little bit of misclicks, a little bit of you know cold hands. But mm -hmm. other than that, felt really confident and you know in the zone. Well, congratulations, man. I know you're sick, so I don't want to make you talk forever. <laughs> but uh, congrats. That's a really solid start, and you got a little bit of stress off your back, you know. Yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, best of luck to ACM. I hope to see him get to the top eight. I really like practicing with him. Yep. Thank you, Hera. Tweeted us. <gasps> oh, who has the better fade? That's nah, what they were wondering. ACM, he's got the it's line. It's isn't it? Yeah, no, he, yeah. he's, uh, he, yeah, he's just, I he's mean, I lined was saying, up. I'm, I'm not the right guy to judge, <laughs> but like. <laughs> Dave's got the best fade. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Skin to hair in, in a second. Very All nice. right, man, thank you. Thank you, man. And I'm taking over. Obviously, we're looking at the numbers down below. Uh, I think we started with the day with like me losing thirteen hundred, uh, thirty thousand dollars so far. Now we're down to like nine k, so we got roughly four thousand dollars in donation there. Absolutely crazy! I can't thank you enough, guys. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have this tournament. We couldn't pay all the people, right? Um, obviously, kind of counting on you guys supporting made me decide okay those are the people that we can afford that's that's the production value we can go for yada yada and also we have a big company supporting us as well surfshark is the official vpn provider of nac uh, if you don't know what a vpn is basically in the internet you get a home address something we call ip address and they can give you a different one for example if you want to watch some of your favorite app did i just go down the elevator um, for example if you want to watch some sports but this is uh, restricted in your country you could use a VPN and simply switch to a different country you can access Netflix as well and some different Netflix countries have different libraries there as well if you want to see that and you're basically a bit more secure on the internet it is very easy to use it, right? You can simply open it, one single click, and it changes the location that you're at. And it is extremely convenient here. Shield your devices, unlimited devices. With Surfshark, you will have the code NAC5 uh, down below. And you can simply guard your identity. For example, if you are at a public Wi-Fi and it just makes it so much tougher to be hacked there. And if Mr. Beast is supporting it, you should support it uh, for sure. And yeah, it is super convenient. Uh, I will show you more use cases later on as well. Unlimited devices, no lock policy, so they're not really tracking what you're doing. 24 seven hour support. And also, if you feel like, yeah, nearly, um, it sounds like a crazy good deal, 83% off plus up to six months off as well. But I kind of want to feel it out first, want to see if it's a good use case. Well, we have the answer for you. You can get the full refund within 30 days. So full money back guaranteed there. We have the link down below if you want to check that one out. Surfshark, the way to go if you want to get your VPN here. And up next will be the set of Doubt versus Leary, the main event of the evening. And we will have two great casters. Obviously, one of the main things of NAC is that we will also have players casting. Right now, we are more in the feel phase where people feel like, okay, I want to perform first. I want to um, kind of get a good idea on how the feeling is, want to prepare. But Jordan already stepping up and he will be the first one taking over the mic and will guide you through the main event of the evening, Doubt against Leary with Dash and Jordi. Thank you very much, Nilly. Uh, we'll give Jordan a moment to flip his headset on and join me here. Uh, I waited a whole year to get back on a cast with Jordan. We had a brilliant time last time around. Absolutely. We'll see if you managed not to mute yourself. Like, you, do you remember that? 
I, there was last something. NAC. There was it, something. The, it was so good. It was so good. Yeah. This time I'll. Uh, I think I'm a bit further away. You from just it. stay away from the buttons. Okay. Is really That's how good. it works at this point. But what a treat of a series you and I get to uh, to cast over oh. Doubt versus Leary. Of course, Leary finishing uh, second behind Hera at NAC4. Mm. Doubt missing out on the event last time around. Yep. He makes it in this time. What are your initial thoughts on on this matchup between these players? I personally, I think it's one of the most favorite uh, sets uh, I can think of. Right, Lyric against Doubt is just so amazing uh, because Lyric is the kind of meta player mm -hmm. and he excels so much in it. And Doubt, he is uh, thinking outside of the box. And those two styles clashing against each other is just th the best we have in Age of Empires. So I personally think it's going to be a banger. Yeah, in fact, uh, I was sitting on the couch with Tato during that last set. We started talking a little bit about Doubt Leary, and he pulled up the statistics. So we just took a look at how they match up. And over the last three years, they've essentially traded sets one for one, one yeah. for one, one for one, you know, back and forth. And even within those sets, it's usually like a one or two game differential. Sure, occasionally you have a, a shutout or something like that, but these guys are very close and they play two very different styles. And I think that's yeah. why it's always fun to watch, watch them clash. Absolutely, uh, especially if it's about the big tournaments, right? Uh, it's always super, super close. Sometimes the a little bit uh, lesser important tournaments, uh, sometimes we have <laughs> three zeros, but sure. if it's a big uh, tournament like NAC, both are going to be prepared for this uh, set and uh, I think we will see a good one. Well, I, now that I've got you on the desk and some time to pick your brain, I want to talk about preparation. We talked a little bit about your preparation, but this tournament has a different format in the yeah. sense of pick band than really anything else we've seen in Age of Empires before. Yeah. So talk to me about your approach as a pro player because you don't know until very close to the set which of these 12 civilizations are going to be randomly banned out. You know, how do you how do you make your choices and adjustments so quickly on the fly as a pro player? So it's very interesting because that's the first time in a big tournament as well that we have those random bands. I personally love it a lot and mm -hmm. a, a lot of other players do as well. Uh, in terms of preparation, everyone is different. I've seen some players who do it like me. I've prepared a big Excel sheet. Okay. And then uh, I can just, you know, delete the sifts which have been uh, banned here by the sift draft randomly. And then these sifts are going to be um, deleted from the Excel file. Mm -hmm. And then um, for each map, I have like five, six sifts prepared. And then these are deleted, right? And then I have a good overview, so to say. Okay. Then there are players like Doubt, as I just saw, who does everything randomly. <laughs> He just lets the sieves being banned randomly, and okay. then he opens a notepad with the maps and just thinks about, okay, which sieve do I want? Like, there's a lot of effort going in with that, but, you know, doubt is not about optimization. He's uh, more of a spontaneous uh, yeah. person. He's, he's the Lord. We don't question the no. Lord, right? No. Yeah, simple yeah. as that. I mean, that has to be so daunting as a player, again, just the idea of m essentially infinite possibilities, right, of these 12 Absolutely. different sieves. And, and even taking a look, when you look at some of the sieves that are banned and ultimately the draft that it resulted in, do you feel like one player won out? Is you know, Did one player end up with a better draft? you feel like we're in a pretty even state? So I think Doubt is extremely happy with the sifts he's gotten. So everything he has uh, written down on this uh, notepad uh, he was able to get. So okay. that's very beneficial for him. However, I don't know about Lurie. Uh, I think he will uh, have also gotten his sifts. So I think both are going to be very confident uh, going into this one. And uh, yeah, the first map is going to be Rocky Forest. And uh, in, in terms of play styles, I would say Leary should be the favorite, right? Because mm -hmm. he likes to be aggressive. On Rocky Forest, you cannot wall. So it should be beneficial for him. However, Doubt, you know, he has always something in his mind. So I'm pretty sure we're going to be... Uh, Impressed. Yeah, I mean, the Rocky Force we've seen already, right, was the Armenians versus Georgians, which is a very interesting yeah. matchup. Obviously, no chance for that this time around. Uh, doubt. What are you doing out here and not at your seat? That's his preparation. <laughs> <laughs> So now we have to say nice things about uh, Doubt. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Doubt 3-0, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah no question. Uh, yeah. Go get ready for your set, sir. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody saw that off screen. Uh, but yeah, okay, so Rocky Force, as you mentioned, I, I agree with you very much so that, you know, due to the inability of, of walling, that yep. Leary is going to be a player who's generally uh, favored in that matchup. But that's, again, where I, I will fall back on for doubt. I think throughout this series, it's going to be about minimizing damage, right, and sticking yep. to his game plan. Absolutely. I, maybe too often players who fall you know, quickly to, to Leary are players who kind of get sucked into his play style, right? He's dealing damage, yeah. so now I feel like I have to do damage back. And Absolutely. Like when I, for example, play against him, I, I think I've not won a single game <laughs> against him in tournaments because 
I'm that kind of player, right? Uh, he does damage to me, then I get sucked in, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> and that's that's where Liri excels so much, right? Mm. On the meta play. So, Doubt is a different kind of creature mm -hmm. in that regard. He doesn't care if he loses three or four villagers. Uh, you will never see him quick wall as well. Uh, for, for him, it's more about strategic execution and also macro. So, yeah, let's, let's yeah, see. Yeah, his map understanding is, you know, second to none, right? Yeah. When it comes to doubt, I think about his ability to read the map and understand where are the important points for me to hold, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where do I need my vision, and what is my composition, right? You yeah. know, and to, to think ahead enough uh, to index into what his opponent wants to do and countering just that. So Rocky Forest will kick us off. We do think that that's Leary favorite, but uh, the series as a whole, where are you leaning? I think it's going to be a close one. I think I, I was saying three two either way over there. Uh, doubt is here, so three doubt. Is, what three zero doubt. Three this zero man, doubt. He keeps walking right by, right? Yeah, as we, right as we're doing the predictions. <laughs> I meant sorry. Did I say three two? I meant three. No. <laughs> okay, he's gone. So I actually uh, predict three zero for Leary. Three zero for Leary. Yeah, but only to uh, only. I, I was hoping he would read he would, it. He would. Yeah. Poke his head back out from behind the wall. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, oh. That's no, too but funny. Uh, on his prediction, I think we will see game five. And I think Doubt will take it 3 2. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Because what, he's what just so well prepared. Yeah. I was going to say, so what do you think it is about uh, Doubt's game right now that is. Uh, that he's playing so well. Like, I was lucky enough to cast his qualifier to final series, the one that yeah. he, he qualified through. And, and, and it was, I really think, some of the best Age of Empires that I've seen Dow play. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for, for me, it's interesting because the last one and a half years, I felt like Dow has always been kind of dominant. He has been playing even better than, than before. So for me, it was kind of strange that he was not showing the results in the mm. tournament as well, because I was practicing and maybe I won 10% of the games, right? So he, he was just dominant. And uh, I feel like this time things worked out in his favor. And uh, I expect him to have a deep run in this tournament as well. So yeah, we'll All not right. be surprised by that. Well, time will tell. We'll get into that game one rather shortly as the players are just getting set up and ready to dive into it. And when you think beyond Rocky Forest and to the rest of the maps that we have here, and as well the civilizations that we might see, uh, you know, pop up, where would you expect? Are there any sure guesses? Like if you're if you're in either you know player's position, do you know which civ's going on which map? I, I kind of no doubt ones, oh, right? Fair because enough, fair enough. we're teammates and or. Used to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's going to take some getting used to, my yeah, friend. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, that's wrong. <laughs> no, so I've known him for quite some time, right? Uh, so I'm pretty sure I know where he's doing his stuff. Okay. Um, maybe we can do it like I do Lyrius, uh, you do Doubt. Okay, so all right, so you kick me off. Rocky Forest for Leary. What's the? Do you feel like there's an obvious one? I think Japanese. Japanese have, uh, you know, on, on Rocky Forest, they are one of the best, I feel. Mm -hmm. Man at Arm play is kind of the meta there. So Japanese have the faster uh, firing, I was about to say, faster hitting um, infantry. And then also the reduced lumber camps, mills, that is super helpful as well on that map as you have one tile between the wood and the, the lumber camp. So I expect Japanese there okay. from, from well, Lyrian. I'm prepared for you to say? call me an idiot, but I, 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 given that I, and the openness of, of the map, I'm almost leaning towards one of the two Cavsivs, so either the Khmer or the Gajaras uh, for mm -hmm. doubt. To play the mobility against what might be the ranged play from Leary. Say, I'm not going to interact with you and your military. I'll look for damage elsewhere and control the map. I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Actually, I don't know what he uh, chose there. Ah! <laughs> so it could be. It could be that's uh, <laughs> one of those two. Yeah. 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 And then of course Copenhagen, which is closed map in terms of you know starting within the walls and 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 uh, regicide start. Yeah. However focus on two different p points of water. It's a really interesting map because it, it pulls your focus all over the place as a player. Absolutely, yeah. What do you have there for, for doubt? What you so there's a piece of me that would want to say Malay for the water. Mm -hmm. The only thing is I'm not sure if Malay are going to be that happy against some of the sieves that uh, Leary has in Imperial Age, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah. that's where I would be a little concerned with the Malay pick, but there's a yeah. piece of me that thinks maybe we just go heavy into water control and abuse the faster uh, you know, uptimes mm -hmm. to get eco advantages. Yeah. And if you can just get ahead, then Malay can snowball. Absolutely. Uh, I think Malay is one of the top picks in, on Copenhagen, and a lot of people have picked them, so I think it is a very good uh, choice there. And for Liri, what do I see there? Uh, I think it must, must be Chinese, right? Because with Chinese, you start with three villages more. You have min minus 150 food at the start, but you start with 500. So 350, who cares, yes. right? And you have the three villages. So uh, economy-wise, uh, Chinese are really, uh, really strong there. The only little concern for Chinese is the post-imp. 
But until there, they will have the lead most likely, and you can make a lot of things work with Chinese right. until then. Okay, okay. Outcrop. Um, I think if I'm looking at outcrop here for uh, doubt, Gurjars is another option there, right? I know that I said mm -hmm. it's possible that that mm -hmm. comes up on Rocky Forest, yeah. but Gurjars is, a, I think, a fan favorite in a lot of ways on outcrop. Again, a very mobile sieve. Um, the, 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 the sieves that I'm really confused by in terms of doubt are Incas and, and Goss. Not that they're bad sieves, um, but where exactly do they go? Because I could also see, like, Copenhagen Goss, if you just want to go like full goth mode late game. And mm -hmm. so, but I'm going to lean towards Gurjaras for Dow on Outcrop. Okay. I think that's a very smart pick as well. Uh, are I would you doing not Saracens or Berbers for Leary on Outcrop? Because I think both are options, right? Uh, Saracens and Berbers. Uh, Probably let Saracens. Me let me think. What are the other maps there? Marsh Madness? Marsh uh, yeah. Madness almost feels like a Byzantines map where you can kind of go like I agree. heavy trash units for very cheap. Yeah, I agree. So Byzantines should be for Marsh Madness. Uh, what what does he play on Langanari? I think Malians could be an option there for Lyris. So Outcrop. I think, yeah, both both uh, are very tempting for me right now. And I would not be able to make a decision here. Okay. But I, I don't think we will see Saracens or Berbers on a different map because on the other ones we have them kind of uh, figured out so far, I would so say. So you, you do think it's between those two and whichever one I he picks, the other one probably just doesn't get played? I, I think so. Okay. I think so. But Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we're completely off and uh, he picks <laughs> I know. Chinese for, I don't know, Lang Langanati or whatever. Yeah, we're staking our, our, entire, uh, you know, our uh, entire professionalism on these predictions <laughs> right here. Hopefully it works out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, it's the last time we, we cast together. <laughs> 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 I heard. <laughs> Lang Langanati for doubt. Yeah. Um, that's somewhere where I would see... Oh, Jesus. We saw the effectiveness of your scouts on that map, which is again why I want it. But then Inca still needs somewhere to fit. So I could also see Inca's working on that map mm -hmm. um, and to a degree. And if we take a look at the his story from Doubt, he, in the qualifier he played Mezzo on Langanadi. So it is an option, mm -hmm. right? And also, yeah, what other sifts? Romans could be an option, Khmer could be an option. Gujaras, if you have a lot of fantasy, <laughs> even even Mal like yeah, with the Malay fast uptime, right? You can go for uh, early water control mm. and do land in the meantime as well. Yeah, then that can be an op uh, option as well. So, I, I think Doubt in general has very flexible sieves. So, it's hard to predict, right? We have six sieves, five maps. Uh, well, so let me ask your perspective on this without revealing too much of your own strategy. Obviously, I know we need to protect against that, but yep. do, are you a player um, or do you feel like there's an advantage one way or the other drafting uh, a set of sieves where it's very clear, this sieve is very good on this map and this sieve is very good on this map and like I know exactly where all the sieves are going or do you prefer a draft that gives you options but also maybe isn't like top tier on each map, you know? I, I think it's a mix of both because... Nowadays, with Age of Empires, it is at a state where you have a lot of different options, and that's something I personally love so much, right? Mm -hmm. I, I come from the era where you had the three, four sieves out of the 18 which were viable to play. Right. The rest, they couldn't compete. And now we have so many sieves, so much diversity. So, yeah, we have a lot of flexible sieves. Uh, of course, every once in a while, you will see certain uh, sieves like humans. They are not going to be played most likely on uh, I don't know, water maps, <laughs> but... What is this? Who has the better headphone hair? Oh, lordy. Uh, mm, well, it's well like, so hair has got the bump now with the headset off, right? I'm sure when I take my headset off, I probably look ridiculous. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> to be totally fair. I mean, I look well, ridiculous anyway. <laughs> um, also, Doubt is so tall. Look, he's looking like straight down at the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, was, he was struggling, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think Dash, uh, no one can compete with your hair, oh, I would say. That's huh? very the first time I saw it, I was like, wow. <laughs> very good. He, he, he does there <laughs> something. <laughs> this, is the problem, this is the problem with being a, a caster, though, is because we turn and look at each other all the time, yeah. so you do. You see it just constantly <laughs> yeah, through the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what for you has, when you, obviously, at this point in your career, you've played on, on many land stages and in many different environments of land stages. You've played with audiences, you've played without, yeah. right, things like that. For you, though, what was the biggest transition um, or, or the biggest hurdle for you to overcome in stepping onto land and outside of what would be the most comfortable, you know, place that you play, your, you know, your home office. 
I think there are two points. The first point is getting used to the setup. Uh, I'm uh, a speci specific guy in, in that regard. Mm -hmm. I feel like I take the longest to get uh, used to two things. That's also why I... Well, now doubt's taking the longest. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, him and technology, that uh, pairs very well. Uh, but yeah, that, that's one part, the adaptation to the new setup. And the second thing uh, would also be, uh, what was I about to say? <laughs> Give I me a second, yeah, I, 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 I had something. <laughs> well, well, you think about it, of course, I asked the question. But it's not very relevant to these two guys no. because they're two of the most experienced players as well. So we expect, yeah. I think in a lot of ways, we expect big things out of them from very early on in the tournament. And yeah. that's, I think, why this matchup is so important, right? These are yeah. two huge names. The expectation is that either of them could go deep. Obviously, Leary second place last year. We know that Doubt is capable of similar results. But getting that win on day one, as you've just experienced, uh, especially if you can do it in a dominant fashion in a Swiss stage, it just is so impactful. It it feels good. Like <laughs> I, I'm not used to that feeling, but <laughs> I, like after I finished my set, I was like, okay, I can get used to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's very right? nice, very nice. Yes, yeah. that more of that, please. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Look so at those finishes yeah. for for Leary. S uh, all previous NACs, twice that second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Hasn't gotten that first place result that he wants, but it speaks to his consistency in tournaments to finishing in the upper echelon. You know, if, if I look at his results, and of course, I, I know in the back of my head, it's not NAC only, where he performed ex incredibly well, but also in any other tournament. Mm -hmm. And I think six times he went into the finals, six times he lost in the decider, something like that. I don't know the stats 100%. Yeah. Larry is the kind of guy who you know, in my opinion, deserves to have a victory ah. just because he has been so consistent. I'm not sure how much he has uh, practice, but I'm, you know, as I know Larry, he always comes in prepared for big tournaments. So I, I hope for him that he's going to have a very, very good run uh, again. It does feel like he's due, right? There's some, there's like a it feeling is. that it's about yeah. time for him to take yeah. a victory in a big S tier tournament. Uh, yeah. But by the same token, I think that very point that you mentioned about him is why we always enter tournaments with questions about him. Because I think Leary on his day, if he's playing 100% of his ability, mm -hmm. he, he might actually be the best player out there uh, on the map. Yep. Uh, but the question is always, will he be at that 100% across every you know map in the in the set? Has he put in the practice time across all of the maps to have that yep. same confidence yep. that you expect out of him? And usually Lyrie also performs better the later he is in the tournament, right? Because the first <laughs> day he has to get to uh, used to the entire setup and, uh, you know, gets into his rhythm. Uh, so I think for Doubt, it is actually very fortunate that he faces Larry at the early early stage because yeah. I see a little bit of advantage here for, for Doubt there. Okay. And uh, Doubt is exactly the opposite. The, the later it is, the, <laughs> the first, I mean, he's the not the youngest. Yes, yeah, exactly. he's not the youngest. Like, <laughs> after practice three games, he needs a two hour break. Yeah, right? there uh, you he go. Needs another nap, so. Well, the good news is this, this time around, after three games, the players have an option <laughs> to take a five-minute break. Maybe, That's true. Maybe That's that'll true. work out yeah. in his favor with that yeah. uh, new addition yeah. in the rules. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, Dot can uh, thank the, the others for that. He was very quiet <laughs> about that, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to use that. Yes, uh, yeah, today. thank you, Mr. Yao and ACCM for getting that rule <laughs> added on yeah. Doubt's behalf. Yeah, yeah, Too yeah. funny. Too so, funny. Uh, Dash, what so far has been your favorite map? Ooh, favorite map. That's really tough. Um, I'm going to go with, I actually really like Outcrop. Uh, Outcrop? I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm also kind of, I'm just a big Arabia fan, right? Yeah. Um, I like open maps uh, where there's still a possibility of walling, right? If a player chooses to play safe, they can, but they are sacrificing in a lot of ways some amount of map pressure. Yeah. And the importance of expanding on that map, I think, you know, can't be underst or overstated, rather. Yep. Um, yep. And so I think it just provides a lot of really interesting games, a lot of high action, right? Mm -hmm. Games can be won in feudal, but they can go all the way into post-imperial as well. So you yep. get a lot of variety. I, I yep. think Outcrop is up there for me. Outcrop? What about you? Both, uh, okay, I, I want, uh, I'm gonna ask you the same question twice, but from different perspectives. What's your favorite map to play? Mm -hmm. And again, just for fun, it's not, it has to be like what you think is your best map, but like yeah. what's your favorite map to play and what's your favorite map to watch as a viewer? If it if they're different, I think in terms of viewing, <laughs> I like in general I like open maps. I think the best map in NAC is Hippopotamus ah. because 
it has so many different strategies. Okay, and Even not just because it's Nilly's tournament, you're saying hippopotamus? No, 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 oh, no, no. Okay. I, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I would never do so. <laughs> 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 no, but I just love the uh, diversity, right? Uh, so many different uh, options, how to approach the game. We have seen so many strategies already, and we will see even more throughout the tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, in terms of viewing and playing, I actually don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't really have an answer right now, but yeah. if we if we take a look at the players right now, they seem to be getting ready. I think they're just about locked in. Just yeah. about locked in. A few adjustments needing to be made to the setups to make sure everything's working properly. Again, competitive integrity matters the most, right? And yeah. so, end of the day, we want to make sure both players are playing with optimal setups and as comfortable exactly. as can be so we get delivered the and best games. And I know, like, people know doubt, right? And if doubt is involved, you have to bring a little bit more extra time. Yeah. It's just the way it is, right? That's how life works. Um, time <laughs> runs according to him. So That's true. Yeah. Uh, That's why he's Lord Doubt. He's the Lord of Time. Exactly. <laughs> really? He, he defines <laughs> it, right? So, yeah. Next time, yeah. <laughs> we, we will yeah. ask him. God who? No, I, s I pray to Lord Doubt. <laughs> Look, uh, these guys Lordy. are... Yeah. <laughs> Co uh, constantly, yes. like these two who are in the team with him yeah. are the ones yes. to sleep say, David, because they know. Yeah, Dave, they know Tato, him. Viper, they all get it. They, yeah. They've yeah. seen this story play out many times before. Yeah. Take a nap, boys. Yeah. We'll wake you up when the time. Yeah. The time is. Ready. <laughs> I do see. I see finger movement and mouse movement, though. That's usually a good sign. That, that must be Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never see that from doubt. <laughs> Larry's like, get us into this damn game. Come on, doubt. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, too uh, funny. All right. Um, uh, well, again, uh, just to reset everybody on this one, uh, these two players over the last three years have traded sets back and forth. Their game scores in those sets have been razor thin margins across the years. So we are ideally due for a very close setup. Look at us both with the crossed arms set up. God, we're so pretty. Uh, <laughs> that was, that Can was you good. tell we're running out of stuff to talk about? <laughs> no, I, no, 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 no. I didn't notice it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, Lordy. what I do we do now? <laughs> I was going to say, we wait for a meme to show up in the background or something. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Take a water break. Did you have, you have a water? You're gonna I, need I, it. I have, I have a water. We, yes. got a, we got a five game series on the way, my friend. Stay Abs hydrated. Stay hydrated. Absolutely. Oh, I, I have another uh, good question. Okay, hit what, me. What has been your favorite game so far, including qualifiers and the main event? Well, I actually literally said it earlier. Uh, and again, I'm biased because I cast it for sure. But your final qualifier series like, was, uh, was incredible to watch. I mean, part of that. I was rooting for you, you know, so selfishly. And you know, I told you, I was like, I wanted you to be at this event. I yeah. love hanging out with you. So uh, when you didn't make it in the first qualifier, man, I, I started to get really nervous for you. Yeah, uh, and absolutely. so I think that was just such a feel-good victory. Um, and actually, one of the other sets that I'll call out is Doubt's win over Nikov. Because like I said earlier, I think it showed that he's at his pinnacle. Absolutely. Of of Age of Empires play right now, and that yep. for me is so exciting, particularly considering he's one of the two players that wasn't in NAC4 yep. who's qualified in, and I think he can really shake up the standings this time around. Yeah, and the interesting thing was also Doubt last NAC uh, lost the last game in the two uh, decider sets, 4-3, mm 4-3. -hmm. So that is very, very painful, right? And it was so important to him to uh, make it this time. And the, the set against Nikov, it felt like he was on such a high level, yeah. right? as you said. And uh, I, I was scared when I saw it. Like, oh, doubt, you're playing so well, right? Uh, if, if he brings that performance today, uh, it should be looking uh, good for him. Yeah, I think it does look good for him if he brings that same level. And again, that speaks to how well Nikov was playing in that series and yet still couldn't overcome him. Yeah. I have a question for you now. Um, talk to me about just the development of the competitive Age of Empires scene. Again, I started, I got you know, I got thrown back into the age scene back in 2017, Vubli days. Yep. Uh, and so for me, in an outside perspective, to see where we've now, you know, uh, come in that seven years to 2024 has been incredible. But from your perspective as a player who's existed through that whole period near the top, What's it like for you to see some of these other names? You've got Freakin' Andy, you've got players, even players who aren't here, you know, Margugu, Sato, all yep. these incredible players who are starting to challenge. And now it's it, the fact that we have a competitive top 10 and, and it's never a sure thing who's going to make it. What's that like for you? I personally, uh, two thoughts on that, right? As a player, is stressing me out, right? <laughs> because back in the days, it was like easy 
easy going yeah, yeah. and you get into the top spots no problem and nowadays it is so hard all right, we're so diving in the game. Yeah, nowadays yeah. it's much harder, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. But it is very good for the scene, right? Absolutely. And it makes yeah. everybody better, and that's why we end up with incredible series, like hopefully the one in front of us here. It's Doubt versus Leary in our fourth set of the day. We go into Rocky Forest, and already Doubt throws me a curveball, at the very least, with the Goths picks into the Byzantines for Leary. I'm very uh, surprised by that. Uh, Goth is not the typical Sif I expected him to pick. Let me let me talk a little bit about that because I know he had that Sif uh, planned or played in different um, in different maps in practice. So and one of those maps were uh, you know in the map pool as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised by that. However, we saw Doubt play Goff a couple of times already. What he usually likes to do is the man at arm opening, which I talked about earlier. That is, that one is very common on this map. However, people have been able to you know, work around that with mm -hmm. a very fast uptime, go into archers and then you kind of shut down everything and then Goff will fall behind a little bit. So uh, I, I'm really curious, especially with Lyri Byzantines. It's not as if I expected to be played here, but Byzantines is very strong as well because the skirm pike combination on this map, we saw it earlier with um, ACCM against Hera, mm -hmm. it is very, very strong as well. And with Byzantines, you have the discount, as we can see here, of, I think, 25%. Exactly. Um, so it's cheaper, and uh, you can spam those units uh, as, as much as you like as Byzantines. Yeah, I think the other the, the nice thing about Byzantines as well is just how diverse uh, uh, oh. options they have, right? Can basically play into anything at yeah. any point in the game. Um, so therefore, I think... Sights are set on early Feudal Age, right? Assuming that yep. that Men at Arms is going to come through from Doubt, it's about how much damage can he do given the rocky terrain, and will Leary be in a position to either pre-wall on his wood line if he's gotten the space to do so. Obviously, yep. you have to chop through a line or two of trees to get there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, how much damage can Leary do early? Or rather, can Doubt do early? Can Leary uh, weather that storm? But, of course, if you go too late against Goths, that can get scary with the Goth spam on an open map. Exactly. Yep. Yep. The the thing is, Byzantines have the perfect counter to infantry units, <coughs> which is the cataphract. Yeah. Right. So that that's you couldn't ask for a better unit because it's super strong against infantry and it's mobile. So you're very very versatile in that regard. However, something I want to point out here is that Liri uh, goes up with 18 population. Like wow. At, at D with these settings, 19 pop is considered super fast already. Okay. 20 is like the safe one, a uh, 19 super fast, and now Liri throws out the 18 pop. pop. That's so ridiculous. that's so quick. He's not on gold yet. So it is very likely we will see the trash spam here, Pike and and uh, skirmisher from Liri, and he also gets the confirmation now that the barrack is about to go up for, for doubt. So that confirms him there are no men at arms coming whatsoever. For I was going to say, yeah, the barrack is going up and will be up just before feudal age. I wonder from doubt's position, is it as simple as looking at the score? We've got the scout engagement right as Leary hits feudal age. That means he'll have the advantage in speed and attack. Doubt now in full retreat mode. Oh, this is the Leary micro we're talking about. Oh, what a nerd. Even from, from the beginning of the game, he's going to get the scout kill and how massive that is to have a half HP scout and Doubt never got forward. No, he, he doesn't really know what Liri is going for. He can just assume, assume that it's going to be Archers because that's kind of Liri's playstyle. And what is Doubt doing? He has two on gold. I was expecting him to have scouts opening into skirms to fight off the skirm spearmen, but that's not what he's doing. And it looks like he wants to go into Archers, but it doesn't make sense at all because you're running into skirms and they just counter you. So is he instead just going to go skirm spear into skirm spear? Against that could be an option. Against a sieve that just does it cheaper? Uh, yeah, I mean, the infantry for doubt is is cheaper, but you will not have a lot of uh, skir uh, a lot of spearmen in that fight, right? So you want to have archer units only. And okay, we see Liri has five on gold, so that means he will actually go into archers. 
and uh, Daud will play now with the skirm. So, as Liri's build was so tight, he had to first build the arch range and then the mining camp because mm. you just don't have the resources for that. But it works out fine for him, and I think <coughs> that's better for Daud, honestly. Yeah, that he's going for uh, for archers. Started with that early archer, a couple uh, of skirmishers behind that. Liri with the one with the initiative. He comes forward with a small force. That scout doing work against the skirmishers early. That's the value of it, and even forcing a villager to be pulled off of the gold to try and contest that scout. But Leary getting the better of the trades. Uh, the scout being half alive is such a huge factor, right? And th th we can see here, you will always have the advantage in those skirmish versus skirmish fights because the scout, you know, adds some good amount of damage. So, yeah, Leary definitely has uh, gotten the better of the start here. Uh, both players without horse color, uh, they got the wood upgrade, so everything as it is supposed to be. And now we have six army units against two only for doubt, and we are talking about two skirmishers. Oh. Man at arm? Man at arm click now? That seems a little peculiar. I mean, I know you're seeing a lot of skirms, so a lot of skirms maybe, but then you're asking yourself, why not go into scouts at this point mm. if all I'm seeing is skirmishers? Yeah. And my, my opponent's already on range units. It's a pretty easy swap for him to just add a few more archers in and deal with those man at arms. So uh, a peculiarity in that, tech, uh, in that tech pickup, but we do see that first man at arm in the queue, and we'll see what Doubt can achieve with it. I think back at home, you've already seen what Leary is so good at. He gets those farms down while spamming yeah. out the range units, and his build orders are just so clean. He he minimizes the number of units he needs to do maximum damage, yeah. and then at the same time, he's egoing better than almost anyone in the exactly. game. Exactly. Like <clears throat> I think Leary is one of the very best if it's about uh, uh, economy management while putting on the pressure. Maybe he's in the top two or maybe even the best uh, mm -hmm. we have in the scene. Uh, he's just so, so tight in that. That's the same scout, by the way. Yeah, it's it's crazy, right? He finally goes down, but I, I think the scout has uh, caused a lot of havoc. And the thing is, th the idea of that was, I force my opponent to go into skirms, and once we have the skirm fight, I will, in the meantime, transition into the banner arms, mm -hmm. and then the hopes of him un uh, overrunning Liri, but that's not a big problem for Liri, as he switched to gold much earlier. He can pump out the archers. And he should be fine in theory. Yeah, I think uh, with his current force, right, he understands, all right, losing battle if I take this straight up, but that's fine. I have all this space. I can retreat back to my base while pumping out a few more archers. We see one in the queue right now. And Doubt understands I don't want to overextend with my man at arms. I'll drop back. We've kind of gotten to a bit of a stalemate game. Nobody's lost too much. Doubt actually with a small villager lead between the two players. Ah, two villagers, yeah. That's, that's very healthy. Uh, Doubt now with Fletching, Liri had that much earlier, but <laughs> I, I feel like he was not able to capitalize on the timing uh, for, for Fletching, right? So that was good for Doubt. And uh, earlier we had a 6 to 1 army uh, competition there. Now we have it equal 8 to 8 or 8 to 9. Yep. So the game has equalized pretty, pretty nicely. Yeah, without a doubt. So checking back in with the Ecos to see which player is going to get the villagers onto food a bit quicker, make that race to the Castle Age, where some real damage can be dealt. But it's all a balance, right? You don't want to over-index into the Eco while losing the military fight. And here we have Doubt feeling like he has enough to push forward and pressure Leary a bit. Leary being very conservative, bouncing back to his buildings, getting those reinforcements out on the field now with about six skirmishers and five archers. That feels like a dangerous fight to take for Doubt. It is dangerous, and uh, we just got the confirmation that there has been a second archer range added by Liri, and I love that move because that way he will always have the a number advantage, and the men at arms are never going to be capable of, um, uh, you know, uh, being closer to uh, the opponent's army, and therefore, <laughs> I think Liri is always going to be uh, the guy who is going to dictate the pace of the game. And uh, we saw Doubt using his biggest strength here, Dash. Yeah, the trades still relatively even, but we just see those numbers climbing for Leary. And part of that is the Q, right? He just has, yeah. he's got two archery ranges producing two units at a time. Doubt is still working on one archery range, one unit in the queue at a time. So absolutely, you're producing essentially twice as fast as your yeah. opponent. And so if you're taking equal trades, that's a win for you. Absolutely, yeah. And also Byzantines have it a little bit cheaper as well. So it's always going to be beneficial for it. Uh, and we have 12 army against two. At this point, if things are going bad for Doubt, he has to tap out of this one because 
Uh, Liri is doing so much damage here, Dash. Yeah, and villagers against uh, skirmishers, yes, that's an okay thing to fight with, but when you've got that pack of archers as well, now the villagers realize this is not somewhere we want to be. We have to retreat back to the TC, but Liri's still finding damage. The villagers took a pause for a water break or something, and a couple bills go down. The GG is called 1-0 yeah. for Liri there yeah. with the Byzantine play. Yeah, crazy. Um, uh, you know, that's the thing I mentioned earlier. Uh, Liri is just one of the best if it's about specific open maps specifically mm -hmm. there. So uh, I was a little bit worried for Doubt going into that one because uh, that's not where Doubt really excels. Uh, I don't feel like Rocky Forest has too much of strategical uh, patterns compared to other maps. So yeah, and Larry is just super solid. As right. we said, execution was top notch and uh, he didn't give Doubt any chance whatsoever. Yeah, extremely solid opening there for Leary in his first set here at NAC5. I mean, again, let's just remember uh, that we had picked two different sips for these guys yeah. on this map. So that's, I think, another piece of the puzzle, right, is I, I'll be curious to hear from uh, either of the players after this series what their expectations were uh, for that Rocky Forest. And, uh, you know, was Doubt thinking Goths was going to be a little bit of a sneaky pick into something else, you mm -hmm. know, um, yeah. Yeah. from Leary and, and vice versa. Either way, Leary gets the better of him this time oh I, I remember um, when I was checking with them um, it was not Chinese but Italians it uh, looked like Liri mis misclicked so it's not Chinese it is Italian so oh. we have to keep that in mind I hope I'm not spoiling anything here um, but yeah uh, Byzantines on that map yeah so I mean Liri is very comfortable now yeah. one zero lead uh, first game was not really close at all it was a quick one I would claim yes and uh, he knows exactly, okay, Doubt has his two home apps, I have mine. Yeah, but this is this is the scary version of Leary that I was talking about. Yep. And especially when he, he wraps up game one that quickly yep. and uh, almost that flawlessly, right? Uh, not really any mistakes uh, to be pointed at there for Leary. I yep. feel like he's going to take that confidence and the momentum is what can be very scary. So, yep. again, onus on Doubt, of course, uh, being the loser of the first map, he will get the choice of which map we go to next. Very likely one of his home mats, though he has all four available to him yep. if he wants. I think this is where I would say Doubt go to Copenhagen. Uh, Just a completely be. different style. It must be. Right? It has to be. Uh, absolutely. And Doubt is known to be the macro god. And uh, on which map can you do that? Copenhagen, right? That's just an invitation for that. And uh, yeah. Doubt looks like uh, he's not really struck too much about the first game. <laughs> he's just <laughs> chilling. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. I, I, you know, Doubt has been in that position uh, quite some time. He's unfazed. taking a zip and, you know, unfazed. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, and another uh, sip of Red Bull. Get that, get <laughs> yeah. that energy up. <laughs> it's just game one. We're in for a long set, my friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I had called Malay on this one. Malay? As my expectation. Mm -hmm. And remind me, you were thinking Chinese, right? So it's oh, Italians but, it, but it's now. Italians now. Italians. So, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. But do you think then it's Italians on this map? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, even yeah. still. I got think it. so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hmm. I'm I think that makes the most sense, but... Yeah. I'm also thinking Marsh Madness... Is is it possible that Doubt picks Marsh Madness here? <laughs> my gut feeling tells me no, Dash, because it's yeah. kind of similar. That's right? my fear. You don't want to yeah. play the same style map after taking that exactly. loss. Yeah. At least that's my opinion as a, an, you know, a viewer, <laughs> as a yeah. non-pro. Yeah. I'm always like, ah, if I lose in one style, just go to something different, shake Makes it up. Sense. You can always come back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, outcrop could be an option as well. Remember, you can also pick the home maps of your mm -hmm. opponent. <clears throat> outcrop is also more about macro-orientated gameplay. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's going to be Copenhagen or Outcrop most likely. I don't really see Langanadi because that's also a little bit uh, more aggressive. That's full aggression. That yeah. is full aggression. I yeah. would expect uh, Lear to approach that map very similarly to the way he just did, right? Uh, finding his way into ranged units as quickly as possible. We yeah. know that if you give Leary the chance to play into archers, he'll do that. 100 out of 100 times. He just uh, loves it. Right. And he'll be effective with it. So yeah. I think, yeah. yeah, Doubt needs to try to get him away from, you know, that army composition as much as possible. That's not to say that Leary is not effective on other comps, but it's just he's the best at one thing. Yeah. So uh, we have something happening. Uh-oh. Um, no problem at all. Oh, okay. So just stay here. Um, so Leary is picking Italians, which oh. is not in his draft, but... Apparently, he misclicked and they agreed that it's fine to play Italians instead of Chinese, which is totally fine if they just told us. But we will allow it. It's it's all fine. Like, it makes sense because it's the last uh, Civ pick anyways. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, kind of weird that they didn't tell us, but we will just continue, and Italians will be a viable civilization. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Uh, it's good to get the official word from the admin there. <laughs> um, Whoops, I spelled something. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I think uh, you saying it is what allowed us to, you know, to evaluate uh, the problem or the discrepancy at the very least. But uh, it's also great sportsmanship, I think, from doubt as yeah. well, right? Your yeah. opponent misclicks. You, he, you have the option in a competitive environment to say, you know, I, you know, I want the admin to hold you to the, the misclick. Absolutely. Um, so great sportsmanship from doubt to say, yes, I'm okay with that. We'll agree. Love it. Love I want. It. I mean, and that, I think, speaks to, again, him as a competitor where it's like, you want to beat your opponent at their full power, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't want to, you know, get those sneaky wins. Uh, it's just not... Uh, I, I feel like no one would ever do that in, in our scene, and that's also something I love so much about the Age of Empires 2 community. Uh, we have great people, uh, and we are all supporting each other. It's competitive, yes, but it's always with good morals, and uh, that's that's just awesome. All right, so with that out of the way, it is going to be Italians versus the Malay for yep. doubt. Of, co of course, both players are going to work uh, to get the scouting in as much as possible, but both have opted to put at least their initial docks on the northern water mm -hmm. as opposed to the southern uh, pond. Yep. So uh, yeah, yeah. So we have Malay against Italians here. Malay for for Dao, uh, Italians for Liri, and these two sieves are one of the best, uh, or two of the best uh, on this map because uh, there is water involved, as you mentioned earlier, uh, on two sides, and uh, these two sieves just excel if it's about water play. So I'm not surprised seeing that here. So here's my major concern then. Already we see Liri with an early lead. He had that second dock down and yeah. producing the moment he hit feudal age. Yeah. Second dock for, for Doubt just about to finish. So those galley numbers are going to be in favor of Leary early on. Yeah. The, the tricky thing is with Malay, it is not like the other uh, civilizations because they up faster. So you have to do it a little bit later, the uptime click uh, or up click because you know you want to have resources to spend. And like it, it's a little bit different from the balancing point of view. Right. However, the fact that Doubt did not have the second dock up is a little bit of a mistake from his side, right? You, it could cost him the game, right there. Right. Of course, the trade-off, right, is the uh, eco lead that he has. You see yeah. 24 workers to 20. Of course, that number at the top of your screen does include fishing ships, yeah. uh, and so it's not just vills, but the advantage he has is in the villager count, 21 to 18 of Leary. Mm. So if he can avoid some of that early damage from lack of numbers, then it's actually going to benefit him greatly further down the line. For sure, and that's exactly what we see him doing right now. Uh, he was, it was, it was very close. Okay, so Liri comes in with the perfect fletching timing. Uh, I don't think Doubt has uh, even a blacksmith up yet, so he needs a blacksmith. Okay, it's incoming. However, he still doesn't have the resources for it. So yeah. Liri is going to have an advantage, and also in terms of numbers, it looks good. And if it's about micro, I think Liri is a little bit stronger. You would typically expect as much. It is four to four in the galley count, but as long as Doubt has realized that that fletching is in, he's going to try to avoid fighting as long as possible. That said, he's there getting himself an cornered. There yes, there is an edge. <laughs> this is a flat Earth in Age of Empires, and you don't want to fall off of it. You're going to have to turn around and choose a fight. Leary actually being very tentative, and and every moment he waits is another moment where Doubt gets closer to fletching. It just arrives now, and he's got more. He's got more galleys in production. We're going to take the fight. It's four v four. Leary gets the first of the kills, but with reinforcements. coming, Coming in, I think Doubt is going to end up in the oh. better of the trades. As long as he's got the micro down. Uh, but actually, uh, you know, the effort was there. <laughs> this is so close because we're still at four to four in terms of galley numbers, and Leary finds himself now cornered against the edge of the world. He hasn't gotten any fishing sn uh, ship snipes just yet. A fifth galley comes out for Doubt. He now has full numbers advantage, and he's going to whittle these down. The question is, will he be able to snowball that across and now deal, deal some damage to Leary? A very uh, a good maneuver from both players here. I thought Doubt was going to lose so many more galleys, so he somehow managed to dance, uh, uh, you know, close to the edge of the map. So that was very clutch by him, and he managed to have a good trade, I think, right? It's four kills for uh, Liri and uh, five for uh, Doubt, so. Better trade here for, for massive Doubt. trade, massive trade to come out ahead in the ov in the overall KD when what we talked about was Leary having the military advantage. That's what he had put his early focus in in this game. As Italians, let me get more ships and an earlier fletching. Yep. You need to see him deal damage, especially when Malay has the advantage of those extra villagers now. As long as Dow can cleanly get to Castle Age, it feels like he's off to the races in this game. Yeah, absolutely. And he should be the one who uh, goes up to Castle Age uh, earlier, right? Uh, because with Malay, you up faster. So I don't see any reason why he should not. And 
Um, yeah, both players. Oh, no, Doubt actually has three fishing boats versus the two of Larry. So wow. his economy is going to be strong here. And, uh, you know, Doubt enjoys the passive gameplay. And look at the resources collected. We have roughly 350 more mm -hmm. for Doubt at this stage of the game. That's a big tell. It's an absolutely massive number. And here he has about f seven galleys moving forward. He'll run into seven of Leary's. So a little bit of dancing to happen here. We'll see if either player gets the better of the engagement. There we go. Doubt picking one off. Three volleys this is this all guy? he needs. I know. It's a different doubt. This is the doubt we're talking about, playing at the top of his game. <laughs> playing at the top of his game. Yeah, We had, we had a practice games, uh, game there, and uh, he lost four galleys versus uh, zero. So <laughs> I'm surprised by that. <laughs> I'm surprised by that. <laughs> That's too good. Okay, Loom coming in for Leary. Now let's remember, Italians do have a slightly cheaper... Click up, mm, yeah, yeah. right? So I think you're still correct in that doubt, even clicking later with the faster uptime should beat Leary to the Castle Age, but it'll be rather close because of that uh, that discount that the mm. Italians get. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm surprised that I have not seen a market yet from, from doubt. That's very untypical. But we also see him winning the micro engagement uh, against Leary, right? So that's kind of untypical as well. Uh, so maybe it's the untypical doubt game. Yeah, quick, check Leary's base. Is there a market? Maybe they're... Uh, maybe we labeled the... What? Ah! what? There's what? a market for Leary! <laughs> and Doubt does not have one! He has a stable! I, I think that was a misclick. Uh, I think we the players are mislabeled. Yeah, uh, I guess yeah, so. The, yeah, <laughs> Doubt, Doubt is red yeah, and Leary yeah. is blue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is incredible. This is incredible. I mean, it's it's been a masterclass so far here for Doubt on this map. Both players clicking up to the Castle Age, but you can see there just a little bit faster for Doubt because of the bonus from Malay. He'll get there about 15 to 20 seconds before. Still has better numbers on the water as well. Only one more galley, yes, but he's closer to his reinforcements and should be able to keep his fishing ships safe. Yeah, absolutely. And the numbers are in his favor as well, if I'm not mistaken, right? He has 12 versus the 11. Mm -hmm. So Doubt is cruising here. However, there is a big thing. Liri has moved uh, also to the south side uh, with uh, Villager and builds a dock there. And uh, Doubt, you know, he's just taking the shots. Yeah. He's just staring at his opponent and taking the shots. I was gonna say, well, this is the good, the good thing about going up to Castle Age, right? You don't have too much to focus on, right? Uh, you, you, like, you're not dealing with too much of your eco, so that's yeah. the perfect time to take those kinds of engagements and yep. make sure that you're keeping your advantage on water. But I do love the call out, as you mentioned, Southside Pond. Leary is the only player that's found his way there, so he may even be willing to concede now some of the topside pressure. Yep. And boom out on the bottom side. We'll see. I expect him to hold on to it as long as he can, of course and maybe out micro a certain situation. But right now, it's all about Doubt and the numbers that he's building there. Lord Doubt, that is. Showing unnecessary sportsmanship to this Olympic <laughs> kiddos. <laughs> love that. I love those tweets. Uh, and guys uh, out there, if you want to participate as well, hashtag NAC5 uh, will make your tweet uh, public here if uh, you're lucky. <laughs> as you say, if, if, if production deems you funny <laughs> enough. Uh, it's all about that. War Galley upgrade in for Doubt. We've got Bodkin as well as War Galley coming in now uh, for Leary, but it's still only fletching. Exactly, and that's, that's kind of the downside of Malay. It's very hard uh, to get the balance in and uh, usually don't have as much resources compared to other civilizations and uh, yeah, the fight is going on here. Yeah, just now hitting the resources for Bodkin will look for that click, but perhaps focused on the micro battle here on water. And it looks like now with that small tech advantage, Leary might be able to start evening out the numbers and the KD still very close, 14 to 13 apiece. But Leary still feels like he has the initiative. He's the one who's aggressing and for doubt, just trying to hold on and extend that eco advantage up to now five as it was three in the Feudal Age. Uh, we can also see he's adding fire galley. So he wants to shift over to land economy as fast as possible, but he also wants his opponent to invest as much resources as possible into the border. Mm. So he doesn't have the resources for booming. So. It is a balancing act, right? And uh, on that level, it's just about so small things. Uh, everything is about optimization there. So let's see if uh, Liri commits even further. We see him adding more uh, galleys into the water play. So, so far, I would say it is okay for Doubt, but yeah, Liri will yeah, overrun him very we, soon. We see the strength of those fire ships as they push forward, but with only two and enough numbers in the galleys, Liri's able to eliminate them and start to push forward. But what a great find. Wow. That's stable. That's stable. stable. Yeah. That Doubt got up probably 
completely unexpected for Leary. The stable or the, the scouts find yep. the villagers on the southern side, deal great damage, and now Doubt's at least aware of that expansion from his opponent. Yeah. So maybe after all, Dash, do you think it was not a misclick? Was it intentional that he <laughs> built the stable instead of the market? It kind of looks I like that. It, I guess it was intentional. I guess <laughs> it was intentional. Okay, here we go. Moving out for a TC as well. As you mentioned, Doubt looking to transition onto land uh, yeah. for the most part. And uh, so he's going to concede the top water section here. Uh, one interesting thing as well, uh, as we see the battle finally on the water going in favor of Lurie, uh, this map spawns with six deers uh, on the south side uh, for every player. And usually what you do is you build a spear in Fuel Age to uh, kill all those uh, deer so your opponent cannot uh, gather the food from them. However, if we take a doubt's uh, position, the six deer are still alive. So. A uh, little bit of a misplay from Lily because that's free food. Mm -hmm. And uh, Doubt will take that. I think that's 750 food in total. Also, I'm going to correct myself. I stated that that was his second TC. I actually missed the second one in his base just oh, underneath it's the, the castle. Third. It's a little hard to see, but he's actually been on two TCs for a while. Ah. And this is now his third TC. And so once again, take a look at those eco numbers. And while Leary now has total control over the water, I don't think it's going to bother Doubt that much. No, absolutely not. Uh, especially... In Castle Age, you know, you rather have villagers because you can be more flexible with them. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, uh, and and ultimately, while Leary has invested a lot into his uh, water military, his naval units, at a certain point, they don't have too much use. They can deny shorelines, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, if Doubt chooses not to go on water anymore, then in a sense, those are quote-unquote dead units. Exactly. I'm not going to call them useless, but yeah. you know, they're, yeah. Yeah. they're close to it. Yeah. Do you, what are the chances uh, that we see Larry uh, building trade cogs on the top? What, what do you think are the chances? Who did, who did that? Somebody did that in... One of the Doubt. Was it Doubt? <laughs> it was Doubt. Yeah, That's yeah, what it I was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but we were laughing oh, so hard because I think he built two trade cogs, and yeah. after the number of trips they made before Nikov deleted the um, the Docks? the dock, I think he made like 13 gold. Something like that. Like it was very. He barely came out positive. Yeah. yeah. But I would love to see uh, to see Leary do that to the man who did it. <laughs> that that would be a mega flex, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nikov also a teammate of Leary, so it would be Ooh. the perfect event here. There you go. Yeah, that would be pretty sweet to see. Uh, we'll see if he's feeling that confident, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, in uh, the second game of the series, doubt now up to 70 villagers at that, trying to figure out. That's what he's got a few um, karambits on the field. Interesting. Yeah, the the good thing about karambits is they are the only unit in Age of Empires that take half pop space. Mm -hmm. So a very interesting dynamic. It's obviously not the strongest. However, they're very good against monks because with monks you usually want to convert the high uh, value unit, and the, the karambit is exactly the opposite of it. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You asked me if Leary was going to build a trade cog. Did you ever think he was going to build a transport ship? Uh, on the top? Is he I don't know where he top? built it. Did he build it on the top? Where is it? We are not giving uh, <laughs> our spectator a good time here. <laughs> uh, uh, that had to be a misclick. Uh, okay. Right? No, oh, uh, for the, no, for for the, the relics. relics. For the relics. For the relics. relics. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Forgive me, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I, th I thought he was building it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, it uh, must be on the top because he already has one yeah, in the yeah, south. Yeah. But okay. So we uh, we solved that uh, riddle. <laughs> and uh, we see a very interesting TC from Doubt, the number four. Uh, it is on the outside main uh, forest. And uh, I love the TC, honestly, because. So far, I have not seen a placement there, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, and you know, it gives you a lot of map control, a lot of safety, and now the conversions are coming in, but he's, he's retreating, doubt is, but it's not the biggest thing if you were converted, right? Yes, exactly. So in the Monk Wars, it's four Monks to one, but doubt does get a conversion before this Monk will eventually go down. Perhaps a second, getting some of his Karambits back over to his side. Leary looking to chase him away. That fourth TC, though, in the middle of the map, like you said, establishes great control, especially of another big wood line, right? Uh, interesting yeah. thing about this map is there is plenty of wood, but there are really just three massive uh, chunks of wood and that major one in the center along with two gold spots that could be crucial to control taking a look at stone counts as well Leary already at the castle value doubt not too far away where do those castles go usually you want to have those castles either okay yeah either on the stone uh, where Leary is building it right now mm -hmm. to to give you more security or you go through the middle which doubt is which doing, doubt's doing. <laughs> We have the answer. Oh God, uh, we we have the answer here, yeah. And uh, 
Uh, I think with... Imp. Oh, and he's going in. Uh, this looks so healthy for him because uh, he's faster than uh, Italians with clicking up. So with the faster up speed, uh, he's going to be at least two and a half, three minutes maybe faster than Larry, And he's going to be able to apply so much pressure with the forward castle if it goes up. And we know exactly what Doubt is known for. Uh, yeah, we said what he's known for. He's known for his castles, and he's known for them for two different reasons. Sometimes because they don't go up, sometimes because they do, and they can win him the game. This time around, the castle will go up, and Doubt will make it to the Imperial Age. Very healthy-looking resources here, particularly when it comes to what he's going to want to immediately produce. Multiple Trebs going to come out as soon as he hits Imperial Age, yeah. and, and Leary's going to be in full defensive mode. Yeah, and uh, Doubt, the first thing he's going to do in Imperial Age is build around four traps. That's uh, his go-to thing. And uh, I I'm just impressed by the way he's playing here. Uh, it's just so smooth. He has currently 107 villagers versus the 81 from Lurry. Wow, that's just such a big advantage for without And we see another castle in the front. This looks very dangerous for Liri here. Very, very scary. Again, giving himself a great double castle position to launch his attack from. Okay, Liri though says, I'm not going to let you get that one up so easily. While Imp comes in, Loom, by the way, just finished for <laughs> Doubt now at this point. Perhaps why he wanted to move those villagers back before yeah. they got massacred. But there we have three Trebs in the queue for Doubt. I don't know what Liri's going to have in response to that. Because at the moment, mostly ranged units. Yeah, and the, the thing is... About Malay, they get the infantry armor automatically upon reaching the next age, so that helps a lot, especially if you have uh, Grambits then against Castle Age, um, the, the unique unit from Italians. Uh, so, Genuis Crossbow Man, here we have. So, yeah, traps are out now, and uh, we see a little bit of a fight here. Yeah, Doubt's gonna rush in, look for picks on the monks. The conversions do come through, all three monks getting a conversion, but all three monks will go down in response. Here come the crossbows, though, whittling down the numbers of the Karambits. So a good overall trade in terms of military numbers for Leary. But we have to remember how cheap those Karambits are, how little pop space they take. And ultimately, Doubt's concern is not necessarily his units. It's about removing these castle positions. Exactly. He has the position on the map. He doesn't mind to lose those Karambits in order to trade for a better position on the map. And we see... Oh, wow, wow. Okay, this... We have to talk about that. So Doubt sees his opponent on range units. That that's why he wants to uh, switch to skirms in order to counter that. However, Liri is one step ahead and thinks about it as well. Sees okay, what is the natural move from Doubt? Okay, he will most likely go to skirms. Karambits don't work. That's why I will go for cavalry. Yeah, insane. So that's going to be. I mean, that it's a huge play. Right, yep. uh, and uh, it's either going to win, win him the game or he'll have lost it anyway. So it feels like kind of his last ditch effort here to yep. pull this one back. There are six trebuchets on the six. field for doubt. Those, I mean, those castles are not long for this world, and we can see with only one trebuchet out onto the field for Leary, he doesn't have much in response to it. The Genoese crossbow might get a couple picks while the trebuchets target the crossbows themselves, and so doubt. Got to be a little bit concerned about losing too much of these very expensive units for free, but big Karambit numbers coming in now, looking for the surround on the Genoese crossbowmen. Another trap goes down, still has four to use, and some of those elite skirms are in the queue. Watching those cav upgrades, because you don't really want to show the cav until you have the proper upgrades and the proper numbers to really surprise Doubt and maybe get a snowball going the other way. That said, he shows his hand right there. Doubt now knows. That's a big problem for Lurie. Uh, a little bit of a misstep here as well. Uh, these calves had no business to be there. Uh, they didn't really provide any value anyway. And now uh, Doubt knows exactly what is going to be the switch from, from Lurie. Lurie has done a phenomenal job booming up to 120 villages almost mm -hmm. in the meantime. So that was very good from him. However, the, the, the pressure from Doubt is there. And he doesn't really have Siege to push this back. He maybe has the right counter units thus far. However, we see Doubt is switching now to, to the pikeman, Halberdier switch. So uh, it, it looks like Doubt is a little bit behind in terms of the tech transitions, but it is still completely fine as he has the perfect position on the map. Exactly, yeah. That's what the map uh, position uh, affords him, right? Is he yep. can be a little behind because, yes, as you mentioned, even if Leary wins the fight, there's not too much threat that you're going to be able to blow through my castles before I finish the yep. proper tech switch. And we've already got the pikeman now out onto the field. Or actually, he hasn't even produced any. He did get the pikeman upgrade. Yeah. And he's going back into archers and crossbows now. Uh, I wonder why. Maybe he thinks it's a debate by Larry. Uh, that could be the only explanation because he has, in theory, resources to pump out halberds. Okay, he 
upgrades Halberdiers now, so also produces some Halberdiers or okay. barracks in the front, so he's making that switch um, available. But th that's the funny thing about the, the highest level, I would say, because there are so many mind games, and sometimes you just show units like, oh, I, I upgraded that. Yeah. You have to switch into something else, but I only invested four or five units. Right. I do something else in the in the back, so. Yeah, uh, a lot of uh, mind games uh, going on there, but uh, Doubt's population with 184 very healthy. However, Lyri has done an amazing job to have a very high pop uh, population as well, even though he has been kind of, um, you know, pushed against the uh, yeah, Lyrian, world edge. Yeah, Lyri entirely on the back foot right now, but oh. here we go. Was that... No, he, no he, deleted. Uh, he yeah. deleted in time, which is great awareness from Doubt to not allow that castle to be sniped by the Bombard Cannons. But the Bombard Cannons going to look for the snipes now on the trebuchets. There's one that goes down, but the Bombards will go down in response. Now it's Cavalier versus Karambits, Halberdiers, and Elite Skirmishers. I'm not sure if Leary has enough in the tank to push this one back, but he's going to try. It's a last-ditch effort while the trebuchets work away. And actually, I think those Cavalier are doing pretty phenomenal work. It's about the reinforcements that Doubt can stream in. And with that, he's got too many numbers. Too good of an eco, too many techs. It's that 100% tech attempt by Doubt, and he's about to start rolling over Leary. It was so important that Leary wins this fight in order for him to get some breathing space, to be able to expand a little bit with his economy, with his uh, military buildings. However, Doubt won that fight. He is pushing and pushing and pushing, and the military count looks so healthy for him right now. That said, only one trebuchet remains here on the field for Doubt. So as we were talking about earlier, actually on Leary's side, he was the one lacking the siege before to push Doubt back. If this trebuchet goes down, it is getting repaired currently, but if it goes down, the push stalls out a little bit. Leary buys himself a little bit more time to catch up in the text, to catch up in the pop. And the funny thing is, Doubt would have access to bomber cannons, <laughs> but he knows exactly he will lose those <laughs> against Leary's bomber cannons. Yeah. He doesn't even want to bother with Oh, that. the trebuchet goes down. Doubt is siegeless when another trebuchet comes out, but he's got to keep it protected. Yeah. It, it, it's it's strange because the population for Doubt is not on the level where I'd say he can steamroll, right? So, uh, Lyri is hanging on here by a threat and he's switching to Hussars, so that's re really nice. He, ideally, he has the Arbalest, Bombard Cannon and Hussar combination. That's where he wants to get, right? However, it is going to be very hard because he doesn't really have a healthy gold access. He has four relics in the bank. The main gold in his main base is going to run out very, very soon and then he will not be able to produce any gold units anymore, and that's going to be super problematic here. Yeah, one of the major concerns for Leary is going to be that gold control. That's why it's so important for him to win this battle here, perhaps free up those five tiles of gold that sit underneath Doubt's castles before starting to uh, threaten the center. At that, though, we finally see a Bombard Cannon out on the field here for Doubt. A couple more trebuchets in the queue. Also, two Cav Archers, because why not? It's Doubt. <laughs> why not? you got to have some Cav Archers, <laughs> archers out on the field. It's Doubt, yeah. But here we go. I mean, again, Leary keeping that pop number close. It is 170 to 200, though. Doubt finally pop capped, and now with that, he feels permission to throw those Karambits in, look to make a mess of Leary's eco, and Leary trying to find a way to extend his eco out through the top side, and all of these villagers just getting picked off by the castle. Yeah, and th that's why the position on the map is so important, right? And you can see by that move, uh, Leary's just completely desperate. Uh, he has a very limited space on the south. Uh, they're constantly fighting there. So Leary was hoping he has a little bit of time, but dash there was none. No, there wasn't time for that. Now Doubt once again at Pop Cap. He's gonna push in a couple more trebuchets out onto the map. It is a double castle position on a heel for on a hill rather for Leary. So it's the most defensible position he can find, but even still, his numbers are starting to dwindle. Now down to 150 pop to Doubt's 190. Doubt continues to press forward, looking for snipes on those bombard cannons as well as the Trebs. Remove the siege and push forward with your own. First castle about about to go down, Leary throwing everything he can behind it in the repair. Still 550 stone in the bank for him to do so, fighting tooth and nail to keep himself alive in this game. But if he can't find a way to get some momentum back, eventually Doubt is just going to whittle him down. There goes the Bombard Cannon snipe that we were talking about, Jordan. Those are low health Bombard Cannons, though. Will he find the snipes on the Treb? The first one going out, Doubt now looking to reposition. He's back up to six Trebs in total, and it feels like it should be enough, but he just can't get these castles to fall. It's just incredible pressure from Doubt, right? And uh, Larry can only do so much here, and uh, he's just limited, right? And uh, he's, he has no chance here to defend here. Um, Doubt is just team ro rolling in, and uh, he calls the GG here. Seven trebs is what it took in the end to get those castles to fall.
He'll take the game and even it up at one and one. Uh, beautiful display from Doubt in terms of the map <laughs> control, right? I think that that's where it comes back to his understanding of when to exit the water, yeah. move out onto the land, get that castle position that you talked about that was yeah. more aggressive, controlled the golds and things like that. Maybe would have wanted to see him clean up the close of the game a little bit more. Feels like possibly. Uh, there was potential. Yeah, could have ended it earlier. But yeah. like you said, Leary actually had some very intelligent Tech, mm -hmm. tech switches yep. Yep. that also maybe seemingly baited doubt into, oh, okay, now I've got to go Halbs, but wait, he's going back out of Cavalier. Yeah, there's just so much uh, thinking going on. And the funny thing is also, um, if Liri had a little bit more gold uh, at his uh, disposal, then it, he would have been able to uh, prolong the game much longer. Uh, but yeah, gold running out is just such a big deal. And, you know, Thinking back to the beginning of the game, where Liri had four galleys against the three, he had fletching, and that was literally always, you know, Cornered. jumping, yeah. jumping out of the map <laughs> in order to save those galleys and those fishing boats. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not possible in Age of Empires. So, oh, I like, I like that. Yeah, uh, that's a good. That's, we that's did, a good we did one. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we, we uh, do that more often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so one-to-one, one, we're all evened up. This is the series we expected, though. Yeah. This And this excites me for it because we're getting the type of play out of these two players that we expected. Yeah, and you can see uh, the first game was kind of a stomp. The second game, completely different in terms of how you approach the map. Much more macro-orientated, much more decision-making involved. And voila, Doubt excels in those, those categories. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm I'm happy we see a 1-1 one, one now because we know exactly it's going to be at least four games. Yep. And, uh, you know, I would not be surprised to see game five here. So, yeah, let's see. Lear's map choice this time around. So, likely going to go for one of his home maps, but, of course, has all three available. So, his options are... Marsh Madness, Langanati, and Outcrop. Yep. Again, very similar to our discussion between games one and two. You just lost on maybe the most closed map, quote unquote, of, of the set. Yep. Absolutely. Now go to the most open, right? Which both Langanati and Outcrop fairly open, but I agree with you that Outcrop generally easier walling potential. So I, I would I would lean slightly towards Langanati for our third map. I, I'm pretty sure we will see that, right? Mm -hmm. It was also his first pick, so uh, I suppose Liri feels a little bit more comfortable there, and also it suits his uh, playstyle completely. So uh, I'm pretty sure Liri will do that. And uh, you know, I'm not sure if you paid attention, but did you look at Doubt's facial expression after he won that game and the uh, camera showed him? No, I didn't quite get a, get uh, a peek. Uh, Do you have some insight for me? It, it was like, did you really try to beat me on my home map? <laughs> like, did, did you really try? Like... Come on, <laughs> you could have saved us some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was that kind that of That was like, did you not see my first six trebs? You needed yeah. me to make seven <laughs> yeah. after that? Really? Like, come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> Do I really have to work here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, so Langanati, this is the one where we were considering um, like a maybe a Khmer pick or an Incas pick, right? Like Incas for... I think it's Incas. I think it's Incas just too. because just because the history has shown that uh, Doubt likes Mezzo first mm. of all. For, yep. Second of all, we saw him playing uh, Incas, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was a Mezzo sieve uh, on Langanadi in the qualifier. So um, yeah, you, then you usually don't want to give uh, Doubt uh, Mezzo sieves, but you know both of them are laughing. They're very good friends. I was gonna say they're chat. They're chatty. They're, they're trash talkers. Okay. They're, I mean Doubt is one. Liri is one as well if he gets trash talked and doubt is that kind of person I'm not a trash talker but even against him I do because okay. he pulls you into that zone so to say and uh, the funny thing is I think here we have the oldest player against the youngest player ah. and uh, yeah the Doubt is a little bit of a relic in that regard. <laughs> uh, yeah. And we love him for it. We love him for it. Okay, question for you as we wait for the players to load in. When it comes to your interactions with players in like 1v1 land settings, is there like somebody who ha is like the most intimidating presence? Like when you sit down, across, like because you said, talk about how doubt pulls you into the trash talk and yeah. stuff. I mean, yeah. obviously, we like to joke, you're such a smiley guy. Is there anyone who like kind of makes you a little, woo? Shaking I in I your boots? I, I think um, from all the players, if it's about just playing, not not Lan in general, how he's behaving, oh, but okay. just just his play when like his posture, his his uh, presence. I would even say Tato, oh. and that mi might be surprising because Tato is such a lovely guy, super friendly, super super smiley as well. But if he is in the zone, 
it, it, it's scary. Stay out he's of his way. Stay out of his he, way. He's a beast. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yep. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, so, you know, both players now have a best of three in front of them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, by the way, I love those statistics. It's, it's just such a great, quick overview. And uh, it's interesting for me that Doubt is number six in terms of all-time earnings. I thought it would be higher, but of course, nowadays the tournament's a little bit more lucrative yes. compared to when he was good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Clip it, <laughs> ship it, baby. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, hey, that to me uh, says so much about, again, the development of the AOE scene and, and what makes me so happy about the community that we have, right, where yeah. players can enter the scene now with hopes to reach the top 10 and make yep. solid livings out of it, right? And uh, and that all comes from, one, the community, and then, of course, uh, you know, the many sponsors and Microsoft behind it all. But here we go on to map number three. As you said, it's essentially a best of three at this point. It will be Marsh Madness. Surprising. So Leary decided to go for Doubt's home map. Yeah, very interesting. And uh, we see also something I did not expect. Leary with Japanese here. Mm. I mean, Japanese on hybrid maps, you can never be wrong with them because usually you have the dog up faster as they have lumber camp 50 wood instead of 100 wood so you get your fish, bo uh, fish boom going a little bit faster their fishing ships are a little bit stronger yep. they are a little bit more efficient as they gather a little bit faster so uh, a lot of things are working well here for uh, for japanese also men at arm opening can be Viable here as well, and you know, right. talked about it. Infantry hits a little bit faster. Can even play knights, right? In Castle Age, again, they have a lot, lines. lot of options when it comes yep. to their diversity of play. And this is still an open up, uh, open enough map, rather, um, yep. that they can be effective with any number of their strategies. Yep. Uh, but like you said, Leary already dock up. Yep. Uh, Doubt just going out for his now. We see the boars come in as well. Both of these players with very tight build orders. Mm -hmm. yeah, and with Khmer, uh, Khmer is not the typical hybrid uh, civilization. As uh, Khmer, uh, they excel if it's about placing a lot of farms. On hybrid maps, you have the tendency to invest uh, early on a little bit more into the fish, and then you add the farms for a better transitioning to the food economy. So uh, Khmer doesn't strike you uh, Im immediately if it's about hybrid maps. However, the big advantage Khmer have is that they don't have to build a barrack in order to get their stable or archer range out. So in theory, you're able to get the uh, feudal army out a little bit faster compared to other civilization. And maybe that's something Doubt will capitalize on. I was or, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, yeah. no, I like the or. Yeah, th there's one more thing about Khmer. Khmer, as they don't need the buildings to go up to the next age, we see every once in a while, not too often, but every once in a while, sneaky fast castle plays as well. Mm. With super low tato, <laughs> with a very low economy, however, you get a early scorpion out uh, with a forward siege, you get a one, two knights out, and you're capable of, with a good micro, okay, it's doubt, so not, not happening, <laughs> but just to finish the point, a different player could go for something like that. And there you have it, Loom coming in for doubt, so perhaps looking to click up, after that comes in and get some scout aggression out. I mean, that's my question, right? Will he, would he maybe approach this map while it's rather open in a way like the previous map? Maybe puts up a little resistance on water, but does go for that transition onto land early, expand his eco, get the map control, and try and win by surprising Leary in that way. Maybe bringing scouts forward again. We've got that kind of gravel terrain. You know how difficult it can be sometimes to defend against that. You can still wall in your wood line, of course, and yep. both players have prepped the houses to do just that. Uh, but a lot of questions to be answered once we get to the feudal age. I think for Leary, it's maybe a little bit more known. Yeah, and the thing is, if we compare the previous map with this one, yes, there was water involved. However, big difference, there is no walls around Doubt's base. And you cannot wall here, because yeah. the rocket terrain uh, doesn't allow you to place any buildings on it, uh, not even walls. So uh, it's going to be uh, a very action-packed game. Uh, we will see a lot of fuel age uh, aggression, I suppose. And uh, it's all about army numbers. And as a player, it is so important to balance the the water investment to the land investment to economy. I, it's it's very tricky to yeah. play this one. Uh, both players making their way to gold. Three villagers on gold for doubt so far. Leary getting that mining camp back up at home. Leary did get the scouting info though. That his opponent has already made it onto that gold pile. Doubt still trying to locate his opponent. Will do so shortly. Leary the first to the castle age though. Immediately uh, clicks on that double bid axe. And what will he go for first? It's actually going to be Spearman out of that uh, that barracks and a quick stable here for Leary as well. 
So we don't see the Archer play from Liri, which I was initially expecting. I mean, Liri is that person you identify with an Archer, right? So it's definitely uh, interesting to see him going for something else. But uh, Dash, as you mentioned earlier, Japanese can also play the Nightline, right? Mm -hmm. As they have access to Bloodlines. Uh, they did not have that a uh, couple of years ago, but nowadays they have it. So uh, Spearman and Scout is generally a good way to play against Scout's opening from uh, from Khmer. Look at those statistics. Khmer, 34% win rate over the entire event wow. of, of civs that have been played more than 10 times. But Sports, a 3-0 scoreline on this map, played twice by Doubt's teammate Tato. Yeah. Tato is a Khmer expert. Yeah. And uh, on this map, uh, the way Tato used to play in the qualifiers was that he uh, built the stable and archer range on the front at his opponent's base. And it was just uh, big pressure yeah. coming. People did not expect it. I was about to start questioning the three villagers on gold for doubt because he's had them there for a bit. Just now, though, producing a fire galley. So we're seeing some of that gold start to be invested, along with more scouts out onto the field. The fourth one in the queue here for doubt and looks to snipe the villager over by the dock for Leary. But of course, that fire ship will come back and defend. The spearman going to get pushed his way away as well as it looks for a kill on that fishing ship. Leary with three scouts forward, going to look for some damage. But doubt already has those walls up around his wood line and has relative safety near his TC. So not much damage going to be found. And of course, Kamar also, even if you did, easy ability to jump into those houses and keep those villagers safe. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, Khmer are so good, uh, especially at the beginning, because you cannot really f deal damage to them with um, melee units. So it's really, really tough, as they can jump into houses, as you mentioned. So uh, Larry is not really thinking about killing villagers here. It's more about getting a little bit of map control, uh, showing your opponent, hey, I'm, I'm on the map. I'm here to play, right? And I'm going to control the game, even though you in theory have the better um, possibilities, I will still do so. Five scouts though coming in for Doubt, while Doubt had the uh, foresight to pre-wall his wood lines. Leary has not. Doubt though even going to find a villager on the blacksmith before he makes it to the wood line. Spearman comes over to defend, but if you eliminate that Spearman, it's five scouts that can deal a lot of damage here for Doubt. Needs to focus in on that Spearman. Does lose one scout to it. In fact, not the best trade because it's uphill and another Spearman comes out just in time for Leary. Did lose one villager though, so Doubt, one vill for one scout as well as two spearmen, maybe not so bad. I think it was a good trade for Doubt, mm -hmm. even though he lost a little bit more HP on the scouts than he should have, but uh, also credits to Livery. He did a good job with the spearmen and just walking back while uh, reloading his attack, so to say. And where are we standing now? Uh, we have 36 uh, eco units for, for Doubt or for Livery, 37 for, for Doubt. Uh, both of them are kind of contesting the water, but uh, nothing major happening there. And uh, we see uh, some land shenanigans with the scouts and the spirits here. But Liri is going to reinforce with uh, those scouts, and uh, it's going to be very equal this year. Yeah, another one-for-one -one trade when it comes to the scouts and the spears. But uh, now Doubt realizes he doesn't have the numbers, so he's going to run back home with those remaining scouts, keep as much of that HP available to him as possible over on the water. Doubt was chasing back. One of the fire ships does get the kill in the one-for-one -one trade ultimately, so he'll be happy with that one. Uh, but that does mean that there's another fire ship coming his way to threaten his fishing ships. He'll have to be prepared for that. Yeah, and Doubt uh, does what he does best. He the found market. his friend. <laughs> he didn't misclick this time. This time, there is the market. Right, so there goes the stone, quickly sold, and we see 800 food, 200 gold in the bank. Those are the resources he needs to click up, as Kamur could do at any time, but right now he's focused on the fight. Takes a solid engagement, scout be scout. Now, though, he's got to protect his fishing ships. It's a 1v2 battle. If he uses the fishing ships, he could possibly block. There he goes, trying to protect and swarm those enemy uh, fire ships. I personally love that interaction and watching players use the health of those fishing ships to change the tide of a battle, even when you don't have the military number. And I think it was not too long ago that it was introduced. Uh, so it's a rather new thing which people have figured out. Uh, so very nice uh, shenanigans there. And I, I'm, I'm just thinking, um, you know, there's a little bit of uh, actions going on, but just, just imagine Doubt losing this game, losing the next game as well if he uses the market. And then he has one game one where he didn't use the market. Wow. It might, just it might, imagine. We might be on the verge of a new Doubt, the evolution of Doubt. 
I cannot imagine Dove before the market. <laughs> Who but, knows? Uh, you know, there's a point. <laughs> well, right now he might need the market, right? Because he's losing his fishing ships at home. Yes, he's first to the Castle Age, and by quite a large margin, right? Uh, we saw Leary invest far more into fishing ships, and Doubt has found a couple snipes. Again, Eco KD is dead even. But there we have a couple of archers and spearmen forward going to harass that wood line. And now all of a sudden, those walls are so much less effective. Still grateful to have the houses to protect those villagers, but he's going to have to come out with some land military to deal with this forward here from Leary that has pushed him off of gold and one of his wood lines. Uh, he has 30 in gold still, so... No, 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 that's not... Uh, yeah, he, yeah, it is. he 30, moved forward. Yeah. He went ah, further yeah, forward yeah. for yeah, gold. Yeah. <laughs> he, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He would say that is a Jordan move. Uh, however, uh, as you mentioned earlier, that timing advantage in terms of uh, cast age is so huge uh, for Doubt. Uh, it's going to be around two minutes, and uh, Liri really has to be cautious because he doesn't want to lose his archer mass here. Yeah, but a lot of idle eco right now for Doubt and the possibility to lose more villagers. We do have some skirmishers now trying to make quick work of those archers. Liri going to try and micro and retreat, loses one, soon to lose another. Now brings the spearmen over, though, to threaten those skirmishers and now doubt repositions back to the gold so good defense by him only loses a total of one villager in that whole engagement and then once again reaching the castle age two minutes before his opponent what can he get done with those knights i think there is a lot of potential for him uh, with those knights uh, especially if he goes to uh, Liri's base right away uh, we see Liri's gold is exposed also the farmers they are close to the tcs however uh, nowadays, uh, people have become so good at dodging the TC fire as well and cause a lot of idle time. So uh, what uh, Lyrian needs to do... Oh, there's a hole, Dash! There's a hole. That's three scouts right there. They don't have any upgrades other than bloodlines, and so they will still be able to get some snipes on villagers. One goes down, but the villagers are now looking to fight back. The spearmen move over there, but just to watch the gladiator battle in the wood line. Okay, now the reposition comes through, but honestly, good damage from Doubt with scouts that probably weren't going to be too effective and he also intelligently brings his knights to the other side of Leary's base, pulling him apart. Yeah, perfect play by uh, Doubt here. And Leary needs to be really cautious here. He has economical advantage as he has seven fishing boats still alive. However, Ta uh, Doubt doesn't have any. Uh, however, we see the timing advantage here and Leary has not really bothered to quick wall his gold and he pays the price for it right now. Yeah, oh, Ooh. looking for the quick wall, but they still have the gravel terrain. And so the Knights get out. Castle Age in now for Lyria. A lot of spears in defense, but Doubt's willing to commit those Knights in that trade. We also see Cav, at least one Cav Archer out on the field. I never know with him if it's a misclick or if he's actually going to move yeah. into the Cav Archers. Yeah, this, this one is uh, intentionally because he knows that his opponent is Japanese. I'm on Knights, so most likely he will switch to Pikeman, which we see Lyria. We saw Lyria doing. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, upon seeing the Cav Archer, Lyri now is like, no, nah, I know how you play. You lost your CA, <laughs> but I will go for crossbows anyway. He says, you want to micro? Oh, we can micro. Also bringing up a monastery to deal with those knights, uh, the best defensive building when it comes to dealing with knights. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's, it must be the best building. And also, we haven't mentioned, and I think that's a big teller as well, doubt. He has bloodlines, yes. He doesn't have any upgrades on his knights. No forging, no scale uh, armor, and that's what he's doing right now. So Liri saw that, and he's also thinking at that stage, that's a, that's a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at this stage, if you commit to knights and you don't have one single upgrade, you're not going to commit to knights. Ah, well, but then, so does that obviously completely flip when you get to that first armor upgrade coming in? Because it looks like almost Doubt had that same thought. He thought about going into cav archers or ranged units. Then maybe in seeing uh, the archer numbers from Leary goes, actually, then I go back into into the cavalry units. I think his idea is to go for knight scorpions. Uh, that's what you want to do uh, with Khmer, especially against uh, Sif like Japanese, because if, if they go just pikemen against your knights, there is no way you can fight that, even though with a better economy. It doesn't happen, right? Mm -hmm. So um, his, his plan, I don't think, has changed too much upon seeing what Leary is doing with the crossbows there. Uh, we see the siege workshop there, so uh, scorpions are going to come out. There it is. And Lyri <gasps> knows. Oh. Okay, he's luckily, got the houses. Oh, thank God to be Khmer. Luckily, there are those houses. Uh, however, Lyri has built a lot of knights as well because he knows the threat of uh, scorpions. So it is, again, like the previous game, a lot of mind games here. 
Mm -hmm. And you can see an interesting prioritization in those upgrades, right? It was Leary who goes for forging on his knights, where Doubt goes for the armor. Kind of yep. indicates to me that Leary does really want to use his knights to raid mm -hmm. and look for snipes on Vils, just be a little bit more effective in getting those kills quicker. Yeah, with forging you have uh, four attacks versus the five, uh, and that uh, is, is a big thing. And also, uh, if you play against range unit, uh, you want to prioritize the armor upgrades. But if you're against melee uh, units, Usually the melee attack is better. Okay. Well, there you have it. A little bit of an engagement here between the two packs of knights. Again, sharing upgrades, or rather having opposite upgrades. We'll see who takes the cake in the end. And it looks like you're right. It will be the player with wow. the attack upgrade that ultimately wins it and forces Doubt back. But still a very even game state between these two players. Slight eco lead and overall more military numbers here for Leary, but Doubt now goes for that forward TC. Wants to get solid position here in the middle of the map, secure that gold and even possibly that extra stone and another gold a little bit farther forward. Yeah, it's very interesting. If we take a look, and that's very surprising for me right now. If we take a look at the resource collected, we have roughly 2,000 more for Leary. That's insane. Uh, as you mentioned, numbers in terms of military, much better for Lyria as well. He's also taking um, or capitalizing on the fact that he won water, mm -hmm. he's expanding, and that means his fish are going to be so much more effective. Yeah, great repositions on the dock as well to keep those fishing ships as efficient as possible. Another engagement in the middle, it's crossbows and knights versus knights and scorpions. The scorpions go down though, and that means Doubt might not have the numbers or the ability to deal with the crossbows and the damage that they can dish out with Bodkin. So he's in full retreat mode, but luckily has that TC where he can garrison the villagers. He's got to regroup and find the numbers, still losing the knight engagement in the top, but trying to keep Leary from diving into the eco. This is looking so healthy for Lyria. And, you know, you don't want to be up against him if this situation is like it is. Because he has all the map control. He has the army presence. He can expand however he likes. And he's that kind of person who's excelling in the aggression. He's so active. And he will find villagers which are undefended. And he's going oh, to pick them he up. He gets the conversion oh. under the TC as well. That's insult to injury right there. And now with the... Uh, you know, with the control of the center of the map, at least from a military perspective here for Leary, he's going to start adding TC. Second one coming up. Doubt going for a third, though, up in the north. So looking to boom his way yeah. out of this one to a degree. And uh, Doubt excels in that as well, right? Uh, he is one of the best if it's about uh, accepting the pressure of your opponent and still managing to expand his economy uh, in the back. So that's very nice. And uh, one of the things which he does so well is, even though he has a lot of pressure going on him, he will just go for a counterattack, just split the focus. Well, yeah, and he's going to need to find some damage, perhaps. I mean, again, we are locked even when it comes to those eco units. Third TC now on the way here for Leary as well. But it just feels like the military composition overall for Leary is a little bit more well-rounded, right? He yep. does still have a solid front line with the knight numbers. He has a response to the knights himself in the number of monks that he has, has out. And we can see it here, splitting up his units now, looking for damage with one group while using another group to make sure that he's safe at home. And he still has the walls around his wood lines, so Doubt not going to find much damage. Yeah, Larry is doing such a good job with uh, his army in the front, also getting, uh, you know, good conversions here, being annoying with the monks here. And I don't think the Knights of Doubt are overwhelming here. Uh, Larry has enough to defend, and no, they're fighting under a Bodkin TC as well. And Doubt calls it with just one armor upgrade, yeah. exactly. So that's a GG. I mean, it did feel like he knew he needed to deal some damage, having lost control of water. You have the feeling that the Japanese player is expanding significantly, didn't feel like he could control the middle. So he goes for one attempt to deal some damage and perhaps find his way back into it, realizes it's over, calls the GG. He's yeah. ready to move on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I think Doubt was a little bit unhappy with the way the game went. Uh, I think. If you go with Kamur, you are kind of expecting to have the Feudal Age uh, advantage and uh, overwhelm, but I feel like, th you know, it's it's interesting with Doubt. It is his biggest strength, but also his uh, biggest weakness. The market usage, he is usually very good in the, the timings. However, it can also backfire. Mm. First game, we saw it. He sold his stone with such a horrible gold. He didn't even manage to go up. Yeah. Because he was overwhelmed. This game as well, he was using the market. While Lyrie, he prefers to stay in Fuel Age a little bit longer. His timing is against him, yes. However, he gets a little bit of uh, of pace into the game. And uh, Now, yeah, now this might sound a little crazy, because because Doubt did beat Lyrie to the Castle Age by two plus minutes. Absolutely. Yeah. However, I think there was a full minute of game time where Doubt was at 
Castellate's resources because he didn't click up until he had 930 food. Oh. And like 250 gold. Uh, and Vodka actually did point it out. It was just during a fight. Ah. And so I think, you know, again, it's, it's where all your focus is pulled. But I wonder if you're up to Castle maybe a whole minute sooner because he did have the resources. That could have been a huge difference because we saw those knights were effective for that very short time. Exactly. Before yeah. Leary could catch up in the text. Yeah, especially on this level. Uh, one minute is tremendous yeah. in terms of impact to the game. So, um, yeah, big misplay then by Doubt. I didn't catch that actually. Yeah, and how about this? Leary got the win on Doubt's home map. That completely warps, like, you've got to be in your head right now as Doubt. Absolutely. If, if you take a look at the screen right now, 2-1 for Leary and two, you know, uh, bright maps still <laughs> available on his side, not on opponent's side, but on his side. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that's not uh, not healthy. And uh, I'm pretty sure Doubt will not uh, be impacted by, by that mentally. No. He doesn't care uh, as he gets another sip in and... Uh, and that's you know, just touches his belly, right. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it is it is tough. And Larry, he he will feel very confident, especially with uh, his two home apps still available. He's got his two home apps. That said, I think Doubt has two fantastic sibs to play on each of those. <coughs> right, uh, Gurjara is on Outcrop, and you got Inca's on Langanati. So shouldn't be too afraid uh, of diving onto either of those maps. I think it just really comes down to which of his two strategies on those maps he has slight, uh, just the slightest bit more confidence in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. ultimately, he's got to win them both if he wants to take the series. So it doesn't really matter to a degree which one you go into first. Yeah. For Leary, he's just got to get one to pack it up in three-one fashion. Yeah. The the thing here is, if you have, let's say, Doubt has a special strategy planned for one of those two maps, then you play that last. Because if you play now, you win. You show your strategy, and then you lose the last game. Then you're you've exposed yourself. Exactly. The, so that's something you have to keep in your mind as well. Um, and the funny thing is, doubt is in a situation uh, a situation which he usually is not known for, or he doesn't experience that much. He's two one down. Ah. Usually he is up to one and loses. <laughs> So yeah. maybe look, he, this whole series has been about him shirking the old doubt, right? He's <laughs> yeah, like, he's I am no, job. yeah, no more markets, and <laughs> I go down two one and reverse it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's my opponents <laughs> can do it against me, I can do it against them. Huh? They, they must know something I don't, so I'm <laughs> yeah. going to try and do what they do. Yeah. Um, again, I talked about the strength of Doubt's two sieves. That's not to ignore the power left in Leary's mm. remaining yeah. sieves. Uh, similarly, I think. Um, he has very good options. I, again, I would expect Saracens on outcrop and Malians on Langanati, most likely. I think likely. the same. Yeah. I think the same. Yeah. Must be that. Uh, Saracens in general is just so strong on, on outcrop because uh, with, especially Liri, he likes the archer opening. He, he, if we see Saracens <coughs> for Liri, 100% uh, archer opening, uh, 19 pop, uh, I guess, into Feudal Age, and uh, then just you know be aggressive with the archers. You have timing advantages for Saracens as the market is uh, very healthy for them. And uh, now staring at his heart rate watch. Oh, he <laughs> he's is checking, it 150? In, checking in on the heart rate. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> yeah, that that was very uh, yeah. afraid. Uh, the funny thing was uh, yesterday with uh, we we tested a little bit, and Mr. O was asking what what is this watch. Mm -hmm. So he puts it on. It's is is 90 healthy? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> could be better. <laughs> it definitely could be could better. Be better. Yeah. Not, not the worst <laughs> I've ever seen, but, you know, maybe we all make an extra chip, trip to the gym this week. <laughs> <Yeah>. You know? <laughs> I wouldn't mind. And, and his face was the best, like, nah, I don't think it's normal. <laughs> and you, you saw him a little bit concerned. Yeah. yeah. Like the do first time he sees that. Yeah. Now, do you feel like, I mean, obviously you have the option to, to wear the, the watches in there, but even just from a Feeling like over the course of a series, how, like the exhaust, like how does the exhaustion, I guess, manifest for you? Do you feel it much physically? Is it more mental for you? I think different players probably, you know, uh, deal with it different ways. It's only mentally. Oh, really? Uh, but like physically, well, that's because you're in the gym every day. Not at every day, but I'm, I'm used to it, okay. right? And that helps a lot. Um, and I think it is very, very important to be physically uh, in shape because Age of Empires, yes, it's not the typical sport of like running, football, tennis, basketball, whatever. But it is on a different side, and uh, still, uh, it helps you mentally. Well, if we're going to talk about uh, endurance, Doubt's going to have to uh, display some endurance here if he wants to take it to the fifth game. He's got to get it done here, and once more, 
in the next to take the set in 3-2 fashion for Leary. He's got two chances to get it done. We're on to Langanati, and it will be Malians up against the Incas. So no surprises in the sieves for us here. But now I think becomes the question of the strategies. Because just like in your set, right, we saw a commitment to water by one player and then a commitment to land by the other. Land won out that time around. But I don't know, and you know, if that's going to be the case every time. Uh, I highly doubt that. <laughs> uh, uh, like the game against Mr. O was a display which I have not even seen in practice. Like the timings were 100%, uh, you know, perfect in that regard for for me, and it was very unfortunate for Mr. O. In this case, uh, with with uh, Incas, you don't really think about okay, I want to wall in and go for unique units, mm. right? Like uh, Mr. O did with Malians. Um, we will see him playing feudal, and we no doubt he doesn't like walls. And uh, Liri, he doesn't like walls either. So we will see both players maybe a little bit of uh, investment into the water, mm -hmm. and uh, but transition into a feudal uh, army as soon as possible. And we already see Doubt getting a lot of HP away from his eagle. I was about to say one of the major differences between his sieve and your sieve is the fact that he doesn't have access to cavalry and instead, ha instead has the eagles. But that does mean in the Dark Age he's going to lose out in that Scout v. Scout war. And we already see the punishment oh. in a way coming out here from Leary because he took that extra damage from the villagers around the dock. Wow. And, now, and now the Scout wins out. Wow, that's so good from Leary. It is so hard to micro that, right? You have to be so fast with the clicking. So you are actually, the game uh, recognizes your unit to be the first to mm -hmm. have the, the pathway there. And then he also has to click to attack. So it's really, it doesn't look easy, uh, it doesn't look hard, but it is very hard. Yeah, uh, I think, uh, again, it's a tough, a tough situation for Doubt to find himself in where he's getting that scouting information. Some people might say, well, wait, doesn't the eagle win out if you take the fight straight up? Yes. He does, if you don't have two villagers there that can walk over and add a little bit of extra damage. So at that point, he has to turn tail and run. He does as best a job he can to return damage to that scout there from Leary. And at least that scout will be less potent now for the rest of the game, but will still get Leary invaluable information. Yep, yep. We see 19 villagers from Leary. I would say that's the normal uptime. 20 from Dowd and... Uh, that's a little bit too late for my taste, uh, actually. We see some players even going for 18 villages here. And uh, I'm that kind of guy who really focuses on that very, very specifically because we're talking about 25 uh, seconds discrepancy. Yeah. Oh, okay. you got it. I, I pronounced it correctly. Yeah, yeah. If you were Dave, I would have he done uh, he would have wrong. He would have found a way to tell you that you <laughs> pronounced <laughs> it incorrectly. Yeah. But yeah. no, yeah. you did it phenomenally there. <laughs> um, and yeah, it is interesting, right? A slightly later click, but he does get an extra fishing ship out for it. Uh, I don't know how much that's going to net him. Again, indexing a little bit more into the food economy. 11 on food, actually, for Doubt, as compared to the 8 there for Leary. Doubt only on one lumber camp, by the way, so saving some wood there where Leary did go for two. Granted, Malians have the reduced wood bonus on their yeah, buildings. Yeah, yeah. We see something, as far as I'm concerned, we haven't seen so far. Men at arm opening from Doubt. We see two militia in the queue. A third one will follow, I suppose. He's a little bit late to the gold, but it should still be fine. And I'm curious how he is going to utilize those because is he think? Oh, the two forward villagers. villagers. Woo! Okay, Leary. By interesting because he actually gets the scouting information on the militia as a result. Looked like maybe going for some kind of a forward or a cheeky tower to range that gold. Instead, will retreat with the villagers. Yeah, it's abortion time for for him right now, right? Uh, he sees the militia is like, okay, I'm against out. Uh, he will not have anything healthy for me on the barrack, and. The thing which is interesting, the stable was at a degree where he placed it before he saw the militia. So what were these two villagers up to? Right. Well, yeah, that's why I have to imagine it was like a kind of a cheeky forward tower or something like that. Because it feels like on a map this open, it's really dangerous to go for forward military buildings. You're mm, committing, yep. right, uh, to all of your military being forward as opposed to back at your own base. We take a look at the water, though, and the first fire galley out onto the map is that of Leary's. But another one in response here from Doubt means at least on the water battle, Doubt's going to win out in that trade. But Leary's just targeting the fishing ships, looking to do that eco damage. Yeah. And he's not, like, Liri doesn't even bother with that. Oh, he, he even managed to get... Wow, he's still Ooh. blocking it. Will he get a third he's one? Still, no way he pulls this off. Okay, oh, okay, okay. Wow. Ooh, that was about to be, like, wow, play wow, of wow. the tournament right there. Absolutely. One one health fire ship. Absolutely, because if you take a look, Liri is not on gold. So his intention was solely to get the fishing boats. He didn't in intend to win the, the water at all. 
And in the meantime, here's an arch range. Okay, I think what he was in originally planning is scouts from the back, and the two villagers were supposed to build an arch range in the front ah. to really m put on as much aggression as possible. And, uh, in, you know, interestingly, on maps like this, right, <coughs> that kind of aggression can sometimes see be seen as a form of defense, right? If I keep you at your base, uh, effectively, you do I've, d I've defended my own. And so uh, here we go, second barracks now for Doubt. I don't think this is much of a surprise being an Inca player uh, in that regard. But the question is, is he going to be able to get any units forward? First Eagle Scout in the queue. That militia that he produced, by the way, stopped after one. Once it got scouted, he realized, I don't need to invest further in this or man at arms. So yep. I think that was an intelligent transition there for Doubt. Two spearmen and a militia arriving at the wood line. Leary doesn't feel so threatened that he needs to go for any kind of quick walls just yet. And look at this walling from Doubt. Super conservative, straight to the TC. Yeah, very smart uh, play by both of them. The interesting thing now is we don't see archers, we see skirms from Leary. So skirms in general are not as scary as archers. And this is going to be a big problem now for Doubt. He just has to abort mm -hmm. the entire position. Yes. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, abort. <laughs> you got there. <laughs> I, I, was, yeah. I let it slide earlier, my friend. <laughs> I'm not Dave. You've got to remember, <laughs> yeah, you're casting yeah, with yeah. me, not Dave. <laughs> I also saw Chet. <laughs> I saw a lot of uh, people there. <laughs> I was like, did I use something wrong? <laughs> Dash didn't say anything. I, should, well, I wasn't going to call more attention to it, my friend. Oh, too funny. But hey, Scouts and Skirms is a really powerful army composition. I know you're making the point about how, you know, Skirms, in comparison to just their other ranged counterpart, aren't yep. that scary. But it's that combo of the Scouts and the Skirms that can be really terrifying for players to deal with. Yeah, you can. Okay, so we have uh, Scale Mail Armor for uh, Doubt, and that is such an important upgrade because that way he will have a much easier time to engage into the scout into the skirms and uh, yeah i feel like we don't see archers yet so i think the plan for leary is to long term go into jibettos leary's gonna run in ha 20 bucks says leary run past that house oh, okay, so. okay 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 yeah, well yeah. no now that the village yeah. is moving out <laughs> i saw it i was <laughs> like i was like doubt leary it will absolutely do that yeah, if yeah. you let him and uh intelligent extra house there to make the pathing just a little bit worse for him Leary's going to continue to rotate his scouts around, really looking for damage onto that gold. I mean, Mezzo Civ so gold dependent typically, right? Ooh, and so yeah. that's going to be one of the concerns for Doubt is where his gold positions are. And just generally on this map, there's so little gold available to you before you have to move out to those extra large piles that are stuck behind tree lines. Exactly. And uh, Mezzo is 100% dependent on, on gold. If they don't have access to gold, they're dead, right? Maybe except Incas as they have a uh, discount on their uh, food units. However, it's not going to cut it against the army composition uh, from Liri. And Liri, <coughs> interestingly enough, he has researched bloodlines. So mm. what I'm expecting him to do is he waits until Doubt is going up to Castle Age, and then he will jump onto those eagles with his upgraded units. Yeah, you talked about this earlier in, in all of their earlier sets, right? It's it's so much akin to their style. For Doubt, usually the one who's looking to get a smooth transition into the castle age as quickly as possible, and he just hit the resources for it with some of that market oh, use. Oh. The engagement on the front, though, military for Leary continuing to be produced, and he's got plenty of upgrades on these units. The skirmishers, though, not playing a part in all of this and could lend a little bit of damage, but ultimately the Eagles will be cleaned up and still five, six scouts on the field, five that is, with one more in the queue. It's going to be so tricky for Doubt now because he, if we take a look at the stone, there's none, typically, yeah. for him. And uh, that means he will not be capable of uh, building a tower to defend his gold. Uh, Eagle Scouts are produced super, super slow in uh, Fuel Age, so Doubt is going to be in a very tough position. However, Doubt has one on the field right now. One on the field, that's nothing. Right, he has three barracks, that's good for him, yes. However, it will take some time for him to get the mass and usually you want to reach the cast stage with a certain mass of, of eagles. So that's uh, not ideal for doubt. However, he's up to cast stage, one minute remaining. He's up to cast stage, does have 200 gold in the bank, right? The gold is the more reliant resource to get those eagle scouts out, but he still needs to maintain control over these two gold piles to keep that production up. You can see Leary understands that as well. He's gonna harass as much as he can while Doubt looks to make it to the Castle Age. 45 seconds and counting. Leary just clicks up. So again, map control for Leary, but faster castle time for Doubt. Doubt's done a pretty good job of not losing too much eco. Yes, four to two is the eco KD, but it's not the worst. Mesosivs can do a lot with a little in terms of you know small food numbers and just packing villagers onto gold. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think the most important thing right now for Leary is 
he gets a confirmation what's going on and now he has to retreat and he needs to ensure that there is no hole in his wall because he needs to delay the push from doubt for a couple of minutes and uh, in cast age he will 100% go for the knight uh, play because he's not on stone so we will not see jabatos from him it will be full knight play we see the confirmation here second stable being added and i love what lyra is doing he's even Stonewalling because he wants to play it super safe here, Dash. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. And the walls, I believe, are completely up, even all the way to the back wood line. So Doubt playing primarily melee units is really going to struggle to break through those walls, considering stone over palisades yep. and things like that. And that's after investing into Squires, into the Eagle Warrior upgrade. Now he's even looking for more damage against buildings. So it's full pedal to the metal here for Doubt. He's looking to run over his opponent. Even has researched Arson right now, so he wants to put as much pressure as possible. And uh, Lyrie currently is still uh, waiting for his cast age time, right? Uh, he has a good engagement against two villages and one eagle. He's going to win that one, obviously. But uh, two eagles are, you know, attacking a house, and Lyrie really needs to pay attention to that. Yeah, gonna have to have some repairs. Doubt attacking two sides of the base at one moment. But again, great positioning with those scouts from Lyrie. He's preventing that villager from getting forward. It's very clear that Doubt wants to get a forward position, possibly a siege workshop to start working away on those walls and really threaten uh, threaten Leary because all he's working with currently is those Eagle Warriors. Of course, the villagers now in the Castle Age, slightly stronger, right? Does have that uh, armor upgrade, and so that's going to allow him to come forward a bit, but now Knight's on the field. Ah, Doubt doesn't have the numbers. He keeps trickling units forward. That's a big issue for him, and uh, you know, we see a lot of low HP units from Leary, and that's the thing. With Mezzo, in general, I favorize uh, Doubt, but Leary is so good with pulling back the units. Him and Hera are the two which do it the best, I feel. And uh, I think Lyri will feel comfortable. Doubt really, the m m like the most important thing for Doubt right now is to get uh, army mass. Because in the low uh, amount army fight, it's going to be beneficial for uh, Lyri all the time. Okay, there we go. We see Doubt move out to, to the wood line because I was about to say, well, yes, important for him to get those numbers up. The next thing I'm worried about, Jordan, is again, Mezzo Civ running out of gold. And ultimately, Malians, they have so many options, right? Yeah. And and so there's, I, I, I think, more of an onus on Doubt to break through those wood lines and get himself more access to gold, also to get these walls up before some knights come streaming through into his base. And now, Perfect timing for Lyrie as well. He gets a confirmation that his opponent is <coughs> switching to the Spearman, and that's exactly what he needs to do. We see the Pikeman upgrade uh, incoming right now. You need to do that. You don't have the gold on the map uh, to uh, constantly produce those eagles right now. You don't have the access to that. So it will take some time, and I'm really curious how Lyrie wants to respond to it. Does he go for forward siege workshop? Does he transition to Jabetos? It looks like that. Okay, he sees the villagers, so he knows where Doubt has relocated to try and get himself some access to gold. Vodka, when we have a moment, if you could just tell me how much gold is left in Doubt's base. As we see the pikes pushing the knights back, we've got 460, 550 gold remaining. That's all he's going to have yep. to work with until he breaks through these, these wood lines. Yeah, we're talking about 11 eagles here, right? So that's not a big thing. No. And... Uh, it's such a big thing for Larry that he has scouted the right side. So I think the next two minutes are going to be very, very important here. Absolutely crucial here for Doubt to either find some damage or again, at least to get himself some more ground. We do see that TC coming down, so he's trying to lock down the wood line and the gold over there, but takes a horrible engagement in the process, gets absolutely cleaned up by the Knights, even into the pikemen. Leary happy to take that trade yeah. any day of the week. And what is he doing? He's pulling back the weak knights and the weak light calf to heal them up with the monk and then raid with the full HP ones, right? So he's happy with that. And uh, he uh, most likely he will prepare a castle here uh, as he has foreign stone or he's booming, I'm not sure. The thing is you can drop a castle forward and then all the effort from doubt is going to be denied. That's a really great point. So we'll see which one he decides to go for with those villagers on stone. Okay, that's a slightly better trade there for doubt under the TC fire and being able to use the more cost effective units like pikes trading in tonight's. Um, Th uh, that was a surprising fight by, by Lyri. Uh, honestly, there was no reason for him to take that fight, and uh, Doubt very happy with that one. And uh, also, these two knights, oh, they were so 
on the verge of dying here. Oh! Oh! oh, oh I, he, he did the thrust! I, uh, he missed. Why was he not hitting? I don't know. Yeah, that's the Fire accuracy that of the spearman. Yeah. yeah. Send him back to boot camp. <laughs> All right, but here we go. Once again, another solid trade here for Doubt. So while he has been forced off of the majority of his gold units, he at least has the right counter unit on the field for what Leary is making. Now it's up to Leary to find the answer. He's going to go for that second TC with the with the stone that he picked up. Or rather, did he just buy it? No, that's sold food. Um, but a second TC for him, a third TC now for Doubt in the back. So Doubt going to continue to boom. And at this rate, actually, it's starting to look like he might get access to that gold back. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm, I'm surprised a little bit Leary is not on stone anymore. And we see another engagement. This should be very, very good for Leary because um, monks are there. Uh, he has a little bit more and also stronger units here. So Doubt has to retreat and uh, abort the situation. Yeah, and at the end of the day, the pikemen also only have, you know, a forging and the first armor upgrade, right? They're not even fully upgraded at that. TC, while it is able to range those knights, has no fletching, so it's not going to be terribly destructive. And Leary takes yet another fight where he will come out ahead in terms of the numbers remaining. Did lose a few very valuable units, though, in the knights, but has the map control. Yep, we have 16 military units against the seven of Doubt. So Doubt is in a very tough position, and I don't really understand why he's so eager in fighting, because it is so much easier to have efficient fights if you're the Eagle-Pike combination, if you have more, right? 40 mm. Pike Eagle uh, against 30 Knights is going to be better than 10 Eagle uh, Pike against, uh, I don't know, uh, 8 Knights, right? right. So uh, I, I don't really understand that move too much, and... Uh, Larry is just, uh, the only thing I miss from him right now is the Siege Workshop forward because that way he can uh, mix in Scorpions, Maganels, uh, really put the pressure on the oh, on yeah. the TC and then, you know, Doubt is paralyzed then. Yeah, Manganel or two, a Scorpion or two to deal with that infantry would be uh, fantastic for Leary, but either way, he thinks he can get it done with just the cavalry units and the monks. Throwing away a couple light cav to pull the pikemen away as he snipes villagers. I love that movement there by Leary to make sure he does a little bit of damage and gets most of his knights out safely. Yeah, beautiful execution. Uh, also was splitting uh, with those light cav. Uh, to circumvent the, the pikemen here from Doubt and was able to pick off the monk and the monk is just the most valuable unit in this case for Doubt. And we see a... Oh! Uh, do I like it? I personally don't like it. I don't I found either. it interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, against other Mesosifs, yes. However, against Incas, not so much because they have access to Slingers. However, with Knight's long, bow, uh, long uh, swords, maybe it is fine. Yeah, it is an interesting play, as you say. I'm, I think I'm with you in that I don't like it, and there's maybe a few more surefire options. But regardless, Leary is still in the driver's seat when it comes to the military, and Doubt's going to take another engagement right outside of his secondary TC, and it's not going to go well for him overall. Yes, I recognize he's trading pikes into knights, and that can feel good from an efficiency standpoint. But at a certain point, those numbers just aren't working in your favor. We see 76 pop to 95 pop on the other side. It's a solid advantage for Leary while the villager count stays dead even. Yeah, and the thing is, before that fight, uh, or when the fight took place and was finished 10 seconds after, plus two infantry mm -hmm. uh, armor for Doubt was uh, coming in. So uh, bad timing here for, for him as well. And now, you know, Doubt, no access to gold right now. The only thing he has is one relic. And that's it. And Lyra is doing such a good job in uh, constantly raiding, so Doubt will not have access to gold. And therefore, we will not really see uh, Slingers uh, on the field, and therefore, long swords uh, are amazing. That's a very good point, right? You're happy to make the long swords as long as your opponent can't get into that counter unit. You keep your opponent off gold, and you've achieved exactly that. He has opened technically one tile of gold, but that would be so inefficient to try to work yeah. with. You need to get through a few more trees, and, yeah. and in that time, Leary has almost broken through to the gold himself. Ah, this is uh, looking like Leary is, uh, you know, uh, closer and closer to taking the deciding fight here. And I think, Dash, we are about to see it. Yeah, the, the value of those monks has been massive over the course of the game with the healing, the conversions, and now another fight uphill for Doubt. Pikes into Knights, and that one's not going to go well. Ultimately, the Pikes get cleared up. But while all this is happening, Yes, you have military advantage. Vil's still dead even. It's one of those things where it's like, yes, Leary's winning the fights, but you're still not quite seeing the the ending moment. This may be it, though, underneath this, that second TC. Yeah, I think uh, Doubt is 
doesn't have any hopes anymore uh, to come back here. Uh, he's losing so many villagers. Uh, a lot of idle time is uh, being caused here by Larry's uh, army presence. And he's just doing such a good job in retaining his monks, healing the uh, units. And in the meantime, it's not like, as you said, one TC. That's the most outcastle oh, I have ever seen in my he life. He wants to entertain us. Yeah, it will, you know, it, look, that is the reality of the state of this game. And again, I think while we love to joke about it, it's where Doubt actually is so smart about the game. He knows that, like, the likely a losing play, right? 95% yeah. chance losing, but it is also his only 5% chance of yeah. coming back in the game. So yeah. he goes for it, commits all of his villagers to it. Leary says, yes, I love to attend the buffet of villager <laughs> lives. The castle does go up, which will force Leary back. I wonder if Doubt thinks it was enough, though, to keep him in. I'm actually surprised the castle goes up here, but you know, I, I, I think th that's untypical for Doubt. Um, I, I think, you know, Doubt, he has a little bit of uh, experience with Wonder Rays, right? And uh, you, you could tell that 80% of his economy yeah. was forced to work there at building the castle. <laughs> I would love to see worker efficiency, but also look at what it cost him. Just moments ago, minutes ago, they were dead even in villagers. Yeah. He now has a 20 villager deficit. That yeah. was the cost of getting that castle up onto the field. And even still, he will lose his secondary TC and likely access to that gold because the castle doesn't quite range it. We do have Kamiyoks finally out onto the field, yeah. but no gold left to produce with. Very little food in the bank, completely strapped for resources while Leary still has a few to work with. Yeah, and uh, you, you can only... Uh, deal so much here with the limited access uh, with, of, of gold and Larry is just playing his, his dream game right now. Uh, raiding with Lightcalf in the meantime, uh, you know, raiding also on the gold. Oh. Uh, Larry's everywhere. In the meantime, he's expanding. He has a 22 villager lead. Uh, there are so many things going yeah. in his direction and uh, also Arsene is in second um, upgrade of the infantry. Wow! Massive wow. donation coming in. And Troby at that. 40. I actually think that's the second massive donation Troby has thrown in throughout this series. So thank you very much Oof. for the donations to NAC5, everybody. We appreciate your your support. Absolutely. As Leary looks to close this one out in 3-1 fashion, start his Swiss stage out on the right foot. He's completely pr uh, pressuring uh, Doubt out of this game, denying him any opportunity to pick up gold, those important resources that Doubt would need if he had any chance to come back in this game. It's Pikes versus everything at this point. Yeah, uh, that sums it up perfectly. Pikes against everything. We see every once in a while some Kamiyuks, but even them, even though they are okayish against infantry, especially if you have uh, certain numbers, it's never going to be healthy for him. No gold access. Uh, he has seven on stone right now. That's it. And uh, yeah, the the game, uh, you know, is getting into a state where Liri is just getting further and further and further ahead here and. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised Doubt is still in the game, <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> to be quite I'm honest. A little you know? surprised as a little well. Bit. <laughs> uh, again, maybe he feels like uh, he hasn't lost. I mean, his vill his villager count has not necessarily dropped that much, right? He's been hovering around the 65 mark. The problem is that Leary's has continued to grow, yeah. right? And that yeah. really is it. And at the end of the day, uh, Leary will continue to throw units, I say, quote unquote, throw units away because he still has 33 military to eight. But he's yep. happy to sacrifice his military for Doubt's villagers at this point. Yeah, um, I mean, what what is the finishing blow right now? Uh, I'm thinking for, for I mean, uh, <laughs> like forward castle. I don't know because we both thought it should have happened already. I mean, yeah. my my thinking actually was going to be scout or like light cav raids, right? If you can get yeah. onto those farms in the back, maybe you convinced out that you know he doesn't have a chance. Maybe it's just take out two barracks and you've eliminated his uh, his productions production buildings. But at that, look at this, a step off the gas here for Leary, yeah. and maybe doubt feels like. What is this? A lot of villagers moving forward for another castle. 600 oh. stone in the bank, but this will be spotted. The long swords are going to take the battle against the Kamiyooks at the front. The light cav comes sweeping into the back to look to kill the villagers. The villagers don't care. They're running a marathon to the other side. Nope, instead they're going to turn tail. Hey, we've got upgrades. Let's fight. I know what's... Oh, okay, I know. I know the answer. Viper has the last set. Doubt knows it. That's why he stays in the game. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to tire yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. The GG ends up being called. Aliri will get it done in 3-1 fashion. A lot of love shared between the two players. Yeah. Uh, a beautiful set. Uh, the thing is, both players have played on a very high level. Uh, it's not like I saw it and uh, one was slipping. N no, both super, super um, solid. And it was just the execution from Liri was top-notch. And it is just, 
you cannot practice against it because no. no one does it as he does, right? No, it was phenomenal play. Again, a couple things in there that really I think uh, could have been the difference maker. One is the v forward villagers actually from Leary scouting that initial militia. And yep. even though he wasted some time of the villagers by coming forward and then retreating back, it, it kind of put doubt in a position where it felt like he was even second guessing, right? He goes, okay, yep. I'm done. I produce one village or one militia and I'm going to move on to something else. And then the understanding of the importance of gold for a mezzo sieve, right? Yep. Uh, mezzo sieves are crazy strong when they have that gold access. And that's why so many players do love them, doubt in particular. Yep. But on a map like that, where you only have four total piles of gold to deal with before you need to find another way around it makes it a scary prospect. Yeah, I, f I feel like with Mezzo on that map, you put yourself on a timer because you're expecting that uh, the Eagle aggression early cast stage is going to win you the game or give you such an advantage that you have enough time to transition to get the gold on the side. Uh, so I'm not the biggest fan personally on, on Mezzo on this uh, on this map. And uh, we saw Liri punishing that uh, perfectly. Yeah, also the, the fire ship play. Yeah, uh, ooh, with the with yeah, the with yeah, the fishing yeah. ship blocking the one health fire ship securing two fishing ship kills was also pretty epic Perfect. to give him an advantage. I believe we've got Leary set up on the couch for an interview. Uh, is it me handling it? Does Jordan? Do you want to go have that? You, you want you me go. to do it? Yeah, I'll yeah. go dive in. Okay, here we go. We'll go see Leary over on the couch. Well, my dude, congrats first of all. Thank you. Three one, three one. How you feeling generally after that? I'm feeling pretty good. I like the setup. You know, it's a difference between uh, playing on 200 ping, like from home, yeah. or uh, on zero ping. So I like it. Okay, heck yeah. Talk to me about uh, this series and what your expectations were, because uh, one of the major differences, obviously, uh, NAC5 versus NAC4 is uh, is doubt as one of the additions alongside freaking Andy. But otherwise, we have eight of the players who were here last time around. Um, with doubt, strategically. How do you feel you match up against him? Uh, you know, we had a, we have a long history. I think that's known. Um, he got me in the past. You know, it's always up and down. Usually, it always goes to the last game. And with each series, with each game, I learn something. So I'm always happy to play him, even though he's not like my favorite opponent. But yeah, today it worked out pretty well, and um, looking forward for more. Okay, talk to me about map number one, because Jordan and I were theorizing sieves, and we actually got both of your sieve picks incorrect. Were you expecting goths out of him on yeah, this? You were, you were. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of hunters, so it makes sense. Okay. And he likes to go man at arms, right? So it's a perfect map for that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, ultimately, in this one, it felt pretty smooth for you, I, I have to say. The scout helped a lot. <laughs> I was going to say, we, we we called out that half L scout. I think you sniped, like, I five or six different skirms. Yeah, with he, that, he, was with that one scout. he was the hero of the game, for sure. Um, this map, I mean, obviously, it wasn't a surprise to us that you performed well on it, because open maps where micro-intensive play is going to be important feels like you have the edge. Um, the rest of the draft, though, like... Uh, in your approach, obviously this was the admin pick. Is that something that you particularly target? You feel like that um, maybe that narrative is overblown for you that you you know you it's only so micro, much about the archers. open maps and that micro and archers. Uh, I mean, I like my archers. Don't get me wrong; sure. they are my favorite unit. If they uh, let you play it, you oh, play of course. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. thing is, everyone lets me play them nowadays because they're just bad in most maps and these open maps. Like you don't really want to be on on mobile units, so there's that. But in some maps, they still work, you know? So I'm happy to play them whenever I feel like they are good. Okay, talk to me about um, talk to me about this one, game two, because it was an interesting situation where you have the initiative, earlier fletching, but doubt ends I up getting... I thought I have him here, actually. But we did, too. Uh, okay, I'm glad to know that you thought the same, because yeah. we both were essentially saying, like, oh, Leary's going to do a lot of damage yeah, here. Yeah, backfires. Okay, okay. And so then when you take a loss like that militarily, mm. like, how do you work as a player through the process of coming back? Like, if you feel like, okay, I just gave up an advantage, what yeah. what became your thought process about how you need to change your play here? Uh, well, the situation was that he's up, what, three, four villagers, as we can see. Also, he's Malay. He has more, more fishing ship. I know that as well. Mm -hmm. So I have to do something, right? Otherwise, he could just pull the head. So I had to do, be creative. That's why I went for the bottom leg. And yeah, that was my approach. Yeah, I mean, this game, I have to say, while Doubt still ended up with the victory, it was such an impressive defense from you. Uh, the Bombard Cannons, I mean, he had six trebuchets, man, and you, were able to kept that, you, and you kept that castle position for yeah. so long, it almost looked like you were going to be able to, to strike back. Mm. 
Um, but I think ultimately, what would you say was the defining factor here for Dow? Was it that early engagement where he got the advantage, or was it more about his map control with the castle positioning and such in the middle game? I think both a little bit. Like obviously, if I win the first fight there, then I played way easier because I don't have to invest that much. I don't, I don't have to go for the bottom. I can go for light cap myself. Mm -hmm. And kind of losing initiative in the middle, I guess. But yeah, those two things combined make basically me get, me lose the game. So, mm -hmm. you know, one, two mistakes, as small as they seem. can. Oh, you're, the this game. is it, man. Yeah. Oh my God, I was losing my mind. You almost got the snipe on the castle foundation yeah. as well. He deleted it. I was like going for it. Yeah, it was impressive. That's the thing. We were surprised and we had to check the, the stone count and he yeah. did end up getting the delete. I thought the fight would go better, but I guess he had a lot of Arbalest. Yeah, he had a couple of sneaky halberdiers in yeah, there as well, right? Which which makes it difficult. And just ultimately, I think his Q, right? His military yeah, Q is pretty, well. pretty insane. Mm -mm. But also again, this, nearby. this was a situation where we were like, admittedly, we thought maybe the game should have been over almost like yeah. eight to ten minutes in-game mm. sooner. Yeah. Um, and so to me, that speaks to your ability to defend and, and play moments like this where you've got just two bombard cannons absolutely mm. doing work. Yeah. Even on the Arbalest as well. <laughs> Got like two free hits on those. But yeah, ultimately it wasn't enough. Okay, so Doubt takes this one. You're sitting at one and one. What was also really interesting is you with the map choice elected to go to his home map next. Just where, what's the thought process there? When you have both of your home maps available, you decide to go to his? Uh, I change it up every now and then, you know? So it's just like, uh, you know, I like to play all maps. So, and it's one-one as well after this one. So it's like... We have to play one of his home maps if I want to win, because mm. he's going to pick it anyway, so I might as well go for it and kind of save my strats, you know? Gotcha. I, okay. I get it. And keep him guessing, right? True. For future opponents True. as well. Um, I mean, obviously, the we were watching a lot of highlights of this game, again, because of how well you were able to extend it. Ultimately, Doubt will get the victory. Um, from here, we go to a very open map. Um, this one was, uh, I think, interesting because Khmer, uh, funnily enough, we looked at statistics. It's 3-0 on the map. Um, yes. Uh, on qualifier, though. Right? On qualifiers, yes. But Tato was 2-0 with it. So okay. uh, I was just curious what you thought of the Khmer pick, because that was a little unexpected to us, just the statistic mm -hmm. itself. We felt like Japanese, obviously, stronger on hybrid maps. Yeah. They're pretty good, because like, you don't need a barracks, so you have like that wood bonus that gives you the extra fish, the extra economy you need early on, so you can compete with any Sith. And obviously, the farm eco is still great, and it's an open map, so they're pretty viable. I like them as well. Okay. What do you feel is difference maker here in this one? Because ultimately, it felt like both of you found moments of damage to each other, right? Him getting into your wood line, yeah, but you with the ranged fine. units controlling his a little bit and getting the better of him on water, ultimately. Yeah, I think water was the difference. Like, uh, Kamura can't really compete there, because if he goes full scouts, then he doesn't have eco for anything else. And obviously, me with the cheaper lumber camps, mining camps, it's easier for me to compete water. And also, my fishing ships work faster, so... That was the key. Right, and I think you did a phenomenal job expanding the docks, right? Just yeah, making yeah. sure that the, the fishing ships stay efficient. Okay, I want to know, first of all, this play with the with the fire ship was just nuts, that you somehow secured two, almost a third one yeah. blocking. Mm. I mean, the fish was already over, so I was like, it's not that important, but I still don't want to have him <laughs> for, let free fish for like free, you know? And the highlight play. I mean, look at this. We were like, he's going to get the third. I was about to send another I one know. in there, but he realized so, so he close. Might as well. So close. Uh, what do you think of, um, or rather, actually, let me ask you about the two villagers you sent forward. What, what were you, well, actually, maybe you don't want to tell me what you were <laughs> intending to do if, it, if it's going to be something that you, and so oh, I respect if you don't want to tell. We know, were just, just scouting the area. Curious, okay, yes, you know, yes, so. yes, yes, yes. The village, maybe classic a little support to my scout. Uh, okay. Yeah, you never know. But what, how did you, how do you feel even that scouting information affected the game because he built the one militia, stopped building militia after you scouted it with those villagers. Do you feel like that information was more valuable for him or in a sense like almost more detriment or more valuable for you or more detrimental for him in a sense? Um, I kind of knew he'd, he could always get one or two militias because like my other arms commitment is super heavy and I can just wall in my rest. There's nothing to hit. So I thought it was like kind of risky for him to go for that. So I wasn't really that surprised. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to add a range anyway against the, against the Spears. So it worked out well. I mean, Malians have been a very popular pick on this map, of course, just because of their di diversity, you know, discount on wood buildings and, and whatnot. Um, but what do you make of the Mesosiv pick? Obviously, Mesosivs can be very scary, but it feels to a degree 
uh, like a weird pick just because of the gold reliance and the yeah. lack of gold on this map, which we kind of saw with your control here late that you could abuse. Yeah, it's kind of obvious what they're going to do, right? They're going to go all in, but you have to go all in as well. So it's like all in against all in. And if you take them off gold, you know they can only do one unit, which is pikes. So it's kind of predictable in that sense to play against them. So if you know what's coming, it's obviously easier to play against. But it was still close, you know. So it's one, two mistakes from me, and I could easily lose that game. Yeah, absolutely. But it is going to end in 3-1 fashion. Now, uh, no secret, that last NAC, you made it all the way to the finals and fell just short against Hera. I have to assume that taking the dub here uh, for you is the goal. What's your confidence level uh, in that endeavor? Uh, it's pretty good. I mean, I'm feeling very comfortable with the setup. Uh, I love to play on zero ping. The more micro intense, the better. And yeah, you know, this time the Burgundian unique tech is nerfed, so. <laughs> oh my god, could you imagine if we ended up in a BO9? Run it back. You running like it back against Hera. Ninth game again. Oh, uh, and the button. It all yeah. comes down to the button. Yeah, we won't have that this time. I mean, it wasn't only decided for that, right? No, but, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, new tournament, new chance, and uh, liking my chances. Obviously, it will be hard, but we'll give it my all. Sweet. All righty, man. Well, I'm not going to keep you too much longer. Congratulations on the 3-1 victory. I believe we have one more set to go. I'm going to hand things over to Nilly, who's waiting for a co-caster that maybe I'll go run and get. And you could put the mic. Nilly's soloing it. Take it away, Nilly. Soloing it, and I'm, I'm not sure what's sicker. Uh, my my voice right now or the support that we are getting from all of you out there. I think we already broke like $6,000 of donations. Um, I'm actually feeling 100%. I'm actually feeling really good, but you hear that my voice is not really uh, working together with me. Who is working with us, though, is Surfshark, the official VPN provider of NAC. And give me some more space here as well. I like price pool at 55,000 and we can only get to those crazy price pools because of sponsors like Surfshark. And as you can see, it is up to 20, uh, it's six months for free if you go for the NAC 5 deal and 83% off. You can read some reviews and obviously you can using a VPN, browse privately, protect your identity online and find the best prices. We had it booking flights for NSC, for example. I had different prices compared to hard. We are looking at kind of the same website and maybe it's a bit of the time. Uh, it's kind of interesting how that works. And for example, some people try to buy games cheaper while using a VPN. You can block off some ads and some malware and Trauby goes absolutely wild. Uh, shout out to you. I saw the 400 euros, 370 euros, and now the 400 dollars. Um, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it feels very likely that tomorrow we will already be completely even for me, and that we are then going to put every single dollar into the price pool. But we will continue with the Surfshark information here as well. Some people and some VPNs work this way that you get the VPN but can only use it for one single device while well, the production is giving me back my screen, please. And is nodding and with Surfshark though, you can use unlimited devices. As you can see, you can use it on your phone, multiple laptops, your PC at home, and it also protects you. It is just so much better and gives you more security in the internet. Ad free experience on a lot of websites as well. And just safer if you, for example, do online banking there as well. And you can choose the servers, over 3,000 servers in more than 100 countries all around the world if you want to see local sports, for example. NSC5 deal, you know the place. Down below is the link. And that's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Sorshak, for the official VPN sponsorship. And now we will have the next set coming up. It will be the Viper against Heart, but only after we have some in-between entertainment. Mr. Dave will hold your hand with some bounce. Are we live? We're good? We're good to go? Right camera and everything? Thank you, everyone. Uh, great set that just went by, and now we have an even better game here. Some of you might remember it from the previous NAC. We have bounce. I've gathered our competitors. Oh, you were there. Well, I've gathered <laughs> our competitors, so it's going to be myself. It's going to be Tato. Do you have anything to say? Uh, doubt. OK. It's going to be Tristan, <laughs> No. T90, <laughs> and we have Andy here, a first-time Bounce competitor. Ooh. So Let's the go. way that this works, for anyone not familiar at home, we give a number, and then we have to bounce the ball on the table that specific number of times. Now, 
I'm going to do an example one bounce that I might fail here. So there we go. There's one. We bounced it once. Wait, don't we work our way up, yeah, right? That's your work, Viper. Okay, okay. Yeah. I thought you were saying, so don't, like, you don't can just fail. go out of order. Don't okay. fail. Well, that was three. What are you doing? Okay. <laughs> Andy, first don't time. Fail. Nice. nice. <laughs> good, good. Okay. So now we have two. So things get a little bit more complicated here as I'm going to fail. Yeah, this is the, no way. Ooh. Oh, oh. Okay. Close one. Good. Close one. Please don't let me fail. Uh, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. You okay. could tell you could tell he's new. You could okay, tell he's two, new. He two is good. Night. I'm two. nervous, man. Three. Yeah, who wants to I'm start nervous. with three? No, Yo, you start. Just what start. Are you, no. you start. Oh, okay. We stay in order. You are the beast here. Wish me luck, Chad. You are the master. You are the doubt of bounce. You see? Ooh, that okay. was that was clutch. <laughs> so much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Let's go. Right. Okay, oh. Andy. All right, Andy. Andy. Let's have practiced. Oh. oh! Andy's out. Andy's out. Okay. I'm gone. Now we have four. He's 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 new. It's fine. He's new. It's all right. That's pretty good. You still want? The, he still wants his ball. Okay. Go first? No, no. You just no, right. go ahead, Dave. Go ahead. Just okay, start. Four is tough. Four is tough. Four. Okay, but four is tough. <sighs> oh! oh okay, okay. No pressure, Tato. Nope. Five. Oh. Five. Got that. All right, all right. Miss. Oh, yikes. Yeah, you did like nice. me. Okay, <laughs> okay, 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 that was a tatty I was so confident when I saw yours. Okay, we, we, we repeat. Do you want to start at two this time? What? Or do you want to go one? No, no we, we all failed. Five. So we yeah, we all failed. We, oh, had to we all failed, yeah. Back in, right? okay. No, you're not back in. You're not back in, no. I don't even know the rules of the game. I'm hosting. You failed all but three. If we all miss that one, four. we need to repeat. Four. 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 So we do four now. Again? No. Oh. oh, God. That's even worse. That, oh. that, 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 that I went to like. There's no way. Nah, Tristan will fail. Boom. Oh, God. The wow, cast. you guys, it's so silent over here. Oh, God. He, he's good? Guy can't even qualify for his own tournament, but <laughs> yeah. suddenly bounce champion. Yeah, well, he's playing once. <laughs> Listen, this is my dream, all right? You, you lead it off. You lead right. it off. Start with two. Two. Yeah, two. One is two. I two. failed one last year. <laughs> I, bounced, I bounced it and it went off the wall and came down and hit the table. <laughs> all right. And then Nilly said it counted. Right, so, right. we doing two? But you need to do two. Two. Okay. Yeah, two. Yeah. I was worried. All right, Andy. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, he really... From, from, from the distance, yeah. huh? Like, shh. I, I will get closer. Uh-oh. No! No! Oh, Tato. Tati, man. No! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> We're terrible. <laughs> Alright, so three? What is this, Dave? And you're No pressure, a Andy. T90 is a tryhard. <laughs> nice, yeah, nice. Cool. Okay, three for both. Tristan for four. Again. Oh, no, I missed that it. Was Andy close. for four. Oh! No. Okay. No. Okay, Did one repeat? more. Repeat. Can't let him win two times in a row. Oh, in, in the corner, clutch. Nah, that was bad. Three. Now let me let me go for five at least. You know, just yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did you fail? No way. Oh, that was actually that was close. That was close. All right, Almost. GG. GG. Do we okay? Should, yeah. should I get kicked I, out? I to think let to continue this on because I have a signal from Nilly. <laughs> <laughs> what is the highest amount that, we, that you think we can get for bounce? If you were to call out a number, oh, seven. Actually, be able to call it and do it. Yeah, seven. Okay, so let's do Nine. it this way. Nine. Whoever can call out the highest number and complete it will win. Okay. okay. Seven. Seven. Huh? Okay. Go, go ahead, seven. Yeah, 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 go ahead, seven. You, you called it up but first. Go ahead. Go, go. Everyone says first. Yeah, everyone says to say the number right. first. Uh, yeah, otherwise, it's... So what's, what's yours? So I said nine, nine? which is not smart because... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we can't count nine, I guess. It's just yeah. bouncing so fast. I would go for eight. Eight? <laughs> There's not a difference. All right, then. I guess I'm ten. All right. What? <laughs> all right, well, go ahead, seven. Let's start. Let's seven. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Someone should just say one. <laughs> We're going to be at this all day. Where is the slow motion? Six, oh! I'm beast. Oh, damn. Okay. I did it. That's all with the seven. I cannot do three, but. <laughs> oh, oh, he wait, got eight. Oh. Did he say eight? Yeah. What? 
I did it. Let's what in the world? What the? Well, you're nine. Uh, no, or you're ten. I'm not. I'm nine. I'm not. Nine, seven, nine, okay, seven. Okay. Did I this would, nine, oh my sick. God, that's incredible. I don't want to ruin this. Did you fail now? Whew. <laughs> I'm, pray, I'm nervous. But <laughs> no, 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 that doesn't count. That does not count. There was wind. That window's open. That does not count. <laughs> Someone is nervous. No. That's no, 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 no. Oh, all right. Okay, so right now, Andy's leading with eight. I need ten. Do you do make ten, you win. Yeah. Well, this is... Ten is hard, though. Ten is... We have never yeah. get to a ten. You locked into that seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They, they looked confident. Seven again. Uh, oh, let's go. Clutch for Andy. Clutch. Oh, damn. Okay. Well, give it for another tournament. I mean... Hmm. <laughs> I be, I've been notified that uh, we need to d delay just a little bit longer. So, okay. do you do you want to do a tournament? Do you want to bring on a celebrity shot? Is there anyone else that you would love to see bounce? Doubt. Doubt. But where is Doubt? Yeah, where I don't is think he's here. Doubt, doubt is not here. I think he left. And Jordan is in love now with that. So yeah, Jordan and Dash. Are, <laughs> Jordan uh, and Dash. Dash are are romantic together. conversation now. We cannot. <laughs> are together. Okay, vodka. So, vodka. He's always observer. Now he needs to. Yeah, step vodka. Out. Vodka. vodka you need to step out of the darkness and come into the light. Do you want to do another round of standard? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I will give my shot to vodka, because I know you he's have good. more bolts. No, no, no. <laughs> he's, he... <laughs> okay. okay. So us four. Us four. Yep. Here we go. All right. Standard bounce starting from two once again. T90 has won twice. It's surely a fluke. Did I miss two last time? Oof. Okay, good. I missed good. two last time. Two, good. Six. Vodka. Go. Thoughts? Oh. Wow. Easy. Let's go for three. Let's go. Okay, all That's right. Such an <laughs> athlete response. <laughs> 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 That's such right, an athlete me. response. Okay, good. You are good. All right. Good. You are good. Three. Tato. Good. All right. Okay. All right. Three. We're getting better. Uh, Vodka. That's four. Stick to ah. observing, bro. Stick yeah, yeah. to observing. <laughs> Andy, nice, good. Nice, nice. Okay. Okay. All right. Start again. Rating champion. All right, four. Oh. Oh, the 90s doing it. Man, he's oh. good. All right. Just All right. good. One, two, three, That's five. four. Uh, five. Aye, aye. Come on. All right, Tato, you're out. Andy? Good. Andy's all right, all right. I like T90, it. T90, Andy, like it. once five, again, five. finals. I like it. Hey, Andy, who won our matchup in ranks last week? I can't <laughs> oh, <I'm> he's <laughs> been waiting for this, dude. <laughs> oh, he made it. Let's okay, go. T90 oh, with the let's five. Let's go, let's go. T90 with the five. Andy? Uh, oh, it's four. I can't do, we, do I get a trophy? You've won. Is there a prize pool? Three times. Is there any recognition? You should retire from casting, <laughs> man. I tell you what. If you call out one and you make it, we will all cheer for you. Since you didn't get one. A <laughs> that, that's a nilly joke <laughs> that only he can pull off. <laughs> it needs to be at least higher than five. And the higher it is, the louder we'll cheer. You're not, I'm going to get zero cheers. Let's be honest. Okay. Um... Well, I just did five, right? So yeah. let's do six. Okay, let's do six. Okay, let's do okay six. so that's a moderate clap. No. That's four. That was, that was bad. That was what bad. do we do with, with this guy? Why do we clap, know. Dave? I don't know. Okay, ten. Ten. <laughs> I mean, that I was eight. actually the way. But I think legally you have to go off the outside of the table. Oh, well, I didn't know that. So I guess yeah, it's like yeah, a fault. Yeah, yeah. It's like just a fault. It again. It's like yeah, a fault. Yeah, ten, yep. ten, ten. That's like 15, leading? bro. It's okay, hold on. Yeah, from it's this side, of course. It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely the, the table. 100% yeah. the table, yeah. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, my God. This is what record? What record? Is it? Yeah. But it also is my third attempt, so I feel like that shouldn't count. Yeah, like I'm that pretty sure I've got it. If I like know 10 and Gee, then man. I actually did it, then I'd feel good. Yeah. But like, yeah, Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. All right, well, that was a fantastic game of bounce. Um, we'll have more of those, right? We will have more of those. Unfortunately, I don't think we have Connect Four this time around. Yeah. Ooh. But what we do have oh, is don't let either vodka ping play. pong, don't let vodka play, or a mini game of pool. So you decide. 
I think I don't know how this works. Though. <laughs> I think I think the mini game of pool is is. Tato, are you much. better at ping pong? Okay. No, you're not good at ping pong. No, no. Vodka is a god at ping pong. Yeah, that's why you're the one to play against vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I know what is coming. <laughs> All right, vodka, come here. Oh. Ho, ho. I would challenge him. Okay, Andy. Andy okay, good. let's go. Andy's good. That's good. Okay. Because I'm terrible. All right, so Andy, is our angle good? Vodka, our angle's good. Okay. Save the serve. Mini though. ping Don't pong. Right away. First to. 11. What do you want to do? First to 11? Okay. 11? Yeah. First to 11. Vodka versus Andy. Oh, yo, one, yo, yo. one oh vodka. No, it wasn't a serve. That was for, that was oh. for serve. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Vodka's signature serve. One, two, three. Oh my God. <laughs> They're insane. All right, dude. one They're nothing insane. Andy. <laughs> Zero two. Okay, all right. Zero two, Andy. Oh. Okay. Zero three. Or no. He's been observing Four. all day. Three one, yeah, three one. Okay, okay. Vodka with another point there. Two three. Ah. Four two. Andy with the serve now. Vodka's really getting into it. You can tell Vodka, by how he far really apart he sp spreads. <laughs> He's ready, man. He's so ready. What's the score? 5-2. Five, two. Five, two. Okay, Vodka. Thank God I did not play this. Vodka with the patented lean <laughs> to side to side doesn't move his hands at all. Ah! <laughs> and the serve fails him. Oh, no. If you're at home and you play ping pong, I don't think you appreciate how difficult how, it is. How yeah, it's very difficult. To play on this table. And it's exciting. You want to play, and then you play up against vodka, and then and you, you miss play your the life. thing every or single time. Or Andy, apparently. Yeah. Well, there's a point for vodka. Okay. Good serve. The comeback is on. Oh, beautiful. And Andy misses that. All right, one. six, seven. Six, seven. Vodka really leaning into the shots here. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I don't think vodka can deal with Dave's comments right now. I've only ever played against him. I've never watched him waddle back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever said a sentence like that before? I've never watched him waddle back I've, and forth. I say sentences <laughs> I've never said before every single day, dude. You know better than oh that. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. What a volley on a tiny table. Match point? Match point. Oh, uh, what's, hey, the, what's score the score now? 10-8. Eight. 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 All right. Uh, ah, GG. Andy wins. GG. Well played. Okay, I think, I think we might be ready soon. Nilly, are we, are we good to go? Okay. Okay. So your casters for the next set are going to be T90 and Hera, I believe, and it's going to be Viper against Hart. Thank you, everyone, for staying tuned. It should be a great set, last set of the day. Thanks again for being here, and we'll pass it to well, they are, they are, that are they're, not there. They aren't really there, right? Yeah. T90 was just standing next to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, the plan was to have me and T90, yeah. but uh, yeah, my, my voice isn't really allowing it right now, so uh, we are going to replace me with Hera. Luckily, he's stepping up. Uh, he right now is trying to place beautiful farms. Mm. together with Liri and like they're alternating trying to do something maybe we can see some behind the scenes there how the practice room is like all um, filled with like people trying to get that but Hera is now standing up so they can discuss the draft and yeah hopefully I will be back with a better voice tomorrow obviously uh, M Memp will be arriving in roughly two hours as well so can join our casting crew um, yeah you can see Doubt probably analyzing his wrecks. Mr. Yo tweeting, oh man, it's the best time ever at NAC. Uh, Roxy looking at the chat as well. And you can see those are unplaced farms there on Hera's screen. Tedo now discussing strategies. Nilly said, Goth are bad. And those are the farms. Still some nervous looks there. Tedo and, and enjoys his beverage. And Doubt not that happy. Um, oh God, he is a living meme. He is a living meme. Mm. Uh, 
isn't it beautiful? All those people around, and yeah, obviously Doubt is a bit sad right now. Uh, you're in a better mood for losing 3-0. He's constantly wearing his jacket because he's basically going to smoke every 15 minutes. Leary sitting down, enjoying that one. T90 setting himself up as well. And that is the Viper and Hart. We just had one of the weirdest things that I've ever seen. So why we had to do bounce for so long was because we have two... Oh, thank you, Jeremis. Uh, we have two cables, uh, monitor cables, going into PCs of the players. One, obviously, to that they can see the, um, the game, and one that we can grab this from production. And what happened is we had the display port in, and the moment we plugged in the HDMI cable, it says I'm not recognizing the, um, the display port anymore. So that was really weird. We tried to turn it off and on again. Didn't change anything. I sent my third and fourth best man. Couldn't do enough. And that's why we had to do bounce a bit longer than I thought. And yeah, my voice being like this permanently would be uh, uh, funny. Um, where can I buy those cushion covers? Uh, I think official Microsoft shop or Xbox shop. Uh, they sent that to me for like, I think, N4C or something. Um, yeah, pretty pretty sweet. And yeah, um, we want more bounce. Well, then you can tune in back again tomorrow. If you're enjoying the show, you only have one task. Continue enjoying and maybe tell one of your friends that it's great to watch that you felt really entertained. We had some lags that I wanted to discuss. Um, it is not the stream that is lagging, it is actually the observing PC. Um, maybe a bit of texting on the machine there. We restarted, turning it off and on again. Uh, from the observer there, we will install um, Capture H and everything on another PC for tomorrow, so we should have a smoother watching experience when it comes to units moving tomorrow. And I can read chat a bit. Can you show the score again? Uh, the guy that is typically doing that just ran past, so no, not an option. Uh, but obviously you can check Liquipedia quite a bit. People just had the cutest match on my dating app. Ha, ah, cross your fingers for me. Okay, enjoy. Uh, will Mem do some casting? Yeah. Um, he will arrive like midnight, and I think I will give him two sets tomorrow. Um, I think if my voice is better, I will give him the kind of second set of the day together with me, and then potentially like the fourth set, which could be Viper set if he wins. Um, tomorrow. That's that's at least my plan. But w we will see about that one. And it feels like Hera and T90 are about to be set up. By the way, uh, we sometimes have water bottles on the shot. So you will make sure that those are not caught in there as well. Your voice is better than ever? Okay. Mm. Um, how do you feel at the end of the day nearly? Well, I think viewer numbers are really solid. That's sweet. Obviously, my voice is underwhelming. I'm a bit uncertain how much I'm going to cast next days, but luckily we have the, the best setup ever. And yeah, I can send it over for the last set of the night. The Viper and Hart are going at it. Enjoy together with Hera and T90. All right, here we are. Thank you, Nilly, for pushing through. Uh, but I'm sure he'll be back in a couple days. This is a long event. With me is Hera. Hera, cast you earlier. It was a pleasure. And uh, congratulations on joining GL and whatnot. And now you're in, now you're casting. How's it feel? Yeah, thank you. Um, oh, I'm actually really excited. Oh, we got something in the background. Yeah, should I explain that? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. so uh, you are able to get a background, which is slightly terrifying to me, or not, preferably, uh, by donating to the NAC main event. And I don't know the name of the user that donated for this graphic, which has Orin Lu... <laughs> above us and uh, a ship of some kind with a hand on the front and um, an owl, which may be shitting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, so we are, Hera, I don't, I'm sure you're already excited to cast, but now we get to cast with this behind us for the entire series because of that donation. That's actually really good value for the donation. So <laughs> <laughs> shout out to everyone that. They did everything possible like, yeah, with this background. I mean, this if, this, if this goes like to post-imp every single game, 
it goes to five games. You just you you do the math on the seven hundred dollars divided by the minute. It's been a pretty good deal. So, um, yeah. Anyways, I not gonna lie, it's a little jarring. No offense, <laughs> to Lou, but this is this is tough for me. But let's let's try and let's get serious mode here. Of course, this of is course. a very serious mm -hmm. tournament. Um, Hart and Leary, or sorry, <laughs> Hart and uh, Viper, <laughs> two big names, but. Um, you know, for Hart, I, I believe, I've done my research, it's the first time he's playing a 1v1 event at a LAN. He was at ECL back in the day, yeah. but I think he had only played a 2v2 for uh, your team back then. We so lost as well, because of him as well. Because uh, yeah, the, the one game he played. And you're clearly not salty about it at all. No, it's okay. Uh, it took me four years to get over the loss, but I just managed. Huh, interesting. It's good to see him back, though. It's good to see him back. Yeah, that was really quick. That was like that was right at the right at the tip of your tongue, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> I, I I joke about it with him like all the time, so it's, okay. it's, it's fresh in my mind. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Well, anyways, you know, th this is a new thing for him. It was a big accomplishment for him to qualify. I think a lot of people were talking about the quality that he he's had as a player, but um, God, production, <laughs> you're <laughs> just killing me right now. Um, but again, <clears throat> serious, um, it, it's a big moment for him. I know for some players who have qualified, you, you could look at it and say qualifying was already an accomplishment, but I really think <laughs> I really think, God, this is my third set of the day. I'm like tired. I can't deal with this. I really think, Kara, that um, he has the skills to be able to compete with everybody here. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I always talk about this, but like the, you know, the rank ladder, although it's not exactly indicative of like tournament play, but Hart has done so well to grind that rank ladder. Yep. He hit, you know, rank one. Uh, he hit, you know, re really nice elo elo highs for himself, and uh, he's been putting in the work on the on the ladder, and he's translated that into the tournament. Of course, qualifying to this event was a huge win. We now have the draft here. This is probably one of the hardest, uh, you know, round ones you can have yeah, up yeah, against yeah. the viper here. But the draft looks pretty balanced. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got a variety of different maps, which is what every caster likes to see, right? We've got. Um, Arabia, which is comes as no surprise with Hart, a comfort pick for him. I, I honestly, I think if like Hart and Viper were to play like a best of something on Arabia right now, I think it'd be pretty competitive. I think yeah, they're yeah. both elite Arabia players. Marsh Madness, a mix of water and land. Outcrop a land map, which has very different focus because you have to get spanned kind of to the sides. Mm -hmm. And then Fortified Clearing incorporates some stone walls. And then African Reed Beds incorporates uh, like some hybrid style play with water and whatnot. So yeah, I, I think it, it is a diverse map pool. I hope we see all the games here. But for Hart, how's his mindset? You're, you're coming in, you're going right up against the Viper. Like, where do you think he's at right now? Well, first of all, I just want to say they have the same mouse. Um, Ooh, interesting. Yeah, which is uh, some like apparently it's is, really good. Yeah. Hart always talks to me about it, but Hart says he's got the better mouse pad. So for whatever that's Dude, worth. <laughs> what's funny is like, literally he talked for 15 minutes about mouse pads. Oh, in the back. and that was a little like he could have continued going yeah, if he yeah. had nothing better to do. Like there's hours he can sink. He on goes. That. So I think whatever mouse he has, right? <laughs> I think it's V1, right? No, V3, V3. Is it V3? Yeah, 100%. Okay, because Hope what happened was, he's like, I was like, I got this. And he's like, oh, I have that too. And he's like, which one do you have? I was like, I don't know, V2. I just knew it had a V. Dude. I didn't know what version it was. I just wanted to buy it because someone said it was good. And I looked. I was like, all right, it's whatever. And he's like, well, it better. it's probably not V2. When did you buy it? And I was like, it must be V3. It better be V3. It's like, geez, like, is this guy get like magazines about mice or something? It, he's all about that. He gets yeah. a new mask like every month, I swear. <laughs> and then complains that he doesn't have, like, he's not like comfortable with it because he's always changing it. It's crazy. Yeah. But this time, I think he's going to be, you know, in the right mindset, uh, in the right space. Sure. Uh, what's interesting as well with, with the draft, Heart banned Arena as the as the first map ban, okay. and then Viper right away first picked Fortify Clearing. Yep. So clearly, Viper went into this wanting to play some kind of Arena map. I like it. Fortify Clearing, obviously, a little bit different, but it still incorporates a lot of the Arena style, you know, fast castle, a lot of economy, not as much fighting. Usually, we see like light cav and a lot of relic control that yep. battles around the relics. The Viper. Three-time champion of NACs, the Viper number one in AOE2 earnings, uh, seven, eight-year period where he won pretty much everything. Still always in that conversation, along with yourself. It, it seems like you two right now are really the ones going for first or second in events. And here we are. It should be great. And it's a really fun matchup, actually. Lots of fun things to talk about. Would not have predicted to see Spanish here on Outcrop from the Viper. And so he's got Spanish. We've got Hart as the Berbers. But again, Hart was a player who qualified. He's a player who had taken a break here or there, even though he had intense talent, came back, is really taking the game seriously. And uh, Viper, Viper's going to understand how big of a threat Hart is here. And I'm excited to be covering this game with you, Hera. Yeah, no, it's, it's truly a pleasure, actually. I think the last time we casted was Massive Arena. So it's been a while, but it's good to be back here as well with you. Uh, Spanish for the Viper. This was his last pick, and it doesn't seem like the most favorable matchup up against the Berbers. Berbers, of course, are the Camel Archers. Feels like that 
does very well into a lot of things that Spanish can go for. Uh, they've also got cheaper camels, so that's very flexible, very handy here. But of course, Spanish are a very flexible civ yeah. in their own right as well. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the I say recent, um, the changes last year that came in where Spanish get a, a bit of a gold spike for each tech they research, that's kind of nice. They, mm -hmm. they honestly have an incredible late game. Um, could always be difficult with the Camel Archers, but I actually think Spanish have one of the best late games. They have Siege Ram, mm -hmm. full trash techs, full Hussars, the strong villagers that are hard to kill. But, you know, when you're talking a map like this these days, it's really two openings, because you don't see players going for Militia much these days. So yeah. it's going to Feudal Age towards Scouts or Archers. And Spanish, one of two civilizations that don't get crossbow, mm -hmm. so it would be extremely uncommon to see an Archer opening. How does that affect you as a player? If you don't have one of the top two openings available. Well, I think it makes you pretty predictable, right? Like, Hart is going into this kind of knowing that Viper isn't going to do anything with the range. He's going to probably play towards, like, a stable, a scout opening. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of gives Hart a lot of, like, comfort in, in his play, can kind of limit what Viper can go for. Viper could surprise him, though, and go for a range anyways. Uh, it's kind of yeah. like a, some anti-metal play. But it, it does seem like we're going to see, like, a stable opening from both players as they're just clicking up to Feudal Age right now. Yeah, and I think I think you're just honestly they're just going to be trying to collect all the uh, additional sheep and cows. They have, they've been doing that this whole time. You can see Viper scouting is incredible, so looking for that. And I think uh, right now Hart is pushing in an extra deer or so. But it's interesting. Um, they both scouted the right side, mm -hmm. and so if this becomes a game where they would expand to build town centers, it's likely they since they have scouting there, they would TC there. So we could see that later on. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. What I love about this map is that there's no like better side to go for, right or left. You kind of just go for it based on your TC spawn, based on what you're feeling, and based on what you scout. And sometimes you see players go to opposite sides. That's a bit more of like a boomy game. But if they go to the same side, it can get really aggressive really fast. Forward castles are on the table. Uh, so th this game can really be fire works, you know, in Castle Age onwards. Yep. So, I mean, Viper likely going to go for the scout build here. And probably should be the same for Heart. Uh, <clears throat> since they'll both have a stable, important to note, Berbers, they do have the cheaper stable units and cheap camels as well. So they have camels as an option to counter the knights. I think Viper might need to look towards some monks in later stages, some pikemen, but we're, we're a ways from that yet. Yeah, Viper's getting some scouting here at the back of Heart's base. Uh, it is up slightly faster. It is, it's worth noting he gets a little bit of like uh, you know extra pressure maybe on the field. Maybe the first spearman comes out earlier. He's already queuing a couple of those, uh, but but nothing too crazy. Hard kind of bringing in a couple more cows, which is nice. I feel like this is a really good map for your first one v one LAN ever, right? Mm. Like like it's just you you go for your feudal build. There's no water. There's no like potential for messy stuff to happen. Um, this is like kind of a sweet spot. For, for both players. And I, I think even if you're experienced on lands, I imagine having like a really easy, like an enclosed game one, mm -hmm. is probably like kind of nice. Um, but what, what's your perspective on that? Is there a, like a, a different type of map you prefer to start the series with? I, I mean, I, I can definitely see it both ways. It probably comes down to like the person, but uh, I, th I think this definitely gives Hart time to set up. If there was yeah. any nerves, they're going to disappear over the next 10, 15 minutes. Ooh, Viper actually snagging four cows there. Whoa. That's, that's pretty reasonable. It's 600 free food. Of course, you don't need to make a farm for it. You just have it straight in the cow. And uh, the Spearman aggression from Viper, going to annoy Hart a little bit. Let's see how Hart deals with that. Yeah, Viper actually putting a lot of his scouting focus on the sides instead of Hart's base at this point. He went through Hart's base, recognized that he could probably do... Ooh. Oh, oh, Hart. The cow heist. Oh. Hart, go back for him. <laughs> go back for him. There he goes. And actually, those cows are going to find the other cows, and he's going to double back for Oh, more. my God. This is so huge. The cows have played such an important role here. But actually, the cows... <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, that's uncalled for. Yeah, that that's, really... That's crazy. What the hell? The funny thing is, those cows will never make it back. Yeah. Viper's, Viper's going to look for them, mm -hmm. right? Surely. <laughs> I mean, by the time they get there, it's like you probably should be farming anyway. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> but it's fun for us because we're like, ooh, a cow. <laughs> yeah, a lot of action around those four cows here. But I think, uh, you know, the scouts from Hearts, instead of chasing cows, definitely wants to go raid some villagers here. Looking to see what he can find around Viper's base. But Viper, he's known for his quick walls. I don't think two scouts, one of them half injured, are going to find too much here. Yeah, and that's a question of like, like, I feel like you don't want to make more scouts. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, well, I probably should have some level of map control. I hate how he waits till the last second. It's really intimidating. I, I think he does it on purpose. Um, you know, just to kind of like mind game the opponent. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You could hit me, but nah, it's a nah, level I'm of too dominance, good, you know? Dude. It's exactly. a level of dominance. But I think the, the one time that doesn't play out, like maybe one out of every hundred, mm -hmm. it could end up being pretty bad if you wait till the last second. It, it's happened. I mean, 
I, I say it all the time. I think Viper's biggest weakness sometimes is that he's just obsessed with quick walling. Sometimes, you know, it, it just burns him a little bit too much here. Look at Viper. Eight vills in Q for a second there. He did un-Q some. It's not a big deal, you know, mm -hmm. but that's something you see all the time. Obviously, you're going to pay attention to that. But just showing there's a lot of focus, of course, on things here. And it does look like Viper's resources are looking pretty good to think about Castle Age. Viper has one scout on the field, so he didn't even produce a scout here. Mm-hmm and uh, is happy to play defense right now. But for now, he can't actually complete that Blacksmith, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, he's going to have to bring a Spearman in there. There's no rush on the Blacksmith. You can get it in 30 seconds, and it's the same story. Uh, Viper actually super confident here. Without making a scout, he's banking on a faster cast stage time, which is a really good move. So a, a little bit risky here, but obviously Viper is the kind of guy to take a little bit of risk early to try to squeeze ahead a little bit. So smart, yeah. smart play from him there. Yeah, because like, at this point, like you, you got to be looking the hard saying, could you have added a range, right? Even even one of the rare times actually where you could go like scout skirm against a player who might be adding scouts. Yep, yep. Um, because that could help out against some of the spearmen. But at the same time, the other side of that, of course, is Hart needs to farm. Mm -hmm. And so he's invested most of his wood into that. Uh, what also, you like what you see here is like neither player wants to commit to a lot of you know scouts or early game aggression because they're you know kind of used to players walling up. But Viper, because he assumes that everything will be like a full wall game, decides to just play open and kind of yep. greet it out a little bit. Yep. If Hart just went for like a random two range switch, yep. he can find massive damage. But yep. it's just not something you think about. Yeah, people, people yeah. won't do that. It's the yep. mind game. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's that tourney element. You're gonna have to play safe. It's a ranked game. They might play a little bit more open, a little bit more breezy, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyways, good good build up here from both players. Hart just going to click up here. And Hart will know everything. He'll know the resources set up a Viper. And he'll know it's double stable, which if I'm the Berbers, I'm very happy to see. I, yeah. I have no problems with that. Oh. You want to play Knights into me? Go ahead, because I've got the cheap camels. A couple villagers from Viper, though. Those three villagers are up to no good. What, and Viper's is adding scouts. I, is he, he? He's headed out for the TC pretty early. But, but he's going on the side that he didn't scout, and it looked like he was going down the center for a siege workshop or something. He okay. did actually scout it because yeah, he, he was, scouted he both was sides, going yeah. for those cows, yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, it looks like those guys, those are really early for town center. This is very strange play. I wonder if he wanted a siege workshop or a monastery forward and, and decided not he's to. He's switching his plan now. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very strange. I do like the scout edition from Viper, though. Mm -hmm. The additional scouts can get so much value. And uh, we'll see if Viper chooses to build the TC on that stone because he doesn't actually have a gold scouted. He just has the stone, I think. And, I, you know, if he goes for the stone, that could lead to a castle earlier. Yeah. And, and Kong play is always on the cards, by the way. I know we talk about camel archers countering Kongs, but... I think Kongs are actually insane there, yeah, too, yeah. right? <laughs> it's, it, for the first, like, until Ballistics kicks in and, like, a big mass is on the field, yeah. Kongs are completely fine versus camel archers, arguably better uh, in the lower numbers there. Good pick off from Viper. Kills one scout, maybe a second one. Hart backs away just in time here. Good How play many from Hart as well to scout it. It's really interesting. So, so you and Viper do this best, where it's like if it turns into this type of game, tiny little details, but doing the same thing. Typically, Viper's going to have the edge, right? Mm -hmm. Typically, you're going to be able to get find those like minor differences in the later stages. This is not really the type of game that I would normally look at Hart's skill set, what he can accomplish, and say he wants. So, I'm hoping for his sake, he could he could find something to pressure Viper with in some way. Yeah, yeah. I mean. This was the neutral map, so in theory, Hart could have banned this if he didn't want it. It seems like both players are okay playing this map, none of them really favoring it. Hart does find the TC, no damage, but he does know it's there. Yep. Hart's going for a second TC on the mainland, though. What do you think of that? I actually don't mind it. Okay. I think if the third T, like you have plenty of gold at home, this is really good for safe wooden food eco. Mm -hmm. um, so your farming setup. So I think you wait until it's safe. Make a move out to that right-hand side or the left-hand side, of course. And I, I think that's more than fine. I think um, Ooh, expanding, trying to expand too much when you don't have the control, uh, it can delay your TCs. Like, yeah. Viper had to walk out real early, but it can delay your TCs. Or it could just be uh, you have too many TCs on stones and golds when you actually need a little bit more food. Wood, wood food, yeah, 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 100%. Uh, we, we tend to see most of the farms set up on that mainland because on the side, there's a lot of trees, a lot of gold stone. You don't really have place to farm. You have a little bit, but there's also that rocky terrain you have to factor in. Uh, Hart's going to go third TC outside. And Viper doing the same thing, just switching up the order. Third TC will be inside on that gold as well. Questionable positioning since that gold has already been oh. kind of taken advantage of. That was Ooh. a really nice conversion there from the Viper. It seemed like Hart was on the way back. Yeah. And that's going to be a little frustrating. You for can't Hart. complain these days. You can't complain. They changed the minimum conversion time to, I think, what, five seconds in game time. So if you pull back right away, you do get away more often than not. Okay. So these days, insta-converting 
You know, e even Mr. Yo doesn't get the quickest conversions anymore, which I think Era, is a positive change. Era says you can't complain about monks. You can quote me on this. I I'm okay with You'll this never, now. Okay, really? Yeah. I All will, right. You I really will, think you're never going to complain about a conversion again? I will never complain. And you can quote uh, yeah, I do. I'll okay, never complain I'll about get, monks. Get out of here. They added devotion as well. If I complain, I'm going to become devoted myself. No problem. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's, it's great because I believed everything you said in this cast until now. Now I question everything. Quote me on it. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It's Just quote good. me on it. It's all good. I respect it. I respect we'll it. see what happens. You know, one of the more annoying things here would be if, like, those scouts right there actually slide through that opening. I like how Hart actually rewalled that. That is one of uh, Hart's emotes, the Llama Jam, right there for all the Hart fans. And uh, a couple of those villagers not building there? No, they were. And there goes Ooh, Hart Lightcap. with Lightcap. That should be a dead monk here. And nice shot from Hart. I mean, he's really paying attention. A lot of players yeah. are not going to worry about the front of the monastery. They're going to look for the the outer areas, but he knows the monks are coming out of there and gets the snipe. Oh, that conversion was crazy. I can't believe that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that, that was scripted, man. That was scripted. <laughs> good, good, good block from Viper, though. It does snag another conversion. And Hart's losing quite a bit of knights right now. Um, you know, he's doing a good job with the light cap, sniping the monks, but definitely kind of passing over a few a few knights. Viper is taking a small build lead here as well. I wonder where Viper builds this castle, right? Because if Hart would have built his TC on the left and Viper knew about that, Viper's going to advance forward, Spanish builder's building faster, and he's going to go for that castle mm -hmm. drop. But now it's like more of a, you build the castle for conch production, which you could argue pretty much goes anywhere, right? I think maybe yeah, left yeah. side still makes sense, but when you have, what a lot of this fighting could happen near your main eco where the monastery is, I could see an argument actually for building it there too. So I, I don't know. What would any thoughts? Um, it, it it could go both ways, but I think because you're playing on opposite sides here, heart to the right, viper to the left. I think the main base is much more interesting. Mm -hmm. Ooh, take a look at how the viewers are enjoying NEC at a home. Very nice there from the tweet. That's a seven out of ten living room, I have to say. Well yeah. played. TV as well. Like yeah. TV watchers. I've I've been like a recent TV watcher. It's insane. Like, it's my favorite thing to do. I think watching AOE. Yeah. I like it more than playing AOE. Honestly, it's <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. The, the TV setup and some like nice like snacks or whatever. It's, yeah. it's amazing. But this is. This is all. This is all recent. Before the monk nerfs, I don't know if he would have enjoyed the, the the TV watching as much, right? Yeah, <laughs> the whole, my whole life changed after the monk nerfs. Honestly, I'm just happier every day. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with you though. I like the devotion tech. I think monks are in a solid spot right now. Mm. This is also coming from someone who could not use monks for his life. So <laughs> some slight bias, but okay. man, I mean, this is going late game here, Hera. Right? Mm. It, it absolutely will, and. Uh, it comes back to composition, I suppose. As a monk goes down there, beautiful job from Viper. Yeah. Do you prioritize Camel Archer as a must here, if you're hard? That's a great question. I think you, you kind of have to play towards Camel Archer, because if you, what happens is if you play towards pure Camel, right, or even pure Cavalier, or a mix of any stable units, you, you die to help. You will, you will have Viper on help immediately. Yep. If you go Camel Archer, and then you go into Heavy Camel, you kind of cover your weakness to help, and it, it creates a much better army composition. Of course, this is very expensive and hard to get to. I would like to see Hart add a fourth town center mm -hmm. to give him a chance to get to that late game comp. Yeah, I think I think this map, <clears throat> this map especially, um, been seeing it a lot. I actually think on Copenhagen as well, mm -hmm. depending on certain aspects. Uh, if it's going to go late and there's no uh, obvious forward castle situation, which there's not here, I think fourth TC makes sense. But I do wonder, you know, like w how do you, how many. Games you think Hart has played? Like, do you think he's got? Yeah, there you go. It's the yeah, answer to our question. Very nice, very nice. Uh, he, he does seem well prepared. Remember, he's a guy that probably played more than anyone else because yeah. he's qualified, right? Yep, yep, so, yep, yep. as far as games played, I think Hart's up there with the most amount. I, I will say Viper has been playing a better game so far. I think Viper took better trades. I think he's got a slightly better position on the map currently. A few more vills. It's still really close, though. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> you know, I, I'm still really curious about Viper, he's moving out there on that side. Like, how are they going to pressure the opposite side? Both players have an eco set up. Viper didn't choose to build this castle yet. It looks like this is probably going to be it in a second. That should be no problem. Uh, I'll drop it. Ooh, actually, I see light cap. I try to go forward with this. That would be very untypical. Of course, we do know Viper. W oh, this is huge. The light cap are actually going to pick up the vills. I thought they were Viper's light cap for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I, I think in the end, unfortunately, they're just light cap. Yeah, yeah. It is a notifier, though, for Hart, which mm -hmm. could give an opportunity to make some more army, bring the camels over. They are on the way, and it's a forward castle from the Viper, yeah. so this is not a castle which screams conquistador production mm -hmm. at all to me. 
Yeah, uh, this could be paired with some sort of like fast imp. Viper, obviously, one of the smartest guys out there when it comes to Age of Empire strategy, and he oh. probably recognizes that he's got a weaker late game, or at least if Berbers get to the, the, the beast composition, yep, yep, that yep. it could be tricky. This forward castle could be the first step to a fast imp. Yep. And, and try to try to end the game early. Makes sense. Hearth getting stone shaft mining. That is an upgrade we rarely see. Yeah, that is uh, quite expensive. But he knows he needs the stone fast, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's like maybe one of the times where you need to prioritize it. I think uh, some math whizzes out there have established that that is not quote unquote worth it. Mm. But right now, if you've got the res for it and you need stone faster, go for it. That's the way to do it. Viper indeed going for the fast imp there. Follows it up with a university. So it's going to be interesting to see if he goes for Kongs. He's making a couple for now, but it, it could just be a castle for trap production. He could flex it. He's still mining some stones. So Kongs could be a late game option. Yep. And this isn't like a low eco fast imp. Viper's got 105 bills. Yep. So he's, he's chilling. Yeah, and this is, you know, the eco is not really balanced out how Hart would like right now. He's going to feel a need for some level of defense here. He doesn't know what Viper's going to commit to from that push. So this will likely be a castle here from Hart near his TC. If you do that, though, Viper could just trap it right down. So maybe Hart has the understanding, as we see some more monks go down, that he can't build the castle there. But that leaves his eco exposed as, again, you know, just monks in light cap. But I think at this point, we switch away from that and more into normal army. Yeah, Hart commits to the castle anyways. So he's going to go castle. Ooh, but this oh! is, oh, this could be rough. Oh, jeez, that's rough. Yeah, Pikeman to block the camels from engaging. A few conks to pick up some bills. Hart will get this castle up, OK? Like Death Castle from last series, if you guys have been watching that one. This castle will go up. But a few dead bills, it's gonna hurt Hart a little bit. This is this is perfect for Viper, because not only does he have a castle to trap now, but he also killed some villagers. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know? So and it's unfortunate because it's just been this <coughs> kind of back and forth, but Viper would take has a slight lead, taking a slightly better oh, game. Oh, this and is now, great. This is this really is, smart. I like this. This is gonna be camel archers are off the menu now. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. might get like five of them, but once the castle's out of the picture, you're gonna struggle. It's gonna be Halb Seedram. That is one of the best compositions against Berbers because I mean everything that Berbers go for it kinda dies to Halb Seedram and early imp. They need a big composition to be able to deal with that unless Hart brings out champions. But I mean yep. he's not Hunts, he's not going long shorts here. Um, so I think it, it, it's definitely not something that's on the table for him. I love the double blacksmith from Viper. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I that's think really you got to catch up on some upgrades. Mm -hmm. Why not go double blacksmith? We'll it's only see a lot of text wood. coming in. Yeah. yeah. Okay, he's yeah. got Imperial Age. We see a Treb right away, which makes sense. He's also queuing up some Rams. Yeah, Hart's got to do something. Like, he's going to lose control there. He's got to do something, man. Like, a forward. I, I wouldn't even mind, like, a little bit of army, forward castle on Viper's side. Make it messy. Right now, and I think maybe that's back to maybe Hart's style. He's a very clean player. He doesn't mm -hmm. really create the chaos that much. He just controls the game. The Vipers had full control here in his first game at NAC5, and of course, Hart's as well. This is looking difficult for Hart, but the Camel Archers that are out will benefit him against the Pikemen. It's just Viper, once he starts to use those trebs there, should be taking that castle out. Viper's not doing so yet, but there he goes. Yeah, and the problem is, like, Viper's taking into a lot of text right now, and he gets a little kickback, 20 gold per. And it's it just the kind of thing where, it, you know, all the extra resources flowing in are going to lead to this early in push. And Hearth is such, like, such in a defensive position and on the back foot. I don't know if he's going to have the time to, to be able to yeah. hold this one. If, he has to go up some, some ground for sure. Yeah, I think the way to play this is hand cannons, if you're Hearth. A lot of people forget that Berbers get hand cannons, but I think... You have it's going to be bad regardless, but drop four ranges, hope for chemistry to kick, and then if you can get hand cannons out, you can combine that with your cab and still have a pretty solid force. Yeah. But yeah. he is really committed to this. He's repairing with lots of stone. He's making more camel archers. He's he's going to have about ten of them soon. So positive he'll have ten of them, but still really going to struggle to produce a lot long term. Yeah, he does have another castle in the back as well. So if we call the first castle something like of a sacrificial castle, just something to buy some time, he could still, in theory, produce camel archers. And camel archers shouldn't really die too you know, too quickly. Obviously, a couple go down there. But <laughs> you should be able to keep them alive for the most part here. Um, it's just a question of how to deal with the rams now. And Viper's <laughs> taking Cavalier as well. It's interesting, Viper. I mean, Hart added all of these mangonels. Uh, because he expected a siege ram push, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. actually was smart. And Viper's doing a little choo-choo on the right side. <laughs> here, here he goes. Choo-choo! <laughs> Going no all the way <laughs> to the, the other side. Just the across the map. <laughs> Hart's going to look at this and be like, huh? <laughs> he hey, added a farm He was there. on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> Did he lose the farm? How does that even work? They have one HP. They should go down, right? Uh, I don't know if the, does the Rams ram have splash damage. It should, right? That is strange. It should have a little bit. Yeah. I, apparently, you... Don't lose that farm. But anyways, it's pretty unimportant. 
as Viper continues this bush. Now he's got to be careful with the camel archers. He only has pikemen in there, but he seems happy enough. He figures a castle will protect. He will toss the pikemen away just simply so he can get that castle down. If and Hard is able to snipe the cannons and then use his own cannons to snipe the traps, he could hold this, by yeah, the way. that's true. This isn't an impossible hold for Hard. And he still has a lot of villagers here. It is a tough game to play, though. See yeah. the micro. Clean from Hart so far. Yeah, clean. And you know, unfortunately, the bomber cannon's moving away. Viper, he's got some outposting on the right. So does Hart. But Hart's going to drop a castle that Viper will easily see. This is the problem. Hart has committed so much of yeah. his focus to defend this area. Viper, he's got more than those two rams on the right-hand side now. And those Cavalier are going to have full upgrades soon, by the way. Yeah, and they're finding a good amount of value. It, I, I really like how Viper prioritized different units here. He, he was going for the Halp Siege Ram, forced the reaction, then just switched it up. Went for Bomber Cannon and Cavalier. Just switched up his priority, taking it into everything, which is going to benefit him in late game, given yeah. that diverse Spanish late game. Hart is floating so many resources right now. What is he going for here? Elite Camel Archer. Wow. I always forget Elite Camel Archer doesn't cost food. Like, yeah. like Mangadai, for example. Mm -hmm. Actually, man yeah, Mangadai's food and gold. Yeah. So uh, may maybe some of that uh, forgotten the moment, or maybe, you know, his macro at well, which is the problem is he can't spend his resources fast enough because everything's dying, yeah. and he's got to react so heavily here. Yeah, and the castle's going down here. I think this might just be it because he's got the elite camel archer, but he doesn't have a single castle. We just got one on the right right now, but everything's exposed. The, f the food and wood economy is just completely in the gutter right now, and Hart is just cornered. He's got 20% of the map right now. Yeah, and Viper has eight on gold. He doesn't even need yeah, any yeah. more gold units from here, and Viper... G. G, G. That's uh, it. G. Just G. Yep, G for wow. Viper. Yep. Just like that, eh? And when the game's live, yeah. you get the chat, but when he corrects it with the GG a second later, mm -hmm. we missed it. And people are typing G in our chat now, so. <laughs> it's unavoidable, it's unavoidable. <laughs> well, you know, Hart, it's good, gonna good. seem like a weird statement, mm -hmm. um, but I, I think he like he kind of needed that game. Like, if he's gonna lose game one, he needs it to be post-imp. He needed to, to get that feel. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's he, not nervous. Did you see the, the form on the water? He, he wasn't shaking at all, <laughs> v very calm. He's not nervous at all right have now. We, have we cool. seen someone shake when they're drinking water? I it's don't know. definitely happened at some point. I, I will say, <laughs> so, Get the boys there. I, I think that the plan is to have heart rates on uh, stream at some point for, for future days in NAC. But players have been wearing heart rate monitors. And Doubt put his on for the first time today. And he ran out here. He goes to Tato, tells Tato what his heart rate is, and goes, call the ambulance. <laughs> He's like, ambulance, ambulance. He, so. he had like 105 resting heart rate. Which I, think, I think it's a little too much, actually. Well, well, so Yo walked up the stairs, put his on, and he goes, really? And I'm like, Yo, did you just walk up the stairs? He's like, yeah. He's like, okay, I'll wait. I mean, true gamer heart rates here. Let's just say that. But, uh, man, um, uh, but back to my point, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I went to post imp. He got a feel for things. He got in really late last night, so he wasn't maybe able to, to put in as many practice games as he would have wanted. Not to get a feeling for the sibs, but get a feeling for the space yeah, being yeah. here. So we'll see how it goes. You know, Arabia, Marsh Madness, then uh, the two home maps for Hart. I, I feel like uh, he has a good opportunity to go for that. Did you notice he has Hindustani? He's on his draft, though. Yeah, yeah, no. Hindustani is in there. I'm likely going to use that for Fortify Clearing. Um, he doesn't really have any other sieve that screams fortify clearing. Huh. I, I could see an Ethiopians or a Saracens potentially, yeah. but I don't think Incas and Persians are doing too much there. So it does seem like Hindustani for fortify clearing makes the most sense here. Um, okay, I no, think we'll Hindustani's see. is a standout for me though, right? Because like I think the booming potential is good, and I mm -hmm. think their gunpowder is great. Camel's obviously good in some matchups, but we have not seen Hindustani's played at all today. Oh really? Oh okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it could just be like they got banned out, but. Uh, they are a sieve that isn't good on every map, right? They're, they're clear holes in the tech tree, you know, no yeah. knights at all. Uh, will, will cost you a lot of problems in, in some scenarios. But on a map where you can just boom and play for the late game, I think Hindustani late game is still it's fantastic. Still good. Okay, People yep. forget about the nine range hand cannoneer, by the way. The nine range hand cannoneer, one of the best late game units in the game, yep. like straight up. It's really, really strong, hard to deal with. Um, it could be it could be his fortify clearing shot, but I think Hart's gonna play towards one of his home maps right yeah, now. Yeah, it makes sense. Save save that for later on. <clears throat> yeah, I would say go Arabia, but Ego's Marsh Madness. Okay. Same difference for me. Uh, will be fun though because we've got Persians, which is a great hybrid sieve. The ability to to dock and and work in towards land military is, is unrivaled, possibly right. Mm -hmm. Starting with the extra wood and the extra food, faster TC work rate, stronger TC, stronger docks. So your docks stay up for a long time. Viper goes Khmer. And we had a conversation about this like, you know, an hour ago when we were watching the other series because it was uh, Khmer Japanese in the Doubt Leary series. 
And I, the reason it was of note was because I remember Tato playing with Kamara, same matchup and whatnot, uh, in his qualifier. I looked at Tato when Doubt did that. I was like, hey, is he going to do it? And both the GL players that were there were like, no, that doesn't suit Doubt's style. <laughs> Viper could consider the, the strategy. So, so Viper, uh, as a potential, you can skip the barracks with the Kamur. Mm -hmm. um, there's this build that Tato did where you go barracks, uh, sorry, stable range and put some really fast pressure on, just get like an extra edge with army early and make it messy. We'll see. I, I think that's a good approach with Kamur especially because like what happens is if you just go stable, right? You're gonna you're gonna deal with spearmen for sure. Every top yep. player knows to go spears against Kamur because any other civ you go scouts and spears and then it could be a mirror match. But Kamur because they tend to skip the barracks, they don't have to, but they tend to skip the barracks. They don't have access to spears, so therefore they have to play towards archers to deal with enemy spears. So the the fast range stable could be a really good push mm -hmm. for them. Uh, I would like to see how a heart deals with that. I think defensive tower. If things get messy, always on the cards, especially on a map like this where you can't really wall, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and that's that's the big thing to remind people of. The rocky terrain, not the terrain the sides, but the rocky terrain you cannot wall on, uh, which will lead to more small walling, which means archers actually are, are stronger. Mm -hmm. But, there, you know, there's some downsides, too, to that play. Viper doesn't, not really a forward style. He tends to play out from home, and, and I would expect maybe both players do that here. But both just pushing in deer for now. Um, the, the, another benefit to going archers, and I'm a little surprised we've seen so many players go for scout builds. Like, even in your series against ACCM, you were scouts with Magyars, ACCM went skirms and spears. I was thinking, like, man, if any of these players went for an archer build, they got they win water because the other guy's not taking gold. Yeah, right? yeah. But then again, there's, there's probably some downsides, too, if you're going towards an archer build to trying to combine that with water at the same time. Actually, I, I could give some insight there because in the qualifiers, it was actually a lot more archer builds. Yep. But what people realize that winning water takes forever because you have to go so far on the outside, right? Yep. To hit the other guy's fish. And the guy can just run around and then just make fire galleys or just yep. hide his fish like temporarily. And so winning water is more of a long-term thing. Doesn't give you that instant benefit that you'd expect. That cat is not saying we love NAC. That cat is saying feed me human. That is what that yeah, cat the, is The cat's saying, like, right? you've been watching for too long. Yeah, yeah. Like, I am standing in the way of you because <laughs> you didn't feed me a treat within the last hour and a half. But Oh, speaking of treats, Hart is taking some goodies from Vipers DC <laughs> there. One sheep down. Oh, my. Two gone to Hart's base. Hart is going for the win here. That's huge. Yeah, I mean, Viper, it, it might affect some of his build in some way, right? Mm -hmm. It certainly means he's going to have to seed farms, drop a mill, something along those lines a bit earlier. And uh, we kind of, I think we missed the start of that. I was looking at the cat, but... Uh, Understandable. Very, <laughs> I very feel cute. Like, I feel like uh, the big thing there was his heart just kind of went for it. You know, mm -hmm. players don't really expect the scout to go through. And sometimes what happens if the player, when you go underneath their TC and they garrison, then there's no villagers nearby to hold ownership of the sheep. It switches and you can kind of run away with them. So that's mm -hmm. probably what we saw there. Yeah, TC is not very accurate as well. Like, are you a Star Wars fan? You know, like the Stormtroopers? They don't hit anything? That's, yeah, a, that's yeah. a TC. D dude. There's something wrong with them, dude. <laughs> I, I it's think bad. so. Yeah, it, it's it's bad. They can't hit anything. <laughs> yeah, it's you. it's really bad. Yeah, uh, unless it's. But if you uh, you know, when you're max range, they just hit everything. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, we, we, we're seeing a stable from Vipers. I don't know about this like stable range play, but it looks like it's a bit more standard. Does have two on gold. That's mainly for the fish, uh, like the the water gameplay, uh, the ships. Yeah, and Hart scouted that, which is big. So I really like the opening for Hart. This is a really nice position for him. It's been very smooth. Being Persians, you'd expect his eco is going to be solid. He is making fire galleys of his own. You can be later to the fire galley production, to your point here, yeah. and still be fine, because by the time they get across to you, you'll have the defensive ships out to match it. Yeah, it is worth mentioning. Oh, now we see the range from Viper. L maybe a, a little bit of an alteration from that strategy. But there is water that connects like the map like through the center. You could go from one side to the other, but there's no fish there. It's just like shallows. Yeah. So you you know, late game we could see some you know galleons or cannon galleon, but that's just something for uh, you know later on. Interesting, Nothing that plays a, a role Viper's here. Viper's scouting the left of the map right now. Like, is he looking for those sheep? Does he know there's extra sheep and cows on the map or something? Ah, oh, maybe. He, he, sorry to distract from the no, fight here, but he actually found the cow that was that was like a neutral cow or some sort over there. So, I wonder if that was some level of preparation. Yeah, there's another one there. Oh, we're going to go ahead and fight, out, fight it off. Fire Galley versus Fire Galley. We tend to see a lot of those on this map because players don't really care to, to micro those when there's so much going on on the land. We'll see if they, they do give it any attention. Hearts taking a little bit of a vill lead here. A couple of vills. Persian TC works faster. Maybe had a Look at the amount of fish. food right now, dude. Three on food for Viper. Oh Ten for Heart. Heart's still got sheep. 
And oh oh hard. Oh, oh, oh but the, the, the fire okay. galley's coming in. Yeah. The Vill doesn't die. Yeah, Viper's gonna have to run here. Good and the Villager then can actually re oh can't get the repair in, in time, but in the end that's not too bad for Hart. Yeah. We'll see if Viper can go for this. Oh, mm. oh, is it? No, this is unlike Viper. This is this is more like doubt. <laughs> Wasting the scout. Oh, but he will get the villager. So hey, it's not a bad trade in the end. I, I think they were focused elsewhere because uh, neither player seemed too too worried about that situation. Yeah, Viper's res collected, not looking too hot, and and this is this is looking good for Hart. But you know, Viper playing defense right now with those scouts has an opportunity to actually move forward. Very Viper-esque to actually wall this and just send his army forward. Yeah. So I, I'm a little surprised he's chose to bring his scouts home to defend from those. And, and he actually doesn't need to wall it. Even just some houses, house hopping with Khmer can be really insane. It gives your Vils a lot of value. They can fight till one HP, hop in the house and just be completely safe. Viper is moving out with some archers now. I don't know if Hart scouted that, if he knows about the range. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. I okay. think he ran past it. We could maybe <laughs> just double check here. Yeah, he ran past yeah, it, so yeah. he should know. I think in this spot, making more scouts is always a, a play, but he's going to make skirms as well. We'll need to be careful with those skirms, though, with, since Viper has the scouts. Actually, I just realized Hart can go full scouts and be fine because uh, Viper can't make a spear. So I think that could be a nice counter. I just gave it away. Damn, I should have kept that to myself. <laughs> it's, it's fine, though. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah. If this can I'm taking it anyways. Yeah, let's see. This, this could be a big hit, by the way, on the wood line here. But counterattack from Hart. He gets a villager. Big oh, moment man. here. How much focus is he putting on Viper's base? Okay, he does react there. You can tell Viper struggling a little bit with, with the defense as well, right? And it's it's kind of rare to see those moments where you could tell both players are distracted in their attack and defense. But that's what we have here. A little bit of a trade, but Hart defending very nicely. He's fighting off the scouts with villagers. He has a spear in there. And the skirms are enough to, to scare those archers away. Yeah, those fools are not scared of fighting. They're, they're very brave. Look at them. Army coming back from Hart, playing it safe. Does have a couple of spears. Viper's Micro has been pretty solid. I feel like he's taking better trades. But Hart does have the, you know, the, the bigger army here, the larger force. Should be able to clean this one out. Viper will sacrifice those archers if he needs to and Hart's, just run away with the scouts. Hart's eco is so good. He's added more fishing ships, which is something that is so hard to think of. He's got a good balance of it. He hasn't gone over the top. It's at seven. His farming eco is great. His scout number's looking higher and higher. He's got six scouts right now. Viper's got five archers, three scouts, two more in queue, though. So to your point, it feels like this could actually be almost Land Madness style, mm -hmm. funded by some of the fish. And we could see like two or three stable scouts. Yeah, yeah, you, you could go crazy with it if you really want to. These are cavalry ships on the table as well here. A little sneak attack from Viper on top. Can we, can we get the, 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 the production here to look at that? Yeah, two archers, not the biggest of deal, but Hart has to look at that now yeah, or else the bills can go down. Yeah, it was really impressive. And yeah, he also yeah. has to make sure he doesn't miss Micro. He did slightly. Yeah. And this is Viper finding a way to, to change this because Viper is behind right now in terms of game flow. But, you know, villagers could still die. I assume Hart's going to be looking at that, but now Hart taking a fight against some of the archers. He does kill the scouts. Ooh, Hart has some ships here. They picked off an archer. They're kind of creating a little barrier, so Viper cannot pass. And Hart will get the cleanup or not. Doesn't look like it. Did react to the two archers up top. It seems to be very even in terms of, like, the, the fights that they're taking. But Viper's getting in bloodlines. Bloodlines after losing scouts, though. It's a bit strange. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's going to make more, right? Yeah, he yeah. feels the need to make more. So it does make sense. I agree. Like, ideally, though, you know, the timings would have been better. So credit to Hart for finding them. I, I do like, though, like, the, the what Viper's doing here. Those two archers, I know it doesn't seem like a lot because he never killed anything. But that's focus that he's taking. Yeah. He's setting the pace. When I, I watch a lot of Hart, right? I have for, for five or six years. Mm -hmm. And he's never the player to go full feudal. He's always like, I've made enough feudal age army. We go castle age now. Mm. This is the moment, Hera, where he's most vulnerable. Mm, yeah, well, I could not see that. Does have the tower still in the back pocket, right? Uh, going yeah. to the market. Oh, could sell off the stone, though, if it gets a little, uh, little frisky oh, in the dude, market dude. here. You sell the stone and then you need a tower. It's the worst, yeah, worst thing. Yeah, you can't buy it back. It's a matter of principle. You sell the stone, it's gone. Uh, Viper does have a lot of scouts on the field, but Viper doesn't seem like the guy to go full feudal either, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, we'll I see think if Viper had, I, he had five archers a moment ago. This is, oh man, Hearts. Hearts, your, your navy. Hearts navy. <laughs> How Heart. about the fishing ships? <laughs> uh, he's the first player to send the navy into the crossing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks good <laughs> until now. Still, oh, he's, though, he's got some practice on this map, but he clicks up and he's yeah, in a good yeah. spot. Yeah, I thought Viper would bring in some archers with uh, the scouts and be able to find a moment, but Hart killed a lot of the archers with the skirmishers. Uh, I agree with you, by the way. I think scouts alone, 
not as threatening as Scouts with Archer. I think Scout Archer is like, th that can kill a lot of things. Yeah. Let's see what the Scouts can do, though. These guys have Bloodlines. No Blacksmith upgrades, though. Yeah, it feels like Heart has got just enough. And Heart mm -hmm. is up. This is this is huge, man. What a position for him right now. Viper hasn't clicked. Viper will click. If Heart can defend from this, and then be in a position to immediately counterattack with Knights, the Khmer don't usually wall. They're just spending their time in houses. So I could see a real opportunity to at least idle half of Viper's economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as soon as Knights hit the field, guys, like, Scouts are solid. But Scouts can be fought back with Vils. Knights, you need military to deal with Knights. Uh, this is a huge find, too. The Ooh, Navy actually yeah, yeah, makes yeah. its way to Viper's Fish. So Viper's really not going to have many fish. There are still some out there for Heart. Honestly, at this point, though, I think both players will put most of their focus on the land. Oh, this is strange, though. Heart just abandons this position. Does have the two spears, though. Okay. I guess it's enough, it's enough. Viper's gonna respect the spears, back up. A lot of those scouts are weak, so it makes sense. I wanna see what Hart does as soon as he hits Castleage. As soon as he hits Castleage, a big moment for him to really find some some value with those early castle units. As far as town centers go, he could actually place one on the wood line now because he's chopped enough trees. Mm -hmm. The gold, though, kind of feels like the biggest spot of worry right now. He's just gonna fight this. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, he says, I mean, but this is like not easy to do, right? High level players are gonna do it, but it shows the confidence. Hart's like, you know what? I'm just going to fight off until my spearmen arrive. It doesn't worry about running or allowing Viper to idle more. By the way, credit to Viper. A lot of players go full feudal there, and they get up to castle way too late. Viper's just a minute behind, and he's using the scouts to buy time in that minute while walling yep. up at home. Yep. Viper is really, really playing this as, as smart as possible those, right now. Those knights right now from Hart need to be making that move forward. Yeah, yeah. It's so easy not to. I like how Hart's using the scouts already, so this is an indicator he's looking here. I'm sure the Knights will be coming. I actually love the TC from Hart at home as well. The timing felt natural. The position of it's pretty good. It's always going to be awkward with wood on this map, yeah. but if you protect the gold and are near another wood line, that's still good. Monastery right away from Viper. Recognizes he's going to be on the back foot. Listen, he's not necessarily dead, but uh, definitely has to respect what Hart has on the field. Because if Viper missteps, then he'll just die on the spot. Because yeah. these are knights. Goes for elephants. What? Elephants. I mean, if there's a monastery at home for Hart, it's going to be trouble to get any value from those things. They're, they're stronger, but they're slower, and they're more expensive. And there's the monastery there from Hart. It probably surprised Hart more than it surprised us, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hart just like, clicked into them just out of instinct. He's going to fight whatever comes out, but you know, even a guy like him, Macho as he is, not going to fight elephants with knights here. Going to just run around them, though. Elephants might as well not be there. If they can't hit, I mean, they look threatening, but they're not doing too much. It's like every single moment of this game, it has been Hart, right? Yeah. I, I mean, the opening was smooth. Uh, the trades have been favorable, about a 2-1 to one KD. The Eco's looking great. His techs are coming in. The, the, you would not think that this is his first time playing 1v1s against the greatest player ever, many would say. This is incredible. Yeah, really, really good play from Hart here. Well, actually, use the, the use of fire ships has just been insane. It kills the elephant, runs away from the monk, doesn't get converted, and he's in complete control. And behind this, two town centers. Yep. It's not an all-in. He's fine. Okay, so monk's the key now. Um, expanding your eco. What point do you think about Pikeman here? Both players are going calf. Mm -hmm. What do you think about, like, talk me through Pikeman timing. So, so generally speaking, a, a lot of the newer players, beginner players, they tend to go into Pikeman way too early. But when monks are on the field, the monks will counter the first few Pikeman anyway. So you want to go Pikeman once you've got a big economy, and you can sustain to spam them out, right? Yep. Uh, so if you lose a few, it's not the, you know, the end of the world here. So definitely, you know, Cav, Monk first. Later on, we can talk about some Pikeman switch, which definitely still relevant, but you just don't want to rush into it here. Yep, makes sense. Typically, I think it's after the third town center. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... This map is also really hard to build your typical base because you can't TC the wood lines. So I, I could actually see this being more of a two town center heavy army map uh, compared to, to like Arabia or some of the other maps we have out there. Hart goes for another dock on the side. This is to renew the fish because when we had the fishing ships on the other side, Sometimes, you know, you don't want to make fish traps. You just make a dock on the other side and they can continue fishing, continue benefiting from that water that he has now won. Yep. I yeah, like Cav as well here. Heart 97 population, Viper 65, and that's a 30 population lead 25 minutes into the game. Viper's going to have to find a way to break Heart, but it feels like if you watch the first game, we've now arrived to the, okay, we boom, we make army, nothing real special happens, which means advantage Heart all the way. Yeah. Viper's not in a position to really build up towards anything massive to change the situation right now. Hard goes for a third TC. He actually delayed that, made sure everything was fine, then goes for the third TC here. Just has to not 
grief any units to the monks. Don't yeah. don't give anything away for free. You know, it could be a generous guy, but you don't want to be handing things out in a, in, in a game here, especially not, you know, when a, a map like this, a lot of damage could happen. With, with mobility, that's a TC right there. Both, that's crazy. Both of those TCs that they have placed near the, like, the middle area where they're accessing each other, Big targets. Yeah, yeah. And big, big targets. Like the Persian TC, obviously less of a target mm -hmm. because it has more HP, which is which is a big deal here. But like something's gonna go down here. <laughs> we might see demos coming in this choke soon. Like it's all gonna be happening right here on our screens. Yeah, I like how Viper's just hopping in and out with the mugs, holding down the fort. But I think Hearts more than fine, just booming this one out. It does have the three TC set up with the Persians working faster. Ooh, I like this with the Knights going for the raids, not getting complacent, not just sitting around. Will go find his own luck here. And we did see him picking up Vils from the farms. This time Viper respects him and pulls back some Vils, but he could go for a couple of those there. Yeah, Viper though, he finds the wood line and what Ooh. a great job from him to, to also keep looking for opportunities. It's so easy to feel like you're, you're behind and not find these opportunities. That's been the area Viper's found. He tried with the archers earlier, but still heart on Viper. Monks becoming more and more important now as the night raids still continue. I wonder if Heart can just go for devotion and, and just let Viper get happy with the monks at home. And actually the like have sniping a few of those units. Yep, monks go down. A couple of those as well. You could go devotion and go for some heavy castleage. I hope Hart I hope Hart is feeling like a god right now because he's playing like one. Like I hope that when he's sitting there, he's like, I'm doing this right now. Like I, I made it here. Yeah, I had a little less training, got in late. He told me like today might be a throwaway day for me. It's against Viper, who knows? That this does not seem like a player who has that type of mindset at all. I'd love to see a castle here. Like big energy castle would be sick. I don't know if you could build it because of the marsh terrain, but it seems like he's building up for, at the very least, a defensive castle. Yeah, I've spoken to Hart a lot as well, and he comes into the, with the mentality that he is a winner just being here. Like, yep, this is yep, a yep. huge stage for him. Anything extra is is great. If he wins one game against Viper, that's great, and he's on track to doing that. Magno gets two kills. Going for the castle, that's as forward as you can make it without being too risky. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a castle that would be built slightly differently if the terrain's not there. Mm -hmm. Marsh playing a big role there, defending Viper's Town Center. And Viper's heavy on stone. What is that, 19 on stone? <laughs> yeah, not for long, right? He doesn't have much army here. Viper only has four monks. I'm not seeing any conversion starting. And Viper goes in with the light cap, though, and he's going to find a couple monk kills. Hart will defend himself very nicely, though. Well, I mean, he kills the light cap, lost all the monks, but... Yeah, they did their job. Oh, but the monks... It's going to be on the same, the other side. Yeah, and monks from Viper going down. And this is the thing, like, light cap are so effective against monks. If you're not watching your monks, they will die in just a couple hits here. And that castle from Hart really locks down that middle area. There's two goals on my screen, two stones. If Hart can push into that area and push Viper off those minerals, that could be huge. I... I'm thinking, I know in a lot of situations, it, you might feel players, like, will go up to Imp for Trebs or something. This map, they're far too close. There's a lot of open spots. I love to see all in Castle Age. Maybe now you see the Pikemen or just more Knights, more like have more upgrades from both. Yeah, 100%. We see Viper Tekken into infantry armor. He's going to switch into Pikes. This feels terrible with Khmer because you skipped the early barracks. So you have to like make it again. Yeah. <laughs> like You're losing your bonus. I hate it. It, it. it might be the correct call here. Like It's clearly desperation, but it just doesn't feel good. Yeah, absolutely. And and Hart, as we said before, has just been dominating Viper this entire game. Oh from the start God. of the age, the TC will be gone. Viper, who's already 20 villagers behind, has to run home. And Hart is on his tail. He's chasing those vills, but decides to back up one monk. <laughs> one, <laughs> one monk! <laughs> okay, it was two in fairness, yeah, but still. Yeah. Come on, Hart. I would have liked a little bit more energy there. The vills are running for their lives, but he's playing it cool. Doesn't want to take any risk. And uh, really just slow pushing this one. Yeah, he's got the lead. And he, yeah. he knew about the monks. He goes in with the light cap now to take care of them, and then maybe he can go for the full dive. But, you know, the, some of the best players, they won't go for the kill all the time because they know the other player's good in defense, yeah, yeah, and they yeah. don't want to overextend. I think we... Hard is probably, I mean, every player who's in the top 10 has probably thrown games by diving too deep, pushing too much. Oh my god. Oh, there's oh redemption my god. on these. Oh, my, oh god. my god. This could be huge. Monks, I think they I move think faster they, than Mangonel, so they should they, be They will yeah. get converted, I think. One kills. Maybe a second. At the end Ooh. of the day, there's the second. Okay. okay. At the end of the day, though, Viper doesn't have the army otherwise yeah, yeah. to really protect it, right? Even like those pikemen, I don't think the numbers are enough. Hard is going to get the clear up there and maintains his lead. The monks for Viper go down, and Viper's got nothing now, dude. Yeah, yeah. That, that, but Viper was borderline bluffing with that fight, you know, kind of moving forward, but Hart takes the win, and a great, great result there for him against Viper.
one one. Yeah, and, and you know, in the first game, we said you need to do a little bit to shake it up, right? And we didn't. He wasn't really able to find that moment here. And what it ended up being was more of a low army game, pretty clean TC timings. You know, it was a usual boomy game. That game was different. We had water elements. We had the land elements. Hart did a great job in both defense and attack. Now, I don't know what his nerves would have been like, but I wonder if right now, when he's tied up 1-1, when he's got the win, where he's like, boom, 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 I have the skill to do it. Like, sometimes people... It, it's the hope that kills you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it, the nerves really start to ramp up right now. Mm -hmm. when, when you have no chance, you don't care. You're just playing. Yeah. But when you have a chance, yeah. you, you get emotionally invested. But I talk to Hart all the time. He tells me he never gets nervous, like somehow. But I don't believe him, to be honest. I don't believe that at all, I, dude. I want the heart rate <laughs> monitor. I, I need to double check this. The stuff. heart rate monitor. Oh, oh. It has the yeah, yeah. I didn't even intend that pun, but some, somewhere, somehow, Nilly planned that one. Yeah. The master of puns himself. But I mean, when he qualified he, and he was interviewed, I've never heard the man speak so fast and oh, so high a pitch. Oh, yeah. he was shaking, yeah. So to say that he's not nervous here at a land, I don't know. But, I mean, you know, maybe some people are just better under pressure, mm -hmm. and they can funnel those nerves into something that's not big mistakes and panic. <laughs> um, so he certainly didn't look like he had big mistakes and panic there, as I'm now panicking because I have to look at this it, again. It, it just makes me, like, smile every time I see it because it's so, like – Everything's AOE, and then this just comes out, and it's so like out there. So yeah, you I don't could know. probably you could like make this your screensaver at home if you like it that much. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, could, it does make you me put smile, it up on your TV when you're not watching it. It's just a bit strange, though. Like, <laughs> or or lose a little too happy in that in, in that moon. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a photo from. Uh, I think that was Orlu's caster photo at NAC two or one or something. Was that happy to cast? Oh my god, <laughs> respect. Oh man, we need a guy like that. So Hart ties it up 1-1. One, one. Uh, again, someone paid for this to be behind us, by the way. This is not Nilly's choice. Nilly didn't say, hey, uh, what can we do to make Hera and uh, T90, or at least T90, even more awkward um, and choose this? It was a donation. It was, it was crowdfunded to go towards the event. Money well spent. Mo money well spent. Honestly, like that, that's... He made the most out of it. That's for sure. I, I couldn't. I couldn't pick a better backer myself. Hopping into game three, though, we got fortified clearing Burgundians and Hindustani. So we write in the prediction from Hearts of there. Yeah. So you and you mentioned Hindustani's for the closed map. So was this a discussion you guys had had before, or was this just an opinion that you had that matched his his outlook? Well, I, I just felt like out of the sieves that were there, Hindustani yeah, yeah. kind of just screamed fortified clearing. Uh, it's not exactly your typical fortified clearing sieve. We saw Burgundians. We saw even Huns doing big things. Uh, in, in another tournament, ACCM made them work. I think in the qualifiers, I think Nikon made it work. I don't remember exactly, but Huns were like kind of countering Burgundians. This time, Viper took Huns in his draft. Hindustani as the response here against the Burgundians, which seems to be the most classic Civ on arena-style maps. Yep, I mean, eco upgrades in age earlier. Um, I think in some ways, uh, Hart actually got housed, and he has to get Loom, which Ooh, is not great. And he's making the house in the, in the, in the mill spot. In the farm space. Oh. Yikes. Okay. That's that's like that's one of the ones that hurts a lot because yeah. it's, that's something you, you just you hurt yourself, right? It wasn't like your opponent earned that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You feel really bad about that as a player. I, I think w whenever you get outplayed, you're like, damn, respect. But if you lose to yourself, it just doesn't feel right. Definitely makes you feel like you know things could have been a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Viper with a smooth start and luring in some deer here. So small advantage, Viper already here. Yeah, I mean, my feeling on the Burgundians on the close map is. There are civs that can compete with them, but I don't think there's a single civilization which is like clearly better than them. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is my feeling. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, you can do no wrong here if you're the Viper. I think this will likely be another game where we have lots of scouts and lots of monks on the, uh, on the field. There's five relics in the middle area on this map, and then there's four relics on the outside, mm -hmm. uh, on the two on the right and then two on the left, as well as neutral or extra golds and stones. By the way, this map is incredibly hard to play because if you look at the edges of the map, we actually have a little bit of rocky terrain. prevents you from walling the sides. Yep. So if you see players and how they set up their base, they can wall a little bit, like kind of like an egg wall their base, but they can't control sides of the map. So this game, especially on late, you know, late game, even mid game, there's a lot of caveats on the field. It, it's crazy because you cannot guarantee your safety. Are you surprised that both are going for feud late here? Um, no. <laughs> I was gonna say I, I I thought 
I was going to preface that with try not to reveal too much. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not surprised here. Yeah. Because I, I think it makes a, a lot more sense from Viper to do it because Burgundians will get early Bowsaw and early Heavy Plow, so you can go like full Heavy Plow setup. Yep. But I think going Feudal Age lets you snipe the enemy scout, lets you get the stable setup. It's actually a very safe opening, so okay. I like it. All right, yep. I mean, I agree. It makes sense with Burgundians. But Vils also get a bit cheaper for Heart in the next stage, which is it's like minimal, but still, it's mm. a bonus, right? Um, yeah, it is interesting how not being able to wall to the edge has changed this map. I would be mm. curious, because there's different versions, how people would play it if they could wall to the edge, because it's still decent enough investment. But it's going to be scouts here. We got lots of time to talk here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of scouts hitting back and forth. And I, I don't think it's going to be a whole lot of action. It's going to be more about just setting up for the relic fight. Both players, of course, really want to get the relics. This could be a pretty impactful scout fight, ooh, though. Oh, oh, oh. Viper, Viper's good at these. But so is Hart, to be fair. It's going to be close. Ooh. Hmm. Okay, neither of them can we, fully committed. Can, can we go to a, a player POV? Oh, I actually have control of that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Viper got the hit. It was uphill. Oh, my God. Oh, and what? Viper gets the kill. Oof. It was 7 HP there for Viper, yeah. so even if Hart got the hit, it wouldn't have been enough. Not even close there. Well played. Bowsaw coming in, Horse Collar as well. Yeah, now, you know, I think even if that scout engagement was actually kind of nice in some ways, though, for Hart, because that scout from Viper that's coming over to his base is weak. Yeah, so yeah. it's not gonna it's not gonna stop any walls. It, so it, he could just like freely wall. He doesn't have to take his. He doesn't have to feel like he's risking anything. Now. And Hart's gonna make another scout anyway, so this shouldn't be like a huge, huge deal. Yeah. Some scout losses can be disastrous, but this one not not huge. Uh, Viper will try to scout the stable. Obviously knows it's there since he sees another scout on the field. Heavy plow coming in, so we definitely talked about that Burgundians and Viper. Not a single farm. That's not a heavy plow farm right there. Yep, he really waited for that. And heavy plow does take a lot longer than horse collar. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, makes sense, right? This is going to go late game. That's your bonus right there. I, I, I'd be curious to watch the reds collected at the bottom right. Every time I watch the Burgundians, I'm just staring at that number right there and I'm just seeing it climb and climb and climb. So, yeah. I mean, they, they get ahead so fast, mm -hmm. for basically for free, because it's not like Hart can do anything to stop him from clicking both. So like, please don't click it. Yeah. It, he's got to click it every single time. So yeah. it's, it's a guaranteed advantage. Hart's kind of just stuck in the feudal age with him here, and he's going to be walling up and just playing towards the next age. But this feels like a pretty solid position for Viper here. Yeah, and uh, this is similar to game one when Viper just assumed Hart will not make a lot of army. Mm -hmm. So I will not rush the walls down. It's really interesting. Like, I would never do this, right? Mm -hmm. I, I would always get my walls down and play safe. But Viper's like, eh, I'm actually completely fine. He's going to save that scout underneath his TC for later. Yeah. That guy's just waiting to be healed up. <laughs> I like how he moved it even further underneath the TC. Hey, I, I, we did see Hart <laughs> run for the sheep, so who knows? Ooh, big speedrun engagement. Oh, never lucky. Hart's just losing all these 50-50s here. Down a scout and a spear. Can uh, we see Hart's fog of war here? Can he, I want to see, can he see the scout? This is really important business. Yeah, for sure. Oh, he's close. Spearman, scout. Ooh, Ooh, eats oh, a hit there. Oh. It's not good for the oh. morale. She's the stable, though. <laughs> <laughs> that scout. <laughs> that is so funny. Uh. And there's no way Hart expects it to be there. So. Oh, look at that. Viper's on the screen here as well. Oh, man. And that's from the meme master here. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, and then uh, stable there for the Viper, who didn't make a single scout because he assumed Hart would wall. And that res collect is looking great. I think he might have actually sent that scout out now, Here, I don't see it. And he's going to go middle. That's actually quite yeah. smart because that does need to be scouted, and he doesn't think Hart has anything there right now. And by the way, finding all of those relics just saves you such a headache when you're looking for them later. If you if you scout them earlier, you know exactly where to go with your monk. You could shift-click all of them. Uh, this is a really good play from Viper. Scout in the middle is huge. He does have Loom, so like Hart could snipe a vill, but it's going to be... It's going to be tough. Can he do it, though? No. Doesn't commit for it. Now, does Viper switch that to another farm? Okay, he does. 100%. I could see... I could, if that's like Viper versus me. He leaves that vill there, and he's like, try. <laughs> just try. Yeah. Go ahead. Try. <laughs> just ba baiting for the YouTube shorts, yeah. basically. <laughs> it's, like, it's just too late for it. I almost... I'm, like, going to leave, because I'm like, I don't want to give you the opportunity to embarrass me, okay? <laughs> just save face and back up. Uh, Actually, a heart losing that scout is pretty bad. I'm going to see the market now from Viper. He does need a second building. The market's natural here. Hart looks like he's gonna click up faster. Not sure. Not sure how that's possible with Viper's res collected, but I guess he's buying the upgrades as well, which I guess it kind of evens out here. Hart spending less on every vill, clicks up the castle slightly faster, which means faster town centers, faster monastery. Pretty decent advantage there going into the castle age. And this is where the Hindustanis can start to catch up. 
because they have the cheap bills. Mm -hmm. I think, I actually think against Burgundians, you have to go second and third town center before the monastery. If you okay. can do all of them, great, do it. But if you have to choose between delaying a monastery or not, I think you, or delaying TC, you, you always choose to delay the monastery here because yeah, relics are important, but it's likely you're gonna lose some monks to the scouts anyways. So you can actually delay the monk production by a couple minutes in order to make sure those TCs are there. And then maybe the Vil count's not going to be, you know, the Vil count will bring you back in terms of resources mm -hmm. collected. Yeah, I, I do like that. I think going three TC right away. And honestly, on this map, you don't really need to rush the monastery because there's so many relics that, like, you're not denying all of them. There's yep. just no way, right? Yep. Uh, so going for a bit more, like, economy first approach could be a very interesting thing for Hart to consider here. Um, Bloodline's coming in, so he's going to go for some heavy, heavy cav units here. That is an advantage he gets that Burgundians don't, by the way, just Bloodline's for the light cav. Yeah, it's true. Stable upgrades are cheaper for Vipers, so they'll have that, but that's a good point there, and, and maybe a potentially a Camel mixed in. A lot of players won't yeah. do it because of Monks, but the Camels do attack faster as well. You know what Viper does that other players don't? So like when Hart had a low scout, he went for the 50-50. When Viper had a low scout, he just run back. Yep, he no, wants to no heal risk. It. Yeah, he wants to heal it. And this is why he's so consistent with his tournament results because he doesn't take stupid risks. He'll take risks when he needs to. Yeah, doesn't take stupid risks. Keeps it consistent, and he'll have two fully healed scouts. And look at that heart gets caught. Oh my god, that's gotta scouts. be so frustrating. I, I'm this is like the Viper special right yeah. here. <laughs> Burger and fries. He keeps his scout and he takes your scout later. Yeah, and this is and then he gets a slight boom lead. This is game yeah. one all over again yeah. with a different map and different play. Viper in his sweet spot, and, and you mentioned the draft. Hart had banned Arena because he knew Viper could get these tiny little economic advantages and scout advantages. Um, yeah, Hart banned Arena. Viper then picked Fortified Clearing, which is the most Arena-like map after that. Uh, really impressive what Viper has done. Uh, TC's right away from Hart. This is what we wanted to see. Makes sense for Viper with a bit more control to go for the Monastery. I will say, though, if you have to choose uh, which side you prioritize, uh, or or I, I guess uh, the other option would be go middle. Always go middle uh, okay. because the relics are closer together. Yeah. And it's just it's just easier to, to mm. control. You're not like going to the corners of the map all the time. Okay, Vi Vipers, is, we need to talk about this. Vipers going second monastery here at the back. This gives them double production for, for his monks. Good, huh. good pick off from, from Hart right there. But it also lets him put the relics at the back, which is huge. Because if you have the relics at the front, you lose an early imp to position, you lose all the relics. If, if he has them at the back, a little bit more safety there. So are you saying like, are you That's saying like the potential to shift the relics to the back, or you think he's going to I think he's going to put them there from the start, save himself some I, time. Prediction, I think he's going to, he's going to be, it's going to be split. Splits. So the, if the monk is closer to one, it's going to go to that one, and maybe go to the other one. But that's okay. a good point. Let's see. Because pushing middle, late castle age, early castle mm -hmm. can be really big here. Yeah, it could happen. Couple spears from Viper might go down. Those got a lot of value though. We did see them chop down a couple scouts from Hart. Hart has a vill lead here because Viper went double monastery. He delayed the third TC. Hart has an eighth vill lead. That's substantial here. Mm -hmm. Does have the TC outside his base as well, and Viper could run into some space issues. All the TCs on one screen here. And I want to uh, see. I want to see early hand card from Viper. You research it fast. Cheap. It's cheap. You have the resources. You're not going to use the resources on anything else right now. I don't know. Camel. I just there's something satisfying about like 50 villager handcart. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. You don't encounter that situation too frequently, but I'm a big fan. Yeah, uh, handcart's just a really good upgrade. Also, like picking up early, you don't forget it. You don't yeah. forget it. Like less things can go wrong. Feels, yep. feels nice. Let's see if Hart can actually capitalize on this timing. He's chasing out those monks. Might get one. The relic gets away anyways. And here we go. Moment of Let's truth. See. Which monastery? Which monastery? Oh! No Suspense monastery. Suspense is building. <laughs> Does, doesn't even want it. <laughs> Suspense is building here. A couple monks from Hart. Might get some last minute conversions. Viper! Boom! Nah, bro. No That's way, my dude. boy. That's my boy. No, he's going no. to the front door. That's crazy. Wait, where is it? Oh my ah, god, that go. was so close. I thought like we connected there. <laughs> I thought we had the same mentality. Go to the back, my brother, you know? Uh, oh my god, that was that was actually really suspenseful. Yeah. It's as suspenseful well played, as suspenseful as a relic war could be. That was it right there, my friend. You're the go caster, bro. I got nothing on you. What can I say? I admit defeat, you know. Well played. Viper's now hunting that that Monk and a spear. Okay. We'll find the monk, though. I don't think the spear's doing too much. Those two like yeah, Let's see what he can do. You are bringing the relic a bit closer to your base, which is the positive here. Hard yeah, to find yeah. another monk kill. 
Oh, God, that's optimistic, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the monk goes down, but the relic is closer to me now. Very nice. That, that's a big deal, dude. <laughs> There's a couple arena clowns in chat right now that are like, that's actually It matters. Weird. That's <laughs> three tiles. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> A couple of relics on the outside as well, by the way. I don't know how much of the players' focus are on the outside. It seems like they're very heavily concerned about the middle relics right now. Yeah. But I do see some red around the outside. Viper is picking some of those up. Viper, this is his home map, so we can assume he's got a little bit more, uh, let's say, games played on it. Yeah. And uh, I think it shows a little bit in, in just how he's prioritized the scouting, the monastery distribution. Yeah. Double monastery is not something you see every day. But I think you you see it because Viper has so many freaking resources with the Burgundians. Mm -hmm. Heart's catching up. But, I mean, Heart, who's had this villager lead ever since Castle Age, still hasn't caught up in Res Collected. Yeah, yeah. And the Relics, of course, bring in resources, too. So it's going to be really good for Viper here. Yeah, but Relics in general bring in gold. But for Burgundians, they bring in food at the same rate. So yeah. it's like you basically have double Relic, and it gives you gold and food, which is like super well-balanced for like what you need for Imp. It just it makes things so smooth in your economy here. Yeah, so it feels like, you know, the other aspect of the middle is that's the area players are likely going to push from. It's also awkward to pressure on those sides, at least with the main push. And the way the map is scripted, there's always going to be that big gold pile outside your walls. So players want TCs there, or castles. Right now, Viper pushing forward. And sometimes you'll see even double stable. A player like Tato really likes to add a second stable to really ramp up the light cap production. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could feel natural at some point for either player to add a barracks, but I think... Imp would make a bit more sense before yeah. trying to switch fully into Pikeman. Here we see the hand card coming in. Like have diving deep. And oh, no conversions. Yeah, that's oh a pretty big deal God. here. And yeah. Viper has the run all the way home. And those monks, Viper, be careful with that monk. It could open the gate. It could open the gate. The relic is in the gate. Oh and my God. the monk goes down and the like have gets away. Is that gate supposed to be open right now? I, 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 I have a memory of like a relic being in a gate. Mm -hmm. And the gate is open, but I don't know. Was it a dream? Was it reality? <laughs> yeah, <I don't. laughs> if you dreamed about that, that would be I, wild. Yeah, I, I actually assumed that the relic would like move away from the wall there. Or just keep the gate open. I, I don't, don't know, know what the intended behavior is there. Yeah, it's it's a bit strange. Not something you see every day, that's for sure. Viper about to click up to Imperial Age. Hard does seem to be a little bit further away. Give him a couple minutes and he'll get there for sure, though. Yeah, and this is where, this is where you're, you're thinking about unit comps. So, feels very natural for Viper to go help. Because you can combine yeah. that with so many other things. Because like, you have to go Halb, or else Cam was on the field. Exactly. Yeah. So Halb is a must. With Burgundians, usually then hand cannons in combination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hindustanis. They have good cab archers, which could be great against like Halb. You could you could still go for Hussars to raid the sides against the Halbs. You could, I think Ghulam's probably off the menu, the unique unit. No, yeah. Versus Burgundian hand cannon here, it's suicidal. Yeah. Oh, wait. Viper's going stables. Even though he saw the camels. So he's a, okay, so it's a mind, it's a mind game, game yeah. because he expects his opponent to expect Halb, mm -hmm. and he's going to then try and, and mix in. I mean, maybe both, actually, as we see Pikeman, but. Also, he might want to go Cavalier just to raid the side. Yeah, yeah. Throw Hart a curveball while then going Halb down the center. He is tagging Pike at the same time. Yeah. Could also be gearing towards a Paladin Halb composition for that, like, all in through the center as well. He's keeping his options open. I would like to see Hart play towards nine range hand cannon here. Yeah, okay, instead of CA, instead yeah, of Cavalchers. Yeah, I, we talked about it at the start. I think I think it's one of the better units, and I think Cavalchers are solid for the mobility, but hand cannon just pack a little bit more of a punch. Okay, go. what do you think? So, obviously it all depends here, right? But like you're later to imp right now, from what we yeah, can see. Yeah. That's an issue because you got to wait for chemistry then. So yeah, does yeah. that factor into it if you think you're on later to imp? Uh, I, I think even with chemistry, you still get the hand, hand cannons before you get the cab archers. I think cab archers take a lot of upgrades, and okay. I don't know if Hart's just ready to, to go for that right now. Yeah. But both can be viable. Like I'm not even 100% sure in this. Like Both can definitely be viable. We'll see what Hart decides to go for. Could even just mix it up and open camel, for example, while waiting for chemistry. Could be a, okay. could be a play there. Okay. Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> Let him have the relic. <laughs> That's crazy. Where is he? Does he is he making a monastery in the back right now, like Viper did? Because why would the monk? Oh, I guess he was going in. I'm stupid. Sorry, he was going yeah, into was that going monastery. In. He used the back door and still got caught. Like this. <laughs> That's crazy. But Viper's there at the right time with the light cap. Now Viper has some cavalier. Shows them and will lose a lot of those units. Actually, yep. a little bit, uh, a little bit strange there. Yeah. Very low upgrades for both players right now in their units. So those camels are going to be able to get the job done, no problem. Couple of pikes on the way. Viper's gonna poke and prod at the sides. We do see a TC on the very left from him where there's a gold, so he's thinking about that. Yeah, and no, like, I expected, like, bigs, like, 
castle drop in the middle, lots of like siege workshops. None of that really. That castle's on flat ground from Viper. That might be a first. There's a hill right next to it. <laughs> That's crazy. But it makes the stone inefficient. Oh, okay. Effic That's efficiency it. over hill. Listen, Burgundians, Burgundians they, they don't collect resources fast, you know? So. Yeah, <laughs> you got to keep the efficiency at a maximum there. Chemistry for Viper right away. Let's see what Heart clicks. If he clicks chemistry right away, that's indicative of Hank Kinnear. Has to be. Yeah. Heart click chemistry. Click chemistry, brother. He's waiting. He's 10 food. Drop it off. Chemistry's coming in. Dun, dun, dun. That's the, that's the university noise. Heavy do, camel. Do, do. Oh, heavy camel. And and chemistry. And there chemistry. Okay, okay. Picking up both. So playing towards camel, Henkin or near, most likely. You can't really afford to see it. There's no fletching coming in, so it's going to be Henkin or near here. You know, I actually like Hearts late game more. I just like the fact that Viper's got six relics. I'm conflicted about it. Yeah. I think he, he also has the momentum on the sides. He's got the TC there. He's the one who's attacking there. I think Hart's kind of like in his shell at the moment. I don't know if Hart really knows where to be, and that's going to be the problem. I think sometimes you just got to gotta make a move. It's hard to say on a closed map, but try and make something happen. Be the one who sends the three. Remember those three light cap? That's yeah, like yeah, that yeah. Up. You do that Take as well. Take the initiative. Yeah, yeah, try and do that. I think he might have tried it there, and Viper had the halves, but you got to find those small moments because we saw in game number two that if Hart starts to control the game, he, mm -hmm. he really could do well with that. But again, Burgundians, dude, the res collect has continued to climb. Viper has five k there. Yeah, like five thousand more resources. Um, heavy cam is on the field. The way I see it here is if Viper's fighting at full force with the Halves and the Cav together, he's going to take good, good fights. But if it's just like the Camel chasing Cav, then Hart is favored. Yeah. But Viper's got the push right now. He's got the Siege. He's got the full composition he wants, which is like the Cav with the Halb at the same time. And I think the, the cannons do more damage for the Burgundians. That's a big deal. You push really fast. Let's see what Hart Ooh. can do. It's always a struggle when you have your buildings on the front like this. Yep. Also always a struggle if you don't have the Halb numbers here. Viper does, he does have enough Halbs if he can group them up properly. Hart just takes it. Uh, is I that think, a good fight? I, I think it's a good fight for Viper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you'd be right in that. I, mean, <laughs> I love how, so Hera, like, I, I, people can't see this. I'm probably doing it as well. <laughs> but, like, certain moments, Hera's, like, kind of lunging forward, really looking. He's like, is that good? I got to see. Uh, but I think, we can under, I think we can understand, though, like, it was, it was close, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But Viper had just enough, which is so typical for him. And uh, Viper's going to know it's hand cannons. And he's, oh, God, he's got the treb on the ranges. He's got the bomber cannons on the ranges. Yeah. And what's he going to do? Small lead here? You just switch to the other side now. Yeah. Some, some raids on the other side. Uh, obviously, the pop defense is 30 right now. So, like, those units on the left side, Hart doesn't have the answer right now. He yeah. doesn't have the pop. And, okay, he's going for some some form of initiative here. Going for a cast on the left, looking to secure that gold. It, it just a question of how fast Viper can push this, because... Do we have the nine range on the hand? He did get it. He did okay, get we it. have it. So th that is our late game comp. Let's see if we can get there and stabilize this now to give ourselves a chance in late game. Yep. And Viper will see the castle on the right. The units on the left haven't actually dove in yet. And Viper clicking Paladin. I, I actually really like the Paladin play here. It's like, if this Camels take one bad engagement, Paladin wins you the game. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I, I find a real issue with the hand cannons right now for Hart with his position is it's hit and run. And he's running further and further into a base that has already been half destroyed. He yeah. has never been able to push with it because of Viper's timings here. I, I don't hate this position for Hart, though. He's going to win every fight from now on. His comp is way better. And Viper's got the raids and Viper's got the timing, though. Let's see if Hart can stabilize this. It's such a tough task. But if he can stabilize this, oh, and some counter rating, that's good for him. Yep. If he can stabilize this, we got a game in our hands. Viper doing all he can to push fast, prioritize the relics as well. Very smart. Yeah, there's a point where you know, they're always going to be producing more army as you're killing their villagers. There's a point where if, if the better comp gets up to like 60, 70 pop, it can fight everything back. With yeah, a couple yeah. siege, siege weapons, it can start to push it back. But Viper, he's not going to give Hart any time on that gold. That castle will fall there for Hart. Hart's population down to 165. And Viper, if he starts to take bad trades here, Hera, he's going to have multiple castles spanning the center of the map to control from any counter attacks. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta watch the Henkin near as well, because the Paladin could take good engagements if, if you're not careful. The Camels have to always be babysitting the, the cannons in the back as well. It's a good play from Viper. Takes the fight. Oh, he gets around the other side, which could have blocked oh. the hand cannons. And there's a big oh shot, and the my. hand cannons are gone. That oh, was, man. Oh it almost looks like they, they regrouped, you know? Like they, yeah. they clicked them back and they went for Oh, it was that, so bad for Hart. That we did not need that. If you're cheering for Hart, that's a bad sign right there. Honestly, to celebrate.
celebrates, Viper should click the button. See what happens. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> GG, okay. No, he's not going to click no the button. No time for the you're button. The, you're the only button. You and Lee are the only button clickers in NAC uh, history, I think. I but. got it nerfed. You're welcome. You're welcome, yours. I got it nerfed. <laughs> you did get it nerfed. GG, well played, though. GG, well played. I mean, listen, on paper, in my opinion, that was a very Viper esque map. Mm -hmm. And I think the Burgundians are just superior. I, I, I think they are. I, I get yeah, your yeah. late game. But in terms of like the flow of the game, it's really hard to compete. Like Hart had to find good engagements. Viper doesn't take bad engagements very frequently, mm -hmm. and and that was clear. I, a, I think a like comment back and forth, and I wonder what they're talking oh, about they're there. But Viper said something. Yeah, they might have been talking about the game a little bit. We saw a lot of chatting with uh, Doubt and Leary earlier. They were having a good time. I really wish they were mic'd up. Yeah, I want to know what they were saying. It would be quality. I mean, I can imagine when it comes to Doubt. I mean. I, I would have won if it wasn't for that one unit. Yeah, yeah. It's always like that. <laughs> to me, to me, it seemed like Doubt was talking to Leary like he would talk to a practice partner yeah, yeah. When they, after they finish a game, which I'm not sure you should do if it's not your practice partner, but I guess at like, that point... You know in chess, like it's always like Magnus versus Hikaru, and after the game, they just like talk and they point at the board, and then they just understand each other. Like, it <laughs> like, always yeah, happens. Yeah, 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 it always sure. happens. I think I, Leary had this look, though, where he was like soaking up information and he wasn't giving anything back. Mm -hmm. He was like, uh-huh, laughing, a couple comments. Letting that talk. He was just like, yeah, yeah, keep talking, <laughs> keep talking, dude. Yeah, that's fun, that's fun. I, mean, I, I do like the player, uh, you know, back and forth. I think it's really interesting. Hart, oh, Viper has to get up. Hart, stone cold. Remember, Staying after down. game three, established five-minute break. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try something here. Against me, ACCM ran to go <laughs> yeah, smoke. He was like, I got to get as many cigarettes in as possible. That was crazy. We told the whole story. Viewers loved it. It was so funny. All right, production. I want to try something with his background. Let's make the most of this. Okay. Okay, so can you do the thing where we're, like, moving with the ship, and when they do it, we need to, like, look for land? Oh, uh, uh, this way. Wait, wait no. What? That, what? Wait. Okay, so come on. You know. No, when, when we... I'm looking for T90's farm right now. <laughs> that was probably horrible, wasn't it? <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I couldn't know. see it. We weren't looking, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. That's all. That's all I've got. If there was a plank, we could like we could like walk off the plank, but there's no plank. So whoever did this screwed up. Yeah, we definitely needed a plank there. Oh, we're just flying around now. It's crazy. <laughs> Feels like we're a part of a really old game in an arcade, and like they someone's trying to shoot a gun at us right now. As and we're, we're dodging. <laughs> yeah. I actually like those old games, though. I'm, I mean, big surprise to play AOE, but uh, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, here. yeah. All Enough right, fun this is around. great. Yeah, people paid money for this. People worked the job. They went to work. They clocked in. Mm -hmm. They learned a craft, potentially. And all that work was put into putting that on screen. I mean... What like, a better way to spend your money. Here's the thing. like You buy a gold watch, right? You spend your money on that, and then uh -huh. you lose it. It's gone forever. This moment, it's never going to go. <laughs> forever. It's burned into the internet. Forever. 13,000 people watching, everyone remembers this moment. Okay, next question. Have you lost a watch before? No. Okay, I was going to say, because the watch you put on, it's like... I don't pay for watch. I pay for this. I'm one of those guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I pay for. Oh, man. I mean, one of the, thing, one of the things, it was like astronomical to, to add it in. But, like, I was really hoping someone would go crazy and add, like, a really meme map and make Nilly have a hard decision, right? Because it yeah. was like you could add a map to the prize pool. Tato and Doubt have talked about Forest nothing more than they've talked about anything else in the back room. <laughs> so I, I mean, we were joking about it. It's like it's $20,000 to add a map. It's, it's a big sum of money. But imagine, like, 4-4, four, four, you're going to the grand finals. Viper with a donation, $20,000. <laughs> boom, map of his choice on the spot. Ooh, that would Huge be play. interesting. If Huge you could play. add it on the fly. On the fly, like... That almost needs to be. That's like pay to win to the next that needs, level. That needs to be. <laughs> ooh, that is that's a that's a show match or tournament idea right yeah, there. That would be wild. Yeah, uh, I I'd, I'd, I'd have to save up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> that that could be rough. That could be rough. <laughs> oh man. Well, we'll have our third game here soon. Hart taking his break, but you know, game two felt very similar to game number one that he lost against Viper, and that tells me that he can easily bounce back, control the game, and, and tie the series up 2-2. We've not had a game five yet today for the first day of NAC. True. Makes sense, I think, with how the seeding's situated. Um, I, I would like to see it. I'd like mm -hmm. to see it, and I think my question now is, Hart loves Arabia, picked Arabia, draft Arabia. I mm -hmm. think his, his number one Civ, or I guess number three or whatever, is Inca's probably for Arabia. Um, what do, you, do, do you go for your best map? In game four to tie it up, or do you go for your best map 
you save it for game five. Mm, in my opinion, you take Arabia right now because it, it, if it comes to a tiebreaker, you want to have the second win. Let's assume Hart wins Arabia, right? And he's got more chances than Arabia. You want the win. Even if he was 3-2, better losing 3-1. The, the, the one game could be a tiebreaker down oh, the yeah. line. That's it's, true. It's a possibility. That's true with this format. Yep. yep. Also, bragging rights. You lost to Viper by one game. It was so close. You write your own narrative. But you got 3-1, eh. Ew. Yeah. Easy set for yeah, Viper. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, Viper is trolling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No one remembers that game. Yeah. Exactly. So you, you definitely need the second win if you're hard here. And I think okay. you go Arabia, you, you just get into your comfort zone, and you just see what happens. You don't want to play African read bets, you know, deal with some crazy strat, lose, and then be like, oh, like, what, what would happen in Arabia, you know? Do we see Vietnamese, Huns, or Bohemians on Arabia from Viper? I would lean towards Vietnamese here, but then it leaves me greater questions. Mm -hmm about African reed beds. Think you go Bohemian. Okay, this is how Viper thinks, okay? I know you won the Relic War with the Monastery. <laughs> this is how Viper thinks, trust me. I'm on, I'm on his team, I know, I know how he thinks. <laughs> All right, a whole, listen. A whole 12 hours, he already understands We talked the so much. We talk, in theory, was off the charts. Yeah. He goes Vietnamese on African reed beds. Why, you might ask? Because Gilnets <laughs> is on discount, and he's in a fish. That alone will make him go Vietnamese on African reed beds. And he goes, doesn't even matter, bro. Arabia, Huns or Bohemians, doesn't matter. You pick it. He just wants to save on Gilnets. So he, I mean, you seen him play Black honestly, Forest, by the way? Honestly, he, he's obsessed with the fish boom. He loves it. I t he drafted me for the Black Forest tournament. Oh, really? Yeah, it was interesting. You didn't, you didn't hear it, but you. No. Wait, wait, interesting choice to pick me? It, it was, hey, it's it supposed could, to be dissing Viper. We're it, supposed to be dissing him, not me. I'm saying it could be a good choice. It, very interesting. Yeah, like, you said really interesting. It, <laughs> you guys didn't see his face, but I did. And I'm just like, <laughs> you know, sinking right now. Okay, anyways, he picked you on the, on the team. Yeah, and like Viper's <laughs> like, if there was a pond, he's like, I get pond. <laughs> no like, matter what. I get pond. <laughs> he's just like, listen, I'm, I'm Viper. I get pond. He's just based, obsessed with fish booming. So. Based, yeah, I understand. I mean, I've seen his YouTube videos. He goes crazy with uh, with the fish booming there. So, I, listen, I think Vietnamese for African Rebets, it looks like they're hopping into the game here. Let's see if we can jump in and uh, see what they're playing. It, it could be Arabia, of course. Yeah, and, yeah. But, you know, we could use process of elimination. And it is going to be Vietnamese on Arabia. God, I'm 0-2 on Viper. Yeah. Really? Oh, I am Hera. I understand Viper. Oh, my <laughs> God. I'm literally the Viper at home, but like a budget version that doesn't work. It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of sad. Well, you know, not to, not to rub it in, but prior to your whole gloating session there, I did predict Vietnamese on Arabia. You did. You're not the goat of casting. It is yeah, what it is. Not, not to rub it in. Uh, but, <laughs> but, I mean, Inca's on the other side here for heart. Yeah. Really strong civilization. Uh, extremely flexible. They, they get the llama, which is, of course, great because... Bama Jam with, with good old heart there from Peru. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that food, the savings on pop space with the house, not needing to build as many houses leads to some level wood savings and then cheap units. Um, great save. They cannot make scouts, though, so mm -hmm. that option is kind of off the menu. I would lean more towards maybe like an archer build, but we have seen a lot of spearmen skirm play from the Incas. Yeah, true. What do you think about that? I mean, th that's a strategy that recently became very popular. I made a YouTube video about it describing the whole thing because it, it popped up recently a couple months ago and people have been loving it. Um, it. Probably not the time for Incas to use it right now because Vietnamese have great skirmishers. Yeah. So I I'd expect to see some like archer eagle play from Incas. Plays a bit more towards like what Vietnamese have trouble dealing with, but Vietnamese can do just about anything on a radio. Could you see... A frush here. We have not seen a single frush. The two militia little French yeah, drush. Yeah. I think it's good. I think if you like doing it, you go for it. Yeah. Um, but it's not something like, oh, I really want to see it right now. It's, yeah. It doesn't get me too excited. But if yeah. you like that style, you go for it. It's not bad. It's not great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's good, the barracks. I was looking at the wood there. I've seen a million games from Hard on Arabia. So my brain was kind of like, eh, it could make sense. And then, again, it kind of... If you still want to go Skirm Spear, having the two Militia kind of helps with that because yeah, yeah. you don't feel like you're playing into Skirms against better Skirms if you've added something prior to. That's how my brain sees it. But yeah. You're insane, by the way. You call Viper, you call Hearts, calling everything right now. Yeah, and then I have... have like wooden wrists. <laughs> <laughs> no hands. I can't miss play. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, I'm so happy, by the way. Uh, you were mentioning earlier, uh, we talked about the games you casted to mine. Like, yeah, yeah. Ago. I'm so happy that that people got to witness my comment, the Dragon Star. Do you remember? Because when I went back, of course, I was like, oh, God, why did Hera watch those games? It's so bad. <laughs> then he said, like, top, potential top 20. I was like, no way from that game. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, I asked Dragon Star, like, how he's doing? And I was like, and he's like, oh, not that, not that good. How about you? I was like, I was like, the mind is, uh, the, the body's weak, but the mind is ready. Or yeah, something yeah. Like that. <laughs> 
I remember that now. I relate to that so much, dude. It, oh. You're just in the right mentality, but who knows what the body's up to on a given day. I guarantee you, there's so many people here. They could type ones in our chat. They're wa gonna watch this tournament. They're like, yeah, my brain is on fire. I'm clicking. I'm predicting things. I'm ready. Yeah. They're gonna load into the game. They're gonna play a game, and they're just gonna be like, oh god, this is. I, I can't. Like, I, I can't keep up. You know. Oh, for sure. For there's sure. obviously practice involved in that. Don't quit, people. I'm just saying that at every level, I think some people can kind of relate to the beauty of the game and then how sometimes it could it could fall apart on you. Hart's picking up three militia, by the way. And Viper's not scouting him because yeah, he Viper's just he knows about where his base is. Mm -hmm. Gonna go Vietnamese. straight there. Yeah. So he's like, okay, all right, we'll get there late. But getting there late could be a problem here yep, if he doesn't yep. pick up on this. Scouting the gold doesn't doesn't give it away. This could be Eagles. Yep. Another Civ, this is Men at Arms. But this could just be Eagles. Viper's not going to think twice about this. He I, also I, saw two villagers instead yeah, of three. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, we're gonna see the middle. Oh, that here. eagle needs to be there though. This could be against huge. Viper. Viper is the quick wall, quick wall guy though. Also, I could see a trap happening there, in some way, yeah, shape, or yeah. form. Oh boy, so, yeah. this is this is where we get to see if Viper has his quick wall fingers ready for NAC five. <laughs> okay, there's one. Oh. Oh, he wants to, oh, I, I'm sensing the trap. a trap, dude. I'm sensing a trap. That villager's moving suspiciously far to the right, and in the end, Viper gets the quick walls down. Oh, dude, Hart, don't go in there, dude. If there's a trap, you go for it right now. Oh, uh, don't oh. go in there. Don't go in there. Oh, he thought about it. He was so close. He could have got a gate there. Then he wants to go for it, man. But that's like the Viper effect, right? Yeah, You're, yeah, you yeah. Like, it affects how you attack. It affects the options you even go for. But I do like the, the push anyways. Is, is put Viper's focus on this. He's invested resources into it. I think if I'm not wrong, his range is that. Oh, no, he's got a stable, sorry. Um, so he is going to be making scouts. Mm -hmm. But yeah, wild stuff from Viper. He could have easily lost two bills. Yeah, I like that you mentioned that, actually, because, like, if you think about that situation, one one misstep and you're down in one, two bills, the game could just end on the spot. So yep. he, Viper's playing with fire. And uh, let, let's see what I can do after this. The men arms are still alive, right? They're still yeah. getting value. Is there a tree between those two palisades of Viper's wood line? It's the the northern lumber camp. Let's see the villas walking towards. I think towards. there's a. Yeah, it's a tree. Okay, there's Stop a tree. It. Okay. Yeah, it looked like it could have been a hole there. Range for Viper with his scouts. Might not have even scouted that much of Hart's base at this point. Hart's gonna follow this up with spearmen and an archer soon. Can we take a look in between Viper's aggression here? In between Viper and Hart's base. So Hart can move out with an archer, but if he does, he could get picked out. That's, That's why he nice. sends a spear. Yeah. He sends a spear as well. So that archer's gonna come hit the vill. Now Ooh. we see a spear at home. Viper eats one hit. Yeah, didn't seem like that was intentional from Viper. As Viper moves out with the skirms, this gets spotted, and it's going to be tricky for that villager to save himself here. That archer is doing the job pretty nicely. Oh, and that, Hart also with some great hits here on Viper scouts. That spear's determined. And hold, hold on, hold on. Hart's Hart's not going to yep. let him get away with that one. Beautiful and there's another play one. From Hart. There's another That's one. That's going to be blocked as well. Can Ooh. Viper quick wall it? The skirms could actually block, and in the end, Hart backs away. But this has been amazing aggression from Hart against Viper. Yeah, and there could be one more here. The men at arms are doing massive damage. If you can get the block, another fill down. Two fills down. This is this big is damage. This, this is, is big huge. damage. And I got to say, on some level, it does snowball back to mm -hmm. Viper using the Vietnamese bonus to be a little too greedy, perhaps, right? Yeah. It's not scouting. And also, the meta right now is not man at arm heavy. 100%. So that's yeah. part of it. Yeah, yeah, no one's going meta arm as their main strategy. So Hart mixing it back into the meta. This is how the meta develops through the tournament, guys. And now maybe we see a third villager. That should be a dead vill. It should be two hits uh, from the eagle and he's gone. And he's dead, yep. Wow. Three villagers killed against Viper, even though Viper got quick walls down. Yep. And now, like, the, the beauty of Hart as a player is, you know, there's very few players in the world that can get those kills, mm -hmm. but his eco is actually perfect behind this. Yeah, like, yeah. No doubt. I'm not even looking at it. I'm sure that once we take a look over there in a moment, that he's going to have plenty of farm set up and his eco is going to look beautiful. Yeah, look Dude, at that's that. It's yeah. insane. There's so like, well done. Honestly, yeah. There's you and Hart, I think, are the best at that with that like one little like archer, little militia aggression, and then having that type of farm setup. That is beautiful. Disagree. Never make a militia in my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> you, know, you can't catch me on that arm. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he, he, you know, Hart does a really good job putting the pressure, keeping the eco clean at home. Now he's got the eagles coming out as well. I would like to see more on gold and potentially a cell stone from Hart. The game yeah. is wide open. Both players fully open. There's no walls. This could be like a, a really nice setup into all in eagles. Yeah, I think the, the the nice thing here, though, is Viper can't actually make double militaries. He loses an archer. He can't go scout archer. So it's kind of weird that he had to go, like, scout skirm, and now he's back into archers. The The flow of the game's not there for him. So if that, with three or four on gold, you can still produce skirmishers or archers out of one range in combination with an eagle here or there. 
Military Council looking, looking nice. Yeah, we saw real quick on the screen there the stats. These are two of the three strongest civs on Arabia. And Mines, of course, left out there as the third. Uh, so, you know, these guys definitely picking some good civs here. Haven't seen my Dravidians on Arabia yet, but may <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I'll surprise everyone with those. <laughs> yeah, we are going to see infantry armor now from Heart. So it's, is it, it is going to be some eagle mix in. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Viper. Heart's just tracked him the whole way through. It's been an interesting series, right? It's like Viper gets his, got his wins on the closed strategical maps. The more open it is, the better Heart has been, especially early Feudal. But he caught off Viper big time here. Viper's still trying to recover from this, and he, he's trying to find a way to, to move out past that wood line. It also hurts that Viper went double lumber camp on this area. True. The area he's been yeah. pressured on. He has not had a safe wood line to work with at all. Yeah, that's true. Double lumber camp on the same is like, it's a win big if you can protect it or lose big if yeah. you get pushed off it. And all of a sudden it gets really awkward here. Is that a second range or a second barracks from Hart? I kind of missed that one. I think it was the barracks. Second barracks. We're going to see heavy eagle play. Does still have some range units alive though, which are going to be a nice mix and a nice complement to those eagles. Yeah, I think... The, the, the worry here for Hart, if there is one, is he doesn't have many archers. His ranged units will become less effective if Viper commits to more and more scouts. And Viper's archers are in high enough mass, at least for the time being, that could change to snipe any eagles, too. And eagles do take a long time to produce, so if you're going for double barracks, it could be tricky. Viper's micro has been insane yeah, here. Yeah, crazy He's got an micro. amazing fight. And, and if there's scouts remaining, all the skirmishers are going to go down as well here for Hart. And that is maybe a little bit of a way back for Viper across that the was, map. That was real. Hart didn't play bad, but just Viper played really, really well there. Taking a good trade. Obviously, Hart ends up still decent. It's, it's not like Hart gets cleaned up 100%. Yep. Definitely a good trade for Viper, though. Yeah, and 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 now we're seeing more skirms playing into the towards the scouts. This actually isn't bad. If you're going to lose these guys, you just go in and you kill as many archers as possible. Yeah. Actually, misjudging it completely. He's not gonna. He's not gonna lose them now at all. He had the eagles reinforcing because of the yep. second barracks. Yep. yep. And, and now he's got two in queue, so it should be more on the way. And and I just expected a little bit more from Viper, but the economic blow he took earlier, mm -hmm. combined with the need for so much army, because Hart is always sending forward more units. It's made things really tough for the snake. Yeah, like the three vills, those, that's the difference between 700 rest collected basically right now. Yep. Obviously factoring some idle time here and there, but the three vills so early in the game, it just snowballs so much. And now Hart's taking better and better trades. He's following up with more army. And I just feel like if he can get like four eagles together, yeah. I think it can be really hard to stop. Yeah, I mean, Viper's producing out of his range. He's producing out of his stable. Viper would need another building as he does separate the skirms oh. from the eagles here. Oh. And now all the skirms are going to be picked off. Viper oh. with a few. Oh. Oh. Uh. Viper with a good enough play. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, it was still pretty good. <laughs> Yo, the viewers, <laughs> viewers like that one. Viewers like that one. That was sick. That was sick. Uh, I mean, obviously went wrong there at the end, but still a good play. Managed to pick up three skirmishers out of the six, and now Hart's reinforcing. Yeah, Vil count is somehow even now. Okay, we see the wheelbarrow coming in now from Hart as well, so a little bit deceiving there. But Viper still has good resources. Maybe he'll click Castle H faster somehow here. Yeah, seriously. Somehow is yeah. the word. Somehow is the word, right? Like. Ooh, it, in the market as well. To, to macro this well after losing the three vills and having to to kind of be on this razor's edge, razor's edge, mm -hmm. barely staying alive here is really impressive. You do still have the worry of army comp in the long term, but scout archer is not a bad army comp. As we've seen, if those skirms get caught out at all, could be problematic here for Hart. I, I wouldn't mind if Hart just backs up a little bit, waits a bit till Castle Age. Because the thing is, those Eagles get an instant upgrade in Castle, yep. whereas Viper has to make the Knight or make the Light Cap tech or the Crossbow tech. Whereas the Eagles get the extra three attack right away. A Viper heavy on gold here. Goes to the backward line as well, wants to play a little safer. Really impressive. I mean, the best players, they're, they're going to get caught out, but they find a way to turn it around. Mm -hmm. And right now, it looks like Viper has given himself a chance to do so. More quick walls here. Those eagles are not going to get through. The skirms won't kill villagers over top the houses. I think Hart's hesitant to run past there, too. He knows if he runs between that mill yeah, loop yeah. and the kill vills, he'll probably get trapped or something. It's like a bait. It's just waiting oh, to happen. Oh, man. You've got to be thinking. Oh. You've got to be thinking. I don't see Viper's army. Those archers might be coming by oh, base. He broke and he's in? actually through. What? That is not something I expected here. Eagles don't break that fast. Viper might have misstepped there. Who knows what happened, but Viper... And there's no archers The now. archers are out of position. Yeah, the archers are out of position. They need to counterattack now more than ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't go back. The damage yeah. is done. Go home. He can't actually uh, move them forward the in the proper home. time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And now Hart has more time to realize those archers should be on the way. And if yeah. I'm not wrong, he's walling, and he has all his new army waiting mm -hmm. right at his base. This is beautiful play from Hart. That was so good. It's like... 
surprising that he was able to get those additional villager yeah. kills. But oh. he continues to pressure and he oh. continues to make sure that Viper is is up against it as he tries to go through again and there's a bit of a hole there and Viper's gonna have more problems with this That's army. That's crazy. And I want to talk about it real real quick. Hart realized Viper's army is not there. He walls up at home. He, he did that, that's pure intuition, and then he continues to attack. He knows, he didn't see it, he just knows Viper's army is counter-attacking. That is a genius play from Hearts, and he's gonna be capitalizing on it. 30 seconds till castage though, maybe keep the Eagles alive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, if, he yep, can, yep. if he can wait to take any more fights, another 15 seconds, all those villagers die. Oh, Viper boy. though, the gold is right there. If he can get there, that could be huge. Quick, this is where Hart needs the quick wall. Yeah, quick wall. <laughs> Hart needs the quick walls, all the timing. Okay, seven but attack. Eagles, oh, the Eagles are so strong. And yeah, you're off of gold, crazy. you're off of wood, How? and then on the other side, Hart Quick is holding. Wall. Yeah, this that is, is beautiful. Huge. This is the, one of the best Arabia games we've had in tournaments in a, in a long time here. Very, very nice. Very high level play. Very back and forth. And we see plus two armor from Hart committing 100% to the Eagles here. And he really goes crazy here. He goes plus two armor first. He's probably going to click the Eagle Warrior upgrade. He, he probably feels like right now, Viper can't reinforce that army on the front. So yep. if he could just rush the engagement over the next minute or so, he could potentially like really snowball this game. At this point, he clears Viper's army, and it might be GG. Yeah, yeah. This is this is Viper's last, basically last, last hope. Because yep. look at the economy. Everything's on gold. The economy is not set up to add anything else. He's got six on wood, zero stone. There's no no development there. It's all on this army. If he gets damage, there's a chance. If he gets nothing, it's game over. Yeah, just don't. If you're hard here, you don't want this army to somehow get through and get yeah, past yeah, yeah. your gold. So you got to be ready to drop a house or something. Mm -hmm. Like right now, you drop the house. Don't let it get through. Oh boy. Oh. Well, it not ideal. Actually, this is not the worst for Viper. It's hard yeah. to say. No Eagle Warrior upgrade. Yeah, yeah, he's missing that's 10 seconds. Um, but I don't I don't think I it's think enough. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Heart the end, enough. Hart's going to clean it up. I mean, Hart can lose so many villagers and still be ahead. And now Viper sits at home, he's going to have some cav archers on the way, which I think is great with Vietnamese some knights. But it is going to be a real struggle for Viper to build up a lot more knights, I think. Yeah, yeah. And the CA really do need time to get a, a bigger mass. And now Hart's actually walling up the left-hand side, just playing it extra safe. He recognizes he's got a little bit of a lead and just wants to not take too much damage uh, from unnecessary counterattacks here. Once he can consolidate his eagles and get into the same spot and start putting pressure, that could be huge. Viper's on CA, though. Yeah. Okay. I, I like Vietnamese Cav Archers a lot. I also think CA against Eagles can be good if you get to like 25 of them, which is a lot right now. But but like you get to a point where you're easily two-shotting them. Yep. And uh, you know you're only spending wood and gold to mass these things. So I, I think there's a world where CA could work. The worry for Viper though is he's just down so far economically, and he's also not walled. And he's like, not walled. He didn't really solve the problem. Uh, we can't fight Eagles. Yep. They're gonna run through everything. Yep. We talked about the the TC is basically not threat. Uh, yeah, and he should run through. Okay. I, I think Hart yeah, should yeah. be running through there. Just go right to that gold. Little yeah. surprised he hasn't done so. But maybe he doesn't want to waste army now because he will know. He has the lead and he can take Viper to the fifth game here if he keeps this up. He's going to add a TC as well. That's pretty smart. Buys back the stone. He, he, oh, a good micro with the, with the monk there as well. Baits Viper in to try to snipe the monk. Just moves out of the way. Starts the conversion again. Very good micro. Hart is, Hart is incredible. Yeah, yeah. He's incredible. He really is. Like... He, he, what he did in the qualifier was incredible, but first time he's played 1v1 at a LAN, and he's up against Viper. Like what we're seeing here is truly special. And conversion comes in. I'm sure the Monk will go down, but that that's still reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Good value there. And uh, you know, Viper still one TC at home. You'd expect that. Let me tell you something about Hart real quick. Yeah. He wants maximum value from his wood line. Doesn't leave a single tree. <laughs> he, it, it's like he wants a good deal. You know? I, am, I am very concerned about the wood situation, though. I do like the new TC he's just placed, though. Yeah, that, that's, that's going to be good. That stone. That also protects that opening for cab archers kind of looping by there. Which is how they've been coming in as well. Yeah, very yep. nice. Ooh, and good walls there. Yep. Yeah, and, you know, thankfully being Incas, you do get the armor on your villagers as well in Castle Age. So you're going to survive some of those shots. Gives you time to react. Art moving forward to Viper's base. Viper sees this. You would expect Viper's micro to be superior. He's got the faster units, but then also he's not booming at all. So it's likely that the unit control should look pretty smooth for Viper. Just can he get the numbers? A uh, hole in the, in the in the woodland as well here. 
you know, this feels like Viper has some kind of like play here. Yep. It's not pretty. Obviously, the stats are all in favor of Heart, but it looks like Viper has somewhat of a chance. He's getting ballistics. The Cavalry is going to be super accurate against those moving eagles now. A and I feel like if Heart takes this lightly, he could lose. Yeah, it, it, honestly, and it could be a classic Viper comeback yeah, era, yeah. right? 20 villagers down. But he's got cav archers, he's got ballistics, and he, you know, he's he's microing pretty well. And obviously here, Hart will be relatively happy with the fact he's keeping Viper at home and yeah. killing a villager or two. He also knows about ballistics now. He yeah. or he at least he should if he's paying attention. I think I think scorpions needs to be the best, the next play from Hart here. Mm -hmm. Mix in two to three scorpions with yeah. the eagles. Oh, yo, and, you're insane. Yeah, you're like, I mean, <laughs> it's not my best call out ever. I mean, <laughs> uh, after after what we saw, you're four zero on call outs. I mean, impressive. he might he might go siege tower. It could be Siege Tower. <laughs> jump over like the side. <laughs> if That's you could crazy. jump over trees with Siege Towers, that would be uh, you can't, maybe you, viable. Bro, you can barely jump over Palisades. Those things don't work, I'm convinced. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, two TC set up for Heart, defensive Scorpions, maybe even a third town center. He's mining stone towards like a castle here. It's not common to go two TCs into a castle, but if you're worried against an all-in, you could figure, I already have a big lead. Yeah. I've killed a lot. I'm on two TCs, he's on one. If there's going to be a snowball coming on maybe a gold or something, let's just prep for that castle earlier. Yeah. yeah. Um, could be pretty decent. Oh, this is not good for heart. Oh man, all those eagles are dead. What? Uh, duh. Am I Wait, am what? I wrong there? I thought I would I would just sit in the choke. Is what do you think? Uh, I guess Viper doesn't want to lose his mass, so he's playing a little safe. I thought you could just, just like sit trap there. them. Yeah. Yeah, just sit. Um, heart kind of gets away there. Um. It, we'll keep those eagles. Can easily heal them up later if he wants to as well. Viper's building up some CA though, so maybe that's what he's kind of prioritizing. Yeah, it's about to be 25, soon 30. Because like, if he doesn't get value, right? Heart is scaling towards a, a way better leg. If he gets imp at any point here and Viper's in castle, the CA are useless. Yep. They're doing one damage to the eagles. And Heart has seen enough to know that Viper's on one TC. I don't think Heart thinks he has a 30 vil lead. He would probably yeah, say yeah. based on the score, maybe like 15, 20. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's kind of, you don't really think about the number as a player. You just think, I have more vills. Yeah. I have more TCs, but, but they, I mean, it's a significant eco lead. It, you look at the resources collected, 5,000 more resources at this yeah, point. Yeah, this game is also really hard for Viper to play, but because he's got to micro the CA, uh, you know, for the uh, for the offense, but then also defend with CA, keep yep. them running. Yep. As soon as you start slipping up, you're losing CA all over the place. But, you know, how many times have we seen players get a lead? And then they stay at home and they don't move out thinking, I have the lead, we protect now. Hart's not doing that. Yep. And so it's not, it's making Viper's life more difficult in the attacks. Yeah. Because all these cab archers have to go home and we're seeing it right now. Viper is completely overwhelmed. And we, we with Hart having a 50 population lead, getting a couple scorpion hits here, he's one good fight away from taking it to a game five. Viper, knowing that, is going to try and force the issue, but he cannot do that. Yeah, the scorpions, the monks, the eagles, this is crazy. The eagles from Hart. Oh! oh! Oh, oh, oh my geez. God! Debated. <laughs> that oh. villager, that villager might have been working for Hart there. Castle on the hill, a little ambitious though. Also, that's like a small hill. Like, I think you go to the top there. If you're gonna go there, you just go to the top, right? Uh, probably needs the gold. Yeah, maybe Main gold's gold. looking yeah. a little awkward. Spending a lot of gold. Viper will see this. Viper will be licking his lips, and this could be the moment for Viper, maybe. There's four scorpions though, Hera, and there's it's no tough. answer to the scorpion. So I think yeah. I think it's gonna be really difficult for Viper to stop this. He castle. also keeps getting converted, like conversion here and there, kind of thins out the CA. Eagles are so annoying. Eagles are so cheap as well. You get the Inca discount as well. Castle will probably go up, and uh, just feels like Hart is cementing his lead. The the longer this goes, the more vils he's up. He's at 40 vils. I feel more confident now in Hart yeah. than I did 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think right at this point, it feels like he should have enough. To, to do whatever he wants. His resources are so good. Viper, though, microing down the Scorpions. Never ideal to have to do this, but the way he has his units grouped is allowing some uh, some level of success here. Yeah. But there's a crazy hype train on the stream right now. Big thank you to all the community members who are supporting Nilly and the tournament. I think if you get to hype train 15, maybe ask Nilly to host NAC6. We'll see. We'll see, <laughs> chat. We'll see. But uh, yeah, yeah, much appreciated with the, with the support Meanwhile, there. Meanwhile, we have the anti hype train in Viper's Eco. These villagers are building quick walls and being pulled off of work for the hundredth time. And we will go to a game oh. five. Viper being taken to the brink here in the first round. And Hart looking strong here, Hera. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Look, look, he's not shaking. A little bit of shaking? I've seen, no, seen some shake. A little bit, but still good form. I'd say 9 out of 10 for the drinking. 9 out of 10, okay. Um, he's feeling confident. I'm telling you, stone cold. 2-2. Two, two.
this is as good as possible. Like this is what Hart wanted. He just wanted to make it competitive, and and give himself a chance at the victory. And yep. this could really be a three-two win for him. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, in this Swiss stage, right? Um, it getting a win against the Viper, who is most likely going to be favored to get wins in tomorrow's set and and beyond. That really helps you with the overall rankings because there's this very complicated tiebreak system, essentially. But to, to, to dumb it down, basically, it's uh, you, if there is a tie, it, it basically comes back to how strong your opponents were and how strong your opponents were. It's not based on anyone's opinion or anything. It's based on their results uh, and their wins and whatnot. So, Nilly's having a chat? Yep, Nilly having a chat with them. Hopefully everything's good. More donos flying in here. Uh, with the donos, guys, I don't know the number. There used to be a ticker at the bottom. We might have that up, but... Uh, we are much closer than we were at the start of the day to covering all of Nilly's cost. And once we do that, it adds to the prize pool here for the players. But we'll see if, if this is Oh, relevant. I think they're saying it's cold or something because it is freezing in there. Like, it's so cold. Oh, you cold. were saying yeah, that yeah, earlier. It's yeah. so cold. I wish I could have some of that here, dude. I'm sweating, dude. <laughs> I'm just freaking sweating. It's all these lights and what. Yeah, dude, if you could open the window. All right, there we go. Um, bad. But yeah, it's funny because it makes sense. Like all these people out here know you have a couple PCs on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got people in the room. It warms up. There, it's used periodically, mm -hmm. and it's just two people. So oof, if it, now if you get cold, I apologize. But no, nah, it's all good. It's all good. You've you've been the better caster, so you have to say <laughs> <laughs> my third set of the day, dude. I need I need to I need a rush of cold air. Yeah, three sets. That's, that's, you've been playing some weight. I, I like that. Okay, it's six thousand one hundred and twenty dollars to break even. By the way, so I was at eleven k, I think, to start the day. So uh, seriously, insane what this community has done. It was actually yeah above that. But yeah. all right, game five, big one. Uh, players are gonna warm up. Maybe maybe they should do some jumping jacks or something to to warm up a little shadow bit. Shadow box, shadow box, <laughs> shadow box. I've been talking about it all day. <laughs> Before a big set, you just start shadow boxing. Keeps you warm, gets you the killer mentality. The other guy's going to play a game. You're going into the cage, you know, you're ready to fight. And that's the best kind of mentality you can have. <laughs> just start shadow boxing. It's not cringe. It's okay. not cringe. It's, uh, Hera, anytime anyone's ever said it's not cringe, whatever was said before that has always been cringe. Okay. I'm just saying, it was good. You were good. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought it was cringe, but then you said it's not cringe. Well, they were making fun of it. They said it was cringe. Like the, some of the other players? Yeah, like hard, to be honest. He said it was cringe. When okay. I suggested it, I said, maybe bring it up. But anyways. It's, um, a question, though. Yeah. So what period of time are we talking about for this shadow box? Are you listening to music? Are you listening to Rocky? Do you have gloves on? I mean, are you can. You? No gloves, no. no gloves. <laughs> it's like improv. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get geared up. <laughs> no, listen, I'm trying. I want to know, right? No, nah, just a little bit. Like, you know, you shake a little bit, hit a couple in the air, and then and then you're good, you know? Okay, so so we're talking less than 10. We're talking Yeah, less than 30. 10. Less than 10, yeah. Okay. Like, I'm talking like 5 to 8. Yeah, just like a few hits. All right, so I, I don't shadow box to get pumped up for games, but okay. I feel like... Less than 10 wouldn't even get me in the real pumped up mood. I feel like I'd have to actually be. I mean, you know, it, <laughs> it differs person to person, you know? <laughs> you can go as long as you want. But anyways, right. game five. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to judge you. We're here game five just having fun. And we've got my favorite civilization for the Viper, the Huns. Oof. And that will be fun to talk about oh, here. Also, oh, that could oh, be a oh, dead bill. Oh. What? Dead oh villager for Viper God. to start game five. In game five. That is not what you want to see. Of course, we did see Hart with some hiccups in Dark Age. Guys, Dark Age is hard, especially on 9th of start. Things are quick. Yeah, Even and, the pros are making mistakes. And there. like you had the hill there, which gives the, yep. the Rhino a benefit, but still something that shouldn't really happen at this level. Yeah, Obviously, a little bit of delay, trying to warm up the room or something, but I'll tell you what, that's a big loss right there. Viper is going to have less resources to work with. And honestly, yeah. I, I was in the, the Civ intro. I love Saracens against Huns. I think Saracens are a fantastic Civ there. Here's the... That's interesting. Oh, oh, he had no wood to make a palisade wall. Oh, oh of because of Huns. Because oh. we start with the 100. Yep, so you were saying you, you like the Civ, eh? You like the Civ. <laughs> Dude, hey. I do. You just, you know, got to learn to lure, lure your rhinos. Yeah, that's so interesting. Huns, on this game mode, you start with no wood. You actually start with like 70 wood. You yeah. chop some for the lumber camp. Uh, to, 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 to be clear, some people, all the players here, yeah. can build a palisade wall or a house uh, to to like de-aggro and save the villager. It, it freaks out the rhino. Um, not for your average player, wouldn't suggest it. But uh, <laughs> so he couldn't go for house because of Huns. Yeah. And then he didn't have the wood. Yeah. yeah. It was three wood for a palace that didn't have it. Wow, that is pretty crazy. And then he'd had to drop it off. And well, it happened. Right? Yeah, yeah, it happened. It is what it We've is. We've seen Viper come back from from uh, worse situations. We've got a dock in the south for him. We've got Hart in the north with a dock. That I, I could envision. 
a nice little wall with those wood lines yeah, at, around yeah. Viper. <laughs> like, Player has been liking that. You just yeah. wall the corner, start the fish boom, and yeah. you, you have that guaranteed safety. At least it's a palace of walls and nothing runs in. Yeah, yeah. between those two forests would be perfect for Viper. And I think he should be playing towards something like that. You don't home map this if you're not ready to fish boom. Yep. You know, the thing I think about when I think Huns, I think of all the strong cavalry units. You have the, the cav archers, you've got the Tarkins, you've got the knights. Um, Occasionally, long swords from certain players. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, hopefully, it's been long enough now. <laughs> um, but but no, on a, a serious note, like all those units can struggle greatly yeah. against camels. And mm -hmm. Saracens are possibly the greatest camel sieve. Now they always had good camels, but uh, they removed the zealotry upgrade, which you had to research out of a castle. Mm -hmm. Now they're just getting that HP for free. And 145 HP camels. It, in it's a no cast. joke. It's, yeah. it's insane. In my opinion, it makes the camel a well rounded unit. Like, it, now it's insane versus calf, but it's like passable against other units yeah, because yeah. it's just so tanky. Uh, we are seeing hard through the wall, by the way. We're like, just walling towards the dock to keep it safe. No spears running in, killing your fish. I think that's a really good move. Yeah, I think we'll see every player do that at this point because you don't want to have to deal with that nonsense of, of someone going back there. My expectation here would be a scout build. Players are pretty far apart from each other. I think an archer opening would surprise me due to that. But as always, eventually could see that, that change into something else. If the game gets messy, and um, is, you know that, that could be the case on this map because you've got so many different areas of the map we haven't even really discussed. Mm. Uh, advantage hunts, right? But if the game is clean and it's smooth and there's walls and whatnot, you know, the Sith, the gets houses and the Saracens and... Um, you know, in general, I think a Civ that can really have that good late game like Saracens, they're going to thrive. Yeah, and also in a messy game, like the market kind of bails you out of a lot of situations. Yeah. Also, really annoying for Hearts. He's walling up. <laughs> the scout got in just a little earlier. I think he needs to, like, set that up fast. He just, actually like, brought... Of mind. Did he dock with two Vils originally, though? I think he brought a second Vil there. I think he did. I saw him coming a little later just to finish it off. That's yeah. actually pretty insane. That's pretty smart. Heads up play from him. Sends a second Vil, guarantees the wall, and now goes for a stable. So, like, Huns are usually what we consider a scout rush sieve, but, like, Saracens, they can go scouts on the camels, and that deals with a lot of what Huns go Ooh, for. Oh, man, scout. Underneath, that's two volleys that did no damage. Stormtroopers. <laughs> they don't <laughs> hit anything. The TCs. <laughs> okay, here's a question. Obviously, if there were to be a change, we may deal then with a month of, of bugs we don't want to deal with. But let's just say magically, <laughs> magically we could we use a wand and yeah, fix yeah. that, and TCs would hit there. Would you want that, or are you kind of okay well, and we just kind of... I think know, if the it. unit is under the TC, it should eat all the shots. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yep. You can't run under the TC, <laughs> like, literally like, on it, uh, yeah. and you're not you're dodging okay. shots. Okay, all right, yeah, I agree. Sense. Yeah, I agree. Um, but, like, I wouldn't want it to be, like, turbo accurate either, you know, just just a little bit more. No, no ballistic town centers, but yeah, yeah, I agree. Give the guy some glasses, you know, so whoever, Viper, whoever's shooting. Viper didn't wall this, and now that yeah. scout goes directly there. It feels yeah, like Hart yeah. has really d thought well about this, but... Mm -hmm. You know, I think fishing ship fish. will go down. Yeah. Uh, fire ship has to be added from Viper. You, you never really want to add a fire ship for a scout. Yeah, and, uh, if you just do the math, like the palisade walls, that's like equal wood cost plus build time as a fire galley, but you're just saving that kickback on the gold. Yep. And it protects you more than just a fire galley. I, I feel like Viper is not in a good position here. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think Hart, again, is just playing like an animal. He's playing extremely clean and th this is against a player who won three out of the four NACs. Viper won NAC one through three. He was top four in the previous NAC, and he's, he's in the conversation to win everything he plays. Yep. Hart, this is the first 1v1 land event he's ever qualified for. This is incredible. And regardless of how this game, who wins this game, cannot be understated how amazing Hart is playing right yeah, now. Yeah, I love how you put that. Some respect on Hart's name. Coming up big, and like Hart's the kind of guy. He was really big back in the day. You know, very, very high level. Took some time off and came back to an even higher level. Yeah, that's, yeah, he did. That's, that takes a lot of mental strength. You know, he pushed back through some bad results, and uh, and he's he's you know re really done done well for himself. Yeah, he has. Honest. And and right now he's got a four economic lead. He's collected a couple hundred more resources. None of this is enough to swing the game right now, of course. And we're still likely head towards the castle age, but. Uh, yeah, love and hearts play right now. Like, there's no, you're That's the not walls. seeing the nerves. That's right? the you're walls. not seeing the nerves. You're That's not seeing true. shakiness. This is a player, like this could be a practice set against a player he's beaten seven out of the last 10 times for all we know in terms of how he's choosing to make decisions. When you're when you're worried, you, you overmake army. You undermake army. You, you, you mistime things because you're trying to, to rush it. But 
It's just so well calculated the way he reads the game and what we're seeing right now. And this is not his home map. So in theory, he wasn't going into this prepared to play specifically this map. Obviously, players are well practiced on all maps. It's the top 10, let's be real here. But this is still Viper's home map. And I feel like Hart has played a better African read, read game than Viper so far. Yep. Yeah, so far being the operative word, Viper needs to save that archer. And he will, and that will actually make the job for Hart a little bit difficult if his walls aren't completed. And those three scouts, they didn't hit the fish, but they're still annoying. They're still hitting. I, I would maybe send my scouts back to deal yeah, with those. Yeah, he actually, interestingly enough, has a very weak palisade now. Yeah. And he doesn't have a vill to repair true, or true. build behind. So Viper could maybe get through. Not a bad engagement there from Viper. Viper's still being a pain with those scouts. And Hart actually taking a vill to the north there. He, he just off screen because yeah. he wants to repair that. Because that point's wow. going to be important. I think he might consider uh, some fish traps in the near future. So. I think he wants to. He just can't afford it. But like he should, yeah, he should definitely start fish trapping here. But it feels like Viper's not giving him time to fish trap. He's saving the archers and the scouts. Viper and, just uh, realized he's he's fully walled. Yeah, it's possible Viper knew this, but uh, lots of armies on the move from Viper. All right. So the thing with Huns, and I also think Kamur in this category because yeah. Kamur can hop inside the houses. It's like players feel like. I could play open, or I should play open. Yeah. And so even though, like, Huns can't house wall, it then gets compounded because players say, well, I just won't wall at all. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. But it's really it's really interesting. But you're seeing the benefit here because Viper's able to focus so much more on the attack, save some resources, oh. get some kills. And Hart, he's got weak villagers here. His, it's kind of falling apart Loki here. Loki feels like he's choking. This, is the, this actually feels really weird. Gets the market down, but he lost like three, four skirms. He needs to just make it easy on himself. Bring the scouts back. Deal with those two scouts in your base. I mean, they're basically a mosquito. Comes in and comes out. <laughs> just always does damage to you. You got to deal with those, and then you can tackle the army on the front here. Because archers and scouts, they can break. They can break. That could have been bad. He yeah, could have yeah. lost those four vills there. Mm. That could have been worse. Great job from him, though. Right now, it doesn't look good for Hart in terms of res uh, in the bank. It's looking much better for Viper. And Viper's going to click up. Wow. And Viper might actually be through there. This is still a pain. Yeah, yeah. And I think Hart was like caught up in like the fish boom, and he kind of underproduced army. He needs to deal with that and then uh, get the wall behind as well. Yeah, okay, he can at least play some market there. But, oh, but, but, oh, the villagers oh. aren't there. The villagers aren't there. He can gets Viper it, get through? He gets it, he gets it, he gets it. He gets it, yep. Yeah. Never that a was doubt. Close, though. Never a doubt. That was close. Uh, maybe use the market now to click up, because you don't want to be too far behind. Use the other market. <laughs> <laughs> the other not, one. Not the, the one, one that's built. <laughs> <laughs> don't use the one we're just making now. Oh, this is so rough for Hart, man. Viper's just got the perfect timing with the army. The scouts that were inside mm -hmm. did so much So here. much, so much. And oh, Hart still hasn't clicked up. And again, it's like Viper just, he just finds a way, dude. I mean, he, he played super sharp. Like, despite whatever happened in the early game, he played super sharp Feudal Age onwards here to put that pressure and, and cause a lot of damage yep. in Hearts' economy. Now he does use the market, clicks up to the next age. Viper's up, uh, what is it, like two minutes, minute and a half faster? That's substantial. And the, and the third range is going up. He's fully open. He's full army. This is Huns, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, this, this is, is what they're Huns. good at. Let's go. I, I love to see it. We're going to see market number three, I'm sure, yeah. in a second. Those and, are cheap. And they're cheap. They're 75 wood, so... I mean, hey, it's not too bad. Can you imagine how much competitive Age of Empires 2 would change if they took one tile <laughs> off the market? Yeah, and, I mean, and like the university, uh, it would be it, it would, would be, be insane. Completely different. Four yeah. by four buildings are super valuable, especially in the feudal age. If you put a four by four market, Archer has five range. You have a palace in front of the market. That's yep. five tiles. Yep, covers the the archers. Wow. Well, we'll see what Viper chooses to do because it does feel like long term could have some problems. It's been a long time since we've seen Hart with anything in Viper's base. And, you know, we said it's the hope that kills you. Yeah, yeah. I and was thinking I think, about that. I think for Hart, he makes it to game five. He then doing pretty well. And yeah, then he, yeah. That was shaky there. But, but again, Viper produced those moments, right? He, he produced that level of chaos. And you make your own luck, honestly. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is not a map that's like that easy to wall, right? So Viper's been able to poke and prod. And we've got a tower a here. A tower? I would have. I, I was expecting two markets yeah. to, to try and wall that up, but Hart really concerned here. That is not a great sign for his long term. Uh, is that tower going up as well? I feel like maybe not.
Oh, no, this is bad. He'll pull a couple vills to the side, back and forth, maybe? Maybe. Oh, he gets it. Yeah, yeah. well played. Good, good job from Viper Viper as well. can sit underneath, though. Yeah, he, he, oh, he didn't kill a single vill, though. Oh, wow. Th wait, this could be bad for Viper, though. He didn't kill a single vill, and now the scrims are coming. Ooh. Wait, th that could be really bad, actually. And then if Viper runs away, he's going to get hit by the tower. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Viper has to run away. Oh. And, ooh, not bad. Whoa, 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 whoa. That, that's actually low-key a good play from Hart. I, I don't think... Oh, my. That was sick. <laughs> I don't think that was planned. Three markets, start the trade. We got three <laughs> markets. That's crazy. There's a market in the corner. There's neutral markets. I, I do wonder, though, like Viper. Oh, uh, uh, I don't know if they fixed the, the bug, the, uh, the trade bug. They did. They did. OK, there's no bug. Never mind. <clears throat> we could see trade. <laughs> the, the, the other room screen. <laughs> <they did. laughs> um, but I don't think Viper's going to be that upset. It was what, like seven crossbows went down. Yeah, yeah. Forced a tower. Yes, Saracens, of course, can buy it back. But Viper's on three TCs now, yeah, which is... It, it, how many fish traps does Viper have? He should have, like, four, right? No. Oh, idle. Uh, so he wants the TCs first, and then he starts fishing. So Hard has the fish, but doesn't have the three TCs. So the game looks really even from what yep. I'm seeing. Maybe slight advantage, Viper. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little concerned on, like, the eco side of things for Hart, um, long term in terms of balance and, and income. But with the market, you can afford a lot. Would make sense uh, to, to maybe add some Siege if you're Viper, but against just two Skirms, you're going to be able to take that fight. Yeah, yeah. You, you can kind of pick and choose what you want. Like if the fight's not good, just run away, and that should be good. You could also run in if you want to. Go for some big plays here. Uh, not Viper's Risk style. He usually likes to play a little bit safer. Let's take some good trades, though. I think Viper is more than happy with those trades. Yep. Okay, so another thing that needs to be pointed out we haven't talked about. The stone in the middle, there's lots of stone in the middle area, and then on the sides on those hills is where all the long-term gold is. Yep. So we will see players prioritize those pretty massively. Of course, relics and, the, and then the trade, but I, I feel like it's pretty unlikely we'll see the trade. Very risky. Um, but, yeah, it, it's something you've got to think about if you're a player here. When you get a lead, do you want to use that lead to pressure the opponent's base, or do you want to extend your lead by protecting the stones and golds? Yeah, true, true. And, and, and like... Playing for the map gives you a lot of long-term potential, but like playing to attack your opponent could end the game on the spot. So yep. there's a yep. lot of decision making there. Uh, Hart picks up a bunch of economy upgrades, keep himself competitive there. Uh, it, the game is super close, but Viper's pulling ahead in terms of military right now in the field. He's got a lot more cav archers, a lot more presence, and I feel like, especially if we talk about the map control and the golden stones, that feels that feels pretty nice. I don't know if you can actually build one in the middle. But a Siege Workshop in the middle for Viper, it's going to be tough now with the Skirms there. Yeah. Would have been really nice because Skirms are slow. You know, when, once Siege comes into the picture, you need to combine something else with the Skirms. And right now, Hart's not really in a position to do that. Yeah. But Viper also could simply just avoid said Skirms. Mm -hmm. And uh, Skirm counterattack's not really something that, that usually is going to bring that much success. Yeah, like if Hart oversteps with the Skirms, he can easily get chased away by a couple of knights. Viper just starts queuing one now. So, yeah. You know, I think right now, Viper's in complete control of the situation. Viper's even stitching into second stable, so clearly wants to go a little bit further uh, into the castle each play. Uh, Hark could switch into Camels, though. Camels doing okay against CA. Pretty good against Knights. Okay. What about, like, two stable Knights with CA with Ballistics? Yeah, I mean, that's is solid. That, is that good? That's yeah, super like, solid, it, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it can be good, but, but you know, the Camels are always the, the concern. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you have enough CA... It is Saracen Camels, 145 HP, but... The way I see it is, like, if the CA can kill the Camel before the Camel can get too many hits off, then, like, the then Camel is it's squishy. Yeah, yep. it's not the tankiest unit. So, it, you know, the Camel could get on top and get some big trades, but the CA can also take them out. Whoa. I'm not sure what Viper was doing there. And the unit oh. regrouping. The unit oh, regrouping yeah, as Viper clicks awkward. away makes it awkward, but he, does, he doesn't take any more hits there. Yeah, the patch is not exactly the best for sharp movements. Um, a lot of weird... Weird re Regroups. regrouping yep, yep, yep. tends to happen right now. Second talk. So Hearts the one fish booming? Okay. What? Okay. <laughs> what? Oh my god. Is this the same player? He doesn't post them on YouTube, eh? Did but they, he knows how to fish boom as well. Did they swap names and face cams here? <laughs> Viper, puny, puny fish boom. Four fishing ships. Yeah. He, he brings shame upon the Black Force community, I think. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god. Ballas yeah. is not happy seeing that. Yeah, I will say though, you know. Things really start to flow at this point with the Huns. Resources are spiking. Your CA were super cheap this whole time. You're not building any houses. You're not hitting any pop locks. And you're starting to see more knights from Viper. Question then will be, will we see armor? Like, d how heavily does he want to commit here? Because you could alternatively save the food and the gold from going all-in knights, mm -hmm. like I suggested, and just go up to Imp. 
where you then could get more cav archer upgrades. Yeah. It's a really tricky decision, honestly. It, you have so many options, and especially on this map, you, you want to go all in castle, potentially, to get control of the stone and the gold. But then again, if you go all in castle and you get shrimp down because the guy's an imp, it yeah. could be tricky. Yeah. So there's so many so many decisions, so many factors to consider here. Ballistics, though, that's a key upgrade. I think that's definitely something you prioritize right now. Hart is making a small switch into camo. I don't know how committed he is. Does he have a few right now in the field? Yeah, I mean, he's probably thinking what we're thinking. He saw the Knights a couple moments ago, so now he's going for him. I like the gill nets. It does help with the efficiency of the fish. Yep. But Viper, he's adding that next stable. So this tells us if he's adding it now, we'll see more knights. I also feel like against skirms, as long as you have bloodlines and first armor, you're kind of okay. Like yeah. maybe just numbers is the key there. Um, obviously, though, if you can make knights and whatever else and still get the armor, the, the second armor, you want to do it. Mm -hmm. And a lot should be possible with Viper's eco. I feel like wheelbarrow, though, being missing. Oh, I actually just clicked it. But yeah, yeah. That, that was like <laughs> the main concern with 44 farmers. But really, I mean, what a game, dude. Like the best series of the first day, the, the final series, mm -hmm. and it's like a crazy story. Three time NAC champion up against the player who's qualified for his first NAC. Yeah, yeah. This is like the set you expect to be a 3 0 when you start the day. Yep. But Hart is, is really giving Viper a run for his money. And honestly, you could make the argument that Hart is in a better position. Saracen late game, yeah. like, it's a counter to Huns in, in a way. Huns can obviously still win, but the, 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 you know, the heavy camo with 170 HP is no joke. This game is also the best game of all of them in terms of closeness. I yeah, think. yeah, it's I super think. close. Yeah, because like, you know, the other games is like, okay, Viper has the lead in his wins, Hart gets the lead early. I feel like we're saying this, but like one fight and the game's over. Like <laughs> true. Potentially, you know? <laughs> true. But in terms of population, right? Yeah, in terms of population, both economic and military. Viper's heavily committed to Castleage, but Hart can actually drop down a castle, but the skirms are in a weird spot. Hope for no regrouping for the sake of uh, the integrity of the event. <laughs> uh, the skirms do make it out here. Now we see bloodlines and armor. Those camels were naked on upgrades. First upgrades coming in right now, and Hart can do a castle at home, in the middle, on the side. He's got a lot of flexibility. Viper makes it on the left, though. Yeah, I, I still love Siege right there in that middle area. It's hard to move, dude. You got these yeah. little choke points, potential regroup issues. Like, I really think a Manganel or two could w do well. Even attack grounds against camels can be helpful. It, it takes a sizable chunk of HP off. That is a Viper castle. If I've ever seen one, he figures there's nothing out there. It's on there. a hill. It's on a hill. <laughs> We're good. I know where his army is. But I think we're going to see Hart come to this side now. Oh, th this is Loki really good from Viper, though. He went castle left side, realized it's good, sent all his army to the right. Yeah. If he can castle left, secure that, and then secure this uh, this side on the right with his army. But now I think he's actually, huge. is he concerned right now that because he hasn't seen Hart's army, it could be coming through the middle? Uh, maybe. I, he does I, go back. Yeah, because I think, like, if you think about where he last saw Hart, Hart was in the middle advancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, okay, I didn't see anything here. Now he's he's looking around. He's because you don't want to be fully out of position here. Yeah, yeah, it could be risky. Hart will secure the right side castle. So we're looking at a late game where one side has a gold, other side has a gold. Both are on like the prime composition. Yeah, this is what Huns do. And on the other side, Saracens with the camels. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. So let's just see how this plays out. Pop is so similar. 160, 160. Usually players go imp around this time or even earlier. But this time we're heavily committed because we want to fight for those minerals in the map. I'm I'm very concerned about all the openness of this area for Hart. He's got to get some units back here. He'll lose his monk. He lost a villager or two. He'll lose the camels. Population still insane. He's protecting that castle on the right. The right will right castle will oh. go up. Get some good hits gotta here. Be careful. Hart does not have ballistics, so as units retreat, he'll be missing the shots. These guys are so good. Both go up at the same time. <laughs> this is, this game so is good. incredible. This is going to be a fully popped Hunts yeah. for Saracens game. If it's fully popped on Saracens, though, I always lean Saracens. Yeah, I think yeah. their camels are just so good. Uh, it, it's one of those things where, like, especially if you've got all the gold in the world, you oh. can just spam out the Sar Ooh! Viper goes oh. through the camels here! It actually isn't as bad as I thought it could be. They didn't get trapped, at least. Yeah, they're... No oh, I didn't know there was a hole there, dude. <laughs> I was like, about to lose my mind! You guys didn't see it, too. Oh. Did I lean forward? He oh. said, yes, they are! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. But I'm not so sure Viper is good, actually. Oh. There's still so many camels. Viper will take an engagement maybe to clear out the skirms. Oh, this is this so looks tricky good for right Hart, now. but it's hard to say. Like Hart beat all the melee units. Yep, yep. And now the scrims are still on the field. If Viper's raiding on the top though, can we get a quick pan over from production there? Yeah, oh, he's in. No way, dude. He's in. So okay, more camels are gonna go there. In the end, it won't kill much. 
What a crazy game we have here. Oh my god. I think we'll see it all, Hera. I think we're going to see uh, Heavy Camel. Yeah, yeah. We're going to see, like, we, we might not see Counterweights or Atheism, but beyond that, we might see all the techs fly in, different unit types like Hussar. We could see how this game is going to go late. Yeah, I want to quickly talk about something. The unique unit, the Mameluke for Saracens, really, really good against both Cav Archers and against the Knights and Light Cav. It's just harder to mass it. So you, we could see that late game, but for now, Hearts more than you know, more than fine with just the Camels. So Viper knows about that castle on the right, and so he's going to put heavy focus on that, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. Like that castle is to protect his own eco, but also to be able to push hard. And the, the problem I see if you're this poor group of skirmishers, you're so freaking slow, Yeah. right? So like Viper <laughs> can always run away. So you really, while, while the skirmishers could do well against the CA, it's really the camel numbers that force the fights. Oh. Oh, I, I always panic because if Viper's looking at his fist trap for 30 seconds there, yep. or even 10 seconds, he loses all his army. So the like, camels are super dangerous here, but obviously Viper backs out. Shout out to that, here. Shout out, shout out to that Tarkin there who went in alone by himself. Yeah, he's killed crazy. a couple skirms. Viper now on the right side, and Viper's got so much army mobility right now. Yeah. And he's got a lot more army in queue. And again, this is, seems to be the issue. Is, is you, when you're playing Camel Skirm, it seems like you're always reacting. You, mm -hmm. you can't force any main fights. You can't, you're not really seeing any raids. And this is Viper in full control. He's actually fully pop capped, so he can't make traps. Ooh, That's actually kind of a big deal. Yeah, yeah he, he might want those traps out right now. Hart might do him a favor and kill some units. <laughs> Free up some population. <laughs> uh, plus four armor coming in for the Camels now. I want to see Heavy Camel right away. Uh -oh. oh, oh, Hart, bring the Camels back. Oh no, Viper's in too oh. many positions. Hart doesn't see it, and Viper sits in the right spot, and villagers are gonna go down now. That's big. It, he can potentially clear up DCA and still finish this castle, yeah. but Viper now will bring you know, more units here because that has directed his attention towards this. Yeah, but the camel's about to be an all purpose unit right now. It's about to be the unit that counters Kills the CA everything, yeah. And counters the Hussar as well. And there's 35 of them. I, this could be insane. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, unit wise, Hart is doing better, but the thing is, tempo wise, Viper, Viper it's all Viper. Yeah. But and Viper's got a lot of rest stacked up as well. I wonder if Viper can potentially distract the, you know, some of those camels in the base. There's so much to look at right now. Hart will go for the treb, not something that camels are that good at taking out. If this treb stays up, and oh, it will stay up, no. that is a really big loss for Hart. You just go for it, bro. The last week camels ain't gonna do nothing. Um, cast on the center gets denied. It feels like Viper's taking really good trades. Ooh, level 22 hype train there. The gift sub emoji on the screen as well. Maybe level 25, and the NAC6 is coming, guys. I'll, I'll ask Nudley, I'll ask Nudley. Are we, are we surprised no help from Viper? I think he wants to do it, but he just can't prioritize it, because what's winning in the game is the mobility right now, yep, right? Yep, that makes sense. Yep. But, but, but helps could always come out. They're not the best for hunts. What a timing for the heavy cav archer upgrade. Right about now, but the right when the fight's gonna happen, there's oh, the camels. This is huge. The camels are in the skirms as well. Do you set the trebs? You go for the army. You gotta decide right now. He goes for the army, and Viper, oh. just, Viper just runs away. Yeah, the trebs are for the taking there. The trebs are for the taking. I think he was looking somewhere else. The castle's gonna oh, fall. Oh, because he didn't take the trebs in time. Oh man, that hurts for hard, and he cannot engage against that big yeah. mass of CA for the for how big the masses of camels. It's a bigger mass of cav archers. Forty of them on the field. And I love how oh, Viper castle. is, is going to continue to focus here. Instead yeah. of switching anywhere else, obviously with all that gold, this is where he needs to force the issue. Yeah, and another castle here. Uh, camels are really strong, but if you don't have a lot of them. Again, they are squishy, so they, they will die. Um, skirms, low number right now. I would like to see Hart just engage with 200 pop. Don't really fight before it, but he's low on gold. Yeah, this is, this is tricky right now. Camels, for as exciting as they are, they are expensive. It costs a lot of gold, yep. and that is the gold area right now. And Viper is, is not really putting any of his focus anywhere else. His Cav Archer number is still so high. He's collected so many more resources now, and it feels like with Halb in front, you're going to need more skirms than if you're Heart. And it's just, he just doesn't seem to have enough right now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's missing 30 pop. Like, he's not at 200 pop right now. Viper's always fighting at 200 pop. Yep. Heart's missing some some units here and I feel like maybe you have to give up some ground but you can't give up too much because that's the, you're fighting for the gold yep oh this is so tricky this is so so tricky yeah if Viper can take this hill and he's saving stone for it to maybe build a castle Viper will likely win this game and win this series it's been an amazing series here comes Viper advancing up the hill has helps in the mix hearts trying to focus them down with the skirm yeah but again the skirm mass is not big enough oh and those helps are gonna get hits and heart might feel like he doesn't have anything left in the tank here what a crazy, crazy series. 
And you can tell when Viper's fighting uphill without like, yeah. any uncertainty that he knows this fight is his. Yeah, yeah he, he really wants to win this. Really well played from Viper. With like the B here comp, in theory, it felt like he was in control the whole time. Used the tempo to his advantage. Raided left, right, and center. And now it's nothing for Hart. And it's all for Viper. The gold is going to get denied, and Hart is in panic mode. Everything goes back. Oh, and man. How dude. do you stop this now? How do yeah. you stop it? And you got, what, 30 vills there? So of your vill count currently, 30 of them are running to yeah. a new task, and that task is not gold. Zero on gold, yeah. which means he's fully reliant on skirms, and Viper's going to have the answer to that. And this might be it for Hart. He's going to fight. Atheism coming in for Viper as well. <laughs> Turn that two relic into one. Does, does the noise still play? I don't think so, no. I'm kind of disappointed. That was always like a little like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I just atheism do you, you know? <laughs> yeah, but at this point, Viper has, is such a plethora of resources. Like, he, he might as well get like, some other techs now as well, right? Get Marauders, mix a couple silent but deadly Tarkins yeah, in the yeah. eco. Like, he, he's got 2,000 gold in the bank. Yep. He's got like 4,000 resources it banked right now. Yeah. 1,000 for Hart. And Hart also... Kind of, he doesn't have the highest unit queue. That said, Viper doesn't either right now. But I think this is like a stabilized moment from Viper. We saw, yeah, we saw this from you uh, in your earlier set. Where like, you can push, you can kill someone right then, but you could overextend. Mm -hmm. So you make sure your castles go up. You make sure you're kind of, you understand where you need to protect, and then you kind of move out beyond. Yeah, because I, I know it's late, but Viper can play in another three hours with all the gold he's got. Heart, he's got like five minutes in the tank. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's got gold for this one fight. If he loses those camos, they're not coming back unless he takes back the gold. There, there is just, something beautiful. There is something beautiful about Viper researching atheism, when his opponent's gold income is only the relics. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, that's true. It's, <laughs> like, it's like I already took your gold, but now with this tech, you're getting what 33%, 50% less from the 50%, relics. 50%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is kind of brutal. funny. Oh man, and Viper's now, now that he has his castles up, yeah, he's gonna yeah. shift his focus. And honestly, when you consider Halb's in the mix, I feel like the hunt comp is actually maybe not, it not is. worse. Yeah, yeah I think it's better. Yeah, because um, yeah, like the camels are so fragile yeah, against yeah. the Halb's and also... And, and the, the mix is just like everything you have, it, you know, it just all in one spot. Like Hassar, Halb, CA, it just it meshes so well together. Some raids coming in from Hearts. Probably too little, too late, though. You just can't raid someone who's got gold control like this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you lose 20 villagers on a wood line, you're going to be okay here if you're Viper. That was the one spot, though, pretty much, it seems, that Viper's vulnerable. So that's going to add yeah. up. Hussar's there. Again, Tarkins, they don't thump anymore here. They used to have a thump. Uh, you always talk about this. I, I want the freaking thump, dude, but... Uh, <laughs> Someone get this guy a thump. <laughs> the, the, I, I, my goal is for them to just do it, to shut me up at a certain point. But <laughs> Heart calls GG oh, here. Oh, man. What wow, a great yeah. series. Round of applause deserved here yeah. in the gaming house for that one. Can we get a clap in the chat as well, guys? The GG well played was to both the players. A clap, some emotes, whatever it is, because well played to both Heart and Viper here. Viper takes the win. You guys can hear the clapping in the back, maybe. Well done there. Uh, Viper takes the win, 3-2. Hearts, I feel like he comes out a little bit of a winner there as well. Yeah, in some ways. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And the, again, the way the format works, getting two wins off of Viper, if Viper does very well, will be mm -hmm. good for him. You, you get two wins off of Viper, it boosts your confidence. And that confidence is going to go a long way this whole week. Mm -hmm. um, I, it was a pleasure to cast that one here. It was a good series back and forth. I actually think both players will benefit from this series in terms of learning. Yeah, yeah. I think Viper will look at, at how he felt behind with momentum in some of those maps and say, that shouldn't happen, mm -hmm. right? I should do a bit better there. And I think um, a lot of like strategizing and more like the late game development for Hart, yep. which is also may potentially maybe his weakest point. So Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like whenever they got on equal footing, it feels like Hart was like falling behind a little bit. Every time Hart yep. had the advantage, he did really well. Yep. But then when it was equal footing, Viper just kind of like, just slowly like started winning. Yeah, um, and I think, again, there's things to learn there. There's mm -hmm. things to look at. Viper in the end though does win the series, which is a big win for him. And we'll have an interview with him shortly. Um, Hera, I'm happy to do the interview. I haven't done an interview all day. Give you a break if that works, unless you want to join in. Uh, I, I would so, actually like to join in. All right, uh, perfect. Because I'm actually nice. exhausted. I was trying to be nice. So I, I can great. do the whole thing if you want. It's uh, up to you. Well, up to you. Yeah, you know what? Go for it, Hera. Okay. Yeah, we'll right, see. Nilly's got the mic right now. So, yeah, we'll just go with Hera. It was. Anyways, uh, Viper's going to come in here. Yeah. And uh, lots to talk about, but it was a pleasure to cast, man. I, I love time. it, actually, yeah. Yeah, best of luck in the rest of the games, obviously. It'll be a fun week. Uh, the Ten days yet? Nine days? Something? We're yeah. just ending day one here, day one. I feel like I've been here for a while. Th th this turn was really good. Like, yeah. I, I love I love every minute of it. Yeah, it's been awesome. But, uh, yeah, I think Viper's ready. We'll send it over to the interview now with Hera. Take it, take it away, my friend.
Well, cast it out soon. Uh, I, I did fantastic, to be honest. Nice. Do you not beat me, but it's all good. Are we live? Oh, damn. That was <laughs> Are we live? <laughs> Okay, well, congratulations. I'm here with the Viper, a teammate of mine, yeah, actually. Yeah, of course. Um, how did you feel about that game? Uh, sorry, not game. The set, <laughs> and uh, how are you feeling after a nice victory in day one? Uh, happy with the win. Play was so-so. I think Hard is also playing pretty well. Um, room is very cold at this hour, so good luck playing late tomorrow. Uh, no, I feel good. Uh, obviously, getting a win at the start is always more comfortable. But uh, yeah, definitely some things that got to be fixed. Yeah, understandable. It, it did go all five games here, and we'll talk about the games later, but what did you think about Hart as a player? Uh, obviously, he's coming in. This is his first 1v1 LAN event. He had to qualify to make it in, and I feel like he, he, he you know, had a pretty good showing here. Yeah, I mean, in the public eye, he's underrated, right? People don't know how good he is. Uh, he's got a really high ELO on the, on the ladder right now, and yeah, underrated player, I think he can go pretty far in this tournament. Yeah, definitely. Looking at game one here, we had Berbers versus the Spanish. On paper, this does feel like a little bit of a counter matchup. Berbers have the tools against Spanish, but it felt like you really put their tech tree to good use. A little bit of cow micro here as well. <laughs> uh, but what do you think of this matchup in general? Um, people view Berbers like, oh, Camelot, sure, counter conks, counter Mangadai. That was me. It's not that simple. Uh, it depends, right? Uh, I think I played that pretty well strategically, like as to like not let him take advantage of his strengths. Uh, with the Civ, so just like get economy up and slow development and until I like turn on the switch and get a forward castle and just like try to overwhelm. Because if it gets to a st uh, stable late game, maybe Berbers can still be slightly better, but yeah, per Spanish are like, they have every tool in the toolbox. Yeah, I, I was saying the same thing as with, with the forward castle. It seemed like you really wanted to put the pressure. How Siege was a really good idea to open up, and I think mm -hmm. you, you switched off it, but definitely was something you, you considered, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, Paladin how but you were confident with this late game? Yeah, I mean, like, Halb Siege was just to, like, force him to make Camel Archers, right? Cause then I, and then I start trapping down his castles. Mm -hmm. The more castles he loses, the less production he has. And then I'm making a, ca a Paladin switch behind. Uh, I think it's really tough for Berbers to deal with that at this point. Obviously, if the game was more even, maybe it would have been different. But, yeah, it played out exactly how I wanted. Yeah, even at this point here, you're targeting his castles. He's down to one. His whole base is getting exploded. And yeah. he has elite Camel Archer, but obviously the production isn't there. The number isn't there. And it's like he got there to win, but not really. The yeah, game is yeah. completely over here. Um, yeah, it's going to be 1-0 here. Going over to game two, uh, we now have Persians Khmer. And this is on Marsh Madness here. What do you think of the matchup? Uh, I mean, Persians are Persians. I think Persians should beat most civs here. Mm -hmm. uh, Khmer, one of the civs that can be tricky to play against with uh, quick tech switches or fast stable range or whatever. Um, I think he defended really well my pressure. I got some damage in, but he got damaged as well. Uh, this map is really hard to defend sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he defended well and just carried the lead from there. So I'd, I felt like I did pretty well trying to harass him on multiple spots and draw his attention, but I think he responded pretty well. So. I'm not sure how much fish he had, like eight fish and chips here. Okay, yeah, that's solid food boost as well. So I think he just did a good job. Yeah, it honestly, it seemed like he could go really back and forth. I think one of the better plays that Hart made was like the fire galleys coming in to intercept mm. some army. But he did a great job with the raids. You got a lot of value, uh, but it just felt like Persians were slowly getting ahead, vill after vill there with the town center. Uh, it does get into some crazy late game here. He went for a couple elephantos, actually. <laughs> that was I, nice. I felt so far behind. I was like, let's just <laughs> get two elephantos, thick boys in there to like hold the ground, you know? Uh, but yeah, I already felt like I was dead at that point, so it was just like a desperate attempt to buy time. Maybe he would yeah. like feel like, okay, I got to fall back a little bit, but it sees them and just goes back. Exactly. Yeah, you never <laughs> They're know, They're way right? too scary. I mean, it did feel like a last -ditch effort, and it would have been better than two knights anyways, so fair play. Yeah, I mean, if I go knights, he goes camels. If I go archers, he has plus two attack. Like, no matter what, I feel like yeah. it's tough unless I get a good position out of the opening. Yeah. Um, even then, like Persians are Persians, right? So Yeah, 100%. You actually picked up Devotion here? Is that... Uh, I think, yeah, I, I did some... I think maybe I misclicked it and then did the Redemption. Or maybe I did both. I don't even know. <laughs> some crazy monk decks coming in here. Uh, like, but yeah, it just felt like a snowball out of control here. Moving into game yeah. three, Hindustani Burgundians here. Uh, do you like the fast Feudal Age? Um, I like it in regards to feeling safe. Mm -hmm. And you also can do like the wood upgrade right away in Feudal Age. Um, a lot of people do play the fast castle. I don't know. Like, I feel like this is more comfortable and more safe. Mm -hmm. 
but um, maybe a straight fast cast would be better. But then again, he went fast fuel as well. So it's yeah. like, in the end, I feel like I'm just coming out with with better economy in the end. Yeah, since you got the bow saw already right away. Exactly. Uh, also, here it did feel like it was a similar situation with the Berber Spanish, where if you get to like top tier late game, mm -hmm. imp camo, nine range hand canadier, he's winning. But take a look at this moment. This was absolutely beautiful. I don't know if it was repathing or you blocking, but this is some uh, nice shots. It's uh, the. The shots was just I was target, right? But uh, <laughs> pathing these days, you never know what's going to happen, right? So that's exciting for viewers and players. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Yeah, if he gets to post imp and he has like 200 population, perfect economy, perfect setup, then I think it's really hard with the nine range hand carriers and whatnot. But you know, we don't have the button anymore, so we cannot do like. No, that you still have it. Yeah, you have it, but it's shit. I said you should press it just to see what I, happens. I was thinking about it honestly. <laughs> but, uh, it would have been sick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, don't don't show this. No, no, this this is good. This is where it's good. You quick yeah. calling. Later you pepeg a little sure, bit. Sure, but yeah, yeah. I, I, let's show this moment. And hopefully, don't show the later one. You're looking for a trap. I was, I was considering you're that. So greasy. Like, mm. You're looking for the trap. But now here you get punished. Look at that. One vil down. Maybe a second. Yeah, good pressure by him and really good eagle blockage of every weak villager as well. Um, I should have maybe stuck on one lumber camp, maybe done a second lumber camp in the back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, felt very exposed. Um, maybe I need to switch my opening as well with that in mind. My scouts were also completely wasted, so I, the whole opening just felt completely off. Yeah, it is really hard to say because, like, you know, double lumber camp on the front, if you're able to defend it, life is good. Yeah. But if things get complicated, uh, then obviously it gets really hard. Yeah, like, with my gold, I have a decent wood in there. I should have just done second lumber camp there, or even the first one, but... Yeah, and here uh, he broke in again. I don't know what happened here, actually. The room was a bit cold, so I felt like I misclicked a lot in the quick walls and such. Okay. Which is why I don't want to show the POV here and these <laughs> things. But here was just like I was trying to wall him out, and then I like ended up walling myself in. So <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. one of those cold ambulance, but not for uh, well for me actually. <laughs> cold ambulance for me. For yeah, me. I need yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so and now we have the eagles just running around. I I, did, I do think you did a good job to make a game out of it. Like um, you were like super dead. Caver just got you something, but. Yeah, I didn't know how far behind I was, but I looked at the score and it was like, eh, it's not too bad. Maybe I can get a cab with a snowball going. But yeah, looking at the numbers here, I was I was thinking maybe I was 10 villages behind, but yeah, that, that was even more brutal. Yeah, going to the cider here, you lost the villager. They didn't see it. They lost the villager. Oh, no, did I? Hey, cold hands again, eh? <laughs> no, that was just not paying attention. Y did you try to make a palisade to block the uh, board? Towards the end, but then I realized I didn't have wood. You had no wood. Yeah, that was crazy. It's like such a unique situation. Yeah. Down a vill, down two fishing ships, but you killed the scouts. Here, you know, diving the tower, would you do it again if you can go back? Uh, like I should have gotten two villager kills here, in my yeah. opinion, but the crossbows were so accurate. Normally, they miss a little bit when they're moving, right? So you can yeah, still yeah, hit yeah. sometimes, but they didn't hit, miss, miss anything. So <laughs> They uh, overperformed yeah, exactly. the wrong time. Yeah, I didn't expect them to perform like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, obviously, this was a waste in the end. But yeah, still force the tower. We're going to some crazy late game here where mm. it's a like camel skirm against the hunt composition, but it felt like the camel skirm was really nice, and then somehow yeah. you just you know used the mobility. How did you feel with this late game? Uh, I wasn't sure. Like I think post post imp, uh, Saracens are probably better. So I knew that like I need to make sure this doesn't get to like completely stalemate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I felt comfortable throughout, despite the rough opening. I think the pressure I put was pretty good. He was reacting a lot to it, and I think he made some misplays as well in his defense, uh, which allowed me to still be in the game after the rough opening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I had a really nice hill on the right side towards the gold of him. Right? If, I, if I didn't have that, I think yeah. it would have been really hard for me to push that. Yeah, you had a typical Viper Castle as exactly. well on the hill. Uh, That's one of your signatures. Where else do they belong? <laughs> <laughs> for sure, as doubts. But here we see in the middle, this is a crucial moment. His camels yeah. went off on vacation there for a second, mm. and he lost a lot of bills and a crucial timing. And it just felt like with this, with all the raids that you were doing, it doesn't show just how good you were playing right now. Uh, it, it really set the stage for you to camp that hill on top yeah. after this. I knew I needed to pull him to different directions and then I could eventually trap down the, the castle. I, I needed that to break his gold income. Yeah. Because Saracens without gold is not really that good. So, mm. um, yeah, I just needed to trade cost effectively with cow archers, co cost efficiently over time. And I think I did a decent job of that. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go halb right away. I stuck with Hustar Cow Archer in the opening, but yeah, I, I figured I needed help. You played halbs. it perfectly. I needed awesome. halbs at some point. Yeah, yeah, you played it perfectly. Delaying halbs to use the mobility, halbs later to secure it. That was amazing. Yeah. Did you well played? Some awkward, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to hug her. I didn't know he wanted to hug her. Well played, my friend. I, I don't want to go and hug someone I just beat, right? Yeah, like, yeah. If they want to hug, <laughs> sure, give it to me. But, like, I give a hand, sh hand uh, shake or a... It, it's hard to know, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been in the same situation on both sides, so it's understandable. But yeah, GG well played. I, I, well played a hard as well, wherever mm -hmm. he is. I think For sure. Good, good showing from him. Um, and uh, yeah, I wish you the best of the tournament. Thank you, likewise. Thank you. I don't know what to do now, so that was my ending.
It should have been in. I think this hippo guy will come in and this take over. This hippo guy, indeed. He's coming in. Thank you so much, can. guys. Well, uh, you. Great cast, great games. Thank you. And yeah, lovely, lovely set there. And thank you, guys. Um, the hippo guy, indeed. Uh, voice did not really get much better. Uh, the day got better and better, uh, though. That was uh, really, really sweet. Typically, so as you know, the format is we have five days of Swiss stage, then we go into playoffs, and we are giving you matchups that you know when to tune in tomorrow. Our matchup guy is not really responding, and therefore we will simply give you a bit of behind the scenes, give you a bit of highlights. We will basically now let it run for like 25, 30 minutes. Uh, you can see a bit of cameras, what's happening, how people are enjoying their time. And you can watch through the highlights if you missed it. And likely that we are going to show the matchups a bit later then. Um, that is it from us today. I will repeat myself and thank everyone. Like we got a crazy support of subs today. I think we are closing down on like 1500 subs for one day like $8,000 of donations, uh, you're absolutely mad. It's very likely that even tomorrow we can already put money, extra money into the price pool and increase this number. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed the ride. Uh, the last set was really, really lovely. I hope I will get a good night's sleep. Memp is arriving in one and a half hours as well, so we can go um, and enjoy time with him as well. He will join the casting crew and yeah. If you have some feedback for the stats guy, he would like to have that, and you can just post it in the NIC5 Discord. If you have some other feedback for us when it comes to what replays to pick, because obviously that's super new for us, and what else we can improve. This is day one of nine days, and I think we were scratching at 25,000 viewers today already. Absolutely lovely, like 18 or 19K only on my YouTube and Twitch as well. So everything shaping up to be a great, great tournament. I'm extremely happy, I'm extremely grateful, and hopefully tomorrow back with a better voice as well. It, it's, um, uh, yeah, just crazy. And I hope you are all enjoying the ride. If you like this, just make sure to share the love and tell some of your friends that this is happening right now. And we will talk to each other maybe at the end of the show. Not sure about that. We will work out matchups. If not, Goodbye, beloved, till tomorrow. We are back at 12 UTC with the first matchup. See you then. Production. This is the moment where you kind of queue. UTC, not UCT.